This story tells about a guy named Xiao Lang who has an unusual gift. He awakened the divine spirit, but instead of being welcomed for his strength, he is considered useless and cast out from his clan. The ridicule and contempt he experienced only fuels the fire in his soul. Leaving his past behind, Xiaolong sets out on a journey to find his true purpose, but his path inevitably intersects with dark forces that see him as a threat. Suze's Martial Arts Academy Some guy yells at the main character and says that he dared to seduce his brother's girlfriend, and as compensation, the culprit must apologize to his family. The guys who stood on the sidelines and heard this talk and chatter about how Situ Zhang Ye is again creating problems for them. Of all people, it was Xiao Long who offended Situ Zhang Tian's fiancé. But suddenly the hero of the occasion appears. It was Xiao Lang, and he says that he is in no way related to his brother Bu Xiaoman's girlfriend. This guy who accuses the main character wants to hear an apology from him today. But the boy did not like the way this guy spoke to him, and after that he sent this guy. The main character did not tolerate ridicule of himself for long and immediately sent his pet donkey to attack the guy who insulted him. The animal immediately obeyed the order of its owner and immediately ran to attack the culprit. This guy didn't like how they treated him. And after that, he challenges the main character to come to the forest after school and fight him fairly. But Xiao Lang makes him understand that he is not afraid of him at all and asked him to just wait in this forest. After this argument, the guy separated. But some guy was following them he says that this guy named Xiao Lang is poor and only at the warrior level. He doesn't understand how he had the courage to accept Situ Zhanye's challenge. These guys are gossiping among themselves and saying that, for some reason, after traveling to Demon Mountain, Bu Xiaoman seems really interested in the main character. She even found out what Xiao Lang was like. Perhaps she just wanted to shame Situ Zhantian. A few hours later, the guys came to the forest after school to fight each other. The guys stood opposite each other and looked into each other's eyes. There was a real battle of views between them. The guys who came to watch the fight say that the main character really has balls, since he accepted the challenge of Situ Zhang Ye. But the other guy thinks that this poor guy Xiao Lang can't stand up against Situ Zhang Ye. Even if he wins, Situ Zhang Tian will beat the crap out of Xiao Lang. They think that the boy will definitely not live. But suddenly the guys notice that a girl appears at the battle site. This girl had an appetizing and curvaceous body that all the guys who came to watch the battle looked at. After Bu Xiaoman landed, she tells all the onlookers who were gathered to watch the battle to quickly get out of here. But one of the guys didn't like that the girl decided to command them and drive them away from the battlefield. But this guy's friend shut his mouth and asks him to keep quiet if he values his life. After this, these onlookers who had gathered to watch the fight were forced to leave. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang and Situ Zhang Tian stood on the battlefield in the middle of the forest. Situ Zhang Tian calls the main character a poor bastard. The name of the sword in his hand is Zhang Hong. This sword is three pounds and three inches long, weighing less than two kilograms, made of chilling metal, sharp enough to kill with a single blow. He stabs this sword into the ground and says that if he used it, Xiao Lang would shit his pants. He is not going to use this sword and says that now everything is fair. But the boy did not react to his words and simply continued to look at his opponent. But after some time, the main character also threw his rusty and bad sword to the ground. Xiao Long says that now they will have a fair fight. But for some reason, Situ Zhantian began to laugh meanly. And after that, Situ Zhantian tore off his outer clothing, and under this clothing was super strong golden armor. The boy didn't like this and said that this was no longer a fair battle. Situ Zhantian believes that his punch is equal to the strength of 20 tigers, and Xiao Lang is just a low-ranking warrior, he won't be able to do anything with him. He wants to show how strong the Situ family is. Situ Zhantian attacks and says that Xiao Lang has nothing to blame him for. He just should have stayed away from his daughter-in-law. This guy's fist was already a couple of inches from the protagonist's face. But Xiao Lang did not react to this attack until the last moment, but only grinned. But at the very last moment, he sharply dodged the blow and was about to strike himself straight in the stomach. Situ Zhantian had no time to react to such an action on the part of Xiao Lan. And Xiao Lang just laughed because he understood that victory would be his. And after that, Xiao Lang hit Situ Zhantian straight into his golden armor. Zhantian's armor shattered into small pieces, and Situ Zhantian himself flew far away. From such a strong blow, Situ Zhantian rolled on the ground for a long time and finally hit a tree. He lay on the ground completely defeated and could not say a word. 
Xiao Long walked up to him and said that if this was a battle, then Situ Jantian should have just hit him instead of chatting. Situ Jantian cries and thinks that this blow was twice as strong as him. He doesn't understand how this guy can be so strong. After this, Xiao Long takes out his knife from his pocket. He says that all he wanted was to be in peace. He doesn't need problems. But if Situ Jantian continues to irritate him, then... Xiao Long plunges his knife straight between Situ Jantian's legs, which made the guy very scared, and his whole body trembled with fear. The main character threatens to kill this guy's entire family next time. He asks Situ Jantian if he understood that the boy will no longer play games with him. Situ Jantian was very frightened and said that he understood everything. And suddenly Xiao Lang hears a sound coming from behind the trees, and he realized that the same blonde girl had arrived at the site of their battle. Xiao Long turns to Situ Jantian and asks him to help him hide his powers and play along with him. Situ Jantian did not immediately understand what exactly the main character wanted from him. And suddenly, Xiao Lang throws his weapon out of his hands and falls to the ground. After the boy fell to the ground, he began to roll around in a circle and scream in pain, pretending that he had lost this battle. Jantian doesn't understand what kind of crap the main character is doing and looks at it with great surprise. And suddenly he notices that same blonde girl approaching them. Xiao Long looks at Jean Tian and winks at him, letting him know if he understands what needs to be done. Jean Tian winked at him in response, making it clear that he understood everything. After this, Situ Jean Tian rises to his feet. And after that, he begins to play along and humiliate Xiao Lang. He says that next time he won't let go so easily, but will crush her. After these words, Situ Jean Tian ran away like a chicken, leaving behind a puddle. Xiao Long rises to his feet and brushes off the dust, and all this is being watched by that girl named Bu Xiao Man. The girl saw that Xiao Long seemed to have lost this battle. She doesn't understand how this is possible. She thinks that wasn't he the one who saved her then. From the back, he looks like her savior. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang returned, and this was noticed by the guys who wanted to watch their battle. These guys say that Xiao Long shows that Situ Jian Tian beat the crap out of him. It was bad that he and Situ Zhanye had a fight, but he knew that he should not have accepted that challenge. They greatly regret that they were not able to watch what he did to him. But Xiao Long heard everything those guys said about him, but he didn't answer them, but only clenched his fist tightly. The next day there was a battle, a dark horse lone wolf against a third level mystical beast. The loser faces only one fate, death. This dark horse turned out to be Xiao Lang himself, he fought against a third-level beast, and it seemed to all the spectators that their strengths were equal. The audience gave a standing ovation. They were impatiently waiting for the tiger to devour this guy. A beautiful girl named Miss Ya watched this spectacle. Her friend brought her here. She wanted to show Miss Ya this guy she thought he would be to her taste. Miss Ya says that a novice warrior against a high-ranking mystical beast, she doesn't believe this guy can survive. But if he survives, she wants to give him a chance in her bed. Meanwhile, Xiao Long continued to fight the third-level mystical beast. His muscles were at their limit. And after that, he threw this beast into the air with all his strength. But he still didn't leave him alone. He tried to catch up with this beast in the air. And at the end of this, he dealt a crushing blow to this beast. And finally, Xiao Long emerged victorious from this battle against the powerful beast. All the people who watched this spectacle chanted the name of a guy unknown to them. They called him a lone wolf as she watched this fight, and her heart began to beat wildly and she got all wet. She orders this guy to be brought to her in her chambers now. The servant came to report to some person that Miss Yaw was calling a lone wolf to her place. This person agrees with this. This man says that if he cannot resist the seduction of a widowed woman, then he is not worthy to ascend to heaven. After some time, the guy came to Miss Yaw's chambers. She extends her hand to him and asks if the lone ox dares to enter her. Xiao Lang's eyes lit up and he tore this curtain behind which Miss Ya was hiding. Miss Ya sat in her underwear and waited for the lone wolf to finally come to her. Xiao Long looked at Miss Ya's almost naked body and could barely restrain himself. This beautiful girl tells the main character that no one has ever been able to resist her body. She asks him to come closer to her, and he will never forget this day. After these words, Xiao Long quickly undressed and showed his entire body in all its glory. But after that, he didn't do anything vulgar but simply threw the curtain over Miss Ya. He quickly wrapped her in this curtain and quickly changed his clothes. Miss Ya did not understand what just happened and asks her to untie her. 
but Xiao Lang just waves her hand and says goodbye to her. Before leaving, he tells her that he expected more from Miss Ya's famous bed. When he left her chambers, he hears her screaming after him that she will never forgive him. After this, the girl was able to free herself and says that it makes no difference to her whether he is a lone wolf or Xiao Lang. He can't hide from her. After some time, night fell and Xiao Lang came to his home. When he opened the doors of his house, he was immediately greeted by a woman. This woman was happy that Xiao Lang came home. His aunt heard that Xiao Lang got into a fight after school. But Xiao Lang says that he insulted her. He was lucky that he didn't kill him. He asks his aunt for forgiveness for making her worry. Auntie says that she heard about the battle with Situ Zhanye. She asks him to never do such rash things again. Xiao Lang says that he heard that the reward for third place in the academy tournament will be at least a phoenix feather pill. If he wins, he will be able to heal his auntie's leg. Auntie is happy about this and invites Xiao Lan to go to sleep. Xiao Long says that Auntie should also rest, and after these words he leaves. After this, Auntie says that if the Situ family dares to even lay a finger on her Xiao Lang, she broke the chair with her hand. Apparently Auntie was too strong. The next morning Xiao Lang sat in his academy and waited for a new instructor. And suddenly Xiao Lang overheard a conversation between some guys. They were talking about their new instructor. They say that her family is one of the three strongest in Yawan City. Xiao Lang overheard this conversation, but still did not understand who they were talking about, when suddenly a girl in heels began to approach them. Xiao Lang heard someone approach him from behind, and he immediately turned around to see who it was. When they looked closer, he recognized this woman and was very scared. Their new instructor was the same girl named Liu Ya, who wanted to seduce the main character. In addition to being their instructor, she will also be in charge of the academy tournament for a month. Xiao Lang was not happy about this outcome. He didn't understand what this woman could teach them. He understands that if she is at the head of the tournament, then she will eat him alive. She says that in the first lesson they will talk about divine spirits. The students in this class were happy about this lesson topic. After all, divine spirits are the most powerful thing in the country. They heard that the top five in Yao Wan had divine spirits. And Xiao Lang sat at his desk and did not react to this. Liu Ya says that, as everyone knows, everyone has a chance to awaken the divine spirit when they turn 18. Once they successfully awaken a spirit, they will be able to learn extraordinarily powerful skills that match their spirit's attributes. Xiao Lang sat at his desk. He didn't listen to anything. He was bored in this lesson. Every year, those who have turned 18 can go to the Divine Spirit Pavilion and awaken their spirits. The most important part is to raise their rank. The higher it is, the greater the chance for a good spirit. And once their spirit is awakened, the government will reward them with a title and benefits. Only if it is a good spirit, of course, because they will be able to fly up and reach the heavens. But Xiao Lang continued to fool around while Liu Ya taught them a lesson. She got so boiled that she broke off a piece of the table. She was filled with anger, but she did not show her emotions and finished her lesson. Xiao Lang tried to run away from the class along with all the students so that Liu Ya would not notice him. But his attempt to escape failed. Liu Ya captured him. She stops him and says that she wants to talk to him in her office. After that, they came to her office and she asked him what she should call him. Lone Wolf or Xiao Lang? Xiao Lang tells her to get straight to the point. She says that if Xiao Long is hired by the Liu family, she will do everything to help him awaken the divine spirit. Xiao Long heard that out of hundreds of people, no one could successfully awaken the spirit. He doesn't understand how the Liu family can help him awaken a good spirit. Liu Ya abruptly approached the main character and began to undress. She says the Liu family has its own ways. She just wanted to know if Mr. Xiao Lang would actually want to. But Xiao Long quickly took a step back and walked away from the girl. He runs away from her and asks her for time to think. A few hours later, Xiao Lang returned to his home. He asks his aunt if his useful spirit does not awaken. Will he be able to develop further? Auntie puts her book on the table and says that of course he can. But Xiao Long does not understand how it is possible to become strong in a world where all strong people have their own spirits. Auntie says that he can develop further by taking away other people's spirits. It was clear from the expression on the protagonist's face that he didn't really like this idea. Auntie says that heaven created people with innate divine spirits, but there is a chance that they can be taken away. But this path is even more difficult than ascending to heaven. Xiao Long asks his aunt not to worry and says that he will definitely succeed. The next day, 
Xiao Lang came back to the academy where his classes were held. The students of this academy say that Situ Zhan Tian has returned, and therefore Xiao Long will soon be hanged again. Last time they couldn't watch, but this time they can't miss it. And suddenly Xiao Lang sees something in front of him and realizes that trouble is coming. Standing right in front of him was Situ Zhan Tian. He brought his brother to deal with Xiao Lan. Situ Zhan Tian calls Xiao Lang a rootless bastard who was raised by cripples. He says his brother is already back. He wants to see how he copes this time. But then suddenly a blade begins to fly towards him. And this blade plunges straight between Situ Zhan Tian's legs. Xiao Long reminds him what happened to him last time. After that, Situ Zhan Tian hugged his brother's leg and asked him for help like a little chicken. His brother says Xiao Long has two options. Either he breaks one of his legs, or he kneels at the entrance to the academy for two hours. The students of the academy who are monitoring the situation say that Xiao Long would be ashamed to even leave the house if he kneels. But Xiao Lang was not afraid, but only laughed at such a proposal. He says he chooses neither. Situ Zhan Tian says that then he offers him another option. He kills his fucking crippled aunt and him. But Xiao Lang did not listen to this nonsense and says that he chooses to kick his ass so that he begs for mercy. Situ Zhan Tian says that Xiao Lang has met his death. Situ Zhang Yat was about to attack Xiao Lang, but he was warned by his brother that Xiao Lang was already a high-level warrior. But Situ Zhan Tian did not believe these words. But it was enough for Xiao Lang to simply swing his sword, so that the shockwave would simply send Situ Zhan Tian flying into the wall. But after such a humiliating blow, Situ Zhan Tian rose to his feet and was breathing heavily. His brother doesn't believe that Situ Zhan Tian can lose so easily. He convinces himself that he just needs to warm up. But Xiao Lang calls him just trash. But Situ Zhan Tian does not give up trying to destroy Xiao Lang and attacks him again. But Xiao Lang was not at all afraid of this. With just one wave of his hand, he threw Situ Zhan Tian far away from him. His brother still can't believe that brother Zhan Tian loses. He convinces himself that he is simply hiding his powers. Situ Zhan Tian does not understand how this is possible. He can't believe he can lose to such an orphan bastard. But he doesn't miss trying to hit Xiao Lang. He stands up, gathers all his strength into his fist, and swings his hand to hit Xiao Lang. His brother is happy. He thinks that Zhang Tian has learned the strike from the secret tiger technique after all. But Xiao Long had no more difficulty in repelling this attack. He simply kicked Zhang Tian in the face. From such a strong blow, there was a loud bang. But Xiao Lang didn't even bother. He doesn't understand what kind of garbage this was. Xiao Long then walked up to the defeated Situ Zhang Tian and stepped on his chest. He says that if he dares to harm his family, Xiao Long will get to his family. But suddenly, a man came up to them and said that this was a bold statement, and he would like to look at the one who dared to attack the members of the Situ family. It was Situ Yingxiong, the eldest in the family is well fed, but why is he here? The academy students think that he wanted to take away Situ Zhang Tian and stumbled upon this. Xiao Long's luck had definitely run out. First Zhang Tian was beaten, and now Ying Xiong came. Defeated, Situ Zhang Tian says that Xiao Lang better kill him if he dares, otherwise his entire family will die. But the eldest member of the Situ family tells Xiao Lang to let Zhang Tian go now, otherwise he will make him regret that he is even alive. But Xiao Lang is not afraid at all, and he asks him to be silent. After this, Xiao Lang takes out his knife and says with a menacing look that he will now let him go. Situ Zhang Tian was scared. He asked what he was going to do to him. After that, Xiao Lang simply began to cut off his clothes. Afterwards, Situ Zhang Tian was completely naked for everyone to see. All the students of the academy looked at this spectacle with their mouths open. But after that, Xiao Lang swung his leg hard, and he hit Situ Zhang Tian hard so that he flew far away. His flight path was straight into the monkey statue, and he crashed straight into this monkey statue with his bells. Now Situ Zhang Tian was completely defeated and humiliated. But the eldest member of the Situ family was not at all happy about such actions from Xiao Lang. He became so angry that burning flames appeared around him. He says Xiao Lang will pay for this. This attack was so strong that Xiao Lang knew that he could no longer cope. Xiao Lang stood in one place and could not move. But suddenly a girl named Liu Ya appears. She defends Xiao Lang and offers to negotiate. Situ Ying Xiong was too angry. He asks how Liu Ya dares to stop him. Liu Ya asks Situ Ying Xiong to do her a favor. She says the Liu family will deal with him, and she will compensate him for the damage. But Situ Ying Xiong tells him to stop talking nonsense. Who is she for him to provide her with services? And after that, 
he orders his subordinates to catch Xiao Lung. Xiao Lung had already begun to charge his power into his fist to strike them. But before he had time to do anything, someone hit these people for him. Xiao Lang really didn't understand what happened. Situ Ying Xiong was also perplexed by what happened. Suddenly, a man with a left technique appeared. This man turns to Situ Ying Xiong and says that if Liu Ya is nothing to him, what about him? Situ Ying Xiong is scared and asks what he means. This man says that Xiao Lang is one of his guys, and they must leave here quickly. This was the eighth master of the rain house, but no one understood why he was on Xiao Lang's side. The situation is getting really interesting. Situ Ying Xiong asks the eighth master to do a favor for the Situ family for better relations in the future. But the eighth master does not think that they will ever need this relationship. He asks them one more time, will they leave or not? Situ Ying Xiong laughs and says that the eighth master thinks that everyone in the Situ family is weak. After that, he called on all members of the Situ family to join the formation. After that, the eighth rain house master found himself inside a turtle-shaped formation. Situ Ying Xiong says that he is curious if it is good for the eighth master to be in the mystical turtle formation. Xiao Lang was afraid that something might happen to the eighth master of the rain house, and he wanted to help him. But Liu Ya stops him and tells him to stay put because he is no match for them. But the eighth master of the rain house was not nervous at all because he understood that he would kill these ants in one fell swoop. Situ Ying Xiong really wants to see what powers the rain house has. After which, the turtle-shaped formation began to expand in all directions. The eighth master of the House of Rain looked up and saw a turtle's leg there. He thought that this was what he needed and called on his spirit. And suddenly a lion appears. He makes a loud roar. This lion began to destroy their formation with just its loud roar. And after some time, the formation was completely destroyed. Liu Ya says that this is a high-quality first-level martial spirit. She thinks this is the end of Situ Ying Xiong. After that... The eighth master of the House of Rain, with just a wave of his hand, neutralized Situ Yingxiong. From such a blow, he flew back with terrible force and hit the ground, forming an explosion. The students of the academy are surprised at such a powerful force, and just from one movement. After such a blow, Situ Yingxiong also found himself completely without his clothes. Xiao Lang laughs and says that apparently everyone in the Situ family likes to take off their clothes. After that, Situ Ying Xiong grabbed Zhang Tian by the hair and hurried away. Xiao Long addresses the Eighth Master. He thanks him for the help he gave him. But the Eighth Master says that he is not tenderly grateful, because Xiao Long is his fighter in the arena, so for him, it is in the order of things to protect him. But then Liu Ya quickly runs up to Xiao Lang. She takes him by the hand and pulls him towards her. The Eighth Master thinks that she will definitely steal it, and so he decides to take action and calls Xiao Lang. Liu Ya invites Xiao Lan to join her Liu family. After all, they are one of the three great families of Yao Wan City. Xiao Lan says that's a pretty good offer. But the eighth master of the rain house also invites Xiao Lang to join his rain house. Xiao Lang also replies that this is a pretty good offer. But which one should he join? Liu Ya says that half of the shops in Yao Wan City are owned by the Liu family. And the eighth master says that the daily income of his rain village is a thousand gold coins. Ya then takes Xiao Long's hand and places it on her chest. She says that if he joins the Liu family, she will let him enjoy her whenever he wants. The eighth rain master also echoes Liu Ya and says that if Xiao Long joins his rain village, then he will let him enjoy it too. But when he realized what he had just said, he became very angry, but Liu Ya just laughed at it. Xiao Lang didn't understand what he should do in such a situation. After that, he suggests that they stop quarreling with each other and stops them. And finally, he tells them that he has decided. He chooses to participate in the school tournament. He thanks Ms. Ya and Mr. Ba for the suggestions, but first he must go through the tournament, since he didn't really think about anything other than the tournament. Liu Ya says that she will not force him, but sooner or later he will become hers. The eighth master also decides to support the guy and says that he will always help him. He thanks the master, Ba, but now he has to go. After that, they went their separate ways. Mr. Ba walked through the forest, and suddenly he heard something behind him. When he turned around, he saw Auntie Xiao Lang, the eighth master of the House of Rain, called her his mistress. He kneels in front of her and says that he welcomes Miss Twing Yi. She asks Xiao Ba to stand up. She says she is no longer part of the Xiao family and he doesn't have to do that. But she thanks Xiao Lang for her help today. Xiao Ba reached into his inner pocket and says that he will always obey the orders of the bloody token. In his heart, Xiao Qing and Xiao Qing Di will forever be part of the Xiao family. 
one of the four great families. If it weren't for her, Xiao Ba would already be dead. Auntie says she is grateful to him this time. Xiao Ba says it's too long for him. He asks his mistress why she should go through all this. Her leg, she could heal if she returned to the clan. But the lady says that this is not necessary. She asks him to remember, not to tell the clan about what happened and their whereabouts. However, she still needs him to deal with the Situ family. And after that, she and Xiao Lang will leave. They will meet again if fate wills it. The clan head was so busy looking after the Dragon Tiger Mountain. Young Master Ching Di died in battle. Miss Qing Yi left with Young Master Lan. He wonders what happened that night. Meanwhile, the academy students are gossiping that Situ Zhang Tian, someone named Xiao Lang, got fucked up. He reached the level of an ordinary warrior by the age of 17, but he angered his family so it won't be easy for him. But the other guy who was sitting at the other table says that maybe not, Master. Ba and the Rain Villages said that he would protect Xiao Lang. The three great powers of Yao Wan City, the Bu family, the Liu family, and the Situ family are in an alliance. They do not understand how the Master is. Is Ba going to hold them all back? And suddenly they hear some sound coming from the street. There was Mr. Ba. He rode a horse and led a lot of people. The academy students saw that there were a hundred warrior commanders here. And ten masters. Master. Ba wants to defeat the three great powers and gain full control of Yao Vaughn. There are only three spots left. Only Situ Zhanye should appear. If Xiao Lang and Situ Zhantian were here, there would be no talk of him. It's true that they say that if there is no tiger on the mountain, then a monkey will take it over. One of the participants was defeated in this arena. He was defeated by Situ Zhang Ye. He asks who else dares to challenge him. Outside the doors, Xiao Long was waiting for his turn. He opened the doors and said that of course he was. Situ Zhang Ye asks with a scared look if Xiao Long appears in front of him. Isn't he afraid that the Situ family will kill him? After that, Xiao Lang walked up to the arena and jumped onto it. Xiao Long shows his thumb down and says that Situ Zhang Ye should be afraid. Xiao Long says that he hasn't seen Zhang Ye for several days, and his ego has already recovered a little. I wonder if he should beat him again. After this, Situ Zhang Ye got scared and ran away from the arena, saying that he was giving up. He hit around the corner and said that this is not the end. But then someone kicked the door behind which he was standing. And because of this, he flew straight into the wall. Xiao Long sees this and asks if there is another person willing. It was Situ Zhang Tian. He addresses Xiao Long and says that the Situ family will forget about the past incidents and will not touch him if Xiao Long does not touch them. Situ Zhang Tian is here for the tournament, so he asks Xiao Lan not to make things difficult. But Situ Zhang Ye asks his brother not to fight him because Xiao Lang kicked their ass last time. But Situ Zhang Tian did not listen to his brother and says that this is a family decision and is not discussed. But after that, Situ Zhang Tian simply walked past this ring. Xiao Lang didn't believe that he could just pass through like that. The spectators say that they did not expect this from the city's young master, Yao Wan. Situ Zhang Tian gave up so easily. Some may not have heard, but the master, Ba, brought a detachment and almost destroyed Situ's family. Xiao Lang thinks it looks like Mr.'s plan. Ba comes into action then. Now everything depends on him. He invites the next participant to enter the arena. Meanwhile, the host of this challenge calls the next participant to enter the arena. The participants in this trial are afraid to go out and fight against Xiao Long because they understand that their strength will not be enough for this. Xiao Long cried a little because no one wanted to fight him. Xiao Long begins to boast and says that being peerless is so lonely. But he didn't have to rejoice for long, and some person was ready to accept his challenge. This man says that if Xiao Long defeats him, he will respect him. Xiao Lang thinks that this is an ordinary mid-level upstart. Since he wants it, Xiao Long is waiting for him in the ring. This guy was determined to get into the fight. After that, the two of them clashed in a fierce battle. But from such a blow, Xiao Lan fell to the ground. He could not withstand such tension. This guy also could not withstand such a collision and fell to the floor unconscious. But Xiao Lang was able to withstand this blow and rose to his feet. He immediately asks who else is ready to challenge him. The host of this challenge declares Xiao Lang the winner, and he takes last place. Five participants have been identified. And this, Mu family, Mu Fei Yu. Also a person from the Bu clan, Bu Xiao Sha. Situ family, Situ Zhantian. Also the girl, the queen of the school, Bu Xiao Man. And in fact, Xiao Lan himself. Xiao Lang saw that this girl named Bu Xiao Man was also involved here. She directly burned him with her gaze. 
The school principal says he has chosen a special instructor for the team. A girl comes and says that they will all meet tomorrow at school, and they will go to Huofeng City for the Western Region Tournament. She approaches Xiao Lan, but he moves away from her. Apparently, Bu Xiaoman also liked Xiao Lan, and she didn't like Liu Ya hitting on Xiao Lan. And after that, a mental struggle began between the girls. Xiao Lang doesn't understand what to do in such a situation. He thinks that he no longer wants to take part in the competition. He tried to escape from this quarrel while the girls did not see him. But the girls noticed that Xiao Long decided to run away and told him to stop. Xiao Long bids them farewell and says he has something to take care of. And after that, he ran away headlong. After this, Xiao Long returned to his home. When he went inside the house, he saw his aunt. But it was as if Auntie didn't expect Xiao Lang to return. There was also a person in their house. This man knelt in front of Xiao Long. The man's name is Qian Shun, and he greets Xiao Long and says that he must protect young Master Xiao Long under Master Ba's orders. Xiao Lang turns to his aunt and says that this. But his aunt interrupts him and says that it's safer for them. She asks him to thank the Master Ba for her. Xiao Lang thanks the Master Ba. He is a top level commander. What does Auntie have to do with Master Ba? Why did he send such a powerful expert to defend him? The next day came. Xiao Lang saw this building in Huofeng City and thinks that it is very big. Now he understands why they are considered the best academy in the western region. Xiao Lang suddenly heard someone talking from the crowd. There was a man there who didn't let people in. He says that entry is prohibited to everyone except students and instructors. Master Phoenix is currently at the academy, so for the sake of everyone's safety, the mayor gave this order. Xiao Lang thinks that it looks like things are more complicated here than he thought. Xiao Long had some kind of firecracker with her. This cracker was given to him by the man who swore to protect him. Xiao Long should just signal with this firecracker and he will come to save him. But Xiao Lang puts it in his pocket and thinks that he'd better save it. He thinks everything should be fine. He thinks about going for a walk. And suddenly Xiao Long hears a woman's cries for help. This voice sounded like Liu Ya. Xiao Long realized that Liu Ya was in trouble and immediately ran to her aid. When the boy arrived at the place, all the winners of the fights were standing here. Xiao Long starts yelling at them and says that they are all crazy. The girl could not answer and was simply silent. But suddenly a guy stops him and tells Xiao Lang to calm down. He says Master Phoenix did it. They couldn't afford to insult him. But Xiao Lang breaks free of the hold and tells them to get out of the way. Meanwhile, Liu Ya asks for help. Some man wants to rape her and says that no one will save her, even if he breaks down from screaming. But then Xiao Long arrives in time, enters this room, and orders him to stop. One day earlier, three men had gathered and were discussing something. They said that they wanted to destroy the rain village. It won't be easy. Bu Jing Yu says that they have a hundred commanders, ten masters, and that master. Bah! He has top level fighting spirit. He asks how they are going to defeat them. Situ Yuxiong says that he talks too much. He reveals what he obtained while he was on the demonic mountain for three months. It was a Moluo flower. Everyone was surprised at this find. That's right, this is a high-level poison Moluo flower. If you crush Moluo, this powder can corrode someone's fighting spirit. Either it will greatly harm the person, or it will corrode the spirit, thereby killing the owner. But the rain village is still strong. If they attack her head-on, they will suffer greatly. Situ Yuxiong says that they noticed how this master did. But worry about Xiao Lan. He has a plan. They want to put Xiao Long in danger. And when Master Ba comes to his aid, they will kill him. He will make this dragon turn into a dog in an instant. Everyone present liked this plan. They will kill two birds with one stone. Meanwhile, this guy who attacked Liu Ya could not stand on his feet. Apparently, he was drunk. And Xiao Long clenched his fist and he was seething with anger. And after that, Xiao Lang was about to hit him. He hit this guy in the face as hard as he could. From such a strong blow, this guy flew into the wall. After that, Xiao Long grabbed this guy by the throat and lifted him up. This guy is scared and asks what Xiao Long is going to do to him. Xiao Long says that he dared to touch his woman. Didn't he go crazy for an hour? Lu Ya approaches Xiao Lang and says that there is no need to do this. After all, he is the son of the mayor. If Xiao Lang kills him, they will have problems. Xiao Long says that if this is the case, he wants to see who will die first, him or them. But then guards burst into their room. They protect this guy. So Lan understands that this guy should not be underestimated. After that, Xiao Lang and this guy started fighting. They punched each other. And after this powerful blow, they again scattered to different sides of the room. From such a strong blow, Xiao Lang was slammed into the wall. 
From such an injury, Xiao Long began to cough up blood. Liu Ya wants to help Xiao Lan, but he tells her to stay put. But this guy doesn't give Xiao Lan a chance to rest and attacks him again. But Xiao Lang had a hidden weapon on her wrist. Then, Xiao Long turned around and saw the son of the mayor of this city lying on the floor. After that, Xiao Long pointed this weapon directly at the son of the mayor and says that his life is worth nothing, but he is sure that the life of the young master is worth a lot. After that, the guy stopped and stopped attacking. He says that if Xiao Lang dares to touch the young master, he will tear him to shreds. Xiao Long tells him not to worry and says that as long as they don't do anything, he won't touch him. Xiao Lang asks Liu Ya to leave here. Liu Ya started to leave and walked behind Xiao Lang. Xiao Lang held a firecracker in his hand behind his back. Liu Ya noticed this and immediately took the firecracker for herself. And after that, she left this room. But for some reason, this guy was giggling evilly. He took his hand and made some kind of gesture. He attacked Liu Ya while she was not looking. Xiao Lang saw this and needed to act quickly. He immediately ran after Liu Ya and warned her. When the girl turned around, she saw a blue beam flying towards her. Xiao Lang was not at a loss and grabbed the young master, the son of the mayor of this city. He then also grabbed Liu Ya's waist. And after that, he threw this guy with such force that he flew. And after that, the two guys ran into each other. This guy thinks that he needs to get the young master home first. He grabs the young master and runs away with him and says that Xiao Lang will still get his. After they left, Xiao Lan thinks that he's used all his trump cards. Liu Ya asks Xiao Lang what they will do now. Xiao Lang says that if they are going to play like this, then he will just kill everyone. After this, all the winners of the competition were surrounded and not allowed to leave. And suddenly the girl notices Xiao Lang and Liu Ya going down the stairs. She asks Xiao Lang to save them. But Xiao Lang thinks that Liu Ya is part of the academy, yet they did nothing to save her. And now they want Xiao Lang to save them? Meanwhile, Master Phoenix approached them after changing his clothes, and he orders his people to catch those guys and girls. He wants to tear them to pieces. After this, his bodyguard Meng Tai Chi began to create some kind of force field, and after that he attacks Xiao Long and Liu Ya. Xiao Long asks Liu Ya to stay behind him. After this, Xiao Long picks up his blades. He says that if Tai Chi wants to kill him, then he is not good enough. And after that, Xiao Long repelled this attack with his dagger. Meng Tai Chi could not believe that Xiao Long was actually able to block his blow. Now it's Meng Tai Chi's turn to attack. He takes his dagger and throws it straight at that guy. Meng Tai Chi was very surprised that Xiao Long had such strength. When the blade hit this guy directly, he was defeated. And after that, the Phoenix Master ordered all his men to kill Xiao Long. When Xiao Long saw this, he thought that this was his chance. Afterwards, Xiao Long began to gather energy into his hand. He began to run quickly and dodged people who wanted to catch him, but his final goal was the Phoenix Master. Xiao Long says that the Phoenix Master says he wants to kill him, but he suggests it would be better to tear him into pieces. Mei Tai Chi warns the young Phoenix Master. Out of despair, the Phoenix Master asks his remaining people to stop him. But when Xiao Lang had almost reached him, a man in a cloak appeared and protected the Phoenix Master. He attacked Xiao Long, and he flew far away. It was a strong attack that he was unable to survive without problems. Xiao Long didn't understand how this was even possible. This was a divine spirit warrior. The Phoenix Master laughs and says that Xiao Lang did not expect this. His father is the head of the city of the Flaming Phoenix who has a personal bodyguard, a warrior of the spirit. Xiao Long realizes that things are going very badly for him. The Phoenix Master says that the girls should be left to him. He will kill them after having his fun. And the joke concerns the guys. He orders them all to be killed and chop them into pieces. But suddenly the Emperor of Medicine appears here. He wants to see whoever dares to do this. Everyone stopped quarreling and looked around to see who it was. It was the Emperor of Medicine, Ben Ding. Liu Ya asks the Emperor of Medicine to save them. People didn't understand what he was doing here. They also say that he is one of the two medicine emperors in the court. His medicines can revive even skeletons. Even Master Phoenix probably wouldn't be able to do anything more. The medicine emperor lands and says that Liu Ya is his daughter-in-law. And with a menacing look, she says that just let them try to touch her. Xiao Lang doesn't understand since when did Liu Ya become Ben Ding's daughter-in-law. The mayor of Phoenix's personal guard says it's just a misunderstanding. After that, he looked at the Phoenix master, giving him a sign. And after that, the Phoenix master began to make excuses that this was all a misunderstanding. The Emperor of Medicine says his son died young. 
Although Liu Ya is his daughter-in-law only in words, as long as he is alive, he will kill anyone who dares to touch her. The people who have been watching this all say that they never thought that the emperor of medicine was so worried about Liu Ya. He doesn't do anything at all. Experts across the continent would go crazy if Ben Ding took out a few pills, and by that time the city of the Flaming Phoenix will be in ruins. The young phoenix's bodyguard tells him that now is not the time to be angry. Now he invites them to return and kill him later. After that, they return to their home. Liu Ya turns to his father-in-law and thanks him. He says she doesn't need to thank him. He is late. He asks her forgiveness that she had to go through this. After that, he turned back with a menacing look. He looks at those guys and girl and says they're a worthless bunch of trash. After that, he took Xiao Lang by the shoulder and says that he is not bad and he has balls. He threw some kind of pill to Xiao Lang and asks him to eat it, after which his wounds should recover. After that, he pats him on the shoulder and tells him to go get ready for tomorrow's tournament. He is expecting a lot from Xiao Long. Meanwhile, the Phoenix Master gets angry and says that he will kill this bastard and this damn bitch. He says they should die. He is reminded not to forget that the tournament will be held on Mount Maru. The Phoenix Master does not understand what they are saying to him. The guy whispers in his ear that since it is held on Mount Maru, they can... After he heard the idea, he laughed out loud and said it was a great plan. Meanwhile, Xiao Long came to his chambers and saw that there was someone in his bed. Ya immediately pounced on him and began to hug him. She hugs him tightly and says that she is very afraid and asks Xiao Lang to stay with him for the night. She says that in the past, when she was the daughter-in-law of the Mu family and was a respected lady of Yao Wan City, but her husband forced her to sleep with clients, blackmailed her and her family. From that moment on, her heart died. She has become a widow, from whom everyone stays distant. She asks Xiao Lang why he doesn't like her. Because of her behavior, he treats her arrogantly. But why is he sometimes cold and sometimes kind to her? Xiao Lang puts his hand on her head and says that of course not. She knows that he is not that kind of person. She says that others treat her like a toy. But Xiao Lang is different. He treats her like a person. Xiao Lang now hugs her himself and says that she doesn't need to say anything. He knows how she feels. These words made Liu Ya very happy. And after that, they had a pleasant and passionate night. The next day, the tournament continued. The rules of the tournament are as follows. Once the tournament begins, all participants will go to Mount Meru and hunt monsters. The tournament will last three days. Xiao Lang did not get enough sleep that night. He stood and yawned constantly. And then the mayor of Flaming Phoenix City appears. Now he announces the tournament. But suddenly someone interrupts him and says that he has brought a report. Some man brought the mayor of the city an urgent message from the capital. The mayor of the city takes this message in his hands and reads it. This message says, The seal on Dragon Tiger Mountain will no longer hold. Bring Master Xiao of the Xiao family to the capital. Master Xiao. He is from the Xiao family and is an imperial dimension master, one of the strongest cultivators. Was he asked to stop cultivation? Something serious must have happened in the capital. Perhaps the entire Xiao clan will undergo changes. Xiao Lang asks, what is this Master Xiao famous for? Liu Ya says that he is the great elder of the Xiao family, one of the four great families. Even one of his steps shakes everyone. Xiao Long asks himself, is this Xiao family strong? After all, his surname is also Xiao. He thinks that maybe 500 years ago he was part of this family. The mayor of Flaming Phoenix City says that he needs to see Grand Elder Xiao immediately. After that, he turns to a guy named Huo Li says that now he will be responsible for the start of the tournament. The tournament should go off without a hitch. After that, he summoned a high-ranking celestial spirit flame phoenix and flew away. The medicine emperor says that he will probably also visit this old man Xiao and have a drink with him. Meanwhile, Guy Huo Li announced that the tournament had officially begun. After that, all the participants went high into the Shumi Mountains. The participants stood around some kind of huge snake. And Xiao Lang was on the side and just eating a banana. He lay on his donkey and gave out decrees. He turns to Xiao Sha and doesn't hesitate to tell her. He didn't even see her working with a sword. Xiao Man, this is a real battle. She shouldn't be so concerned about her makeup and clothes. Jean looks like Tian didn't have breakfast or what? His attacks are too weak, as if he is giving this snake a massage. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang finished his banana and threw away the skin. He continues to command them and says that if they do what he told them, they will kill her in no time. The guy yells at Xiao Lang and tells him to shut up. 
He says that Xiao Lang is not doing anything, and they are all trying hard, trying to kill this snake, but he is not doing anything. While Fei Yu was shouting at Xiao Lang, that snake came up behind him and stood up. Xiao Man warns the guy and asks him to look back. When the guy looked back, he saw that this snake was behind him. She immediately started attacking this guy, but Xiao Long didn't wait for the snake to eat this guy. He took his dagger and threw it at the snake. He destroyed this snake and it fell to the ground. Xiao Lang looks at this guy and says that now he knows why he is here. Situ Zhang Yatan says that he will spare Xiao Long this time and will kill him later. And suddenly Xiao Long hears some rustling of leaves. Xiao Long realizes something is coming. He says, everyone stop fooling around. Something's going to happen now. Everyone began to wait warily to see what Xiao Long heard. And another snake crawls out of the bushes, but it was already an ordinary small snake. But this snake was not alone. More and more of them began to crawl out. The guys were scared of these snakes and stood in a stupor, not knowing what to do. For some reason, Situ Jantian was happy about this and tells everyone not to be afraid but to watch. All these snakes crawled only towards Xiao Lang. Situ Jantian says that perhaps the snakes came to take revenge. He assumes that they will not attack them if they just stand still. The girl asks what about Xiao Lang. The other guy tells her that she needs to think about her protection first. After these words, the girl simply froze in place, and Xiao Long remained surrounded by these snakes. Xiao Long thinks it's strange that so many snakes appeared so suddenly. Xiao Long then jumped high into the air, and for some reason she started whistling while he was on top. So he called the horse, and while he was falling down, he was able to mount it. After that, Xiao Lang began to run away on his horse from these snakes to hell. But finally, he shouts to the guys to find a cave and take refuge there. And so that at dawn, they immediately descend to the safe zone. Situ Jantian thinks that there will be other dangers within the Xiao Lang mountain range. He wants to closely monitor that Xiao Lang will definitely die. And the girl hopes that Xiao Lang will be safe and can avoid trouble. Xiao Long still continued to run away from the snakes. Initially, he wanted to separate them and kill them one by one. But now he can't do anything. About 200 snakes crawl behind him. But Xiao Long doesn't believe that so many snakes can gather and work together. And suddenly, Xiao Long smells something in the air. On the tree, he notices the claw marks of a three-eyed bloody lion. And after that, Xiao Lang turned to the right side where this three-eyed bloody lion could be found. He thinks that this place is the territory of the three-eyed blood lion. Even if there are a huge number of snakes, they will instinctively be afraid of the demonic beast at the level above. When Xiao Lang was in the territory of this lion, he noticed something running near him. It was the same three-eyed bloody lion. But for some reason, this lion also ran away from the snakes with fear. After which the lion hid in the bushes. Xiao Lang shouts to this lion, why is he running away? Where is his dignity as a high-level demonic beast? But the snake still continued to crawl after the main character, and Xiao Lang guessed that perhaps there was something behind this. After this, Xiao Lang ordered his horse to leave first, and he himself jumped out of the horse's saddle. After this, the horse stopped and began to glow, and after that, the horse turned into a bird. And after that, this bird flew away. Xiao Lang, meanwhile, climbed to the top of the cliff. He tells Master Phoenix to pray that Xiao Lang doesn't find out that he is behind all this. Otherwise, the day will come when he will beg for death. After this, Xiao Lang began to destroy the snakes. But there was no end to them. Xiao Lang doesn't understand why there are so many of them. He thinks that if he had the Xuan weapon with him, he could deal with them in no time. And then, a wonderful thought comes to his mind. If he doesn't have a weapon with him, then he can make his own weapon. And after that, Xiao Long noticed a snake in front of him. He thought it was a great moment. He ran up to the snake and inserted his dagger straight into the snake's mouth. Because of this, the snake could not close its mouth. After that, Xiao Long grabbed that snake by the tail, and he began to hit her on the ground with terrible force. The snake could not hold out for so long and died instantly. And after that, he began to pour his power into the body of this snake. And after that, this snake became like a stick, straight and strong. All the snakes that saw this were shocked by this outcome of events. Now that Xiao Long has the Xuan weapon, it will be much easier. Although the quality of this weapon is quite low. But to cope with snakes, this will be more than enough. And after some time, all the snakes were defeated. Xiao Long sat down to rest, leaning on a stone. He's glad it's over, using the Xuan weapon completely drained him. But suddenly... A man comes up to him and says that Master Xiao is really amazing. It was a young Master Phoenix with a company of muzzle makers. 
All his armor was very expensive. It sparkled too brightly. They were also well armed with crossbows. Xiao Lang realized that they had military equipment. Someone is definitely helping him secretly. Young Phoenix Master says that young Master Xiao is truly amazing. Single-handedly, he was able to defeat 200 snakes, and not only did not die, but also did not receive any serious injuries. The Phoenix Master says that if Xiao Long does not die, then his achievements in the next 10 years will shock the entire dynasty. After that, Xiao Long stood up and said that there is no need to praise him. He just wants to know, is this the work of the Phoenix Master? After this, the guards became alert and took up their crossbows. They warned the young Phoenix Master to be careful. Xiao Long realizes that they have crossbows, which means he can't act recklessly. The Phoenix Master says that since Xiao Lang asked him, the answer won't hurt anything. The one who drugged the snakes was indeed this young master, but Xiao Lang most likely does not know that he offended the people at the Fei Shui Martial Arts Academy. Xiao Long realizes that Situ Jiantian is really... The Phoenix Master says that he really likes Xiao Lang, but for a martial artist with such great potential to die like that, he says that this young master really admires him, but Xiao Lang will die today. Xiao Long says that it all depends on whether the Phoenix Master has the ability to take his life. Then the Phoenix Master says that stop talking nonsense and orders him to be shot. The guards then shot three arrows at Xiao Lang. Xiao Lang successfully dodges these arrows, and after that he quickly does a somersault, and he calls his horse. After this, a bird appears in the sky, which turns into that same horse. The Phoenix Master realizes that it is a mystical beast and orders them to go after it. He says that even if they have to chase him to the ends of the earth, they must kill him and take the mystical beast. He says Xiao Long can't escape. They will take this mystical beast from him. He will not be able to break away from their war horses, and even if he succeeds, he will still die. Xiao Long understands that if he dies now, then his horse named Xiao Bai will fall into their hands. He pulled a firecracker out of his pocket and realizes that he has no other choice. All he can do is go to the very depths of Shumi Mountain and hope that help will arrive in time. And after that, Xiao Lang lit this firecracker and huge fireworks flew into the sky. People who were in the city noticed that someone had set off fireworks in the forest. Ya also noticed this. She understands that this is in the direction of Shumi Mountain. She is very worried about Xiao Lang. Meanwhile, a man came to the leader of this trial and reported that the killers had entered Shumi Mountain. The leader of the test did not understand who dared to enter Shumi Mountain. He immediately went there to find out who dared to do this. Meanwhile, the young Phoenix Master discovered blood on the tree. He says that they managed to shoot Xiao Lang, and he won't go far from this. He orders to find him and hurry up before they come to his aid. One of his guys approached him and reported that Xiao Lang was ahead, at the bottomless pit. The Phoenix Master was happy about this. He says that this is a great place to die, and God is on his side. He wants to kill Xiao Lang and throw her into a bottomless pit. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang was indeed near the bottomless pit, and he was severely wounded by an arrow to the shoulder. The Phoenix Master caught up with Xiao Lang and says that he will not run away anywhere. He wants to take his mystical beast, and he will think about not cutting his body into pieces. Xiao Lang laughs and says that the Phoenix Master is asking him to hand over Xiao Bai to a person like him, the one who rapes and drugs women? A shameless bastard who can't do anything on his own and can only hide behind the guards. These words angered the Phoenix Master and he ordered his men to kill Xiao Lang immediately. And after that, three arrows flew at Xiao Lang. Xiao Lang whispers in the ear of his beast to jump down. And after Xiao Lang mounted his horse, they flew down the bottomless pit together. The Phoenix Master gets angry and says that Xiao Lang is a bastard and an insignificant scum who committed suicide. Now he won't get that mystical beast. And suddenly he hears some sound. He immediately turns around to see what it is. And from this bottomless pit, a bird suddenly flew out. The Phoenix Master was glad that the mystical beast was still alive, and he ordered to immediately catch it. But suddenly someone grabbed his leg with a vine. It was Xiao Lang. He says that God sees everything. He will not let him die alone. And it was he who gave him this vine so that he could take him with him. After this, the Phoenix Master walked to the edge of the pit and began to make excuses. He asks Xiao Long to listen to him. He says that if Xiao Long wants something, he can give it to him. Xiao Long says that there is indeed something he wants. After that, he pulled the vine. And he says he better come down here with him so they can talk about it. And after that, the two of them fell into this bottomless pit. But a man arrived and called Xiao Long's name. 
The guards of the Phoenix Master ask the Master to save the young Phoenix Master. They say that Xiao Long dragged him into a bottomless pit. But this was the man who swore to protect Xiao Lang. He simply kicked one of the guards. After that, he took this guard by the neck and lifted him into the air. He says that the life of the young Phoenix Master does not concern him. She asks where his young master is. He starts squeezing his throat tightly and wants him to tell him where Xiao Long is. The rest of the guards stood aside and could not say anything. He says that if they don't tell him, he will kill them. This guy points and says they both fell into a hole. He says that even the Eighth Master would have a hard time returning alive. He unsheathes his sword and says that this means that the young master could not survive in a bottomless pit. He could not protect the young master. He must give his life for such a grave sin. After that, he put the blade of his sword to his neck. But for some reason, he suddenly stopped and said that there must be a way to save the young master. Elderly Master Xiao has recently come out of isolation. He must report this to the Eighth Master. He will definitely be able to send a rescue team. In this case, the young master can still be saved. He gets blown up and starts running. Very little time has passed, and he must inform the Eighth Master as quickly as possible. And after that, he just ran away. But then the deputy city mayor immediately appeared and asked them where Huo Yu was. The guards fell to their knees and said that the young master was captured by Xiao Lang, and they both fell into a bottomless pit. The deputy city mayor is very angry and says that now they must die with him. And after that, he killed one of the guards. He also dealt with the rest of the guards. And after that, he reported to the whole city in order to listen to his orders. Young Master Phoenix has been captured by Xiao Lang. He asks to inform the city lord quickly. They must save his son. He also orders the immediate arrest of everyone from the Fei Shui Combat Academy. All other combat academies must also stop all activity and wait for the city lord's instructions. After this, all the students at Fei Shui Academy were locked in some kind of force field. Situ Jantian says that the plan was to kill Xiao Long. But since he was able to escape, he was detained. He couldn't believe that Xiao Lang had actually captured the young Phoenix Master. Meanwhile, Lady Liu Ya was brought into this force field. The blonde girl couldn't believe that Miss Liu Ya was also captured. Liu Ya asks everyone who was imprisoned if they know where Xiao Lang is now. And what happened here? The blonde girl says that she doesn't know after the deputy city lord's announcement, they were immediately arrested. Situ Juntian says that Xiao Long is to blame for all this. He insulted the city lord's son, and now they will die with him. Mrs. Liu Ya was angry with Situ Juntian for blaming Xiao Long. But the guy tries to calm them down and says that he managed to notify the king of medicine. He hopes that he can get them out of this mess. Meanwhile, in the arena where Xiao Long once fought with animals, Lord Ba looked at the new animals they had. But suddenly this bear that was in the cage opened his fiery eyes. And after that, he began to growl loudly. Lord Ba asks what's going on and why is he so suddenly furious. But then a man appears, and he reported that someone had broken in here. Lord Ba asks who is so impudent that he dares to break in here. But this person who broke in here was Lord Quian. Lord Ba asks him what happened to him and why does he look so bad. Lord Qian tells them that they need to quickly activate the secret formation and inform the Eighth Master. Young Master Xiao Lang fell into a bottomless pit. Lord Ba immediately ordered to quickly activate the secret formation and notify the Eighth Master. Xiao Family Imperial Capital The people standing on the street said that the elderly Master Xiao had come out of meditation, but he did not expect that so many people would come to visit him. Some people say that to see Master Xiao come down from the mountain, he would even wait half a year. The problem is whether he even wants to appear in front of people. But suddenly people saw that the doors began to open and a man came out of these doors. But it was not the elderly Master Xiao, but an elder. The elder says to all the people, Thank you for coming today, but unfortunately the former elder just returned and needs to rest, so he is not quite in a state to come and see them. The former elder appreciates their kindness. He asks them to go back to their homes. Their Xiao family will visit everyone later, to express my gratitude to everyone one by one. However, since old Master Xiao has spoken, they should return. People tell the elder to tell Master Xiao that they wish him the best. Meanwhile, the elderly Master Xiao came to some grave. He turns to his son named Indy and says that he never thought that he would leave this world before him. He promises that he will find those who killed him, find everyone and send them all to their graves. After this, he turned to his men and asked where Ching Yi and his grandson were. 
The eighth master of the House of Rain sat and did not answer him. He doesn't know if he should tell him the news about Lady Ching Yi and young Master Xiao Lang now. And everyone continued to sit and remain silent. Elderly Master Xiao gets angry and asks them to answer his question. Where are Ching Yi and his grandson? The eighth master of the Rain House thinks that he cannot remain silent and must tell the elderly master. But one of the people gets up and says that he wants to report something. He reported that after the death of Mr. Ching Di, Lady Ching Chi and the young master disappeared. He searched for them for so long, but he could not find anything that could help him find out where Miss Ching Chi was now. She is stubborn and refuses to return to her family. Afterwards, old master Xiao tells him to stop talking, but he still asks them where they are now. The eighth master of the rain house says that he knows. Elderly master Xiao asks who is he and asks him to come forward and speak. He introduces himself and says that he is Xiao Ba's subordinate, the deacon of the Xiao family. Miss Qing Qi and young Master Xiao Lang are currently in the western city of Yao Wan. Elderly Master Xiao just now learned that his grandson's name is Xiao Lang. He asks them if they are okay. He says that the young master is doing great. He is 17 and has already reached the basic level of a warrior. But that's not all. He managed to defeat two high-ranking warriors. His abilities and potential are simply incredible. People say that if nothing interferes with young Master Xiao Lang, he will be able to awaken his divine spirit, after which his capabilities will be limitless. Master Xiao tells them to bring his grandson to him. The eighth master of the House of Rain listens, but suddenly his badge began to ring, and he realized that this was not good. After that, he knelt down and said that he did not deserve to live. He received news from Yao Wang City. He says that the young master fell into a bottomless pit in the Shumi Mountains. After this, Master Xiao calls his servant Xiao Futu. This man stands up and says that his servant is there. After this, Master Xiao asks to convene a hundred Xiao bloodguards, immediately move to Yao Wang and bring Qing Yi and his grandson. And if his grandson is dead, he asks to find the culprits and slaughter their entire family, no matter what kind of family it is, and kill them immediately. After this, he ordered him to be taken to this place. Meanwhile, in this bottomless pit, the Phoenix Master was still alive. He was confused. He couldn't believe he was still alive. He rejoices that he is still alive and says that heaven is still watching over him. Xiao Lang was also still alive and he grabbed the vine with his hand and hung. Master Phoenix heard someone down there laughing and asking who was down there. The boy says that Master Phoenix has already forgotten about him in such a short period. Xiao Lang can't believe that Master Phoenix is still alive. Looks like he'll have to use his knife. The main character says that Master Phoenix will die first. Master Phoenix is scared and says that if Xiao Long needs something from him, then they can discuss it. Money or women. He will give whatever Xiao Long wants, only he wants Xiao Long to put the knife away. And suddenly they hear that there is someone above. It was the deputy head of the city. His name was Huo Yu. Huo Yu was glad that he heard the voice of his uncle and asked him to urgently help him. And Xiao Lang threw his blade from below straight at the Phoenix Master. And after that, the Phoenix Master began to scream in pain. The teenager, with a throw of his knife, cut off the Phoenix Master's dignity. Now he will never have children. The young Phoenix Master had his little friend cut off. His bloodline met its end here. Master Phoenix says that he will kill Xiao Lang and cut her into a thousand pieces. Xiao Lang lets go of the vine and says, What if he wants revenge? Then hell must follow him. After Xiao Long fell down the bottomless pit, the city's deputy mayor pulled the Phoenix Master out of this pit. The Phoenix Master was in great pain and could hardly speak because of the pain. He shakes and says that he will rip off the skin of Xiao Long, cut all the tendons, and will not let him just die. After that, the deputy city leader took out some kind of pill and gave it to the Phoenix Master. He suggests that we go back first, and then he will send someone to find Xiao Lang. The Phoenix Master wants his uncle to promise him that he must take revenge. Uncle says that he can be calm. He will take revenge on him for what he did. After that, he tied a rope to himself and ran to descend into this pit. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang was lying at the bottom of this pit. He opened his eyes and did not understand what this place was. Xiao Lang stood up and sat down on the ground. He is surprised that he is still alive. He also looked around and was surprised that grass was growing here. And suddenly the teenager hears a sound. This sound was created by Xiao Bai and his mystical beast. The main character cannot believe that his beast was here. And suddenly, for some reason, Xiao Bai began to scream and get angry. The boy did not understand why Xiao Bai behaved this way. But when the guy turned around, he saw some sprouts approaching him. It was this grass that grew at the bottom of this pit that immediately began to wrap around Xiao Lan. 
After a couple of seconds, Xiao Lang was already completely wrapped in this grass. This grass was so strong that he could not get out of it. And suddenly this grass began to glow. After this, Xiao Long begins to feel that this grass has begun to heat up. He feels as if he is melting. It was a poisonous herb, and as long as Xiao Lang was inside, it infected him. Xiao Long becomes very ill, and he says that he wants to be reborn in this world. He did not even have time to grow up and begin to dominate the world. And now he is dying from this herb. Xiao Long gets worse and worse and begins to pass out. But after some time, the boy woke up. When he opened his eyes, he discovered that all his wounds had healed. He thought that this grass would swallow him alive, but it did the opposite and saved him. But for some reason, some of this grass around his leg is getting tighter and tighter. And then the main character realized that something was wrong. But when he turned around, he saw that this grass did not want to save him at all, but it looked like it was simply preparing him before absorbing him. The guy thinks he should get out of here. But as soon as he started to run, this grass immediately grabbed him and stopped him. The grass began to bind Xiao Lang with its sprouts more and more. The boy thinks that it's all over now, and this time it looks like he will really die. He can't escape. He tells himself to stay calm, and that's the only way he can get out. The main character feels that this grass is trying to absorb his soul and take his body away. After this, the boy named Xiao Lang was completely bound by this plant. But the boy thinks that even if he dies, he doesn't want to become a walking corpse. But after a moment, the plant let go of the boy. It seemed to him as if someone had helped him and chopped this grass. When the boy fell to the floor, he passed out due to the strong impact on the ground. Meanwhile, the residents of the Situ family. In this residence, there were some two hooded people sitting, and members of the Situ family were bowing to them. One of the hooded men says that the city leader ordered the death of Xiao Long and his family, but now even a trace of him cannot be found. He scolds them and says that they couldn't even catch those who were constantly near them. The head of the family, Situ Ying Xiong, calls the hooded man his lord and asks him to calm down. He says they didn't know that the people from the rain house would come and take them away. Even with their strength, they would be no match for the house of rain. The Lord did not like that the little rain house dared to go against them. He asks to gather all his people and they will burn this house of rain to the ground. Situ Ying Xiong thinks that with the help of the people of Huo Feng City, they can not only destroy the rain house, but he can also mend fences with the Huo Feng family. Meanwhile, at the rain house, Xiao Bao says that they received a report. The three families have already prepared and are ready to destroy their rain house. So he asks Auntie Xiao Lang to hurry up. Currently, the Eighth Master is out, and with their current powers, they have no way to stop them. He says that she should hurry up and hide. Auntie doesn't understand why they should hide, because they're just a group of clowns who can't achieve anything. But then, suddenly, one of her subordinates turns to her. He rose to his feet, picked up a knife, and put it to his neck. He says that if she refuses to leave, then this subordinate will take his life first. But Auntie just looked at him and didn't answer. But suddenly a report came saying that about 200 people from the three great families had surrounded their home. Her subordinate says it's too late and he persuades her to take her away from here. But Auntie doesn't give up and says that she wants to look at those who dared to come to her. She orders one of her subordinates to take her out of here. Xiao Bao tells her that she shouldn't do this. But her subordinate says that his lady stubbornly follows her goal. And there's nothing you can do about it. And after that, the other guy says that they will all die. But the aunt looked at him and said that, who will die, no one knows yet. Meanwhile, the House of Rain was surrounded by hundreds of hostile warriors. Situ Ying Xiong says that he has no complaints against the Eighth Master, but he does not understand why they are protecting the Xiao Lang family. He says that he will be glad if the Rain House gives him the Xiao Lang family. Otherwise, they will have to come in and kill everyone. If any civilians get hurt by mistake, he asks that the Situ family not be blamed for being ruthless. But he spoke into emptiness, since no one had yet come to them from the House of Rain. The hooded man says the rain house isn't that big. He can't believe that Situ Yingxiong was so scared of them. He orders to go and grab them. No one can harm him as long as the hooded man is with him. After this, Situ Yingxiong gives the order to his men to go on the attack and kill everyone there. But as soon as their army advanced to attack, Suddenly, the doors opened in the House of Rain. When Situ Yingxiong saw this, he ordered the attack to wait. An auntie rolled out of the door of this house in a wheelchair. 
All the warriors who were ready to attack stood and watched quietly. Situ Ying Xiong says that it seems that Auntie has already come to her senses. He asks her to follow him. Then her death will not be so painful. Auntie asks if something really happened to her boy. But when she looked closer, she saw people from the Huo family here. The Situ family also brought their troops here. The Bu and Liu families were also in favor of them. Auntie laughs and says that if Xiao Lang died, then she will allow these four families to be buried next to him. Huo family person says that she is Xiao Long's paralyzed aunt. She doesn't look bad, but unfortunately she doesn't appreciate kindness. He says that Xiao Long went against the wishes of his young master, so they killed him. He asks her to be smarter than her nephew, otherwise her death will be extremely painful. Auntie is angry and cannot believe that Xiao Lang is dead. She asks how he died. He had harmed Huo Feng's young master. He truly did not deserve to live. He wants to end this stupid talk and orders them to be captured. After this order, many of their warriors began to attack the aunt. But the aunt and the guy who was holding her stroller just stood there. And suddenly something strange began to happen. The ground beneath their feet began to shake and crack. This guy who was holding his aunt's stroller is very angry and says that his brother could not die. And after that, his hands began to grow. And also his whole body became simply huge. When the warriors who were attacking them saw this, they were all very frightened and began to run away. This guy who turned into a giant gets angry and says that they killed his brother and he will avenge him. But the man from the Huo family did not like that his warriors were running away and he ordered them to stop and kill the giant. He will finish off anyone who runs away. And after that, the warriors stopped and pointed their swords towards the giant guy. Xiao Bao shouts at young master Xiao Dao to be careful. The giant guy simply tears his opponents to shreds. Situ Yingxiong thinks that this guy is just a monster. By changing his body, he seems to lose his Achilles heel. But he thinks the guy should die at any cost. And after that, Situ Yingxiong attacks the giant from the air. But at that moment, some kind of blue field appeared around Mother. It was some kind of magical blade. And at that moment, Situ Yingxiong realized that she had a fighting spirit. But he doesn't stop, but continues to attack her because he thinks he's damn stupid. He thinks that it is just a broken blade and he has nothing to fear. He says he doesn't care who she is and continues to attack. And suddenly, for him, someone injured him. After this, the ant created some kind of tornado around herself. This tornado killed all her enemies without sparing them at all. Huo family person understands that this is a heaven-ranked divine spirit, a bloody demon blade. And after that, he realizes that she is the blood demon Xiao Qing Yi. Meanwhile, people from the Xiao family appear in the sky. They see that their lady Qing Yi is in trouble, and they prepare to attack. People from the Huo family understand that this is the Xiao family. They understand that they are not their rivals. And after that, they try to leave this place on horseback. But suddenly their path was blocked by a man with two corpses in his hands. The hooded people began to get very nervous and did not understand what this person was doing here. This person was the god slayer Xiao Futu. Xiao Futu says that if anyone dares to harm his lady, he will destroy their clan. After that, he approached the young lady and bowed to her, expressing his respect. They are trembling and very nervous and do not understand why this lady belongs to the Xiao family. They understand that they are finished and that they provoked the wrong people. Xiao Futu says that he was late and let them down. He asked them to punish him for his actions. The lady turned to him and asked him if he really still considered her the young lady of the Xiao family. She did not yet know that her father had come out of seclusion. Xiao Futu says that the patriarch actually returned to the Xiao family yesterday. The patriarch instructed him to bring her and the young master back. She immediately asks to be taken to Shumi Mountain immediately. Xiao Long fell into a bottomless pit. He also asks what his mistress will order to be done to those people below. She orders them all to be captured, and if Xiao Long is dead, then she orders them all to be killed. After this, Xiao Futu orders the giant to do as the lady said. He also orders that Xiao Shan take 30 people and stay here, while the rest go with Xiao Futu. Xiao Shan says that he will kill everyone he needs. Huo family man thinks that he should run away and then starts running away. But the giant saw that this man wanted to escape. And after that, he beheaded the man. After this, the eighth master grabbed Xiao Bao and asked him, Is Qian Shun dead? If he is still alive, he asks to be told to come out and greet him. Xiao Bao says that the eighth master, after Qian Shun arrived and delivered the message, he returned to the bottomless pit in just one night, said that if the young master was still alive, he would fight for him. 
If the young master is dead, then he will return to the Xiao family to commit suicide. After that, the eighth master let him go and says that if the young master is dead, not to mention Qian Shun, they, along with everyone else in the house, will return to the Xiao family and atone for the crime with their lives. After some time, a man arrived at Shumi Mountain. The Huofeng city guards noticed that someone had arrived at the bottomless pit they were guarding. They began to drive this man away, but this man showed them their own badge. This was the guy who swore to protect Xiao Lang. He was dressed in the armor of the enemy. He pretended to be his own man. After this, the guards who guarded the bottomless pit say that they were ordered to guard this area. They were not warned about his arrival. They ask for forgiveness for the fact that they did not recognize his lordship. This man says he would have killed them if he didn't have more important things to do. After that, he turned around and told them to prepare the rope. He wanted to go down into the pit immediately. A moment later, he descended to the bottom of a bottomless pit. After he came down, the guard said that he was strange. Hadn't their group already come down? But the other guard says that this does not concern them. They only have to do their job, and they are paid for it. He says that the young master cannot die. Otherwise, not only will he die, but the eighth master will also suffer. Meanwhile, the enemies are still looking for Xiao Lang in the bottomless pit, but he is not at the bottom of the pit. But suddenly one of his men comes to Commander Ho Hu and says that they have discovered the whereabouts of the boy. Huo Hu asks him to take him there immediately. But when they arrived at the place, they saw how some grass lifted the boy up. Huo Hu says that he has never seen grass moving before. He doesn't know if the guy is still alive or dead, but they need to be careful. After this, he orders two warriors to go and cut off this boy's head. And after that, these guys take out their swords and start attacking Xiao Lang. But even though it seemed to them that the boy was passed out, he was still able to dodge the blow of the sword. But this grass just pierced these guys with its sprouts. And after that, this grass began to attack all the people who were near it. And all the people began to run away in fear from this killer grass. This grass also grabbed Commander Huo Hu's leg, and he could no longer run. He was very scared and said that he couldn't die like that. And after that, he grabbed another guy and said that he was the commander, and he was his subordinate. That is why he should die in his place. And after that, the grass pierced the guy right through. And after that, the grass began to creep behind Ho Hu. He was very afraid and begged not to kill him. But the grass did not listen to him and pierced him with its three sprouts. All the people who wanted to harm Xiao Lang were destroyed. After that, the boy began to descend to the floor. The grass touched Captain Ho Hu's face with its sprouts and began to absorb his energy. And all the energy from this person began to be transferred to the boy. And after Xiao Lang absorbed all the energy of this person into himself, he opened his eyes. But when he saw everything that happened in front of him, he was very surprised. Because he did not remember anything that happened. He thought that it was he who killed them all. And the mortal wounds he received were completely healed. And suddenly, his mystical beast Xiao Bai appeared behind him. The boy was glad that his beast was here. He asks him to go down and look for a way out of here together. After that, Xiao Bai came down and turned into a horse. But suddenly another person appears behind him for Xiao Lang. It was Qian Shun when he saw that it was indeed young master Xiao Lang. He was very happy that he was okay. After that, he fell at the boy's feet and began to hug him. He was very glad that Xiao Lang was alive. The boy asks him to get up. And after that, he asks his elder brother Qian Shun why he came to the bottomless cave. Qian Shun says it's a long story. The first thing they need to do is get out of here. The boy agrees with his proposal. Meanwhile, the guards who were guarding this pit were still sitting there. And suddenly they heard the bell, which was tied to a rope. Ring. They realize that someone wants to get up, and they immediately rush to pull them out. And Qian Shun and Xiao Lang finally crawled out of this pit. The boy pretended that he was passed out and hung on Qian Shun's shoulder. These guards did not suspect anything and were happy that the gentleman found Xiao Lan very quickly. Qian Shun says that this guy Xiao Long couldn't escape from him. He says that they will all get a reward for their efforts. He put the boy on the horse and says that now the head of the city has a personal punching bag. He says that he will take him away, but for now they should stay here. When they started to leave, these guards realized that something was wrong here. One of the guards says that he seems to be moving in the opposite direction of the city. And suddenly a mystical beast flew out of this bottomless pit. And this beast also flew in this direction. And then they realized that they had been fooled and these people were not one of them. 
They launched fireworks into the sky to notify the head of the city. Xiao Long realized that these guys had exposed them. They will catch up soon. Xiao Long thinks it would be better if they split up since they are looking for him. Qian Shun says that no, he is the one who should die. Compared to the young master, he is nothing. But suddenly, their horses stopped because in front of them stood a man with fiery wings. Qian Shun did not understand who this person was. This man says that they are scoundrels and have harmed his son. And after these words, Qian Shun realized that this was the head of the city. He didn't think that the city leader would be able to catch up with them so quickly. He understands that the city lord's power cannot be underestimated. The young master is no match for him. He must not put the young master in danger. Meanwhile, the head of the city raised his hand and pointed his finger at one of the guys and asked which one was Xiao Lang. Qian Xuan says that he is Xiao Lang. He protects the boy and impersonates him, and he says that his son is vile and unscrupulous. He has harmed others. He deliberately provokes the head of the city to attack him. And after that, the head of the city began to attack him. He was too fast. Qian Xuan can't believe that he has reached such a level. Qian Xuan thinks he can do it. He has the spirit of speed. He just has to give it his all. But the city leader says that if he thinks he can handle it with some kind of spirit of speed, then he can't. And after that, the city head punched Qian Xuan in the stomach. Such a blow caused Qian Xuan to bleed from her mouth. Xiao Long managed to catch Qian Xuan before he fell to the ground. This blow was so strong that the two of them were dragged along the ground and eventually hit a tree. Although the boy did not take this blow, he also suffered greatly. Qian Shun asks Xiao Long for forgiveness and says that he failed to protect him. The boy says he can lift it, and he asks Qian Shun not to switch off. The city leader says that Qian Shun is a liar because he has the spirit of speed, and Xiao Lang has no spirit at all. But this is absolutely not important. He wants them both to know that life is not always better than death. They only have themselves to blame for crossing the wrong person's path. The boy says that he hates the fact that he is terribly weak, that his spirit has not yet awakened, and that he cannot kill the city master. But the city master smiles and says that Xiao Long reminded him of something. He thinks that he won't kill him just yet. At first he thought of killing the boy so that he would experience the same pain that his son went through. But now he will devote his whole life to killing all members of his clan. But suddenly, people from the Xiao clan on dragons appeared in the sky. The city leader saw this and realized that these black dragons belonged to the Xiao family. Xiao Futu heard that Huo Feng was saying that he wanted to destroy all the members of his clan. But Xiao Futu suggests that he kill him first. Huo Feng realized that this was the Black Abyss dragon with a heavenly soul, the slayer of gods himself, Xiao Futu. He was scared and stepped back and thought that this boy was from the Xiao family. Huo Feng asks if there was some kind of misunderstanding between them. Xiao Long doesn't understand who this person is and why Huo Feng is so scared. But suddenly his aunt appeared right behind the boy. The guy immediately ran to her and began to hug her. He apologizes to her for making her worry. Auntie cries and says that she is glad that the boy is okay. She touches his face and says that as long as he is fine, nothing else matters. There was also his brother Xiao Dao who turns into a giant. And also many warriors bowed their knees before him. Huo Feng can't believe that this boy is the real young master of the Xiao family. He thinks he needs to find a way to get out of here first. Did Xiao Futu remind him what he told him earlier? Or would he do it himself? Or should Xiao Futu personally kill him? Huo Feng asks Xiao Futu not to push him to do this. He says that Xiao Lang brutally maimed his son. He doesn't understand how Futu can be so indiscriminately domineering. Xiao Futu says it's time to end this crap. He gives him one last chance. Either he has to do it himself, or will he still have to? After this, Huo Feng takes a leap and flaps his wings and rises into the sky. He tells Xiao Futu to come to Huo Feng City if he dares to kill him in front of all the city residents. And after that, Huo Feng flew to his city. Xiao Lang thinks that Xiao Futu will seriously let this person leave just like that. But Xiao Futu immediately gives orders to all the blood guards. Now go to Huo Feng City. Auntie says that Huo Feng is a real idiot. He hoped that Xiao Futu was bluffing, but he underestimated him. Even if he wants to kill a person in the city of the empire, he will be unshakable in his desire. Xiao Long thinks that Xiao Futu is so domineering, but he wonders how strong the Xiao family is. After that, Auntie calls Xiao Lang somewhere and says it's time to have some fun. Meanwhile, the guards of Huo Feng City are waiting for their leader to return. One of the guards says that he does not understand why they need so many people to capture some child. And suddenly the guards notice that something is flying towards them on the horizon. And after that, 
They realize that Lord Huo Feng had returned. They think that he managed to take revenge, and now they can relax. But they also notice that something is flying after them. When the head of the city flew up to the guards, he said that their enemies were here and they needed to prepare for an attack. He asks everyone to prepare for battle. He will reward those who prove themselves in battle. But if anyone gets scared or runs away from the battlefield, he will kill his family. And after these words, the guards began to prepare for battle. And after some time, the two families met on the battlefield. Xiao Futu asks Huo Feng if he is ready to die today. And Huo Feng asks Xiao Futu not to be so arrogant. He is the head of this city, and he dares to kill him in public? Moreover, both of them have reached the emperor level, and they both have a heavenly soul. Huo Feng says they are equal. Nobody knows who will emerge victorious from this battle. If Xiao Futu dared to challenge him, he would accept it without difficulty. He went to the imperial city to find out, standing face to face with the head of the Xiao family, whether the imperial family had changed their surname to Xiao. Xiao Futu did not listen to his chatter and asks if he is done talking complete nonsense. He is wasting his time talking about this nonsense. He is Xiao Futu. On behalf of the Xiao family, he declares war on him. Anyone who doesn't want to fight, he allows them to get out of here. Otherwise, he will regard them as enemies of the Xiao family. Some guards were afraid of such a statement. One of the guards says that he just heard that Mr. Xiao gave an order before leaving. Anyone who harmed his grandson signed the death warrant for his family. Xiao Futu repeats for the last time that they should get out while they still have the opportunity. Some guards threw down their weapons and ran away. Huo Feng says that deserters will be killed on the spot. Xiao Futu laughs and says that Huo Feng is an old idiot. At this rate, he will be left alone. Why doesn't he just give up to save them all the trouble and die quickly? Huo Feng understands that now his only chance to escape is to deprive the snake of its head. After this, Huo Feng flies into the air and tells Xiao Futu to show what he can do. And Xiao Futu uses the soul possession technique. And after that, he began to quickly attack Huo Feng. The guards who deserted looked at this and hoped that there would be a draw between them. Then they can calmly discuss everything. If Xiao Futu dies here, then Huo Feng will finish everyone off. And after that, a fierce battle began between Huo Feng and Xiao Futu. Xiao Lung also observed all of this, and after that, he understood what an emperor-level heavenly soul meant. They possess the enormous strength of a tiger since they have such terrifying speed and power. But Auntie says that this is not the power of a tiger, but of a dragon. To be more precise, Xiao Futu possesses almost 300 units of dragon power, and Huo Feng has more than 240 units of dragon power. She says that if Xiao Lang tries, he can surpass them in the future. Xiao Lang says that he will try to become a thousand times better than them. Huo Feng understands that if things continue like this, Xiao Futu will simply kill him. So he must kill him first. The guards say that Mr. Huo Feng used his soul martial skill. This is a heavenly level. They're hopeful that it looks like there's still hope. Xiao Futu saw that Huo Feng was using a soul martial skill. He's been waiting for this for so long. And after that, he took out his dagger of the night. And after that... Huo Feng realized that his soul martial skill was not working against him. Xiao Futu can do things that others have never dreamed of. After that, Xiao Futu quickly moved behind him, and he brought his dagger of the night into it. Auntie says that Xiao Futu used the night blade. Huo Feng could not do anything. Looks like the battle is over. And Xiao Lang looks at it and says it looks terrifying. After his defeat, Huo Feng fell to the ground, creating a crater around himself with his body. There was a huge hole in his body and his chest. When the guards came to Huo Feng, they saw that he was dead and were very afraid of this. They also say that Xiao Futu is not a human but a demon. After this, the guards sat down on their knees and began to beg for mercy and said that they were surrendering. Xiao Futu says that he gave them a chance, but they missed it, and now they will all die. But suddenly, Xiao Long notices a carriage approaching them. It was the Emperor of Medicine, and all the guards who were sentenced to death ask him for help. After this, the medicine emperor turns to Xiao Futu and says that Huo Feng is already dead and asks to release these people. But Xiao Futu does not agree with this proposal and says that he will continue to kill. The medicine emperor realizes that Xiao Futu is known for his recklessness, but he doesn't understand what to do. After which he notices that Xiao Lang is also there. He turns to the boy and says that he is one of the members of the Xiao family and asks him to stop his older brother. A mass murder would damage their family's reputation. 
He says he got the hint, and after that the guy turns to his aunt and asks her to stop this. But Auntie tells Xiao Lang to make the decision himself. After that, Xiao Tianlei began to approach Xiao Foot, and he saw this, and he ordered his people to stop it. And after that, the people from the Xiao family stopped exterminating people from Huofeng City. Xiao Long is indeed the young master of the Xiao family, and Xiao Futu is obliged to obey him. But not long ago, Xiao Long was almost killed by the Situ family. The medicine emperor says that he has just returned from the Xiao family estate, and he doesn't know what's going on here. He asks where Liu Ya and the people from Fei Shui Martial Arts Academy are. Xiao Long turns to one of the warriors of Huofeng City and asks him where Liu Ya and the others from the academy are. This guy was very frightened and with tears in his eyes answers that they were locked in prison by order of the deputy head of the city. The medicine emperor became very angry at what he heard. After this, the medicine emperor turns to Xiao Futu and says that he takes back his words. He wants Xiao Futu to order his men to kill them all. After this, Xiao Futu asks Mrs. Ching, and what should they do now? Lady Qin Yi says that Lu Ya and the other guys from the Fei Shui Martial Arts Academy need to be released. After that, Liu Ya and other students from the academy were taken somewhere, but they did not understand who was coming ahead and where they were going. Liu Ya noticed that this man was from the Xiao family, but she didn't understand what he was doing here. Situ Jantian says that he wonders who freed them. And he also wonders if Xiao Lang is dead. But when they arrived at the place, they saw a pile of corpses. They see that a lot of people died here. They already think that they are going to repeat their fate. Lu Ya also thinks that this person brought them here to kill them, but when she looked closer, she saw something. It was Xiao Lang who stood with his back to her and did not see her. Xiao Lang also saw Liu Ya and the rest of the academy students. The guy calls the girl to come up to him, and after that Liu Ya ran to Xiao Lang. Auntie saw this and sees that Xiao Lang has matured a lot. Auntie suggests returning to Yao Wan City first. She asks Xiao Futu to take care of everything while here. And when he returns, she will go with him to the Xiao family. But Xiao Long asked Auntie to wait a little. He approached the students of the academy and said that he still had unfinished business. The boy turns to Situ Jantian. He remembers once telling him that Xiao Long is not interested in playing with him, but he bullied him again and again. The rattlesnake chased Xiao Long madly. This is Situ Jantian's doing, isn't it? The main character says that Situ Jantian did this in secret from everyone, and Xiao Long almost died there. After that, Situ Jantian fell to his knees and began to cry for mercy from Xiao Lang. But Xiao Lang did not listen to him, but simply took out a sword and put it to the throat of his enemy. And then Situ Jantian cut his throat, from which the guy immediately died a painful death. Xiao Futu supports the boy and says that this is good work. Xiao Qing Di has a wonderful son. His aunt also nodded her head approvingly and was convinced that Lan had already matured completely. And all the other students at the academy were shocked by what they saw. They think that Xiao Long is intimidating them. And after all this, Xiao Long went with his aunt to the city of Yao Wan. The blonde girl thinks that Xiao Long is moving further and further away from her. After their departure, the man approaches Xiao Futu and says, what should they do now with the remaining Huo family warriors? Xiao Futu orders them all to be killed. Xiao Long asks Auntie what Xiao Futu intends to do with those people. But Auntie says that Xiao Long is still not good enough after all these years. She had already told him that if he was merciful to his enemies, sooner or later it would destroy him. People in the land of souls are cruel. If he does not kill his enemies first, he will destroy his entire family. They would be dead if the people of Huo Feng City united and attacked them. The reason why Xiao Futu could succeed without much effort was because of his reputation as a brutal killer. This is the reputation the Xiao family has earned through thousands of years of killing. Xiao Lang says he understands this, but he still considers it inhumane to kill the weak. Auntie says they never killed. Their family rule is, no one is allowed to kill innocent people. The boy must have a lot of questions. She will answer when she returns to Yao Wan. Now he is more mature. She will tell him the truth. After some time, they arrived at the Yanyu sect. Auntie says that her name is Xiao Qing Yi. Her father, that is, Xiao Lan's grandfather, is called Xiao Bu Shi. He is the patriarch of the Xiao family, one of the top families. His father is Xiao Qing Di. He and his mother died almost immediately after the boy was born. His grandfather was trapped on Long Hu Mountain. Auntie thought that he would stay there for life, so she took him away and left the Xiao family. 
Now he's back, and Auntie is going to see him. She also invites Xiao Lan to come with her. Xiao Long realized that he was a descendant of a great family, but somehow he doesn't care whether he returns or not. In any case, he had never been emotionally attached to the Xiao family. The boy only wants to be with his aunt and brother, Xiao Dao. Therefore, Xiao Long chooses to let his aunt decide for him. Auntie says she thinks it would be better for him to return. He should honor the memory of his parents and meet his grandfather. She also says that now no one will dare to attack them because they are under the protection of his grandfather. But if he becomes uncomfortable there, they will leave immediately. Auntie will be with him wherever the boy goes. After that, she asks what else does Xiao Lang want Auntie to tell him. Xiao Lang looked at his aunt's legs and said that the phoenix pills didn't get him back on his feet, right? Auntie asks for forgiveness for making a mistake. She wanted the boy to focus on practice, so she came up with this. She asks him not to get angry. She says that when they return to the Xiao family, they will find a medicine better than phoenix pills to cure her legs. Xiao Lang asks about the eighth master, because he is still working for the Xiao family, right? Otherwise, he wouldn't have fought with the Situ family over something as petty as him. Auntie says that she arranged everything so that he would show up several times. Afterwards, Xiao Long asks about how his father died. Auntie will tell him this after he reaches the master level. He also asks what kind of person is his grandfather. After all, they killed the people of Huo Feng and Yao Wan cities. Will the government prosecute them? Auntie says the boy will know everything when he meets him. Since they will be moving out tomorrow, Xiao Lang thinks that he still has a lot of time. After this, Xiao Long came to Liu Ya's room and told her that he did not know that he belonged to the Xiao family, and I didn't want to lie to her. The Liu family is not in danger. He will ask the Eighth Master to take care of it. Xiao Long plans to return to the Xiao family tomorrow, but she can't take him with her. He'll take her when everything calms down. The girl says that she will wait for him no matter how long it takes. Sometime later, when Xiao Long fell asleep, he had a dream that he was enveloped in grass from a bottomless pit. But when he opened his eyes, he realized that this was definitely not a dream. All her wounds were healed. He wants to ask his grandfather about this when he returns. Meanwhile, Liu Ya woke up and realized that Xiao Long had a bad dream. The next day, the boy thanks the Eighth Master for the help he has received these days. And if they need help, Xiao Long asks him to contact him, and he will return the favor. The Eighth Master says that he had to do this. Liu Ya hugged the main character goodbye, and after that they separated. The Eighth Master looks at Xiao Long and says that this guy is so willful and intractable. He wonders what reactions he will cause upon arriving in the city of the Empire. And Liu Ya hopes that, having reached great heights in the world, the boy will not forget a girl named Liu Ya, waiting for him in Yao Wan. The Jiang Dynasty has a long history. It originated in the Land of Souls more than a thousand years ago. Over the past thousand years, the Z Dynasty, located in the north, has repeatedly tried to take possession of this rich land. But every time they returned with nothing. Over the past hundred years, the royal power of the Zhang Dynasty has weakened, especially due to the current overly cruel emperor. He led an idle life, had sex, drank a lot, and achieved nothing. But even with that ruler, the Zhang Dynasty is still very strong in the east. The army of the Zi Dynasty never set foot on those lands. This is because there are four great families in the Zhang Dynasty, and the god of the army, one of the most respected, strongest people of the Zi Dynasty said, The Zhang Dynasty will prosper as long as the four great families and the army god remain with them. From this, we can see the importance of the four great families to the Zhang Dynasty. Meanwhile, Xiao Long arrived at the place he was supposed to meet with his grandfather. He must be the best of the best. At the bottom, they are met by Xiao Qing Long, the current head of the Xiao family. He was glad that Qing Yi was finally home. All these years, they had a hard time looking for her. She must get rid of her wretched character. Qing Yi turns to Xiao Long and says that he wants to go inside. When Xiao Qing Long saw that Qing Di's son, Xiao Long, was also here, he was overjoyed. But Xiao Lang thinks that this guy is cunning and arrogant. Afterwards, they met the elders of their family. The boys greeted the elders of the Xiao family. The elder says that Xiao Lang is just like his father. Cultivating under Qing Yi's supervision, he grew to be truly extraordinary. He encourages everyone to come inside. 
The head of the clan is probably already tired of waiting for them. When they arrived at the place and the elder opened the doors, a voice behind the door said to let them in and leave them alone. There stood Xiao Lang's grandfather and his aunt Ching Yi's father inside. He looked at them and said that he was glad that his daughter was back. Surely a lot of misfortunes have befallen her over all these years. Afterwards, Ching Yi hugged her father tightly. He says he won't let anyone hurt her again. They will get justice for all her years of suffering. She also asks for forgiveness from her father. After all, he suffered for so long because of her on Longhu Mountain. After this, Auntie turns to Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao and asks them to kneel down and bow to their grandfather. After this, the guys immediately knelt down and bowed to their grandfather. He approaches Xiao Lan and says that he is home now. Starting today, no one will touch him anymore. If anyone dares, he can break his legs and his grandfather will support him. Xiao Lang asks what directly to anyone. His grandfather replies that yes, anyone. Auntie walked up to the tombstone and touched it with her hand. She calls Xiao Lang to come and bow. This is his mom and dad. Xiao Dao must also bow. After that, the guys came up and immediately bowed to this tombstone of Xiao Lang's parents. Aunt Ching Di turns to her brother and sister-in-law and says that their son has returned to see them. He is now 17 years old. He won't let them down. He is a good boy. They can rest in peace. After this, the aunt asks the guys to go for a walk and she will talk to her father. After the guys left, Ching Yi turns to her father and says that her brother and daughter-in-law were vilely killed. Her father says Futu told him, so he made some inquiries. He asks her not to worry. After he recovers, those who killed them will die themselves. He says that there are rumors that Lan can rival a high-level general, and Xiao Dao is not lacking in talent. He asks where he studied. Ching Yi says that she was the one who trained him. He's smart enough. Soon he will be able to awaken his spirit. If Lan awakens the divine spirit, he will be able to achieve a lot in the future, at least as far as possible. What about Xiao Dao? Xiao Lang brought him from Death Mountain. The guy seems to have lost his memory, but he has a terrible gift of transformation. Now he has the strength of a high-level master. After reincarnation, he cannot be harmed by ordinary masters. Her father says he has never encountered anything like this. He is sure that there are no such races on the spiritual earth. He asks what could he be from overseas. Ching Yi doesn't know. Maybe he can tell it once his memory returns. She thinks his memory was sealed. The old man thinks that they need to train them well anyway. They can bring unprecedented glory to their family. He wants to let Lan fight the geniuses of the greatest families. The tiger cub can stand out and become the king of all animals only through constant struggle. He asks Ching Yi not to worry if Xiao Long does something. He will solve everything. He wants everyone to know about the power of the Xiao family. Meanwhile, the guys were walking around the area, and Xiao Dao said that this place is as big as a city. Xiao Long says there are just as many people here. They're new here, so it's best not to cause problems for them. Suddenly, a man named Jin Xiao appeared on their way. He saw Xiao Lang and says that he heard that the boy killed two high-level generals. The man who accompanied the guys explains to Master Jin Xiao that this is Master Lan and Master Dao. They just returned to the family. The boys greeted him and called him their cousin. But it was clear from the guy's face that he didn't like the guys calling him that. He asked the guys how dare they call him cousin. But then another guy comes up to them and says that he remembers that Uncle Ching Di had only one son. When did he become the young master of the Xiao family? But maybe he really is his cousin. Who knows, maybe Aunt Ching Yi. Xiao Lang didn't like what these guys were saying. The main character turned to his brother and said that this guy insulted his aunt. How should he be punished? Xiao Dao offers to break his legs. Xiao Long likes this suggestion and tells his brother to take action. After this, Xiao Dao immediately went to attack them. But this guy also had some guards, and they attacked Xiao Dao. Jin Xiao, with a grin on his face, says that he should not blame him later if he dies. But at this moment, Xiao Dao easily dealt with those guards. These guys couldn't believe how this was possible. The masters were no match for him. After that, Xiao Long looked at the guy holding the fan and told Xiao Dao to break that guy's legs. After that, the guy started to run away and said that this would not happen. Xiao Dao managed to catch this guy and lifted him up. And after that, he threw him to the ground and broke his legs. Xiao Long looks at Jin Xiao and says that his brother is much kinder than him. What does he think happened to the Situ family after they insulted Auntie? He destroyed them all the next day. 
This guy stood and couldn't say anything. His legs were trembling violently. And after that, Xiao Long ordered them to get out of his sight. After this, the man who accompanied them says that this man is the son of Xiao Qing Long. By insulting him, they insulted everyone in the Xiao family. Xiao Long says he doesn't care. He will kick the ass of anyone who stands up to him. After this, a person reported to Auntie and Xiao Lan that the head of the clan had issued a decree that anyone under 18 could challenge Master Lan to a fight, and whoever breaks his legs will receive a reward. Other family members cannot interfere. Auntie looks at the boy and says that he is not strong enough yet. His grandfather set up an arena for him. In the future, if something like this happens again, he must remember, not only do we need to break a pair of legs, but also 13 ribs. Otherwise, how is he going to achieve greater heights in the future? Xiao Long says he understands. The main character asks if the Xiao family has something like a library. He wants to find some information. He needs to find out what happened to the Wisteria. Auntie gives him her badge and asks Jia to take him there. After that, Xiao Long came to the library building. He saw a man sitting in front of him. Xiao Lang immediately greeted the man. This man opened his eyes and demands a token from the boy. After the main character gives this person a token, he can read any book on the first floor, but he is not strong enough to set foot on the second floor. After that, Xiao Lang went to the bookshelves and looked for the book he needed. And finally, Xiao Lang found the book he was looking for. It was a book chronicling the spiritual land. He read in this library one day and one night, but never found anything about Wisteria. He thinks the Soul Festival is in a few months. As soon as he can awaken his spirit and improve the token, he will go to the second floor and look there. If he doesn't find anything, he'll ask his aunt or grandfather. When Xiao Lang left the library, a man met him and said that the head asked him to come back, take a bath and change clothes. They go to the palace feast. Xiao Lang asks, what kind of palace feast is this? This person says that there are three great dynasties in the spiritual land. In the east is the Zhang dynasty, in the north is the Zi dynasty, and in the west is the Yu dynasty. All dynasties have a thousand-year history. All this time, the three dynasties are trying to destroy each other and unite the spiritual lands, but all to no avail. Every dynasty has a royal family, such as the Yun family and the Zhang dynasty. The royal family rules the dynasty. The Zhang dynasty is a vast land, with hundreds of cities, thousands of villages, millions of villages, hundreds of millions of people. Over the course of a long time, the greatness of the royal family has become firmly entrenched in our hearts. The towering palace in the center of the capital has become a place that everyone can only dream of. Xiao Long heard all this and says that he will go there anyway. He's still not scared. The next day, some guys on the street were gossiping about Xiao Long and saying that he was lucky to be able to visit the palace immediately upon his return. He humiliated Xiao Jin a few days ago. Arrogance just creeps out of him, people think. And after some time, Xiao Lang appeared in public. All the girls who saw him immediately fell in love with him. The guys also thought he looked cool. But then his grandfather appeared and called him over. There were also the sons of Xiao Qing Long, the third son Xiao Quan, and the eighth son Xiao Ye. They ask each other what they think about Xiao Lang. One of them says he's not bad, but they don't think he can hook them. They are high-level generals and have awakened divine power. But the third son says that you cannot judge a tree by its bark. He thinks Xiao Long is unusual. When Xiao Lang ascended the throne with his grandfather, a woman congratulated him. She congratulates him on successfully breaking the seal on Mount Longhu and returning in glory. She also turns to his grandfather, Xiao Bu Shi, and says that his strength knows no bounds. It's been 20 years since she put up a memorial plaque for him but he made it out alive. However, she doesn't think he will live too long. Therefore, there is no point in removing it. Everyone was very tense. Xiao Long thinks that this old woman is very vain. Xiao Bushi just laughed. He turned to Xiao Lang and told him not to touch the women of the Zhuo family. When he was drunk, he slept with a woman from this family. Since then, they have held a grudge against him. This woman from the Zhuo family was very angry because of his words. Xiao Long understands his grandfather and says that he will not touch any woman from the Zhuo family in the future. This woman says that the two of them are just great. He survived on Longhu Mountain, but he will die here by her hand. She threatens them and tells them to get out or she will kill them. Xiao Bu Shi says that they have had at least eight duels in the past year, and she never won. He could easily kill her. 
But then a man appears and asks Pin to stop. Let the past remain in the past. He says that she will have another chance to get even with him later. And after that, the emperor arrived at the place. Xiao Long thinks that this emperor, instead of looking like a ruler, he looks like a dandy. The emperor says that he is glad that Lord Xiao has returned safely. This is a blessing for him, the dynasty and hundreds of millions of people. He suggests a drink to celebrate Lord Xiao's return. Xiao Bu bowed to the emperor. After this, the emperor sat down and said that another great event happened today, the 17th birthday of his beloved princess, Zishan. The day before yesterday, she reached the senior general's military realm. He will allow her to dance, and the young people will show their martial arts. If they impress Princess Zi Shan, he guarantees their wedding. He thinks the guys are interested in it. Xiao Bu knows that 20 years ago, the old emperor was still alive. He wonders whether the Zhang dynasty will be destroyed by this mediocrity. The emperor asks to call Zi Shan to celebrate Lord Xiao's return. Xiao Lung sees that these young masters have seen many beauties. He doesn't understand why they are so excited. Is the princess really that charming? When Princess Zi Shan came out, Xiao Long saw her extraordinary beauty. She says that she would like to perform the Nichang dance to celebrate Lord Xiao's return. After this, the girl began to dance. All the guys who looked at it were fascinated by her beauty. Xiao Lang thinks she is very beautiful. Looks like it's going to be more fun. The emperor says that the boys will have the courage to show their abilities and talents to him and his daughter. Many young guys stood and simply remained silent. They did not have the courage. But then one guy came out and said that although he is not a versatile person, he hopes to please Her Majesty. Zhuo Ming, the most powerful young master of the Zhuo family. He is only 20 years old. He recently awakened a divine soul and became a senior general. They are perfect for each other. He turns to the guys and says that he's like a man. He doesn't want to do a show and I would like to have a duel with Xiao Lang. He just wants to know if Xiao Lang has the courage to take on the challenge. People say that the Zhuo and Xiao families are going to fight again. He summoned Xiao Lan, who had not yet awakened his fighting spirit. How will the Xiao family deal with this? But Xiao Lang just stood there and ate the chicken. He says he's not interested in it. He should choose someone else. But in reality, he is just afraid that he will kill him. But here Xiao Quan appears and says that his cousin returned just a few days ago. He asks to be forgiven for not knowing the rules, but he agrees to a duel with him. Zhuo Ming says that he is honored to duel with the most powerful young master of the Xiao family. And after that, the duel of the most powerful masters began. It was very exciting. Zhuo Ming started first. They grappled in a fierce fight, but after another attack, Xiao Quan was defeated and could no longer fight. Zhuo Ming thanks his opponent for allowing himself to be defeated, but Xiao Kun says that this is not true at all. People say that judging by the spiritual energy that Zhuo Ming released, he has actually broken through to the martial master level. No wonder Xiao Quan lost to him. Now people think that the strongest of the young masters from the four major families is Zhuo Ming. Now this guy turns to the rest of the Xiao family and invites them to fight him. The guys realize that Xiao Quan is no match for him. Even if they differ and fight, they will lose and be crushed. It seems that the Xiao family lacks talent. But then Xiao Lang gets up and tells that guy to stop crowing. He wants to fight him. The guy's grandfather was very happy about his grandson's decision. This guy says that Xiao Long can fight him, and he will try to restrain himself and not hurt him. Xiao Lang says that in this case, he truly deserves the reputation of the strongest young master. Now Xiao Lang's level is lower than Zhuo Ming's but he will give it his all. Moreover, if Xiao Lang hurts him, then he hopes that his family leader will not blame him. He also says that if his abilities are inferior to the abilities of the main character, then Xiao Lang will be able to kill him. Xiao Lang says he is completely ready. Zhuo Ming says that this is an ordinary, insignificant skill. Hidden weapons are useless and simply cannot harm him. And after that, Xiao Lang very quickly attacked Zhuo Ming. Spectators of this duel say that Zhuo Ming's hands are completely wrapped in spiritual energy. It looks like Xiao Lang will be seriously injured and will be in bed for several years. And suddenly Xiao Lang found himself under Zhuo Ming. And after that he kicked him from the bottom up. Zhuo Ming thinks that Xiao Lang has not yet hit his Achilles heel and he has not lost yet. Xiao Lang taunts his opponent and tells him to pay attention. And after that, Zhuo Ming saw that Xiao Lang was about to use a hidden weapon. And after Xiao Long attacked him with some hidden weapon, Zhuo Ming fell to the ground. 
The woman from the Zuo family gets angry at Xiao Lang and says that how dare he kill a person with a hidden weapon in the palace, and he asks the guards to arrest him. But Patriarch Xiao Bu asks the old lady to take a closer look. If her eyes are useless, he offers to give them to a friend. When the guards ran up to the dead Zhuo Ming, they saw that he had a chicken leg in his mouth. Xiao Lan asks for forgiveness. He hit a chicken leg that he was going to take home and accidentally threw it. He asks not to blame him for wasting food. His grandfather laughs and says that he can eat as many chicken legs as he wants. Viewers say that Xiao Lang is very funny. It turned out that he was constantly teasing Zhuo Ming. Madame Zhuo says that Xiao Bu is an old dog. She hopes that he will live a few more days. She will return home and then remove his memorial plaque and put it back only after his death. After this, she turns to the emperor and says that she is not feeling very well. She asks the emperor to allow her to leave. The emperor laughs and says that he is glad to see so many outstanding young people tonight. He asks the servants to serve more wine and delicacies. The next day, Xiao Lang was training at his aunt Ching Yi's house. He and his brother held heavy stones above their heads. Xiao Dao can no longer continue to hold this stone. After that, they threw away the stones and Xiao Lang suggests they practice some more after the break. Meanwhile, some person came and notified the guys that the person they invited was already at the gate of Ching Yi's house. Xiao Lang is happy about this and asks that this person be let in. This arriving guest was Qian Shun. Xiao Lang was very happy to see him and hugged him tightly. But then a man interrupts their greeting and says that the leader wants to see Xiao Lang. Xiao Lang says that he will send someone to show Qian Shun his room, and it's time for him to see his grandfather. Sometime later, Xiao Lang arrived to see his grandfather. The grandfather touched a sign with his hand and said that their son had returned. Xiao Lang asks his grandfather how his parents died. Although he has no feelings for his parents, they gave him life. He can avenge them. Grandfather says that they were killed by the Z Dynasty army. 10,000 people from the Qingdi Battalion of the Xiao army were also killed at that time. The boy realizes that they have a spy. Grandpa confirms this and says that the investigation is still ongoing. He will tell the boy everything when everything is clear. Xiao Lang thinks that everything seems to be more confusing than he thought. He might not be able to handle it now. Grandfather gives him a token and tells him that Xiao Lang can use most of the family's books and tablets with this token. Although the imperial award has not yet been issued, Grandfather can award him first. Xiao Lang thanks his grandfather. Now Qian Shun, Xiao Dao, and he can become stronger. After talking with his grandfather, Xiao Lang went out to see the guys. Qian Shun is happy that he was able to obtain two advanced speed books, and now he will become stronger. Xiao Lang is also very happy. He suggests that we practice first. He'll pick up some books after practice. Suddenly, an auntie appeared and called all the guys to dinner. A moment later, they were already gathered at the table and waiting for dinner. Auntie says that in three days, the emperor will hold a hunting competition. Xiao Lang says that the hunting competition sounds problematic. He asks if they cannot go. Auntie says that His Majesty has decreed that all unmarried young masters and girls from aristocratic families in the capital who have reached the age of 16 must attend. She asks Xiao Lan to tell her if he likes a girl in a hunting competition, and she will propose marriage to her. If he and Xiao Dao can get married, it will make him extremely happy. Xiao Long doesn't like this idea and says that he's only 17 and doesn't want to get married so early. Aunt laughs and says that maybe he will like the girl, but suddenly they hear a sound outside the door. Xiao Lang is worried and wants to see who is there, and suddenly a person unfamiliar to Xiao Lan comes into the door of their room. Auntie tells the boys to greet Uncle Dugu. After that, the guys greeted Uncle Dugu. Dugu says that his aunt did not disappoint him in the son she raised for 17 years. Auntie tells the guys to take a shower. They reek of sweat. It is indecent to allow guests to smell this smell. After they went outside, Xiao Long asks Qian Shun if he knows who it was. If Qian Shun is not mistaken, he is the god of war in the modern world. Xiao Dao asks who the god of war is. The Jiang Dynasty includes some of the most famous people from these decades. Apart from Xiao Bu Shi and several unsurpassed fighters, there is only one person, the god of war, Xing Du Gu. The four big families are eternal, the god of war is invincible, and the Jiang Dynasty lives for centuries. The god of war is one person who can take over the fate of an entire dynasty. For Xiao Lan, it is no wonder that he seems so unusual. He didn't think that Auntie knew such people. Meanwhile, 
Xing Du Gu talks to Qin Yi and says that he has been looking for her for 17 years. If she doesn't want to return to the Xiao family, couldn't she go to the northern regions? Even though he doesn't deserve to be her lover, at least they are friends, right? Qin Yi says she was just unlucky. She didn't want to get him involved because the war along the northern borders was so intense. But it's already over and there's no need to remember it. Du Gu says that the reason he rushed back was to meet her. He will be returning to the northern regions very soon, and he wants her to give him at least a little hope that they can be together. Ching Yi thinks for a long time and asks him to give her six months to think. Dugu says that he is willing to wait as long as she is ready to give him an answer. He is ready to wait for her for decades. Ching Yi asks Dugu why he needs this. There are many good girls in the world, and she is paralyzed and already old. It's not worth it. But he says there are a lot of good girls in the world. But there is only one Xiao Ching Yi whom he loves. After this, Dugu says that he has already found the trace of those killers. Everything points to the court of the Black Dragon, and he suspects that one of the three families is involved. As for who this person is, he has no concrete evidence yet. But he doesn't stop there. Qin Yi says that this is really due to the power struggle between the four great families. Dugu asks not to worry about this. He will return immediately after he has dealt with cases in other regions and then focus on this investigation. He doesn't care who it was. He, Xing Dugu, will definitely turn him into ashes. After that, he says goodbye to the girl and says that it's time for him to go. After Dugu left her house, Qin Yi cries and says that she really doesn't deserve this. Meanwhile, the guys were taking a warm bath. Xiao Long asks, is this god of war very strong? He looks like an ordinary person. Ching Hong says that the god of war does not rely on martial arts. Instead, he uses intelligence and strategy. Xiao Lang also thinks that compared to combat power, he thinks intelligence will be more dangerous. Xiao Long says that he doesn't understand strategy, but the black warrior standing next to the god of war seems quite capable. He thinks he is a better match than Xiao Futu. If Ching Hong is not mistaken, then the black armored warrior is called Yu Ming. He is Xing Du Gu's personal bodyguard, someone who is extremely close to the standards of the dynasty's five most capable people. Ching Hong thinks that Xiao Futu can kill Xiao Ching Long with one move. Xiao Long thinks that they are both very powerful. Soul Festival in three months. He hopes that they can all surpass their threshold and rise to the highest level and to the top of the world. Two days later at the hunting competition. Meanwhile, the guys were looking for outfits for this competition. Ching Hong suggests that Xiao Lan wear this outfit. But Tian Lei says he doesn't need it. He will go like this. We'll practice on magical beasts later. After that, the guys moved straight to this competition. Xiao Lang and Xiao Duo were riding donkeys, while Ching Hong led them on foot. While they were moving forward, some people noticed them. These guys started laughing at Xiao Lang for being arrogant earlier the other day, and in these shabby clothes he looks old-fashioned. They also laugh at him for even riding a donkey. Ching Hong already wanted to intercede for his young leader, but Xiao Lang didn't pay attention to them and asked him to just ignore them as long as he was kind. But these guys didn't hear what the main character was talking about, but for some reason they got scared and abruptly fell silent. Now it was clear why they were afraid, because here appeared Xiao Futu, the hellish deicide, the elder in the bloody battle hall of the Xiao clan, who ranks fourth in strength in the clan. He approaches Xiao Lang and offers to have his dire wolf become his mount. The boy strokes his donkey and refuses such an offer. He says that the donkey suits him better. Xiao Futu says that the boy's magical beast is not bad and asks him to keep an eye on it. But when the guys heard that this donkey was a magical beast, they immediately changed their shoes and said that Xiao Lan was really lucky that he got a magical beast. Now they are jealous of him. This was also seen by the person whom Xiao Lang defeated at the dinner. He wants Xiao Lang to learn the next lesson, when suddenly a voice announced that the ladies and gentlemen should approach the foot of the Nine Star Peak. The hunting competition is about to begin. Xiao Lan asks Uncle Futu what the rules are for this hunting competition. Soya Futu says there are no rules. Groups will be formed as participants approach the bottom of the hill. You can team up with anyone. Each group consists of five people. Over the next three days, hunting magical beasts will be the main task. Uncle Futu remembered that Xiao Long took part in the Ten Western Cities competition. The rules are similar. 
You need to kill more spirit beasts and try to rank higher. Their scores will be recorded, and this will be useful to the participants when they become politicians or soldiers. Xiaolong thinks this is problematic. Five people again. He thinks where he can find three more people. And suddenly the main character notices that the same princess appears on a horse. The boy thinks that although this girl looks beautiful, he doesn't think she's good at fighting. More importantly, it can create problems. He wants to forget about this idea and thinks that he and Xiao Dao will be enough. Meanwhile, the competition has begun, and the host announces that the hunter competition is open. It starts in an hour. Each group will have five people. Participants gain points for killing spirit beasts. This will last three days. He wants everyone to get high grades. After the test was announced open, all the guys immediately ran to the girls. Xiao Dao asks his brother what these guys are doing. He has a feeling that they are fighting. Xiao Long thinks that some of them want to team up, while others just want to mate. But suddenly, behind the main character's back, a girl comes up to him and greets him. She says that she is Nan on Vanner, a high-level fighter, and she would be interested in maybe joining his team. But suddenly another girl comes up to them and says that she is He Ting Ting, a high-level fighter. She hopes she can join them. Xiao Lang greets the ladies and says that his initial goal is to get as many points as possible in the competition. That's why he's afraid. Before he could finish speaking, both of these girls left him. But apparently these girls left because another guy came up. He says his name is Cha Mu, and he wants to join the team of Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao. But first he suggests checking it out. Xiao Lang recognized this man. He is one of the four young masters in the imperial capital, a high-level warrior. Xiao Lang is happy to welcome him to the team. Cha Mu says that Xiao Lang seems to trust him too much. He then walks closer to Xiao Lang and says that his main goal is actually hunting spirit beasts, not sleeping with some girl. Plus, he's going to take first place. Therefore, after thinking about it, he decided that if he did not unite with Xiao Lang, his goal would remain unattainable. But at that moment, another girl comes up to them and says that her name is Hong Do, nicknamed Red Bean. She invites the main character to team up with him. Xiao Lang says that they are not the ones joining her, but she is joining them. She agrees to these conditions. After which, the princess approaches them and also wants to join Xiao Long's team. Xiao Long thinks that everyone seems to hate him now. And after thinking a little, he agrees with the princess's proposal. Xiao Long extends his hand to the girl and says that it is an honor for him. And after some time, the presenter announced the start of the tests. The main character turns to Cha Mu and says that he is participating in the competition for the first time and cannot drag them down. He suggests that Cha Mu go ahead. Cha Mu agrees and tells everyone to follow him then. And when they ran through this forest, they saw some kind of animal in front of them. Xiao Lang has not seen such animals before. He asks what it was. Red beans say they're white tigers. These are third-level supreme spirit beasts. She asks Xiao Lang to hurry up, otherwise some people might get ahead of them. Cha Mu says that Brother Xiao seems to have a lot of enemies. The animals closest to them were driven away. They want their team to return empty-handed. Xiao Long asks them not to rush, although he is not in the mood to fight with them. He does not want to give up. He suggests finding a place with stronger animals. He's bored of fighting for such a small thing. The princess suggests going to the fifth peak. The spirit beasts there are of a higher level. Xiao Long agrees with her and tells everyone to go there. After this, they arrived at the top of the cliff. Xiao Lang turns to Xiao Bai and Xiao Dao and says that now is the time to work. And Brother Cha, he asks to wait a little. Red Bean asks Cha Mu what Xiao Long is going to do. He says he might be setting some sort of trap, some kind of complicated trap, but he's not sure. Xiao Long says they can rest for a while and prepare for the fight, and then they will understand everything. After this, Xiao Long began to construct some kind of trap, but a girl comes up to him from behind and kicks him in the back. She asks him, Will he wait here forever? Xiao Long tells her to get ready to fight. In any case, she can leave and ask for help by sending a signal if she is worried about her safety. He asks them not to worry. He promises that their team will get first place. But suddenly they hear something approaching them. Xiao Dao runs out of the forest and shouts that this beast is approaching. And a moment later a huge number of completely different animals came to them. Chu Mu got scared and asks how many animals there are. The main character says that a little... a little more than twenty. Red Bean thinks Xiao Lang is crazy, but even if he is crazy, she plans to be on his side. And after that, Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao began to destroy these beasts. 
The girls also did not stand aside and also destroyed these animals. And after some time, they dealt with a huge number of these animals. Xiao Lang says that there are more third and fourth level beasts than they imagined, 20 and 8 respectively. Chu Mu turns to Xiao Lang and says that this is purely done. How did he manage to do this? Xiao Lang placed a couple of knives, nails, and ropes at several vital intersections and allowed Xiao Dao and Xiao Bai to lure them. They thought that by running here, none of them would get hurt. After all, they were considered just a piece of the pie. Meanwhile, the guy whom Xiao Lang defeated at the dinner and his team had already killed 15 second-level beasts and five third-level ones. He believes that Xiao Lang has not received anything yet. After this, Xiao Lang's team moved on. Chu Mu asks what they will do next now. The main character says that today they slaughtered many animals in this area. Now they will probably hide out of fear of death. So why don't they rest and continue the hunt early tomorrow? Chu Mu asks Xiao Lang about his magical beast. Is he interested in this beast as a gift from his family? Grandfather Chu Mu also has a magical beast, but he is not going to give it to him. Xiao Lang says that he saved this beast on Death Mountain. This is not a gift from his family. Red Bean doesn't believe that Xiao Lang could go to Death Mountain with an unawakened arc. Death Mountain is the most dangerous region of the Zhang Dynasty. But Xiao Lang tells her to accept it or leave. But when they reached the place where they planned to set up camp and rest, they saw that this place was already occupied. Xiao Long asks his team to follow him. He will lead them to the cave. It will be no less comfortable there. The princess says that this is not necessary. She has prepared something for such a case. She touched the ring on her finger, and immediately at this place materials appeared for the construction of a hut. Xiao Lang was very surprised by what he saw. He thought that this was some kind of four-dimensional space. The girl says that this ring of Sumitaba is a magical spatial ring, very convenient as many things can be stored inside it. Nobody can create such a thing. This is a relic from ancient times. It is irreplaceable and therefore very valuable. After some time, they assembled a tent and lit a fire and sat around it. They sat and ate fried meat. Chu Mu praises Xiao Lang for frying such delicious meat. The main character says that he just has a few outdoor survival skills. The ladies also devoured this meat on both cheeks. Zuo also set up his camp next to them. He watches them eat delicious meat and gets very angry. He thinks that Xiao Lang is deliberately showing off in front of him. He can't stand it anymore. After that, he approaches him and says that he wants to fight the main character. Xiao Lang says that he just ate, so it would be nice for him to exercise. But Chu Mu stands up for young Master Xiao and says that he has not yet awakened his soul. If Zuo really wants to fight him, shouldn't he wait until the Soul Festival starts? Zuo says he can just not use it. He just acted carelessly the last time. Xiao Lang says it's okay. He can use it as much as he wants. Zuo's soul. Xiao Lang thinks that Master Zhuo's soul is like the soul of a chicken. Master Zhuo doesn't like Xiao Lang insulting him over and over again. This time he will show him. And after that, he causes enlightenment, awakening of the soul. Xiao Lang didn't expect that Zhuo had a fast soul type. This will be a little problematic for him. How suddenly Zhuo found himself behind Xiao Lang. But the boy managed to jump back and threw his blade at him. But Master Zhuo simply disappeared and moved to another place. Red Bean tells Cha Mu to help the main character and stop this fight. She is afraid that the boy has almost reached his limit. Ming Zhuo asked for a duel, but he wants to kill him. Chu Mu says it's better not to interfere in their fight now. Meanwhile, Ming Zhuo sees that Xiao Lang's speed has decreased, and now he will finish him off. And after that, Ming Zhuo's hand went straight through the main character. He says with a smirk that now Xiao Lang has lost. But after a moment, he noticed that the boy was not there. And these were just his clothes. But suddenly Xiao Lang was behind him and said that now Master Zhuo had lost. And after that, Xiao Long hit him with his hand right in the back. Such a blow sent him flying far away. Zhuo Ming could not withstand such a blow and fell to the ground and began coughing up blood. His teammates immediately ran up to him, cursing at Xiao Long and asking how dare he hit Zhuo Ming with the intent to kill. He says Zhuo would never do such a thing. Xiao Lang says that he doesn't need to kill him as he is too weak. He tells these guys that when Zhuo Ming wakes up, he should come to him and tell him that he has lost. Red Bean asks how the main character managed to defeat Ming Zhuo. Xiao Long says it's just a strategy. He believes that Master Cha Mu noticed her. 
It looks like Ming Zhuo was deceived. Brother Xiao is indeed slower than Ming Zhuo, so Brother Xiao slowed down to make Ming Zhuo think that victory was close and became more reckless in attacking. Then, just when Ming Zhuo thought he had already won, his speed dropped to a crawl and Brother Xiao increased his spiritual energy and ended the battle with one blow. The son of a noble like him does not have much experience in battle. He was not initially afraid of him. Now Red Bean believes that Xiao Lang was on Death Mountain. After all this, Zhuo's family is worried about him. The man came to report that Ming Zhuo would not die, no matter what shame you bring upon yourself. They can't believe this bastard wins time after time. And Xiao Futu just laughs. He says that Xiao Lang really didn't disgrace their family. He orders that all be given to his brothers, for they will all celebrate together. He is proud of Xiao Lan, and he thinks that he was worrying in vain, that the boy's talent was inferior to his. The next morning, Chu Mu just woke up, and Xiao Lang and his brother had already been training since the morning. Red Bean says that they woke up a long time ago, and the girls finished preparing breakfast during this time. It became clear to her that it was no coincidence that Xiao Long won against Ming Zhuo. He has enough brains and strength. Chu Mu, meanwhile, talks to the princess and asks why she decided to join them because everyone here is a little noisy. But the princess is not against it. She says that it makes everything more lively. Chu Mu thinks that the princess may look harmless on the outside, but he is afraid that her heart is the most treacherous of all. But suddenly they notice some strange creature in front of them. They decide to quickly go there and see what happened there. When they arrived at the place, they saw an armored lizard there, a fourth-level spirit beast. Red Bean thinks that they are no match for this creature. Why don't they just run away? But Xiao Lang was not at all afraid of this. He only cared about how many points they would get for it. Chu Mu says that no group has killed them in three years so far. Almost everyone walked past him. If they defeat this beast, the competition will end early. Soyalan's eyes immediately lit up, and he thinks that they simply have to do this. After this, Xiao Lang says that he and Xiao Dao will be on the front line, and the others should listen to his orders. And after that, Xiao Dao began to attack this armored lizard. Red Bean offers to help them, but Chu Mu says that they should wait. If they start earlier, they will create problems for Brother Xiao. The defense of an armored lizard is extremely high, although their attacks are aimed at one point, it does not cause any harm to it. But the princess noticed something and says that this is not so. They attack for a reason. The scales on the armored lizard's belly are weakening. But then suddenly this lizard hits Xiao Lang with its tail. Chu Mu is worried about the guys and asks them to retreat. But Xiao Lang is not going to give up because the show is just beginning. Xiao Lang then jumped into the air and threw his dagger at the lizard. And he also gave her slashed blows to her paws. When the lizard became vulnerable, Xiao Dao threw up this lizard with one blow. Afterwards, Xiao Lang asks Dan Fan and Hong Dao to use their soul-fighting abilities and attack the lizard's stomach. After that, the red bean picked up its bow. She immediately shot an arrow straight into the lizard's stomach. But when this lizard hit Xiao Lang, he felt pain in his back. Red Bean says that Xiao Lang is reckless because he was almost killed. But Xiao Long praises her for her good hits and asks her to help him with the ointment. She asks why Xiao Long always acts on his own. After all, he could have asked for help earlier. After that, Chu Mu took the ointment and began to apply it on Xiao Lang's back. He says that if you ask for help every time you get into trouble, then in your entire life you will never experience the feeling that you are walking on the edge of life and death. You will never come to possess the extraterrestrial fighting instincts that Xiao Lang has. Besides, will your clan be able to always protect you? To become a skilled fighter, one who can protect the members of his clan must grow through the bloodshed that occurs in battles. Xiao Long says that Cha Mu knows a lot about him, and he is pleased to call him a friend. And after that, they went to see what happened to that lizard. When they arrived at the place, they saw that this lizard was completely dead. Red Bean asks Xiao Lang if he has killed armored lizards before. Isn't it too self-confident? But the main character says that this is the first time he has seen this animal. The girl was very shocked by this. She did not understand how he could be so self-confident. The princess suggests that Xiao Long has always fought with spirit beasts. After he sees one, he can immediately tell whether he's capable of killing him or not. Xiao Long agrees with her and says that if he doesn't walk on the edge of life and death, he will never be able to eat and sleep well. 
The girl says that then Xiao Long will destroy himself. After this, Cha Mu picks up the token that fell from this beast and says that, apparently, they do not need to set up a new camp. He suggests returning to base immediately. After that, when they returned to the base, Xiao Lang met Uncle Futu there. Xiao Futu noticed that they returned early. They were probably well prepared. At this moment, Xiao Long brags to his uncle and pours out all the tokens that he picked up from the killed animals onto the floor. Uncle Futu laughs and says that although victory is close, the boy should not relax. He won't punish him today. But he asks to remember from now on, when a boy has what it takes to defeat someone, there is no need to give him the slightest form. The main character thanks his uncle for his teaching. Xiao Futu says they will continue the celebration. Meanwhile, the wounded Ming Zhuo heard the news that Xiao Lang had returned earlier and even killed the armored lizard. He doesn't believe it, but his uncle calms him down and says that Xiao Long is used to being in the mountains. When they return, he uses the resources of the entire clan to train him. Ming Zhuo promises that he will kill Xiao Long. Meanwhile, Xiao Long sat around the fire and drank with the guys. One of the guys asks the main character why he chooses to drink with a bunch of guys here. It would be better if he drank with young ladies. But Xiao Long says that he is used to drinking with guys, and even then he has more freedom here. And suddenly a group of people approaches them. These people say that Princess Zishan and Lady Hong Dao are asking Xiao Lan to come to them. Xiao Lang was very surprised by this proposal. The guys support Xiao Lan and say that the ladies from Dong Fan are always generous and decent. Princess too. Maybe the main character can become the emperor's son-in-law. This has never happened in the Xiao family. After that, Xiao Long puts his glass on the floor and tells them to ask Lady Red Bean and Zi Shan to come on their own. They must convey to them word for word. Xiao Long says he doesn't have time. These people who came to notify the boy were shocked by this answer. One of the guys who was drinking with him doesn't understand how he can treat girls like that. You can't do that. He asks him to get up and go to them for God's sake. But Xiao Long didn't say that he would choose one of them. Besides, they are too gentle for him. These are not suitable for him. But these girls were also here and heard that the main character called them gentle. They were offended by such words. The guards say that Xiao Lang can hurt anyone, but they can't help him when it comes to women. After this, the guards leave and invite the girls to sit down and talk to Xiao Lan. Xiao Lang was afraid that the guys left him alone and he was going to go with them. But the red bean grabbed him and did not let him escape. She yells at him and asks him if he can at least respect them. How should they behave after this? Meanwhile, Xiao Long has calmed down and asked the girls why they came. Apart from the few who are still on the mountain, the rest have already returned. Red Bean says it's not all fun. There are no strong people here. Xiao Long asks her to tell about these strong ones. The princess asks Xiao Long not to think that all the emperor's sons are nothing. He only humiliated Ming Zhuo Suo a couple of times. Xiao Long assures them that he doesn't think so. He really wants to know about them. Red Bean says that Ming Zhuo is really not very good. His brother Jian Zhuo has more abilities, and of course there is also his cousin Dong Fan Aoran, who is now guarding the northern district. From their generation, the firstborn of the family, No No Kang and Xiao Motion, the best of the best in the Xiao family, they all fight in the northern area while they chat. Xiao Long thinks that they are truly capable once on the battlefield. They don't have time to intrigue. Someday, he also wants to join the military and go to the battlefield. Red Bean doesn't understand what's so complicated about it. Xiao Long simply needs to awaken his spirit during the Soul Festival and will immediately become the leader of the group. The princess can't wait for Xiao Lang to wow the world during the Soul Festival. Xiao Long asks her not to doubt him. The next day, they came to the competition to see the results. The first place was taken by Xiao Lang, and the second place was taken by Ming Zhuo. Chu Mu shakes Xiao Long's hand and says that the time has not come yet. They will return to receive their reward, and they will find the main character as soon as possible. In the Xiao mansion, the patriarch shouts at his subordinates that after so much time, they could not find the shelter of the Black Dragon Society. He turns towards them and calls them imbeciles. Did the Xiao family raise so many spies in vain? One of the people asks his lord to calm down and says that after his return, they issued an order to investigate Qing Di's murder. They even found some clues and detained several people. It's just that every time they follow the trail, it ends because the witness is either killed or goes missing for no reason. 
Therefore, according to their initial guess, it could be more important people in the imperial court, or it could be one of the three contenders. The old man immediately called Xiao Futu and he immediately came to him. Whether it is the imperial court or the three contenders, from today onwards they must give it their all. He gives them the authority to deploy all of the clan's forces. They must destroy the Black Dragon Society and whoever is pulling the strings. He will tear them to pieces because they killed his son and slaughtered ten thousand of his iron horsemen. Meanwhile, Xiao Long sat in his courtyard and meditated. And when he opened his eyes, he saw that his aunt had approached him. Auntie says the Soul Festival is in two months, and he and his brother need to train harder. Soul awakening is very important for a martial artist in the spiritual land. The nascent soul will improve cultivation progress at least once. Your one-year cultivation will be equal to two years' cultivation of an ordinary practitioner, and ten years will be equal to twenty. They must imagine how important a good soul is to a martial artist. An ordinary awakened soul will appear with his fighting skills. Of course, there are both good and bad. However, higher-level souls tend to come with good combat skills. For example, the roar of a frantic lion from the Eighth Master, or Auntie's terrifying demonic schism. Historically, prodigies are much more likely to awaken strong souls. Theoretically, the greater the skill of a martial practitioner, the higher the chance that he will awaken a better soul. Xiao Long promises that he understands and will try harder. But then Qian Shun suddenly approaches them and says that he has reached the military censor phase. Xiao Lang was very happy about this event. He was very happy for his friend. Qian Shun says that when he is choked by his clan's secret technique, he can raise his speed even more by then. Even if Huo Feng level masters are here to hunt them down, he is confident that he can save them. Xiao Long asks him to look at himself. He is always worried about them being hunted. He asks him to relax. Xiao Long will also become stronger. Xiao Lang is looking forward to receiving the speed soul as well. But Qian Shun believes that young Master Xiao Lang will awaken the supreme soul. And Master Xiao Dao too. After some time, Xiao Lang came to his grandfather's office. Grandfather says that next time he does not need to bow. He heard that he and his brother had been studying manically lately. He is confident that the main character will be able to become a mid-level general before the soul festival. Grandfather also says that Xiao Long's father was supposed to become the owner of this house. Unfortunately, he left. After he awakens his soul, he intends to make the main character the young patriarch of this house so that he can become the leader of the clan. The premise is that Xiao Long must awaken the heavenly soul. Xiao Long says he was shocked by his grandfather's words. He's not sure he's truly qualified for the title. Grandfather says that among the younger generation, there is no one who can surpass Xiao Long. He is the best candidate to become the heir. Starting tomorrow, the boy will go to the military hall and meet the others. Xiao Long says that his personality is not that outgoing. Grandfather says that the boy can argue and even swear when Nada. People need to grow. Everything will be fine as long as he has a good nature. Grandfather believes in him. The next day, Xiao Lan and his brother went to train. People who saw Xiao Lang admire him. Elder Xiao Ching Hu sees this and understands that the clan leader wants to elevate him. After that, they all gathered in the military hall. Elder Xiao Ching Hu says that now there will be cultivation practice. It's very simple. He asks them to take the iron weight and run in a circle. Since it's Xiao Lang's first day, he asks him to take the easiest one. Xiao Lang laughs and says it's okay, he likes to challenge himself. After that, Xiao Long took the heaviest iron load. The rest of the students think Xiao Long is cool. He lifted the heaviest load on the first day. They've been practicing for three years now, but they haven't even touched this weight. At this time, Xiao Ching Hu shouts at two guys named Xiao Ye and Xiao Hur. He says that they were both messing around yesterday, so they will be punished with extra training. After this, the test began, and everyone took iron weights in their hands and ran. Elder Xiao Ching Hu thinks that Xiao Long is a low-level general, and will fall in 10 laps at most, while Xiao Ye and Xiao Hu'er can do at least 30. He will let the others witness the true strength of Xiao's disciples. Some students are already exhausted from such an ordeal, but Xiao Lung is incredible. This is already the 30th lap, and he is still carrying this load. The rest of the students won't be able to do this even with the easiest thing. Elder Xiao Ching Hu doesn't understand how this is possible. Already the 30th lap. 
Even Xiao Ye and Xiao Hui can't continue. Why does Xiao Lang look like it's nothing to him? After that, he looked at his students, and he nodded to them as if giving them a signal. After that, these guys began to act and turned to Xiao Lan. He has excellent stamina. They invite him to argue. The one who loses will be the other's lackey. Xiao Long asks him to forget about the footman, but he doesn't mind arguing. After that, this guy accelerated and started running. Xiao Long thinks that it looks like he is also done with his warm-up, and he also began to run after him. The rest of the students were shocked that they had already completed 80 laps. If he remembers correctly, Xiao Ye's personal best was 70 laps. Elder Xiao Ching Hu understands that the 80th circle is already underway, but he does not understand how Xiao Lang is still holding on. Xiao Ye thinks that Xiao Lang is just trash, he can't be that strong. But after that, Xiao Ye stumbled and began to fall. Xiao Lang also stopped and asked the man how he was. After this, the elder tells the rest of the disciples to continue cultivating on their own. The elder takes Xiao Ye in his arms and takes him somewhere. All the other students congratulate Xiao Lan on her victory. The girl also rejoices at Soya Lan's victory. She says that the elder has always shown bias towards Xiao Ye. They invite Xiao Lan to go with them in the evening and have a drink in the apricot hall. But Xiao Lang politely refuses. He thinks that he is not fit for such an aristocratic lifestyle. No beautiful flower can be grown in a greenhouse. But suddenly they notice a guy approaching them. This is Xiao Mo Shen. He is 21 years old. He seems to have become a mid-level war master six months ago. Nobody knows what level he is at now. And his soul at the top of the heavenly level is the wolf of the great desert. This is a very strong spirit of an attacking style. Xiao Lang thinks that Xiao Mo Shen is really different from other students. The Imperial City is full of talents. Looks like he's too arrogant. But the main character has a feeling that he must fight him. When suddenly, the elder and Xiao Ye returned, he yells at students for not practicing. Teams of two, depending on skill level, fight against each other. The guys think which of them will fight Xiao Lan. He has a low level, but his combat experience is terrifying. The elder heard that Xiao Long was successful in combat. From that moment on, he sees that he has impeccable stamina. He wants Xiao Ye and Xiao Hui to train with Xiao Lan at the same time. Xiao Long agrees, but only he is worried about brother Xiao Ye. Maybe he should rest a little more. Xiao Ye thanks Xiao Lang for her concern, but in reality he won't wait until he cripples Xiao Lang. After that, they began to fight each other. Xiao Ye begins to attack the main character first. But the boy was no slouch and easily dodged such an attack. Now it's Xiao Hu's turn to attack Xiao Lan. He attacks the boy, but the main character dodges this blow. These guys understand that it won't be easy for them. They now begin to attack together and want to see how Xiao Lang will dodge this. But Xiao Lang was able to repel these multiple attacks. The rest of the students who are watching this fight understand that Xiao Lang is strong, but he will not be able to hold back the combo of Xiao Ye and Xiao Hu. They think that the elder wants to kill Xiao Lang. Xiao Long also thinks that this is a good combo, and it is not surprising why the elder put them together against him alone. But unfortunately for the main character, these guys are still too weak. After that, Xiao Long took some kind of concrete slab and began to use it as a shield. Xiao Ye tells him to stop resisting, he will never win them. And after these words, he breaks this concrete slab. Xiao Ye was very happy about this and says that now the main character will be finished. He throws his fist straight at the boy's face, but he successfully dodges. As Xiao Lang dodged, his blow was now aimed straight at his friend's face. And it so happened that he hit his friend in the face with all his might. Xiao Lan didn't waste any time. He took a piece of concrete slab and threw it straight at Xiao Ye. And a moment later, they were both defeated and lying on the ground. After this, Xiao Lang asks the elder to exclude him from the next combat training. He's leaving. That evening, Xiao Long and his brother were having dinner at home. His aunt says that Xiao Long is definitely not fit to be in the group. The boy says that it is not his fault that they are all too weak. It's a waste of time. But auntie says everything is fine. Xiao Long will become like them if he spends time with the scum. She tells him to better train himself. But suddenly, a man comes into their room and says that Xiao Lang has received an invitation letter. Xiao Long picked up a letter in which it was written, Mr. Xiao Lang, in ten days, I will hold a poetry banquet at the Moon Inn. All talented gentlemen and dazzling ladies are invited. If anyone declines my invitation, I will ask my father, the emperor, to kidnap you and bring you to the feast. Your princess Zishan. Xiao Lang was not very happy about this invitation. 
He doesn't like having to come up with these stupid rhymes. He invites his brother Xiao Dao to go instead. But Xiao Dao says that he will not go, even if Xiao Long kills him. Auntie sees this and laughs. She says that in ancient times, art and poetry flourished on the mainland. In contrast, few practiced martial arts. Consequently, many beautiful poems were left behind from that era. It was only after inexplicable changes that martial arts practice took over. As people collected ancient poetic writings from various ruins, poetry became more popular over the years. Auntie asks him not to belittle the sons and daughters of aristocrats in the imperial city. Many of them are talented in art. In ancient times, it was the protagonist's father who excelled in both poetry and martial arts, fully deserving to be proclaimed the prince of the imperial city. Auntie says that it looks like Xiao Long is becoming very popular. She heard that Zi Shan was praised as a national beauty. She even became a high-level military general at just 17 years old. She is also said to be very arrogant. Auntie didn't expect that the princess would actually send him an invitation. Auntie asks Xiao Lang if he met the princess in person. She suggests that she ask his grandfather to get them engaged. Xiao Lang is overcome with emotion and says that there is no need to do this. The next day, Xiao Long still came to the princess. At the entrance, he was met by a security guard. He recognized the main character. He says it's too early. There's still half an hour until the start, but many guests have already arrived. Xiao Long can come in and chat with them. The princess will arrive soon. If he doesn't want to do this, then you can just take a walk in the garden. After that, Xiao Long went to the garden and says that the guard does not have to go with him. At this time, while Xiao Lang was walking, he was already terribly hungry, and the food would only be served in an hour. He couldn't wait that long. When he passed by a door, he noticed that there was some food there. He immediately ran into this room and slammed the doors in front of him. Suddenly, a voice came from this room. This voice sounded like the voice of Lady Redbean to him, but why is she here? He thought this was the time to scare her. He quietly began to creep up to this girl. But when he went behind the partition behind which the girl was, he noticed that she was completely naked. Xiao Long did not expect such a turn of events and was dumbfounded. This girl started yelling at Xiao Lan for being a pervert and spying on her. The guy began to apologize to the girl and said that he was just looking for food. She asks him to stop talking nonsense and slaps his hand on his face. But Xiao Lang says that he really didn't spy on her. The main character fell to the floor and asked the girl to stop screaming, otherwise she will attract attention. After that, the girl fell to her knees and began to cry. Xiao Long doesn't understand what to do with this now. If this was in ancient times, he would have had to marry her, but he didn't do it intentionally. Besides, he still has Liu Ya. He asks Red Bean not to cry and says it is his mistake, but the girl just got up and quickly ran away from him somewhere. Xiao Long knew that he should not have attended this stupid poetry banquet. Suddenly, a maid comes into the room and says that the princess is looking for him. She asks him to go into the hall. After this incident, Xiao Lan came to the banquet hall. He looked around and, fortunately, there were no red beans here. Otherwise, he would have been very embarrassed. The guests of this banquet noticed that Xiao Lang was here, and they did not understand why he came here. Didn't he grow up in the village? What poems can he know? This banquet is not for cattle, they say. And at that moment, the hostess of this banquet... Her Highness the Princess arrived. She apologizes to her guests for keeping them waiting and asks them all to take their seats. Everyone should know about their dynasty's culture. There is no separation between creativity and martial arts, so their dynasty greatly values the study of both. This banquet is arranged in such a way that the future generation of their dynasty can show and share their knowledge. Today, regardless of their background, as long as the guests have talent and knowledge, this princess will personally recommend them to her father, the emperor, for an important post in the royal court. The first to volunteer was young master Yu Zhou. He recently went on an excursion to Mount Bulao and was inspired to compose a poem he would like everyone to hear and wants to apologize in advance for his poor performance. This guy begins to read his poem. The rain, drizzling, penetrates straight into the mountains. The forest is plunged into purple smoke. Wind traces with the scent of flowers, just like a torch washed with water. Just as the beasts of heaven return to their homes, so the sounds of the night travel near the walls, accompanied by moonlight in the mountains. 
Another guy says that this poem is really beautiful, and it gives people a feeling of how beautiful the mountains are. But Xiao Lang was too bored to sit at this banquet. He thinks that he will die of boredom sooner than the banquet ends. Cha Mu was also invited here. He wrote a poem about a beautiful woman's smile. He begins to recite his poem. Your reflection on the water is so beautiful that even the cherry blossoms kneel before you, lice eyes like a spring mountain, full of life, endless and otherworldly. He will go through everything and let his worries fly away with the wind, for when the moon rises tomorrow night, you, you, you will be mine. Guests think this poem is too straightforward and lacks charm. But then Xiao Long rises and says that Brother Cha Mu is really straightforward and he admires him. Xiao Lang can only have a few reliable friends, and Cha Mu is one of them. The girl is lucky that he has his eye on her. He asks Cha Mu not to be afraid and come out and show her what he has. The main character, as one of his brothers, will provide him with all the support he needs. And if that doesn't work, Xiao Lang will ask his grandfather to come over and marry him. And if this doesn't work, he will personally go and kidnap her and bring her back. All the guests who heard this were in complete shock. Chamu knew that young Master Lan was straightforward, but he never expected him to say something like that. He thanks young Master Xiao Lang, but then the lady of the Zuo family, Zuo Shi, suddenly appears. Yi says that young Master Lan is the only one from the Xiao family here, plus his aunt Xiao Qing Yi is also famous in this country for her poetry. She wonders what kind of poetry he can write. She wants to see his skill as the nephew of the famous Xiao Qing Yi. Xiao Lang realizes that this girl is trying to make him look like a freak. Xiao Lang apologizes for not knowing these elegant things. He's an uncouth brute. All he knows is beating and killing. Why doesn't she give all the guests a poem to cheer up the crowd? But some guy stops her and tells her not to bother arguing with people like him. But suddenly Xiao Long hears the voice of a man. He apologizes for being late. It was the family's young master. Ni Tsang Ni. The princess says young master, no, it has finally arrived. He must drink three cups of wine as punishment. Tsang Ni agrees with the princess and says that this is a reasonable punishment for being late. Xiao Lang thinks that this guy is truly the best among his generation. His generosity knows no bounds. But for some reason, Xiao Long feels such a great murderous intent behind him. How suddenly Mrs. Red Bean appears in public. Xiao Lang turned away from her as if she couldn't see him. One of the guests heard about young Master Ni's exceptional talents. He asks him to compose a poem to enlighten all the guests. After that, he gets up and begins to recite the poem. Life is glamorous, causing jealousy, anxiety known only to you. Achievements fade after their prime, fantasy reigns while reality fades. Chamu says this is a brilliant poem. The words he used may not be so glamorous, but their meaning is paramount to them. Xiao Long thinks that everyone is distracted by Kang Ni for now. It's time for him to get out of here. And suddenly the red bean notices that Xiao Long is trying to leave and speaks loudly about it. Xiao Lang says that he is not running away but just wanted to go to the toilet. But red bean says that if Xiao Long tries to escape, tomorrow she will take up her sword and declare war on the Xiao family. The princess asks them what happened. She thinks that maybe Xiao Lang has offended her. She will solve her problem. Xiao Long asks for forgiveness and says that he made a mistake. He suggests punishing himself with three cups of wine. Red Bean says she won't just forget it, and he tells him not to even think about running away. She wants him to come up with three praiseworthy poems, and then she will let him go. Other guests think it's a shame. And didn't they really have other family members who could be invited here? The main character says that he has never studied poetry, but since she made such a request, Miss Hong Dao, she will have to fulfill it. Xiao Long says that he must read three poems, and if everyone is satisfied, they will forget today's incident. If they are all dissatisfied with one poem, he will stab himself once. If he is not satisfied with all three, then he will strike himself three times. Only he hopes that this can relieve her of her anger. The guests think Xiao Lang has gone crazy. Red Bean agrees with this proposal. She wants to see how good the main character is. Xiao Lang remembers his grandfather's Li Bo and grandfather Du Fu. He is very sorry. He will borrow their poems. He really doesn't want to copy and asks their forgiveness. Xiao Long asks Cha Mu to serve him wine. Xiao Lang takes this cup of wine and completely empties it. And after that, he begins to remember his grandfather's poem. I put a jug among the flowers in the silence of the night and drink wine alone, and my friend is not with me. 
But in good time I invited the moon to be my drinking companions, and I invited my shadow, and there were three of us. But, I ask, can the moon drink? And the shadow, although it will always follow me? And to share the shadow with the moon and in the silence of the night I agree to feast with them, even until spring itself. I begin to sing, and the moon sways in time. I dance, and my shadow dances, silent and long. We had fun while the three of us were drunk, and when they got drunk they went their separate ways. And again in my life I have to wander alone until I meet the one between the stars near the Milky Way. Milky, the princess thinks that Xiao Lang has talent. After that, Xiao Lang took another cup of wine and drank it. And after that, he continued to recite another verse. Don't you see, friends, how the waters of the famous Yellow River, falling from heavenly heights, rush violently into the sea so as not to return again? Don't you see, friends, how in the royal chambers the mirrors grieve for the hair? Yesterday it was blacker than silk, but now it has become snow? Having achieved happiness in life, drink it to the dregs, let the cup be full under the young moon. Heaven has given me a gift to squander it. I will take possession of the spent wealth again. We'll roast the bull, friends, but to have fun we now need to drink three hundred healthy cups. Mr. Zhuo thinks that although he despises him as a person, his poems, he doesn't understand how they can be so beautiful. Xiaolong looked at the red bean and saw that she was no longer angry. But there is one more verse left. Red beans in the valleys of the south. Over the spring more branches have appeared. Break more of them for a friend and comfort me in my sadness. Xiao Lang says that there were three poems, and now he really needs to go to the toilet. If they are not satisfied, he asks them to tell him how many times he should hit himself upon his return. But there was complete silence in the banquet hall. While he was leaving, the people behind him thought that they were ashamed in the face of Xiao Lang's great talents. All the books of the sages that they studied are rubbish. Kang Ni thinks that Xiao Lang is a man of great talent. He is ashamed of his incompetence. He will never write poems again. He is humiliated. When he returns, he is going to reflect on himself. The princess turns to the red bean and asks if the last poem was dedicated to her. But for some reason, the red bean became embarrassed and said that she needed to step away for a second. She thinks Xiao Lang is an idiot. Why didn't he just focus on the poems? How dare he tease him? Cha Mu thinks Xiao Lang is impeccable and a master of flirting. He should ask him for advice next time. After all this, the main character came to his grandfather and aunt. The aunt praises the boy for doing a good job. Xiao Long is worried that his aunt might know about the red bean incident. She asks if his heart wants to pursue literature, but the main character does not understand how his grandfather and aunt know about this. He just returned. Auntie says that the entire imperial city is in confusion. Everyone talks only about the boy, the genius who passed through history. Five great scientists sent him letters inviting him to join their scientific associations. Xiao Lang's name has passed through the entire imperial city. The ancestor of the Xiao family received all the titles except the title of scholar. The boy is the only one who deserves this. His grandfather says that the main character managed to scare these old people. They never liked him and always aimed for his place. Now his grandson has raised his name. Xiao Long is in complete panic. He thinks that he has gone too far. Xiao Long says that he will no longer write poems, even if they kill him. He wants to practice martial arts. Grandfather says he will sort everything out and asks his grandson to focus on cultivating in Ching Yi's house. He no longer needs to go to the war hall. He must prepare for the awakening of the soul. Xiao Long was happy about this. He said that only martial arts are in his heart. A man came to the Xiao estate to report that the princess had arrived. Xiao Long didn't expect that Princess Zi Shan personally came to Xiao Manor. Auntie laughs and says that it looks like her little boy is a girl tamer. But Xiao Long is sure that something bad will happen. After this, the princess went into the estate itself and met with the main character and his aunt. Auntie introduces herself and greets the princess. The state she is in now does not allow her to give due honor. But the princess asks her aunt not to belittle herself. She is honored to be in the presence of the famous Rakshasa, Lady Ching Yi. She is the person she admired the most. I always wanted to visit her, but unfortunately, she did not have the opportunity to do so. The aunt asks the princess what brought her to the Xiao estate. The princess says that her father made Xiao Long a young marquis, 
a first-class Viscount. She is here to announce it, but of course the main reason for her is to visit her aunt, whom she has admired for a long time. The aunt asks the boy to bow and accept the decree. But the princess says that they are all martial arts practitioners, and she does not need this politeness. Auntie says that it was not easy for the princess to get here and asks Xiao Lang to walk around the estate with her. After that, Xiao Lang and the princess left the room to take a walk. Qian Shun tells Auntie that she doesn't seem happy about young Master Lan getting the title. Auntie says that his title is just an empty phrase, but it helped the main character achieve a high position and become a role model for the younger generation. This will not only add countless ravines to him, but will also change his future path. If Xiao Long stays afloat, then so be it. But if something goes wrong, he will immediately be sent to the bottom with no hope of return. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang and the princess were sitting in the gazebo and chatting. The princess congratulates the boy. Now he is a young marquise, the first in the dynasty in a thousand years. She wants him to thank her for this. Xiao Lang asks if this should be done. The princess says that if she had not praised him in front of her father, he would not have received this title. This is what all the young masters from prestigious families across the country are fighting for. She wasted her efforts if the boy didn't thank her. The main character knows that the princess treats him well. It's just a misunderstanding. She is truly a good person and a wonderful friend, and for this he expresses his deepest gratitude to her. But the princess says that it doesn't count and he must make amends. She's angry for a reason. She specifically begged her father and came all this way for the sake of the boy. She wants him to do something to compensate her. Xiao Long invites her to take something she likes from the main hall, but the girl says that she does not need things from his house. She wants Xiao Lang to dedicate a poem to her, like the one he made for Hong Dao's red bean. Xiao Lang says that he put his pen in the far corner and wants to focus on cultivation. Besides, the Festival of Souls is coming soon, and he needs to become stronger in order to get a higher soul. He understands that he has a debt to the girl, and he can pay it back. She can be sure. The girl approaches Xiao Long and says that he can awaken the supreme soul and shock the entire city, but he must give him back what he owes. She wants Xiao Lang to make her a pinky promise. The boy takes her little finger and promises her. Meanwhile, the patriarch received bad news that the black dragon showed his foxtail. The man says that the blue wolf must answer too. He has had a good relationship with the emperor since childhood, but he also killed bloody warriors in northern Xinjiang. If they don't kill him, They'll have more problems. The enemy is in Su Xiancheng. Two emperors fought against six. Half of the fifty emperors were bloody warriors. The patriarch asks not to spread the news and he will lead the troops. Qin Yi is worried about his father. The patriarch tells her not to worry. These bloody warriors faced each other in Beijing, Dongfan Bai, and Zuo Ping Ping. Besides them, who else can harm him? After this, he left with his men. The Divine Soul Festival is the most significant festival on the continent, and it is also the most important day in the lives of countless fighters. Many fighters who have reached the age of 18 will gather in the city pavilion to awaken their souls. In theory, almost all of the most powerful warriors are spiritual warriors. These warriors have faster cultivation speed and stronger combat skills. The three dynasties were deeply concerned about soul soldiers, and they were a symbol of strength. Xiao Long and his friend arrived at the Divine Soul Festival. The main character asks his friend if his place of awakening is similar to this. It doesn't really matter. His aunt's bloody knife was pretty cool, and he liked his uncle's fufu spirit beast. For the main character, it doesn't matter what type, as long as it is high level, he will be happy. Xiao Long's qualification is very high. He will not awaken a bad spirit, most likely a heavenly spirit. And Xiao Dao should also receive a heavenly spirit. Auntie asks them to calm down and not get distracted. Xiao Lung says there are too many people here. All the big families came here. People with mediocre qualifications will also come to the soul pavilion. But they can still awaken the heavenly spirit. All large families should learn the future strengths of other families. And this is also an opportunity to recruit new talents. Therefore, Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao must fight for it. Suddenly people notice that the doors open and someone comes out. The Soul Festival begins. A total of 365 people registered this year under the old rules. Ten people wake up. If they hear their name, then that person should go to the Shen Hun Pavilion. 
The rest should wait inside. Xiao Long starts to get nervous, not knowing what will happen in the first round. Half an hour passed. The first round of awakening failed. The second round begins now. Xiao Lang was shocked that not a single person passed through. The chance of awakening is so small. After a while, the seventh round came. One was able to awaken. Xiao Chang Gen was the first. The next round begins. Xiao Long says that the first person has finally awakened and many people are immediately calling him. It seems that it is very difficult. Auntie says that after all, even the first level of soldiers increases combat power. But for the four big families, only a high-level warrior deserves an invitation. This round was good. Two people managed to awaken the Heavenly Healing Spirit and the Tiger Spirit Xiao Tang. After this, all the people immediately want to join the Xiao family. Next round, Xiao Yi, Xiao Lan, Xiao Dao, Xiao Feng. Everyone wishes Xiao Dao and Xiao Lan good luck. Everyone must go into the room and sit on the altar of the soul. When the soul awakens, the altar will shine. There is no need to be afraid, you just need to relax your thoughts and feelings. And if the altar becomes dim, you need to leave immediately. And after that, Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao entered their altars. Xiao Long walked into his altar and sat down. As soon as the main character sat down on the altar, magical animals immediately began to appear around him. The boy was delighted that it was a demonic black dragon and a fiery phoenix of demonic blood. Xiao Long invites the black dragon to come to him. He brought his hand closer to that demonic black dragon divine spirit. As soon as the boy touched this dragon, everything around him began to glow brightly. The people who stood near this altar say that Xiao Lang is a genius. He was able to summon the heavenly spirit. They don't know if he can take the chance and succeed in awakening to become very strong. Meanwhile, the dragon began to approach Xiao Lang, but purple grass began to spread around this dragon. And after that, the dragon simply exploded and evaporated. Xiao Long thinks that it is as if the awakened soul was absorbed by the purple grass, and now it's over. The awakening ceremony is over. Everyone must go outside. After everyone has left their altars, the brother asks the main character if he succeeded. But Xiao Long says that he doesn't know and asks what about him. Did his brother succeed? Xiao Dao sadly says that he failed. One of the curators of this test says that he will teach Xiao Lang to summon the soul and asks him to repeat after him. Apocalypse, the beginning of the soul pavilion, soul, awaken. Summoning a soul is very easy. You just need to focus on finding the spirit and calling it to summon it. When Xiao Long repeated these words, a spirit began to appear from his hand. The hooded man says that this is a useless soul. Grass, vine, flowers, and so on are garbage spirits. Although the main character's color is purple, but it is obviously a garbage spirit because it does not have the attribute of human step, heavenly step, and sacred order. This person has been working in the soul pavilion for almost 30 years. His judgment cannot be wrong. This man is sorry. He thought that Xiao Long would at least awaken a divine soul. After this, Xiao Long came out, and the man announced that there was one heavenly spirit, five ordinary spirits, and one useless spirit. People look at Xiao Lang and see how everyone else is happy, but Xiao Long stands gloomy. One can say that he either has a useless spirit or has no soul at all. The Xiao family will be his sooner or later, and trash like Xiao Lan wants to fight the heavens. Chamu tells Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao not to forget that they will always be his friends, and if they need anything, they can safely contact him. But then a red bean comes up to him and hits him in the face. She says that when he awakened the useless soul, he thought the world was destroyed. His useless soul doesn't mean he's trash. There is no such thing as a shortcut. Most strong warriors have spirit, but that doesn't mean they rely on it alone. If one day he can smile and become the Xiao Long he was, he can come to her family and appeal to her. Hong Du is ready to marry him because he is the only man who made her heartbeat in all 19 years. And if her family does not agree, then she will leave with him. But then his aunt drove up to him and said that if he was tired, he could go home to rest. There was no need to practice today. And then a man approaches them and informs them that the head of the house is calling Xiao Long. The head of the house says that five universities have sent invitations again to invite him for a bachelor's degree. The family elders held a conversation and agreed to send him to Shui Shi Pavilion. He hopes that the boy will learn literature and will be a person who will please the Yu Dynasty with his masterly song. Xiao Lang thinks that he only awakened a useless soul. 
and he is already trying to throw him out of the family. The main character asks for forgiveness, but he promised that he will no longer write poetry, so he will not go to the Shueshir Pavilion. The head of the house says that this decision was made by the elders and higher ranks of the family. Xiao Lang will not be successful in martial arts, but he may be able to bring glory to their family through literature. Another elder says that this is all for the sake of the boy. Even if the patriarch returns, he will also agree. Now, the main character cannot practice martial arts. At best, he will be a deacon in the family or the leader of a small city. Xiao Long must agree. Have you really forgotten the rules of the Xiao family? All of the Xiao family's children must work hard to restore the family's glory. He is in the Xiao family. He uses the Xiao family. He consumes a lot of the Xiao family's resources. He doesn't think about the family. He has no choice. Having awakened a useless soul, if he wants to continue cultivating martial arts without a high-level soul, what can he do? The Xiao family does not support trash. Even if Xiao Long has a useless spirit, he is not given the opportunity to decide. Everything has been decided. They foresaw this problem. Tomorrow they will take the boy to Shuxi Pavilion. Xiao Long gets angry and repeats that he won't go. He wants to talk about this when his grandfather returns. The head of the house asks him not to forget who he is. Xiao Lan is the son of the Xiao family and must follow the family rules. Xiao Lang turns around and walks away from them. He says that in this case, let him be thrown out of the Xiao family. When Xiao Lang went outside, he was met by the guy Xiao Lang had seen earlier. He says that when he saw the main character for the first time, he believed that the boy would fly above the crowd because they are a kind of chosen one, unless, of course, they are destined to be above them. Xiao Lang laughs and says that he cannot help him with this, but he can be sure that by giving him time, Xiao Lang will make this world shake under him. After all this, Xiao Lang went to rest. He lay down on the ground to lie down for a while. Suddenly, purple grass appeared on his hand. And after that, this grass disappeared, and Xiao Lang began to glow. This is spiritual energy. The mysterious energy in his body seems to be a high-level soldier. He doesn't understand what's happening. He made his way through the rank of high-level soldier. This soul can add energy. Xiao Lang thinks he should train with her. After two hours of training, Xiao Lang had heard that the pace of heavenly soul practice could be doubled, but now the pace of his practice had tripled. This grass did not frighten the eight-clawed golden dragon, but swallowed it up. Now he knows that this is not a useless soul, but the main character still has no magical abilities. But Xiao Lang doesn't care about that. He'll learn them later. Having only combat skills, this will not stop him from becoming stronger. Xiao Qingbao came to complain to Aunt Ching Yi. He says that she should teach Xiao Long a lesson. He caused trouble in the Hall of Elders, and he was not polite to the elders. The owner was very angry. If it weren't for him, Xiao Long would have been driven out of the family. He says that Xiao Long has awakened a useless spirit, and it will be meaningless in the future. He spends so much money from the Xiao family but doesn't know how to repay her. Now, for his kindness, the elders asked him to go to Shui Shu Pavilion, but he refused. Even if the patriarch returned, Xiao Lang would not be able to escape the fate of being expelled from the family. He asks Qing to do something. He can't hold back the elders for long. Qing Yi says that if he cannot hold them back, then there is no need to stop them. If they want to kick Xiao Lan out of the family, then she will also leave. She's tired and doesn't agree. He says that Qin Yi is no longer the princess of the Xiao family. She's old and can't walk. She's too self-confident. If she thinks that her family will not be able to touch her, then this is not so. The patriarchs will not support her. After that, Qin Yi could not tolerate such words addressed to her and pushed the man away. Suddenly, Xiao Long comes into the room. He tells his aunt that they need to leave. He is uncomfortable being in the Xiao family. But his aunt asks him to wait until his grandfather returns. She asks the boy not to stop practicing with Xiao Dao. She wants to see if she can help him find his innate soul. However, if he is not at all comfortable in the Xiao family, then they will leave. Xiao Long thought that the purple grass was his innate soul. Xiao Long sat down at the table and asked his aunt to tell him about the innate soul. The world is so vast that there are so many magical things in it. And the innate soul is a magical thing that exists in this world. The reason why she wants to help Xiao Lan find the innate spirit 
is because his grandfather knows where there is places where you are likely to meet the innate spirit. The innate soul is full of power. Maybe it's a fire soul that grew on a volcano. Maybe it's an ice spirit that appeared in a thousand-year-old glacier. Maybe it's the essence of a mysterious beast that has run out. Or maybe it's the essence of a plant. In no time, Xiao Long can rest assured that his grandfather and she will definitely do their best to find him an innate soul. Xiao Long got up from the table and asks Auntie if innate souls are strong. And does she have information about innate souls? He wants to see her. Auntie says that the family has information, but she does not have the right to look at it. His grandfather told her that very little is known about this, because only three people on the mainland managed to obtain an innate soul, so searching for information about it is useless. For whether the innate souls are strong or not, no one knows. But the three people who absorbed the innate souls are very powerful, and their cultivation knows no bounds. Legend says that the innate spirit is stronger than the heavenly spirit, but no one knows the details. Xiao Lang can only wonder if his spirit is stronger than the heavenly spirit. It is said that the cultivation speed with a heavenly spirit doubles, but the cultivation speed he has now obtained has tripled. Obviously, you can only ask Grandpa when he returns. Five years have passed since this conversation. Xiao Lang sat and talked to Chamu. Chamu says that Lady Hong Dao sent him an invitation for his birthday. He asks Xiao Lang if he will go. The main character says that he has no doubt he will go. Miss Hong Du also said that she could open a private banquet in the backyard. Xiao Lang says that even if he can't get through this storm, he won't be able to face him after but he's very poor and worries that he won't be able to give a worthy gift. Afterwards, they made a toast and emptied their glasses. After they separated, Zhao Long came to the forest and summoned his soul. After this soul began to crawl out and spread around the area, Xiao Lang ordered it to return. He doesn't understand what kind of soul this is. It can stretch and strengthen, and it can also be released, strange, just like your aunt's. If she is truly more powerful than the heavenly spirit, why isn't she stronger? Or does he need to practice with her? Need to look into this? Meanwhile, morning has already come and Xiao Lang needs to go back and go to the party. After that, Xiao Lang came to the party. But people were not happy to see him here. They say he is a scumbag who has been hiding and now dares to come out and meet people. He approached the birthday girl to give her his gift. He compliments her and says she looks good today. She thanks the guy and says that this is the best gift she has ever received. She thanks Xiao Lang. She really likes it. The princess was also here, but she didn't even look in Xiao Lan's direction. Xiao Lang thinks that she communicated enthusiastically a few days ago, but now he is like a stranger. Master Zhuo says that he is wondering what gift the young Marquis has prepared. Xiao Qing Yi left him so many things, so the gift is some rare treasure. Xiao Lang says it's none of his business and asks him not to force him to feed him another chicken leg again. Young Master Quan says that the Marquis is so arrogant but His Majesty has ordered that he cannot enter any academy. Master Zhuo says the Quan family is too rich, and if it were up to his family, they would have already driven this garbage out of the capital. Young Master Quan says that his family is rich, but they don't keep trash. His grandfather is wise. When he returns, he will definitely make the right decision. After all, he established the rules of the family. The birthday girl Red Bean heard all this and she really didn't like it that the main character was being offended. Xiao Lang says that this is good alcohol. Unfortunately, some people try to spoil the mood. In this case, since many people do not want to see him here, they can all fight him, and he will not retreat until he dies. The strongest here, Zhuo Ming, almost said goodbye to his life last time. No one dares to give up now. He says they are all a flock of sheep. Xiao Lang thanks Hong Du for her hospitality. He will never forget her generosity and kindness. Once again, he congratulates her on her birthday, but he's had enough and leaves first. The princess also rises and says that she is also returning to the palace. She asks Xiao Lan to accompany him since they are on their way. After that, they said goodbye and left. The princess says that Xiao Lang has recently joined the Xiao family, so he may not know the difficulties of being in a great family or in the royal court. She just wanted to say that it is not her desire to grow cold towards him. Xiao Long looks at the sky and says that he understands everything. The princess says that she really likes Xiao Lang. If he can find a solution to the problem, then maybe...
The main character interrupts her and says that he is grateful for her sympathy, but unfortunately he is destined to be trash all his life, so she can keep these words to herself. It's late and he needs to go back. The girl tells herself not to forget her position and the burden she carries. She cannot blindly follow emotions. He's just trash with no future or potential. Xiao Lang thinks that he is without power, has lost everything. He thought that she is at least half a friend, only he thought so. He is a normal man, after all. He also falls under the influence of beauty. This is not good. We need to train more and not give in to such feelings. The main character is heading to the peak of nine stars. He will be able to train there. When suddenly Qian Shun meets him, Xiao Long tells him that he wants to go train at Nine Star Peak. He wants Qian Shun to come back and tell Auntie about it. And if Xiao Dao is interested, he tells him to bring him here. Qian Shun says that Nine Star Peak is the territory of the royal family. There are many mystical beasts there. If the young master goes there, it will be dangerous. Xiao Lang tells her not to worry, he is not that weak. And now he asks him to hurry and notify everyone. Xiao Long arrived at the place. He immediately saw a third-level beast just in time. He could test his soul. He immediately calls upon his spirit. The monster saw that it was being attacked and woke up and began to attack in response. Xiao Long realizes that he won't be able to dodge. He'll have to fight it head on. At worst, he will be on the edge. The beast immediately began to attack the boy. But the main character immediately hit this beast with his fist. A moment later, Xiao Long didn't understand what happened. Isn't this a level three mystical beast? He killed him with one blow. So now he's a top level warrior? Xiao Lang was glad that he was no longer trash. His spirit is not useless. The boy took his spirit in his hands and says that he is not a trash spirit. He wants to know what spirit technique he has. After this, the spirit began to lengthen and flew away somewhere. And a moment later, the spirit brought a rabbit into his hands. In just a few seconds, this rabbit turned into a skeleton. The main character realized that this spirit could suck life out of other creatures. Xiao Lang thinks this is terrible. If he sneaks up on some strong cultivators and uses his spirit, won't he be invincible? The boy knew that his spirit was strong. He wants to go and hunt and learn all his abilities. After some time, they found another third-level monster. Xiao Lang thinks that his spirit can only stretch three meters. This is a third-level mystical beast. It will try to ambush it first, and if it cannot win, it will take advantage of the possession of the divine spirit. After that, the boy took action and released his spirit, and it immediately began to attack this third-level magical beast. And after a moment, this spirit sucked all the life out of this beast. Xiao Lang says it's too harsh. His spirit is just a vine, but at the same time, like a demon, it kills without leaving a trace. As long as Xiao Lang can get close to the target, he is simply invincible. And suddenly the main character notices his mythical beast Xiao Bai in the sky. It was his brother. They saw that Xiao Bai had found Xiao Lan and immediately went that way. When the guys saw what the main character did, they were shocked and scared. Xiao Lang wants to check something and so he asks his brother Xiao Dao to transform and hit him with all his strength. Xiao Dao immediately started to transform and tells his brother to get ready. Xiao Dao is about to attack. Xiao Lang uses divine spirit possession and he immediately stops the attack that was directed at him. Everyone was shocked how this was even possible. Xiao Long knew that his spirit was not useless. It was very strong, even stronger than a god-level spirit. At first, the main character thought that he got a garbage spirit, but after being possessed by a divine spirit, he became two levels stronger, and the speed of his training tripled. Not only can the spirit be used to decompose living beings, but he has no spiritual techniques, but he believes that there are even more abilities to discover, so he thinks that he has obtained the spirit he has been waiting for. The guys were glad that Xiao Lang was not trash. So based on his guess, Xiao Dao probably has an innate spirit from a long time ago, which is why he can transform. It's an ability that no one else can underestimate, so he's not trash either. But the main character wants it all to be kept secret. He wants to use it as a secret weapon. Suddenly, while talking, they were attacked by an armored lizard. Xiao Long says that this lizard used to give him a lot of trouble. Now they will show what they are capable of. He tells Qian Shun to go scout out the area first. After that, Xiao Dao grabbed that lizard by the tail. The main character also begins to act and calls on his spirit. This spirit immediately lengthened and grabbed this lizard and began to absorb it. Xiao Dao says that his brother's spirit is strong. Xiao Long says that Xiao Dao has also become stronger and can control the armored lizard. 
Suddenly, another armored lizard appeared. Now it's time to reveal his new magic trick. Xiao Lang thinks that an ambush is his best option. Its advantage in face-to-face -face confrontation is not obvious. Xiao Lang realized that an armored lizard of this size would take about an hour to completely decompose. After this, the guy noticed that Mr. Xiao Lang's spirit had grown a little. Xiao Lang looks at his spirit and asks him that after absorbing a mystical animal, he can grow. And his spirit nods, yes. The boy hugged his spirit tightly. He says that if he allows it to evolve, perhaps he will be able to ambush people from hundreds of meters away, and he will have no problem retreating in any situation. And suddenly they notice that there is someone else in this forest. It was the guards, they say, that this is the forest of the royal family. All violators will be punished. The guy tells them how dare they say such a thing. The young master of the Xiao family is training here. Why do they make so much noise? The guards immediately began to apologize. They didn't know that it was the young master of the Xiao family. After that, Xiao Long threw some kind of bag on the floor. He tells the officers that he is going to the Xi Yao Mountains and will not bother them anymore. After he picked up this bag from the ground, he says that Xiao Long severely injured his young master Zhuo, so he will report this to the family now. Xiao Long will go to Xi Yao, even if something happens to him, no one will know. After some time, the guys looked for the animals and destroyed them on their way. When they finished, Xiao Long exhaled and thanked the guys for their help. This should be enough for him today. Now the guys can rest and Xiao Lang will deal with the rest. Xiao Lang wants to use this chance to break through and surprise Grandpa when he returns. Meanwhile, the scout reported that Xiao Lang is now training at the Nine Star Peak with a bodyguard and an idiot, and soon he will go to the Xi Yao Mountains. Zuo family says that such a chance far from the capital is rare. She says this is an opportunity not to be missed. Mr. Zhuo says that Xiao Lang is a schemer and needs to come up with a smart plan. Mrs. Zuo says that her elder brother is indeed stronger than Xiao Lang. At best, he just uses the Soul Dragon pill to get to the top-level war expert level, and it will also accompany him. She doesn't think that Xiao Lang, with his trash spirit, can defeat both of them, expert warriors, when they don't underestimate him. He says that his little sister is smart. They will take soldiers with them and accidentally stumble upon Xiao Lang. But it was he who became the aggressor and fell under his hand. Meanwhile, Lady Chin Yi sat in her chambers and drank water. When suddenly an elder bursts into her room and says that there is very bad news, something terrible has happened. Chin Yi didn't understand why the elder was panicking so much. After this, the elder told her that they had received news from Sushian City, and the leader of the clan died. After she heard the terrible news, she immediately felt sick and passed out. When the emperor himself heard the same news, he didn't understand how one of the five strongest people in the dynasty, a dynasty master, an emperor-level cultivator, Xiao Bushi, who did not die even after being sealed on Tiger Dragon Mountain for 20 years, was dead. He was told that he was ambushed along with 300 Xiao family soldiers. They all died. The emperor orders the other three great families to gather, gather all the cultivators. He will drown the Xi Wang dynasty in blood. The girl says that Xiao Bushi is a bastard. If only he had been a little braver then. Even if the entire Zuo family is against it and wants to kill her, she would fight to become the wife of the Xiao family. If she were next to him, he wouldn't do such a thing. But it was just Madame Qin Yi's dream. She wakes up and says her father couldn't die so easily. There must be some mistake. The elder says that now they have no evidence. They will only know the truth when they find Xiao Futu. He is the only one whose corpse was not found. Now she understands. She asks Elder Chang to find a way to send a message to Du Gu Xing and tell him that she is going to Bei Jiang, to this Xiao family. She doesn't want to stay here anymore. She asks him to stay in the manor with Qian Shun. Lan and Xiao Dao would be safe at the Nine Stars Peak. As soon as Du Gu Xing arrived, they would take them away. At this moment, a person tears something and says that the Xiao family wants to send information to Xiao Lan. He says that they can only dream, and no one will ruin young Master Zhuo's plan. Xiao Bushi is now dead, and no one will mourn if Xiao Lan dies. There is smoke everywhere in Bei Zhang, and the 500,000-strong Jun Bei army is emitting an intensely murderous aura. They pass through five cities in a day and the corpses of 200,000 barbarians would forever remain buried in the desert. The commander named Du Gu Xing put his helmet on the floor 
and said that he was urgently leaving for the capital, and Jing Li was now in charge of everything in Beijing. And he must remember, there are three government teachers in Qingyi City now. If they stubbornly defend themselves, then he will never fall. General Jing Li asks his commander to come to his senses. He says that the country cannot live without a leader, and the army cannot live without a commander even for a day. The commander says that he has already decided, and nothing will make him change his mind. Jing Ming must prepare the troops, and the commander advances along with Qing Yi. Lady TSO turns to Du Guxing. She says that she heard that he's returning with soldiers to the capital. The situation has changed a little, but as a commander he takes his soldiers and runs away alone. She wants him to understand that they are three government teachers who have the right to kill him on the spot. Also, while the three of them are detaining Bi Zhang, the commander is leading a hundred thousand soldiers back rather than starting a rebellion. But then his subordinate stands up for the commander. He takes out his sword from the knife and says that the commander does not need to justify his actions to her. But the commander asks his subordinate to calm down. The commander says that if the three government teachers want to kill him, then he wants it done immediately. But the capital, he, Du Guxing, must return. Mrs. Zuo says that if he wants to return, he should at least give a reason. The commander says that it's nothing special. Ching Yi wants him to take her, and cannot think of a single reason not to fulfill this request. She was surprised that he was willing to take such risks simply because of a woman. He says that yes, just because of the woman, the woman he loves. She says that if she even considers him for a moment to be a threat to the Zhang dynasty, he will be killed. She thinks he is a very devoted man. Xiao Bu Shi, the bastard, why couldn't he do the same for her? She was ready to give up everything to be with him. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang is still training. He had already killed all the demonic wolves here, and although the purple vine had become longer, its absorption rate had not become faster. This is a problem against high-level monsters. Speed is all the boy thinks. And suddenly Xiao Long heard a sound. He quickly turned around and asked who dared to ambush him. These two killers say that even if Xiao Long finds out who they are, it will not help him because he will die today. Xiao Long realizes that this is a warrior killer rank commander. He needs to come up with a strategy. A moment later, the two killers immediately attack the boy. Xiao Lang received a strong blow to his chest. From such a blow, he flew far away and hit a tree. The killers say they need to send a signal. They caught him alive. They thought the boy would be strong, but only one blow was enough for him. For trash like him, they used a hundred people. And after that, they gave the signal by launching fireworks into the sky. Xiao Long says that since he will die soon, he asks him to tell him who wants to kill him. One of the killers points his sword at the boy and says there is no need for that. First, he will cut off his hands. But suddenly his blow stopped, and the blade of the sword stopped right above the guy's head. And at that moment, the purple grass began to devour this killer. A moment later, it completely consumed his life and turned him into a skeleton. Xiao Long stands up and says that he is not as weak as them. These sounds attracted Xiao Dao's attention, and he came to find out what happened. Xiao Long says he's fine, but it looks like an assassination squad has been sent after them. Their opponent's forces numbered 100 people, and they dared to attack so close to the capital. This means something serious has happened. The main character says that Qian Shun will not be able to take both of them with him. So he must go for reinforcements, and Xiao Dao and he will hide for now. When the reinforcements of these assassins arrived, they thought that Xiao Lang had some kind of acid with her, so they should be careful. They surrounded the entire mountain range. After that, they gathered a bunch of their people and began to look for the boy. Xiao Lang says that there are too many of them and they are searching systematically. They cannot hide forever. Xiao Dao will head west first. Survival is of utmost importance and the main character will ambush them, weaken them, and then they will take them all upon themselves. But this conversation was heard by one of the killers. He told his people that they were going west, and everyone immediately ran to grab the guys. Xiao Lang stopped to detain these guys. After this, the main character calls on his spirit and asks them why he should run away. And immediately his spirit grabbed all his pursuers. The boy understands that these killers are all the main warriors. He must be fast. If even one main warrior leaves, Xiao Dao will die. The purple vine is his secret weapon. As long as they are not confident in his strength, he will weaken their strength. Xiao Long sees that they sent so many people. 
It looks like they really want to kill him. The killers drove Xiao Lang and his brother into a dead end. The assassins ask what demonic spell the boy used to kill so many of their people. Xiao Dao says that it looks like they have no choice and will have to fight. Xiao Lang says that everyone seems to think that he will not be able to escape death today. They'll have to accept it, but they can't just let him die. He wants them to tell him who wants him dead. But then someone says that he will fulfill his wish. It was Mr. Zhuo and his sister. When Xiao Lang saw him, he started laughing. He says, how many more times does he need to lose before he is satisfied? Young Master Zhuo says that Xiao Lang is so arrogant even though he is dead. If he thinks that the Xiao family will save him, then it is impossible. Old man Xiao Bushi is dead. No one cares about trash like Lan now. Xiao Lang says that this is nonsense and his grandfather could not have died. Sister Zhuo says why did bodyguard Xiao Lang leave so easily? His crippled aunt is also under house arrest. The Xiao family is no longer his patron. Young Master Zhuo says that if Xiao Lang does not believe him, then he will send him to meet his grandfather. Xiao Long turns to his brother and says that they wronged his grandfather and aunt, and he wants Xiao Dao to kill them. And after that, Xiao Dao began to turn into a giant. Young Master Zhuo says that this is the strange werewolf that there are rumors about. Meanwhile, Xiao Dao quickly dealt with all the killers. And after that, he switched to Young Master Zhuo. But Young Master Zhuo stood unshakably as if he knew that nothing would happen to him. And suddenly, a man suddenly appears and hits Xiao Dao, causing him to fly far away. Xiao Lang managed to catch his brother while he was flying from the strong blow. Xiao Lang thinks that is there anyone who can defeat Xiao Dao with one blow? Maybe this is the main warrior. Young Master Zhuo says that no matter how strong Xiao Long is, he still won't win against a warrior-ranked master. Xiao Long thinks he is right. In the face of absolute power, all techniques will be like paper. This warrior's name is Zhuo Fei Yu. Young Master Zhuo asks him to bring him Xiao Lang's head. Xiao Lang also starts to attack and asks his brother to cover him. Young Master Zhuo thinks it's good that he took Zhuo Fei Yu with him. He didn't expect this weirdo to be so strong after transforming. Zhuo Fei Yu thinks this guy is so strong, but when he activates his full armor, nothing can compare to him. And after that, Xiao Lang calls on his spirit. These sprouts begin to sprout near Zhuo Fei Yu, and they immediately grabbed this warrior and completely immobilized him. Xiao Dao took advantage of this moment and dealt his crushing blow to the bound war. And after that, Xiao Long quickly ran up to Zhuo Xi and took her hostage. Xiao Long tells everyone not to move unless they want her brain to leave her body. Young Master Zhuo orders everyone to stop. He says that Xiao Lang better let his sister go. She will be the future queen. Xiao Long says that this only adds value to her. The main character will, of course, borrow his sister and she will return her as soon as she returns to the Xiao family. But if any of them takes even one step forward, she will die. And after that, Xiao Long ran away with Mr. Zhuo's sister. Meanwhile, young Master Zhuo was informed that his guard, Zhuo Fei Yu, was not breathing. This makes young Master Zhuo angry and tells everyone to quickly return to the family and inform second uncle to lead the elders to the Xiao family. Xiao Lang holds Zhuo Xi hostage and kills students from the Zhuo family. They will see who in the Xiao family will vouch for him. If he doesn't cut it into pieces, he will never live in peace. Meanwhile, Cha Mu was informed that the Zhuo family was gathering men and were preparing to attack the Xiao family. But Cha Mu understands that the current head of the Xiao family will not take care of Xiao Lang. He will definitely betray him in order to settle everything. He orders to report to the elders and send everyone to the Xiao family to protect Xiao Lan. And a message needs to be sent for Dongfang Hong Dao, Princess Zi Shan, and the young master. Ni Kang, tell them to rush to the Xiao family, or Xiao Lang will die. Meanwhile, there are rumors in the city that Xiao Long got into a fight with the young master and lady of the Zuo family on Xi Yao Mountain. Some people heard that he killed more than ten guards and even kidnapped the lady of the Zuo family. And the lady of the Zuo family is the future queen. Even the elder of Zhijian Hall, Zuo Fan, whose authority is only a step below the Zuo family, is heading there, like many other experts. Also, Dongfang Hong Dao from the Dongfang family. Someone saw her crying and heading towards the Xiao family. And soon after that, the famous elders from her family, also taking a group of cultivators with them, followed her. Even Princess Zishan took several royal court cultivators and went to the Xiao family. There is also a family. Ni, the Cha family, the Nangong family. The capital's ten big families are on the move. 
Meanwhile, Lady Zhuo says that if Xiao Long lets her go now and leaves the capital, she can guarantee that the Zhuo family will not bother him anymore. Xiao Lang thanks her for her concern. He only has one miserable life, but he needs to take his aunt with him. So even if it's a death trap, he has to do it. Meanwhile, Elder Zuo Fan says that the Xiao family is egregious. Trash kills Zuo Fei Yu and a dozen elite fighters in broad daylight. Not only that, he's holding his beloved granddaughter hostage. If they don't explain themselves today, the Zuo family will never forgive them. The elder of the Xiao family, Xiao Bu Huo, tells them not to worry. The lady will be safe, and he will give their family a satisfactory answer. He has already sent his man to the city gate. When Xiao Lang returns, he will be captured, and the Zhuo family will be informed immediately. Red Bean asks Third Elder Dongfang Li to protect Xiao Lan. She will be grateful to him for the rest of her life. He says that this is the internal affairs of the Xiao family. He cannot interfere, but as soon as the chance arises, he will immediately do it. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang arrived at the gates of the capital. Xiao Long asks not to block his path. He wants to get inside. But the guards tell Xiao Lang to let the lady go first. The head of the family ordered them that if Xiao Lang resists, then they need to kill him. Xiao Long says that since they don't care about Lady Zhuo's life, he will kill her right now. And meanwhile, one of the warriors begins to attack Xiao Lang. But Xiao Long summoned his purple vine, and it completely pierced one of the guards who was attacking him. The rest of the guards who looked at this did not understand how this was possible. Their captain is a mid-level war master. Isn't Xiao Lang the main warrior? He killed someone two levels higher in seconds. They don't understand what to do now. Xiao Long says that his grandfather, Xiao Bushi, is the patriarch of the Xiao family, and he is the young master of the family. With his status, even if he committed an incredibly heinous crime, the death sentence can only be given after all the leaders and elders make a decision together. Xiao Long returns to Qing Yi Pavilion. Only if the Xiao family wants to punish or kill him, then let their master come to Qing Yi Pavilion to find him, and anyone who gets in his way will die. Meanwhile at Auntie's, a man stepped on bodyguard Xiao Lang's head, and he also beat Aunt Qing Yi. It was Elder Ching Bao. He came to the Xiao family's house to destroy everyone here. But Chan Lan begs him not to touch Ching, and because the poison in her body is starting to take effect, she needs medical help. If she goes to prison now, she will definitely die. But Elder Ching Bao says that Chan Lan is usually not so confident, and Xiao Lang acts as if he owns the whole world. No one from the Xiao family will get off easily. And after that, he kicked him. The head of the Xiao family ordered Xiao Qing Yi to be taken away, and after that he tied her up and dragged her away. But when Xiao Long returned home, he saw how his aunt and bodyguard were tied up and dragged somewhere. When Xiao Lang saw this, his anger knew no bounds. Elder Qing Bao asked Xiao Long how he had the courage to come back here, and after that he orders to seize him. Xiao Lang was so angry that his hair turned white. His anger knew no bounds. He will now kill everyone who harmed his aunt, and after that, Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao began to destroy everyone who stood in their way. At this moment, Qian Shun also broke free and struck the man who was holding him. He looked at Xiao Qingbao and began to attack him. But he didn't succeed because the elder saw that an attack was being prepared on him and attacked the guy in response. Xiao Long decided to help his friend, and his purple vine began to devour the leopard. The elder was very surprised that this useless spirit could absorb other spirits. Xiao Long says that this useless spirit will drain him now. The elder does not understand what is happening. Half of his spirit has already been exhausted. And after that, Xiao Long grabbed the elder with his spirit so that he could not escape. The purple grass immediately began to absorb the elder's hand, and bones were already visible on it. And a moment later, Elder Qing Bao lost his hand. The elder begs Xiao Long not to kill him. After that, Xiao Long took his blade and stabbed it straight into the elder's stomach. But Xiao Long will not let him die so easily. But when Xiao Lang looked back, he saw that several hundred enemies were approaching him. After this, the guy orders Qian Shun to bring Zhuo Shi here, and Xiao Dao must help Auntie. Elder Qing Bao says Xiao Long can't kill him, because his father is the patriarch and his brother is the head of the family, and if he dies, then Xiao Lang will also die. But then the patriarch and the head of the family came here, and they want the boy to surrender. They say that he is going against the will of heaven. Is he really planning to fight against the whole world? 
The Patriarch says that Xiao Lang has gone mad, but the main character says that since childhood he relied on his aunt and Xiao Dao. Auntie is like a mother to him. She taught him to avoid trouble. But even if he doesn't succeed, she will help him no matter what the situation is. But it looks like she's been poisoned and they're treating her so rudely. Since when does Auntie get humiliated like this? The Zhao family and the Zuo family have been at odds ever since Xiao Long returned. And almost the entire Xiao family treats the boy like trash, makes his life difficult, and now they even want to kill him. Now Xiao Long wants to know, is he the one who creates trouble, or is it they who find it? The patriarch asks the boy to let Zhuo Xi and Qing Bao go. If not, then he will die today. Xiao Long reiterated that he doesn't cause trouble, but also isn't afraid of it. Elder Qing Bao asks his father for forgiveness one last time. And after that, Xiao Long cut his throat. The elder was simply furious at this action, and now he wants to tear the main character to pieces. Xiao Lang says that everyone thinks he is just trash at the basic warrior level. Okay, they can continue to think that way. Xiao Lang wants to see who dares to take a step forward. And after that, some kind of purple energy began to glow around the main character. People think that Xiao Lang has gone crazy, completely mad. Doesn't he have a trash spirit? He killed Xiao Qing Bao, who is three levels higher than him. Xiao Long orders Xiao Dao to leave with Chen Lao. If anyone follows them, he must tell Qian Shun to kill Zhuo Xi. After the main character began to approach his enemies, they began to be very afraid of him. Xiao Long asks them to get out of the way, and he vows that he will not be hostile towards them. He will not take a single step into the capital and will not harm a single hair of Zhuo Xi. But if they want to kill him, they can try. If they fail, Xiao Long swears that he will slaughter every single one of their family, even if it takes him his entire life to do it. And now, he orders them to leave. One person says that the Dongfang family, Ni family, and Cha have reached an agreement. They will not be his enemies. As for the ten great families, he cannot dictate to them. Their leaders must decide this themselves. After this, these three families retreat. They do not want to be his enemies. Now the last thing stopping Xiao Lang is the princess. The princess says that the emperor's order has arrived. Xiao Lang has committed a great crime. The emperor guarantees the safety of the Xiao family for 30 years if they kill Xiao Lang. If something happens to Zhuo Xi, the emperor will punish them and compensate the Zhuo family. And now Xiao Lang is forced to fight to the death against these two. And now the elder and head of the family attack Xiao Lang with their spirits. But suddenly there was some kind of explosion. Everyone was shocked by what they saw and did not expect that this could happen at all. It was a giant blade that stuck into the ground between Xiao Lang and his enemies. It was Xin Du Gu and his assistant. The princess was surprised when she saw that it was Xin Du Gu. She also thought that he was in the north, near the Great Wall. How could he come back with one of the five greatest warriors, Jing Ming? He approached his beloved Qing Yi. He says that he is late, but she can rest assured that she will not allow anyone to hurt her again. If anyone dares to offend her, he will kill his entire family. The elder did not understand why Master Dugu wants to protect these people. Xiao Lang, meanwhile, thinks this is a great chance to attack. And after that, the spirit of Xiao Lang grabbed the spirit of the patriarch and began to absorb it. The patriarch did not have time to regain his spirit and was also wounded. The princess had not yet seen Xiao Long's spirit. She didn't understand how he could hurt a high-level spirit so easily. Now she understands how Qing Bao died. And after that, the guards began to attack Xiao Lang. But the man who came with Xing Du Gu did not stand aside. He helped Xiao Lang and a hundred swords flew towards them. Xing Du Gu says that Xiao Lang can kill those who want to kill him and his aunt. And he guarantees that they will not do this. But if they do succeed he will erase their entire family. Suddenly, a man rode up on a horse. He had an order from the master. This order is to kill anyone who gets in the way of Qing Yi's guard. The princess says that Xing Du Gu wants to ignore the laws of the dynasty. But Xin Du Gu says that he just wants to bring his beloved home. This does not make him a traitor. Although the princess brought the imperial token, is this really the will of the emperor? If so, then Xin Du Gu will retire and take off his armor. Xing Du Gu asks them if they know why his army is called Qing Yi. This name comes from the name of his beloved. If the princess wants to stop him, he will have no choice but to fight her. But in the meantime, Qing Yi woke up and saw that Xing Du Gu had come to her aid. 
He asks her forgiveness for making her go through this and for coming so late. He will not forgive those who harmed her. All she has to do is speak and he will cut off their heads. But Ching Yi asks him not to kill anyone. She's tired of killing. She just wants him to take her away from here. After that, he picked her up and began to carry her away from this place. And after that, Xiao Lang orders Qian Shun to let Zhuo Xi go. Xiao Lang looks towards Elder Xiao Bu Huo and the head of the Xiao Qing Long family and says that from now on, he does not belong to the Xiao family. If any of them want to kill him, he is waiting for them at any time. And after that, he approaches Cha Mu and Hong Du and says that he doesn't know when they will meet again. He never had friends, but from today the two of them become his friends forever. Red Bean says that they will definitely meet. Cha Mu wishes Xiao Lang a good journey and looks forward to meeting him again. Since then, the Xiao family has withdrawn and isolated itself from the world. The Imperial family issued a decree on non-disclosure of this incident. The 10,000-strong Qing Yi army left the imperial capital and then disappeared. Beijing City Qing Yi, lands of the Dongfang family. Dongfang Xiang says that Xiao Bu Shi gave birth to a good grandson, and Hong Du is smart. Family also speaks well of Xiao Lan and says that Xi Ming's child simply cannot be trash. And in the Zuo family's house, Mrs. Zuo says that Zuo Fan, Zuo Ming, Zuo Shi are just idiots. She wants the order to be passed on to the Zuo family and Zhuo Fan was removed from his post as head. Zhuo Ming and Zhuo Xi should be locked up for a year. She also orders the killing of the guards who participated in Xiao Lang's attack, and they sent their heads to Xing Du Gu. The person says that there is no need to do this. Xing Du Gu betrayed the state. The emperor will not forgive him, but why side with this weakling? This will only give the world a reason to laugh at them once again. Mrs. Zhuo says they don't understand anything. Xiao Lang must see these heads. If they really think he's worthless, he's not. How can the god of war, Xiao Qing Di, have an insignificant child? If her guesses are correct, then his spirit surpasses the divine. If Xiao Lang still hates the Zhuo family, she is afraid that they will disappear in the future. And if Xiao Lang is not satisfied with this, she does not mind giving him the heads of Zhuo Ming and Zhuo Xi. After this, Xiao Lang, Xing Du Gu, and his army head somewhere. Xiao Long asks Uncle Du Gu where they are going. Du Gu asks Xiao Long if he wants to take his aunt. Xiao Long says that yes, Uncle Du Gu saved their lives and now they are indebted to him. But now they are safe, and therefore he does not want to bother his uncle anymore. In addition, he wants to cure his aunt as soon as possible. Du Gu says he knows that, and he thinks that Qing Yi never told the boy about the poison. Xiao Lang asks if Dugu knows what poisoned Auntie. She is poisoned by one of the three dangerous poisons, Huan Chuan Shi. Xiao Long understands that it is no wonder that even the Xiao family could not cope with this. Shi Dugu says that he is not sure. Now they are looking for one person. If he fails, then no one will help Qing Yi. Xiao Lan wants Dugu to tell him how his grandfather died. Shi Dugu says that after they help Qing Yi, he will tell him everything. And suddenly they notice that something bright is flying above them. It was some kind of golden dragon. This dragon says that he has brought an order for Xing Du Gu. It was the minister who said that the emperor was asking if Xing Du Gu had anything to say. Xing Du Gu says that the despicable servant is in fear. The minister shouts that Du Gu needs to know what situation he is in. Is he a traitor to his homeland and has nothing to say to the emperor? Du Gu thanks the minister for his concern. Soon he himself will tell the emperor everything. And after that, Shindugu says they are leaving. And after that, Dugu says that they are now heading to Shunfeng Mountain to find Medicine King Guo Huo. Wu Guo Huo has excellent medical equipment. He will examine Auntie, and then it will be clear whether he will cure her or not. And after some time, they finally reached Shunfeng Mountain. Xiao Long looks at this mountain and says that it is very high, a great place to improve your medicine-making skills. The man came to report to the general that according to Guo Huo, he is now studying and creating the immortality pill. For three months, he doesn't let anyone in. This concerns everyone. The main character says that studying immortality looks strange, especially since they don't have time to wait three months. Dugu says as he expected. He asks Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao to take a thousand warriors and bring Guo Huo here along with all the medicines and also bring all those who resist. They can do whatever they want as long as they don't kill anyone. Xiao Lang says Guo Huo is the king of medicine and a very important and revered person.
Du Gu asks Xiao Lang if he is afraid. Xiao Long says no, he will do anything for Auntie, even if he has to fight everyone. This is Hu Ming's ring. Xing Du Gu wants Xiao Long to take care of it. If he wants to find something, he just has to make the effort. This old man Guo Huo dared to play with him. He wants to show him what he can do. And after that, Xiao Long and Xiao Dao leave. He says that he will not let you down. After Xiao Long arrived at the top of Shunfeng Mountain, he was greeted by two guards. Xiao Long immediately tells them that he was given orders to capture anyone who resists. After this, Guo himself came out Huo. He was too angry that Xing Du Gu dared to do such a thing. Even if they get away with it, he will still achieve justice. Xiao Long orders the old man to be captured. Guo Huo already thought that Xing Du Gu wanted to kill him, and he wonders how they explain this to the whole world. Xiao Long says that no one cares about him, he is only following orders, everyone here is eager to find a cure. Guo Huo says that they are all bandits and robbers here. Suddenly, one of the people of the Qing Yi army says that he found a locked room here, and he is waiting for an order to open it. The main character gives them the go-ahead to open this door. After they opened these doors, they saw that there was a lot of valuable things in this room. Xiao Long picked up the ring that Uncle Xing Du Gu gave him and is going to use it. And this ring showed the boy that there was also a secret room behind the closet. There really are a lot of useful things here. And in the meantime, Xing Du Gu also came to the top of the mountain. Xiao Long asks him how he intends to use this ring. Xin Du Gu allows him to keep this ring. He will ask the boy if he needs it. But Xiao Long still feels sorry for the Medicine King. He is completely innocent. But Uncle Xing Du Gu whispers in the boy's ear and tells him not to worry. In the future, the King of Medicine will be grateful to them. The main character also says that he found two strange things in the secret room. He gives these two things to his uncle and asks him to see what they are. Xing Du Gu took the small bottle and sniffed it, then laughed. He didn't understand where this old man got such wonderful things. After that, he gave these things to the main character. He says that this is a fragment of the map, and the boy can keep it for himself. Perhaps it will be useful in the future. He might also leave a bottle of pills. The green pill is for body hardening. Xiao Lang can take it. The red pill will help cure serious injuries. Xiao Long is very pleased with these finds, but he asks where they will go now. Xing Du Gu says that in ten days, Xiao Long will find out for himself. The news that Xing Du Gu had led troops to the capital spread throughout the country. All officials demanded his trial. However, Yunfei Yang only reprimanded Xing Du Gu, revoked all his titles, but did not take away military power. The whole country considered Yunfei Yang a fool and Xing Du Gu a traitor to the motherland. Northern Xinjiang, Qingyi City. This generation's god of war had truly reached the heavenly level, settling everything with one hand. To withdraw all the soldiers without permission is already a crime, not to mention entering the capital of the empire. Xing Du Gu committed a grave crime. Even the most pathetic emperor would not tolerate it. But he also attacked Guo Huo. His wisdom knows no bounds. Reputation? Wasn't he planning to seize power? With his military might, he could do it. Xing Du Gu gave up his prestige in exchange for the emperor's trust. Even though Shun Feng was washed in blood, the emperor did not condemn him. Fortunately, he is a member of a military dynasty. If Du Gu were from another country, he would be a terrible enemy. Meanwhile, Xin Du Gu and his army reached some rock. Xiao Long says that there is no further road, and the army cannot rest here. And a moment later, a loud explosion was heard under this rock. And after this explosion, a hidden gate appeared that sparkled brightly. This gate turned out to be an ancient teleport. Xiao Lang had seen one in books. Du Gu confirmed that this is a teleport, and with the help of this teleport, they can leave without anyone finding their trace. And after that, they enter these gates, and behind them, their entire army. When they all entered the teleport, they found themselves in some field strewn with flowers. Medicine King Go Huo was very surprised. This is a legendary sect. Dugu confirmed that this is a legendary sect. A military dynasty can maintain its position for millennia at the expense of a hidden sect. A little later, they were met by a girl named Lu Ming and two guys named Zi Ming and Hei Ming. Dugu orders Zi Ming to take everyone else away, and Lu Ming helped him take care of Qing Yi. And Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao will go with him to see the hidden emperor. Hidden emperor! This is the strongest person in the dynasty! And after some time, they finally reached the hidden emperor and bowed to him, showing their respect. Xiao Lang understands that the power of this hidden emperor is very strong. 
His aura is much heavier than his grandfather's. But this hidden emperor was actually just a slovenly brute. He calls Dugu a little asshole, and he thinks that he came here to stress the old man out. He says that last time they didn't finish him off, but this time they came to finish what they started. When Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao saw what kind of emperor this emperor really was, they were very surprised. But Dugu says that he heard that the hidden emperor was looking for someone who could inherit the sect, so he brought two successors to him. The hidden emperor calls Dugu a little bastard again and asks where he got such kindness from. Last time he fooled him. Although he is old, he can live for about another hundred years, he will not worry about receivers. Dugu says that these two mediocrities are his nephews. The first is Xiao Lang, the second is Xiao Dao. This Xiao Lang can barely handle his strength and can match the strength of Zheng Jun and Zhang Wang. A divine soul is simply an empty divine soul that surpasses the heavenly rank. Not long ago, he accidentally killed the warlord elder of the Xiao family. As for Xiao Dao, he has a soul that no one has ever seen. The hidden elder can't believe that this little rabbit was able to kill an elder with the level of a war king. The man says that Xiao Lang's spirit is a strange thing that can corrode not only flesh and blood, but also the spirit. The king of war was subjected to an attack that damaged his soul, after which he was killed. Overall, Xiao Lang's talent is indeed very good, and he is the strongest among the teenagers he has ever seen. The hidden elder sits and looks at them and doesn't say anything yet. And after a long silence, he ordered the two puppies to go away. He would deal with them later. After that, he looked at Dugu and said that this time he really came with good news. A heavenly level soul is truly worthy of being called a young master. However, this guy is too bloodthirsty. There is a demon in his heart. And soon it may come out. It is best to test him in battle. Otherwise, the hidden emperor will personally finish him off if the demon gets the better of him. Dugu listens to the hidden emperor and agrees with him. But the hidden emperor understands that Dugu came here for a reason, and not to find him a successor. He wants to know what is bothering Dugu. Dugu says Ching Yi, she is poisoned by Huang Chuan She. Although Dugu gave her black lotus root medicine to temporarily suppress the effects of the poison, the poison is still spreading throughout her body. He asks the master to help because only he can help her. The emperor says that this poison is extremely dangerous and complex and cannot be removed from the body. As far as he knows, there is no antidote on the mainland. The old man can only help suppress the poison for five years. People of the hidden sect cannot go beyond the soul continent. They must find the antidote themselves within five years. Otherwise, he will only have to wait for her death. Xing Du Gu is very grateful to the hidden emperor. He will definitely find an antidote. But the hidden emperor tells him not to rush into gratitude. Suppressing the poison also threatens the life of the emperor. Dugu must give him his word. This old man wants to make Xiao Dao a successor. Dugu agrees to these demands of the hidden emperor. Now the hidden emperor asks him to get lost. He is already tired of Dugu. There is also this Guo Huo. Either helps or gets out of here. He doesn't collect trash. Dugu realizes that the hidden emperor did not even look down on Xiao Dao. He immediately liked it. He guesses that this is the right decision because it looks like Xiao Dao is from another world. As soon as Dugu left the room, the hidden emperor immediately jumped up and began to rush around the room. He was happy that he had found a treasure this time. If Xiao Dao really belongs to that ancient race, his hidden sect will dominate the mainland. Meanwhile, Ching Yi woke up in her bed, and at that moment, Xiao Lang and Xiao Dao were with her. They were very happy that their aunt had woken up. Their aunt's first words were that she apologized to them for deceiving them. Auntie says that the boy has grown up so much and now she can be calm. She wants to know how Xiao Lang's soul is doing. The main character says that his soul is not trash. It is very strong, it seems, even at a heavenly level. The soul not only increases its power when used, it also corrodes the soul and body of the enemy. Auntie is happy that her boy did not let her down. Only she regrets that she will not see all the beauty of his strength. Gu comes into their room and says that she will not die. As long as he is alive, she will not die. Ching Yi also thinks that as long as Du Gu is with her, she has nothing to regret. After this, Du Gu turns to the main character and his brother and says that they must save Auntie. First of all, they need to know that the Divine Soul Continent consists of three dynasties. Behind the Jiang Dynasty is the Hidden Sect. Behind the Z dynasty is the blood sect, 
and behind the Yu dynasty is the Feather Sect. The masters of these sects, the most powerful people on the continent, only one dynasty has the power to destroy another dynasty. Du Gu is the envoy of the Hidden Sect, so Yunfei Yang didn't lay a finger on him. Xiao Lang was surprised that Uncle Du Gu was the envoy of the Hidden Sect. He guesses that his grandfather was killed by someone from the Blood Sect, but grandfather with such strength could not lose to anyone. Du Gu says that this matter is much more complicated than he thinks. It could be someone from the Blood Sect or traitors from the other three families. Du Gu wants Xiao Lang to go with him to the battlefield. He needs to grow and learn from the Jiang Dynasty for five years. Then there will be hope for saving his aunt and for revenge. Xiao Lei is already eager to fight, because in this way he can become stronger and save his aunt. Xiao Dao also asks permission to go with them to the battlefield. Du Gu says that Xiao Dao will stay and learn from the hidden emperor. He has decided that Xiao Dao will become his successor. Xiao Dao agrees with this outcome of events. Du Gu turns to his beloved Qing Yi and says that the children she raised are really good. He blames himself for being useless and can only rely on these two. After this, the hidden emperor tried to help Qing Yi. Xiao Lang is worried and asks what will happen to his aunt. Du Gu asks the boy to calm down. The hidden emperor is dealing with Qing now. Everything will be fine with her. How suddenly they heard the doors open. A girl came out of the door, and they immediately began asking what was wrong with Qing Yi. This girl says that Aunt Qing is fine. This girl's name is Lu Ming, and Du Gu thanks her. Three days have passed since then. Xiao Lang is planning to leave today. Xiao Lang says that the Xiao family's trash is unreliable, and if he wants to save his aunt and avenge his parents and grandfather, he needs to become stronger. He also turns to his brother and says that if the hidden sect is interested in him, it means that he may indeed be a descendant of a powerful race, so he must also cultivate diligently. The hidden emperor can only take care of auntie for five years. They must rely solely on themselves. In four years, one of them should be able to break through the martial emperor realm, and they will go to get the antidote for auntie for a year. Xiao Dao asks his brother not to worry. He will definitely become stronger and save his aunt. And after that, they said goodbye and began to leave. But when they were leaving, they were stopped by the king of medicine. He asks them to wait a little. He thanks them for leading him to the hidden sect. He is very happy. Here he can learn much more than outside in his eight lives. In two days, he made the pills and heard that Xiao Lang was leaving for the front today, so he specially brought them for Mr. Xiao. Taking them, people would not be able to recognize him. Xiao Lang thanks him for such a gift. But Auntie says why not take them now? She wants to make sure everything will be okay. Xiao Lang tells Qian Shun to take one pill for himself so they can remember each other. After that, Xiao Lan and Qian Shun each took one pill. And after that, Xiao Lang's appearance changed dramatically. His hair darkened. Qian Shun's hair also changed. The effect of the pill is really good. Xiao Lang asks his aunt not to worry. No matter how he looks, he will always be her son. And Qing Yi says that she will always be his aunt. And after that, they said goodbye and went on their way. Auntie hopes that Xiao Lang will achieve greatness. After some time, they came to this portal. And after that, Xiao Lang teleported to northern Xinjiang. This is the city of Lanya. The architecture of northern Xinjiang is very impressive. While they were walking through the streets of this city, one of the guards noticed them and stopped them. Xiao Lang and Qian Shun say that they just want to join the army. The security guard wants to check their bag. The guard says that it is forbidden to take weapons with you. If there is anything else like that, you either need to throw it away or leave. Xiao Lang agrees to the guard's demands, when suddenly they heard someone jumping behind them. It was a girl on a horse accompanied by other female guards. Xiao Lang asked the guard what that just happened. The guard says that she is the daughter of the general of the city of Lanya. Although she is not a general, her power is exactly the same as her father's. So he asks them to be careful with her. Otherwise, they won't see their heads. It seems to the main character that this young lady is not inferior to men. After that, they arrived at the place where selection for the army took place. There was a huge queue at this place. And suddenly they notice how other people were not allowed through and were simply thrown away. The person who conducted the selection says that garbage should not join the army. They'll waste their time. They'll just die. And after these words, many people simply ran away. And from the entire queue, only Soyalan and Chan Shun remained. They were the next to be selected. They gave the man their army applications. Xiao Lang called himself Yao Shi, 
an aspiring general who is well-versed in field research and hopes to become a scout. Qian Shun called himself Yao Zi, an aspiring warrior possessing the soul of the highest level Dark Fox, hoping to become a reconnaissance commander. Nationality Ali Shan. This person wants to see what they can do. Perhaps they will work well together in the future. And suddenly someone hit this man and he fell to the ground. It was Mrs. Lanya. This man asks Mrs. Lanya to say why he was so guilty. If the madam is dissatisfied, he asks to atone for his guilt. Mrs. Lanya says that this man told her that the scout provided to her was the best in the army. As a result, Zhuo Jian clearly discovered the location of their army. This man asks for her mercy because in the recent battle, all the scouts went to the front line. The best were handed over to her. After that, he points his finger at Xiaolang and Qian Shun and says that there are two guys from Alishan City. They are masters of their craft, even with souls, and he can give them to her. He originally planned to give them to the advance team, but if the lady is satisfied, he is forced to change the plan and give them to her. Mrs. Lanya wants to see their souls. After that, Qian Shun showed his soul to the lady. She was pleased with what she saw. This man says that these are Alishan people. They live in the mountains. They are born scouts. If you train them a little, everything will be fine. Lady Lanya tells them to come straight to the general's mansion after completing their training. After that, they arrived at the training ground. And the man says that from today, he will be their coach. And they both have to be on the site in the morning before the rooster even crows. When night fell, they came to spend the night in the barracks with the rest of the soldiers. Xiao Lang says that a lot has happened during this time. He just came as a soldier. He has a lot to think about. Qian Shun says that since the god of war gave such an order, it must be carried out. Xiao Lang agrees with this. He needs to become stronger in four years to save his aunt. Morning came and their coach was already waiting for them at the training ground. The guys also came early in the morning. Their teacher was surprised by this, but the guys say that military orders cannot be violated. Their task for the day will be to run 10,000 laps with a stone on their back, and they are not allowed to eat until they finish. Qin Xian doesn't like this and asks how this will help intelligence. Their teacher says that physical strength is the most basic requirement for a scout who must perform 10,000 circles every day. And also, if he opens his mouth without permission, he will starve for three days. And after that, they started running circles with stones. Their coach will teach them intelligence, and he wants to see how long it will take for them to deflate. Night had already fallen and the guys had just finished their training. Their coach says they ran very slowly and are going without dinner today, and tomorrow, we must run 15,000 laps. Qian Shun says that he is deliberately mocking them, but Xiao Long says he has heard that veterans are looking for ways to join the ranks of new recruits. He has physical pills, so Qian Shun doesn't have to worry. They will continue tomorrow. To stay here, they must follow orders. The next morning came, and they again began to run in circles with stones on their backs. And after that, when they finished training, they came for dinner. But as it turned out, there was no food left, and they had to go to bed hungry again. Ten days have passed. Their coach didn't expect them to last that long. Today they will learn intelligence. Enough training for them. He tells them to watch carefully, and after that he jumped into the bushes. He sat in the bushes and just turned his head. He says that it was impossible to notice him. He moved so quietly, like a tiger before the hunt. Every trap will be detected by him. Even in ten years, they will not be able to achieve such a result. Xiao Long and Qian Shun couldn't believe that they had suffered for so many days to learn this. But their coach gets angry and says that mastery of this skill cannot be achieved even in ten years. And after that, Xiao Long and Qian Shun jumped into the bushes. But a moment later, they were behind their instructor, but he did not expect this. And they also found all his traps that he had hidden from them. The bets say that there are only seven traps set here by the devil. It's actually a shame that some reconnaissance technique that Xiao Lang already surpassed at the age of eight turned out to be lousy. And after that, the instructor got very angry and began to attack the guys. But Xiao Lang stopped his attack. He grabbed the instructor by the face and slammed him into the ground. After this, the instructor began to become very indignant. The guys came up with a plan that some kind of mysterious beast attacked them. And the brave instructor sacrificed himself to save them. And after that, they beat him even more. After this, the instructor began to beg them for mercy. Although Xiao Lang is angry with him, you can't kill him. You need to deceive him. 
and after that he tells him that Lady Longya has long known that he has problems with the scouts, and Xiao Lang was sent to deal with it. The instructor has really big problems, but he hasn't told her about it yet. But when the instructor heard that Mrs. Lanya was involved here, he asks the guys for permission to talk to her personally, and then maybe she won't kill him. Xiao Long was a little scared because he could now tell Mrs. Longya everything. And after that, Xiao Long took some kind of pill and put it in the man's mouth. He says he just put poison in his mouth. He must take the antidote once a year or he will die. And from this day on, he must report all information about Madame Longya to Xiao Long. The next day, the guys arrived at the general headquarters of Lanya. The guard says that from now on, they will live here. If something happens, they will come for them. They can go outside on the first day of every month. At other times, they are not allowed to leave the territory. After that, when they went inside their room, they immediately saw soft beds here. Xiao Long also liked it and thinks that the beds here are much better than those in the barracks. Qian Shun wonders when they will receive the task again. Xiao Long doesn't know. It looks like they are under house arrest, but it's good that there are no tasks. The main character thinks that because of the vine, the speed of development has tripled. Perhaps in four years he will barely achieve the strength of the god of war. But this is not enough to save my aunt. After that, he takes out the ring that Uncle Dugu gave him, and he knows how to use it to become stronger. After that, they went outside and Qian Shun looked around and gave a sign that there was no one here. And after that, Xiao Lang summoned his soul. They hadn't seen her for a long time and he missed her. He began to use his soul. And at that moment, I took some kind of pill. Qian Shun sees that Master Lan is working very hard. He thinks he made the right choice. And after that, he noticed that Xiao Lang felt bad. When Qian Shun saw this, he immediately ran up to Xiao Lang and began to help him. Xiao Lang thanks Qian Shun for her help. He had wasted at least half of the healing power of this pill. Meanwhile, Jing Ming came to report that Xiao Lang and Qian Shun had entered General Longya's mansion. They caught Longya's attention fair, and they were hired as scouts for the Red Guard. The time for sharing the experiences of the Ten Core families has come to an end this year. Yun Shan led the young masters of ten families to Wuxian City and arrived in Qingyi City in three days. Dugu asks him if he is worried about Xiao Lang. Jing Ming says that the boy is very similar to him in his youth. Dugu says that the young talents of the Zhang Dynasty, the peerless geniuses of the Zi Dynasty, are the young men of war. If he is truly a peerless genius, then this is the best soil for his growth. Night fell. Xiao Lang and Qian Shun were fast asleep, and outside the window the silhouette of a man could be seen. The main character felt this and immediately woke up. He ran out into the street to find this man standing outside the window. This person has extremely high martial arts skills. Xiao Lang thought that it might be Qian Shun. Then the main character went to his partner and woke him up. After this, Qian Shun woke up and asked what happened. He slept so well. Xiao Long then noticed that someone had left a book on his desk. Looks like his people came here to check on them. It must be Jiang Ming. Xiao Lang will definitely not fail their expectations. The next morning, they were all raised and lined up on the street. Xiao Long asks other people what is going on here. The man says that the young talents from the top ten families of the Zhang Dynasty have come to the battlefield to test their strength, and they, the residents of Lonya, must meet them. They are eventually led by Princess Yun Shan. The diplomatic meeting will take place in Yangi Hui. Do they have permission to go there? Meanwhile, Miss Lanya also arrived at the scene. But the guard stopped her and said that entry was prohibited for her. Mrs. Lanya is only a formal leader, but not an actual leader. So access to the headquarters is closed. Mrs. Lanya wants the guard to call his boss so that he can meet with her in person. But then a woman named Nang Gong approaches them. Yuer, she asks them not to make noise. Nang Gong Yuer mocks Mrs. Longya and asks that she really has free time to play here. Miss Longya says that she is here to also greet the delegation. Nang Gong Yuer says that if the Red Guard meets the requirements, then they can pass. But the guard tells her that Mrs. Longya does not meet the requirements. The guard points his spear at Lady Longya's neck and says that the humble officer only recognizes military laws and listens only to military orders. If Miss Lanya wants to break in, the humble officer can only carry out the order. The mind will have to kill them. The man tells Mrs. Lanya to forget about all this. Nang Gong Yur always liked to play dirty tricks on them. This time the force is not on their side. They have no choice. 
Lady Lanya says that this general is not afraid. Today she wants to gain an irreplaceable experience. She wants to gain an irreplaceable experience. She wants to see who can stop her. She orders the Red Guard to move forward, and whoever dares to interfere is allowed to be executed on the spot. Xiao Lang thinks that this could end badly, because there are hundreds of them. This is an uprising. The man asks Mrs. Lanya to calm down so you can lose your head. Nang Gong Yur says that she supports such an idea and she has long wanted to fight her red guards. Qian Shun asks what they will do. Xiao Long tells him not to worry and just do as he does. And after that they took swords in their hands and shouted exclamations that read, For the ancestors, we stand until the end, for the glory of the lady. We are Mrs. Longya's people, and into the fire and rum. We cannot challenge Miss Lanya's order. Mrs. Lanya saw this and was glad that not everyone had renounced her yet. Nangong Yur sees that the Red Guard has rebelled and calls on his army to attack. But suddenly some bright ray appears and tells them to stop all this. People saw that it was a general. He had just arrived at this place. Mrs. Lanya greets her uncle, the general. The general is angry because the diplomatic mission is about to begin, but he does not understand what these scandals are. Nangong Yur makes excuses that Long Yafer was causing problems and she was just following orders. The general orders her to be let in, and also if Lanya Fair will create problems, then the general will execute her. After this, Lady Longya says that Xiao Lang and Qian Shun did the right thing and will go with her. Qian Shun asks Xiao Lang how he knew that they would be saved. Xiao Lang says that her father is a general. Adults cannot ignore when children are fooling around. They just attract attention. That's normal. After they went inside to meet the delegation, Xiao Long noticed that Cha Mu and Ni Kong also came here. And Miss Hong Du has noticeably lost weight during this time. Princess Yun Zi Shan was also here. She says that today she has brought a new generation of outstanding young people to the capital of the empire and also wants to ask the older generation for advice. She says that now the banquet can begin. The children of the palace will also take part in it. And at this moment, Mrs. Lanya hands the guys two chicken legs. She says they performed well today. After this, Xiao Long points his finger at the stage and says that Lady Nang Gong is dancing there. Lanya says that she knows how to flirt in public. She's like a Chin Lo Yu. She can pretend to be anyone. Lady Nang Gong stops dancing and says that, looking at Longya, one would think that she disdains secular art. Miss Lanya says she doesn't disdain it. She just despises it. So Miss Fair has better skills. Why doesn't she give a live performance, let all the gentlemen see her impeccable demeanor and let her be convinced? Xiao Long understands that this will ruin Mrs. Longya. Mrs. Longya says that she will now go backstage to change her clothes and calls Xiao Long and Qian Shun to go with her. After Miss Longya came backstage, she began to walk around in circles and think about what she could show them. She can do two sword dances, play the gujong a little, and can sing a few songs from northern Xinjiang. She tells the guys not to stand there like a pillar, but to also come up with something. The guys say that they don't know how to do anything either. She says she doesn't care. They have to find a solution for her or she'll kill them. This is a military order. And after a while, Zhao Lang came up with something. He asked to listen to him, and then she can surprise the audience. Meanwhile, the people in the hall are still waiting for Mrs. Lanya to come out. And at this moment, three people appear on the stage. The audience noticed that these were the two guards who left with her. They didn't understand why they dressed up as women. They learned the song, but he doesn't know how long she managed to remember. By combining this with dance, there is a chance to compensate for everything. And after that, Mrs. Lanya begins to play the instrument and sing the song. But Xiao Lang didn't expect that her performance would sound like this. To Red Bean, this song and these words seem very familiar. They guessed that it could be Xiao Lang. When they finished their performance, people began to applaud them. They say that this is truly a masterpiece that can be passed down through the centuries. The performance of Miss Lanya and the two heroes made the performance exciting and fabulous. The princess also gives a standing ovation and says that Mrs. Lanya's performance is simply excellent. She is a very talented girl. It was no wonder they went to northern Xinjiang to enjoy such a magnificent performance. And Mrs. Nangong Yur doesn't like how everyone praises Miss Lanya. Xiao Long and Qian Shun think it's time for them to change their clothes. After that, the two of them went to the room to change clothes, and one of the maids walked past them. But when this girl walked right next to Xiao Long, she immediately crashed into him and spilled water on him. 
The girl immediately begins to apologize and says that she didn't do it on purpose. She immediately took a napkin and began to wipe the main character's face. After this awkward incident, this Xiao Long said goodbye to this girl and moved on. After this, this maid immediately came to the princess and whispered something in her ear. After the guys get to the wardrobe to change clothes, Xiao Long asks Qian Shun, What was that maid just next to the princess? Qian Shun confirmed this. Xiao Lang says that this woman's intrigues are really not that deep. I suspected him in such a short time. They now feel that they need to be more careful to avoid accidents. After this, Mrs. Lanya rejoiced at what had happened. And the two guys did a good job, too. From now on, they will communicate with her. And from today on, they will be second in command. Xiao Lang fearfully says that they have just joined the Red Army. But if they mess up, she will destroy them. Red Bean communicates with Chamu, and Chamu says that it was definitely Xiao Lang. Besides him, they really can't remember anyone who could write the text. Red Bean says that Northern Xinjiang is a lot of fun. She hopes that she can meet him sooner and that he can avoid all the dangers. But Chamu thinks that Xiao Long won't give in so easily. Du Gu says that the young masters and the frontline girl are almost all within her sphere of influence. They also recognize Xiao Lan's identity almost immediately. At the moment, it's not worth it. Yunfei Yang is ignorant, and the girl is going through hardships. The entire Jiang dynasty is searched. The royal family and the main families are searched. But every time a clue appears, it disappears. He thinks that only three big families can have such power. Now that the solution is clear, it's better to go to the Black Dragon sect straight away. Dugu orders to collect all available and heads. It's time to move into battle. It's time for them to grow up. Night fell and Xiao Long was sleeping in his bed, but again there was some movement outside his window, and suddenly someone swung his knife to hit the guy. But the main character woke up in time and saw that they wanted to kill him. But Qian Shun woke up earlier and attacked this man to save Xiao Long. The guys managed to stop this man who tried to kill them in their sleep. This killer says he wants Lan Yafair, and if the guys tell him where she is, he won't touch them. Xiao Long tells Qian Shun to go and inform the others, and he will keep this killer here for now. But after that, this killer created some kind of powerful explosion, and he managed to get out of this house. Qian Shun, meanwhile, climbed onto the roof of the building and began shouting that there was a stranger here, and we need to protect Lan Yafair. The guys managed to stop this killer on the street, now he won't go anywhere. And this killer begins to attack Xiao Lang. But suddenly Mrs. Lanya herself came and asked them to stop this. Xiao Lang starts screaming for Mrs. Fair not to come closer. After that, she approached this killer and pulled off his mask. This killer turned out to be her father. She says that every time she changes a deputy, he makes sure to conduct a surprise inspection. The guys were surprised that this man was her father. He says they don't know yet how quickly she changes people, but he always checks on everyone. But they did a good job. The old man liked the way they protected his daughter. Longya says that all the guards at Longya Mansion are of the general level, and it is almost impossible for people to get through. Xiao Long knew when this man first entered his room that it was one of his own, so he did not kill him right away. Her father says that although the boys reacted well, their level was not high enough. He feels that Fair needs to be surrounded by warlord-level security. Longya Fair says that she doesn't need these lifeless guys. But her father is worried about her, because the god of war gave the order to prepare for the autumn hunt in the war with the Z dynasty. The girl was delighted, and said that in this case, her red guard would be able to take part. The father has only one request for his daughter, that she return alive. The father turns to the guys and says that if even one hair falls from Fair's head, he will destroy them. The girl tells the guys to come back and rest. Tomorrow they will go to receive the tiger talisman and ask them to prepare for war. Xiao Long didn't think that everything would happen so quickly, but in battle he will improve much better. In the two dynasties, countless young children grow up every year and go to northern Xinjiang or the snowy desert city to test themselves. Many of them are elite children of countless royal families. The families hope that they can quickly grow up in battle, become kings of the younger generation, and more importantly, master more troops. Every autumn, the armies of both sides stand silently, and when the elite children of both sides lead their troops into northern Xinjiang, a new round of war begins in the psychological forest. After a while, many troops went to war. The girl says that among all these troops, there are only a hundred of her red guards. Xiao Long asks not to consider his concern about betrayal, 
but there are dozens of armies, and each has more than 10,000 warriors. The opponents have much more troops. The Red Guard army will be immediately destroyed, but their lives do not matter, and only the safety of Mrs. Lanya is important. Mrs. Lanya says that if they miss this opportunity, they will have to wait until next year. But she doesn't care. There must be a battle. Xiao Lan is the deputy commander, which means we must do this. Xiao Long heard that this time the Z dynasty also sent several new leaders, and there were several tens of thousands. The war can last several months. He suggests that they first listen to news from the front lines, train their soldiers, and formulate battle strategies before attacking. The girl agreed with Xiao Lan. Xiao Long thinks that if these hundred fighters go to war, they will simply be trampled. And after that, they went into the forest. Qian Shun asks what they should do next. Do they really want to go straight to the front line? Xiao Long says there are too few of them. Lon Yafeir is protected by people from the military leaders, so Qian Shun doesn't need to worry about it. Now is not the time for conversation. He wants to practice and let the purple vine grow more. Qian Shun understood everything and went to look for the mysterious beasts. Meanwhile, Xiao Long summoned the purple vine. He says that today is the time to eat a little. After some time, Qian Shun returned. He said that there were poisonous scorpions, sandworms, sand ants, and other low-level beasts nearby. Although their numbers are astonishing, they do not pose a threat. The main character says that the soil here is so loose that it is suitable for creatures that build nests underground, and this place is like a treasure to him. Sand Ant Peak of the Second Level Abyssal Beast Xiao Lang says there is a nest of sand ants under their feet, thousands of them. Xiao Lang sent a purple vine underground and ordered it to consume everything in its path. The main character notices that the vine begins to grow very quickly. And this is all from one nest. What if there are ten of them? How about twenty? This opportunity should not be missed. After two hours, this purple vine had increased in size greatly. Xiao Lang says that the vine has grown to eleven meters. If it grows even more, the control range will double. But for the main character, this seems too little. This vine has grown so much, but the ability to absorb has not developed. The level of the creatures must be too low. Qian Shun says that maybe when the forest is filled with higher level creatures, it will be possible to hunt more. But Xiao Long says that this is too dangerous for the current army of hundreds. The Red Guard needs to be strengthened. After some time, Xiao Lan and Qian Shun return to his army and the lady yells at them that they were gone for a very long time. The protagonist says that when returning to the commander, they discovered that the number of low-level beasts in the forest was astonishing, so they stayed for a while to test their skills. Xiao Long calls Miss Longya to come with him and he will show her everything. When they arrived at the place, they did not see any animals. But Xiao Long asks them to wait a little and the show will start soon. And at that moment, Qian Shun runs out of the forest, and many different animals are chasing him. When everyone saw this, they were scared because these animals were of the third level. They don't understand how Xiao Long can deal with so many animals. Even the Red Guard finds it difficult to cope with them. And one of the warriors shouts at the main character that if he cannot cope with all this, he will answer according to all military laws. But Xiao Long assures them all that everything will be under control. Mrs. Lanya decides to trust him, but then they want to see his method. And after that, Xiao Long shouted for Qian Shun to stop. After all, he was now out of range of the attack. And suddenly, all these animals were pierced with needles in a moment. Lady Lanya and the entire Red Guard were shocked that so many animals were destroyed in an instant. Xiao Long boasts to the commander that this was just a small demonstration of his technique. Mrs. Lanya was very impressed with his skills. She wonders why he needs such power. Xiao Long invites her to return. He has other plans for this technique. The main character believes that this will become the deadliest weapon of the Red Guard. When they return, Xiao Lang says that the Psychic Forest is a very dangerous place. If you place traps correctly, any army can suffer. If the leader allows him, he and Qian Shun will immediately select people to train. Lady Lanya was still very impressed by this and gives the go-ahead for the protagonist to do so. This technique is so powerful that it will definitely benefit them and it will definitely reward them. After this, the girl approached Xiao Lang and said that she was becoming more and more interested in him. He is her blessing. But their conversation was interrupted by one of the soldiers. He came here with a report. 
the advance army was attacked by the Z dynasty in the Psychic Forest, led by two king-level martial princes and several influential people by a mysterious sect. Their army was lost. The leader of Nivea and dozens of other leaders died in battle or were tragically defeated. Thousands of people died. Lady Lanya was shocked that her army suffered such heavy casualties. And then Xiao Lang remembered how Uncle Dugu told him that the Blood Sect would recruit disciples from outside sects, give them secret medicines and secret skills for their development, and send them to various battlefields for real combat. And those who survive will become the mainstay of the Z Dynasty. Xiao Long is angry because the death of his grandfather and parents lies with the Blood Sect. He hates her fiercely and will completely destroy this Blood Sect. Mrs. Longya saw that Xiao Lang's heart was heavy for some reason, and she asked him what happened. But the main character pretended that nothing had happened, and said that he just heard that the army was brutally defeated and was very angry for some time. Mrs. Lanya tells him not to worry. They must repay this bloody debt to the Z dynasty. She asks if Northern Xinjiang knows about this news. But another person came and reported that a young master had joined the army. Ni Kong and the young patriarch, Cha Mu. Her Royal Highness is sitting on the northern border. Leader Zhuo Jian and Leader Dong Fang also led the army into the psychic forest. Mrs. Lanya says that now her Red Guards will also join the war. And also now everyone must listen to the Deputy Commander-in-Chief, Yao Shi, that is Xiao Lang. And after training, they will immediately go to the psychological forest to avenge their fallen compatriots. And after this order, the entire army began to prepare to enter the war. After they all disperse, Qian Shun asks Xiao Lang if he is afraid that his identity may soon be revealed. But the main character is not interested in this. If these people are really a blood sect, they will kill them all. He will find another way if his identity is revealed. The blood sect killed his parents and his grandfather. He won't let them go so easily. Qian Shun understood what Xiao Lang wanted and he would follow him. But now, Qian Shun needs to take care of the secret operation first, and the main character will remain in the dark forest for a while. If something happens, Xiao Long wants his friend to notify him. After that, Xiao Lang came to the dark forest. Now the most important thing for him is to increase his strength. Since he has already gathered himself, he will give it his all. He summons his purple vine to devour everything and turn the entire area into his hunting grounds. Three days passed after that, when Qian Shun returned, he did not recognize the dark forest and does not understand what happened in these three days. Xiao Lang says that Xian Kun came on time and now he asks you to help him test how strong the purple vine is now. And after that, Xiao Lang attacked his comrade. Qian Shun could hardly dodge the attacks of this purple vine, but at one moment his leg was suddenly grabbed by the sprouts of this vine that burst out from the ground. And after that, one of the sprouts of this vine stopped just a couple of centimeters from his eye. Qian Shun says that he tried very hard to dodge, and Xiao Long's soul becomes so terrifying that he even felt scared. Xiao Long says that in these three days, he hunted down a large number of low- and mid-level beasts at the edge of the forest and finally achieved excellent results. All of his attributes were greatly improved, but unfortunately the ability to devour was not developed. If such a soul is discovered, it will definitely cause a big mess. Those in the Blood Sect and Black Dragon Society will definitely want to get rid of him. Also, the main character is afraid that he will be a thorn in the eyes of all the powerful, so for now, he must keep this a secret. When he becomes strong enough, he will trample all his enemies and shake the entire continent. Qian Shun swears that he will always follow young master Xiao Lang. But the main target right now is the Z Dynasty army in the Psychic Forest. Qian Shun also says that he has received news from the front. The Zhang Dynasty has been defeated. 10,000 Donfan guards. The Aoran were defeated in the bloody autumn. Donfan Aoran is on the verge of death, and all the dead soldiers were torn to pieces. Wan Wei, led by the general Luo Feng's son, was defeated by the Z Dynasty prince Bloody Red Sun and out of 10,000 people, only 4,000 returned. Only Do Zhan was able to defeat the army of the Blood Moon Z dynasty, but suffered heavy losses. The Zhang dynasty, contrary to expectations, suffered defeats in this autumn hunt. The Z dynasty will be the winner, and after that they decide to return to the Red Guard. In such a short period of time, tens of thousands of soldiers, military leaders, and reserve leaders died. 
Their army's morale has plummeted and now they need a big victory. Master Chamu Master, Ni Kang are both geniuses and good commander rank generals. The princess hopes that they can defeat the Z dynasty and raise their army. The subordinates are determined to complete their mission. The princess thinks that this autumn hunt is a shame for the Zhang dynasty. She can only pray for a hero to be born. Meanwhile, Xiao Long sat and meditated. His skills are progressing evenly. He will be able to enter the battlefield in a week. He thinks that a week with the pill and the purple vine will be enough to break through to the combat commander. Xiao Long then took the book that his uncle Du Gu had left for him. He reads it, but he doesn't understand anything. And this is a technique of holding your breath, a technique of hidden form, a joint technique. You can hide your breathing after practice. A warrior above the fourth realm cannot be exposed by the true realm. Using the technique of holding your breath in combination with the technique of form stealth, it cannot be detected tens of thousands of kilometers away. If it could hide the purple vine, that would be great. Although he cannot understand the stealth technique, so he tries to practice the breath-holding technique. So Xiao Lang sat for four days, and for the first time he experienced breakthrough success. Qian Shun says that the speed of development of the main character is truly amazing. Now he wants to hunt down another wave of beasts and test his strength at this stage. Qian Shun is alarmed that the main character wants to kill again because in this forest the animals are almost extinct. And Xiao Long is impatiently waiting for the bloody sect and the Z dynasty to pay for everything they have done. Low-level beasts can no longer satisfy the purple vine. You need to enter the psychological forest to hunt bigger game. The dynasty's army was defeated again. Dozens of families lost many heirs and Lord Dongfang Xuan's son was killed. More than 20,000 soldiers died, but Zhuo Zhan won a small victory. Mrs. Lanya put her hands to her head because it was bad news. Support came quickly, but lost even faster. Only Zhuo Jian is trying to hold on with all his might. Everything is very sad. Xiao Long thinks that every noble family did not skimp on sending an heir to the front. This is all just for the sake of military merit. With such upbringing, everyone's strength improves, but this generation is quite frail. He simply does not know who could become the final winner in this autumn hunt. Afterwards, Xiao Long says that he has a report for the lady. Mrs. Lanya was glad that he came. She heard that the main character had been practicing his skills lately. She can't wait to see when the Red Guard will be able to show off their skills in battle. Xiao Long says everything is going well, and in three days the army will be able to go against the enemy. Then the commander decides that the exit will be in three days, and now the main character and his friend are responsible. The Red Guard will immediately become famous by shedding the blood of the enemy. The girl thinks that Yao Shi can succeed. He works hard to improve. It's a pity that he's just a barbarian. His rank is too low. But Mrs. Lanya apparently fell in love with him, and she wants to be close to him. The main character understands that this girl often thinks about him, it's a pity that his true identity is unknown to her. In any case, when the autumn hunt ends, Yao Shi will disappear. Three days later, the Red Guards march to war. Lady Longya says that ahead is the Zhang Bei army, which is responsible for hosting the autumn hunt. She wants to report this to the princess in the city first. Xiao Long asks her to temporarily lead the Red Army and allow him and Qian Shun to go into the psychic forest to investigate the situation and find traps. The girl says that this forest is too dangerous for two to go there. But the main character assures her that they will be extremely careful. Moreover, we are talking about intelligence, so who else besides them? Then the girl asks them to return safely. If they contribute, they will be rewarded. After the guys arrived at the place, they saw that the place was very gloomy, and they needed to be careful. They want to check this forest first for the presence of strong animals and enemies. Half an hour later, the protagonist devoured many beasts. The effect was too good. The purple vine had grown to 80 meters. And suddenly Xiao Long notices that his purple vine noticed something and began to crawl somewhere. But then Qian Shun appears and says that he has discovered a team of bloody barbarian scouts ahead. About seven or eight miles from here, their levels are high. Xiao Lang was pleased with this. He was going to use these poor barbarians for training. After this, the main character arrived at these barbarians and immediately grabbed them with a purple vine. Qian Shun was very surprised that these barbarians died instantly. Qian Shun did not expect that they would go so far into their domain, but Xiao Long doesn't think that they only came for reconnaissance, so they need to be on their guard. After that, 
The main character sprouted his purple vine into the ground and felt that there were indeed more than a hundred people walking ahead along the edge of the forest. This is a small army. They realized that these scouts were following them and transmitting information from a distance. The main character tells his friend to go left, and he himself will go to the right. If these are truly bloody barbarians, then we must find a way to get rid of them. But if the situation turns out badly, you need to retreat immediately. After that, Xiao Lang jumped into the bushes and used the controlled breathing technique. And suddenly from these bushes, he can see that there are several people there. Chamu hostage! But suddenly, Qian Shun came up behind him and said that there was a problem. Hundreds of warriors led by a traitor, and they need to leave. But Xiao Long says that you can't leave. They captured Chamu. He needs to be saved. But Qian Shun says that the situation is not simple. This is the king of war, and they won't cope. But this did not frighten the main character at all. He had not yet killed the king of war. Even with the help of a sneak attack, it is not certain that they will win. But he is not afraid of anything. He will simply defend himself. If things go badly, then Qian Shun should just run in that direction. After this, Xiao Long began to wait for his enemies when they approached. The main character sees this barbarian with the title of King of War, but he feels that his strength will be much higher. And when these barbarians approached a sufficient distance, the Purple Vine immediately began to attack them. These barbarians immediately realized that it was an ambush for them. Xiao Long looks at them with a smirk and realizes that they have already lost. But the leader of these barbarians was unshakable and ordered all his people to be on alert. He orders his men to find their enemies and finish them off. The main character was scared because this barbarian god of war didn't even lift a finger, abandoned his troops and sent them after Cha Mu. Xiao Long realizes that this person cannot be let go and he immediately attacked him with his spirit. But this barbarian noticed that he was being attacked, but he was not afraid and began to attack in response. But Xiao Long was very lucky because his friend managed to save him from a terrible death. Qian Shun grabbed the main character by the hand and began to lead him away. He already said that they couldn't cope with the king of war. The barbarian king of war does not understand who these guys are and what this strange plant is. In any case, these two guys are a danger to him, and he wants to eliminate them. The people who were carrying the wounded Chamu were meanwhile running away from the barbarians, and they noticed that they had broken away because the barbarians had been detained by someone. Obviously, this is a small army. Has anyone really decided to go to their death? But that doesn't matter now. Now they need to escape from the forest and call for reinforcements to surround the bloody barbarians. Only this mysterious force that helped them may be destroyed by then. Meanwhile, Qian Shun and Xiao Lang are still running away from this barbarian, but he catches up with them. Xiao Lang says that it's okay and he has everything under control and they just need to stay on track. After that, Xiao Lang dropped some seeds from his purple vine. Thus, this barbarian became entangled in this vine. The barbarian realizes that this plant can penetrate armor, but he can't stop. He understands that they want to detain him. Qian Shun says that he senses a very strong beast nearby, but Xiao Long says that this is a gift that he prepared for him. The barbarian says that it is impossible to escape from him, and they simply decided to give up, but unfortunately for them, he loves to watch his prey die. But suddenly, at that moment, the ground under our feet began to tremble, and some kind of beast crawled out of this ground. It was some kind of huge spider. When this barbarian saw it, he was also very scared. It was a level 7 beast, a one-eyed spider. The barbarian was very frightened by this spider and began to run away from it. Xiao Long thinks that the beast that the Purple Vine found is incredible. They say this beast once killed thousands of soldiers during an autumn hunt. How did he find it? But what should he be afraid of? Xiao Long wants him to fight the bloody barbarian, after which the purple vine will absorb him to strengthen him. How can such a magnificent king of war be killed? They want to see his desperate attempts. The bloody barbarian understands that this spider thread is very strong. He has nowhere to run. Just fight to the death. He tries his best to kill this spider, but suddenly a purple vine grabbed his leg and began to hold him in one place. And the spider took advantage of this moment and pierced the bloody barbarian. Xiao Lang rejoices that the seventh level beast and one war king will be absorbed by his purple vine. The main character did not think that the barbarian would be able to inflict so much damage on this spider, and he wants to take advantage of this chance. He says we need to take advantage of opportunities properly. Yi Qian Shun needs to learn something, but Qian Shun is afraid that even ten lives are not enough for him. This is the light of evolution, 
the purple vine has become more resilient. This is the result of evolution. Although it grew to 150 meters and increased its strength, its ability to absorb did not become stronger. Is this all because the vine develops other properties? There are still bloody barbarians walking around here somewhere. We need to try the force on them. And after that, they found one of the bloody barbarians and the ground began to crack under his feet. A purple vine burst out from under this ground and completely wrapped itself around this barbarian. And she immediately dragged this bloody barbarian underground. Qian Shun says that Xiao Long's soul has already turned into an independent unit. Stability and control have also improved. He must have absorbed a level 7 beast and improved his stats. Only after the purple vine materialized, its corroding and absorbing skills became a little worse, and it was also easier to detect. But now you can use the web to control the king of war. Isn't this wonderful? But that depends on whether it improves in the future. Now the entity is very fragile. It is best to deal with low-level opponents. But Xiao Long came up with something. After that, they again found a crowd of bloody barbarians. These bloody barbarians noticed a man in a cloak standing in the forest. It was Xiao Lang. He pretended to be the wizard Alishan. And he says he will punish them all. He is casting some kind of spell to scare these bloody barbarians. And after that, he launched his purple vine into them. These barbarians thought that it was really a demon. Xiao Long asks them to return and report to their master. The wrath of the mountain god has come. It will soon engulf their entire army. And after that, the barbarians ran away in fear they really believed. But this is just the beginning. He is going to sow panic among his enemies. When they are completely confused, that will be the best time to destroy them. After this, the barbarians came to their leader, Shu Hong Yu, the third prince of the Si dynasty, and told him that Shi Shan was dead. When the scouts arrived, only traces of the battle and the remains of a one-eyed spider were found. Master Zishan must have been attacked by the one-eyed spider after the trick, and there weren't even any bones left. The leader of the barbarians wants to know where this wizard comes from and is able to kill his general, the king of war. They say that for now the wizard is still attacking small units of their army. According to the survivor's description, his sorcery is strange and terrifying, killing invisible people. He also claimed that the wrath of the mountain god would soon engulf their army. But their leader says that this is nonsense. He has never heard of such a powerful wizard from the Zhang dynasty. He orders them to immediately send heavy troops to capture. He wants to see who is playing the fool. But then a man came to the barbarian leader and reported that Master Xu Shi had been killed by Zhuo Jianyam. His army of 8,000 was also halved. But the most important thing is that he is the fourth son of Marshal Xu. Now he doesn't know how to explain this to the marshal. He wants them to immediately send a message to the second brother, Xiu Gui, as well as Xiu Xiang and Xiu Suo, so that their armies will come to the aid of his troops. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang says that after a busy day, hundreds of bloody barbarians, 20 generals, and three respected warriors were killed. Once the purple vine has swallowed them, Armor and debris can be collected to strengthen his army. Qian Shun reported that the army of the Zhang dynasty was heading here. There are many kings of war there. Zhuo Zhan approaching him. His troops say they are the guardians of Jian. There should be a battle here, but they do not understand where the bloody barbarian troops are. Xiao Lang says that he is from the Red Guard led by Longya, and he was ordered to conduct reconnaissance here, and they don't know what happened. Zhuo Jian says that the smell of blood is still in the air. It is obvious that the battle has just ended. And also their smell has been here for a long time. He doesn't believe that they can't know what happened here. Xiao Lang and Qian Shun were very surprised by this outcome of events. Zhuo Jian is very angry and says that they cannot hide military information. Disobeying orders and lying will result in death on the spot. Xiao Lang knelt down and began to report that he had indeed hidden something. He was attacked by about ten people as well as two warriors. He thinks that the Zhuo family is not easy to deal with. If Zhuo Jian suspects something here, he might get into trouble. Zhuo Jian asks what about the dozen bloody barbarians, and he doesn't understand how they killed ten people without getting injured. Xiao Long says that they went into hiding and acted, killing with pits created by Ali Shan sorcery. Zhuo Jian does not understand what kind of witchcraft this is that can kill a dozen bloody barbarian warriors. He wants the boys to demonstrate this, and if they lie, 
they will be treated as spies, and suddenly some kind of purple glow appears around them. Now it is not surprising to them that he can kill dozens of bloody barbarians. Zhuo Zhan likes it, that two strong men actually have such skills. This makes Zhuo Zhan happy. He says that these guys are not bad, and he invites them to join Zhuo Zhan's army. Xiao Long thanks him for such an invitation, but the two of them are currently loyal to Commander Longya. Zhuo Jian says that he will talk to Longya personally. He persuades them and says that Zhuo Jian's army would be the best choice. Xiao Long understands that the power of the Purple Vine is very attractive. Zhuo Jian is determined to hire him. He doesn't know what to do now. And then, one of the warriors approaches them and reports that the Commander-in-Chief Don Fan is leading an army to provide support. He has a request to see the leader. Don Fan Aoran says that it is amazing that Zhuo Jian actually killed a disciple of the mysterious sect. It was truly amazing. Aoran is not deservedly praised. He destroyed an insignificant sect, and he beheaded the emperor's son. The identity of this sect disciple does not seem to be simple. The bloody barbarians were so angry that the entire army was chasing after them. He suggests returning to camp first. Xiao Lang says that now the bloody barbarians are attacking. They must avoid them, find an opportunity, and let them return to camp first. Meanwhile, Zhuo Jian has returned to the princess, and she congratulates him on his victorious return. The festive party led by Zhuo is ready. The princess will accompany him this evening. Xiao Long asks that accompanying the princess is a good thing. After the prince and Xu's disciples were destroyed, they too can receive the reward. But the guys understand that it still takes time. Although Zhuo Jian can't take care of them now, the boys are going to meet the Red Guards. After the guys returned, they began to discuss strategy. Xiao Long says that they first received information about the Zi Dynasty, then went to Longya and met Zhuo Jian. But Qian Shun thinks that this recording may cause doubts in others. But Xiao Long suggests using witchcraft as a cover, after which they but their conversation was interrupted by Jing Ming. He came into their tent and said that he was afraid they had already aroused suspicion. The guys were shocked when they saw that Jing Ming was here. They didn't understand how he got here. Jing Ming says that he was sent to them because many in the capital suspect them. He asks Xiao Long why he still communicates with Zhuo Jian and what happened to the bloody barbarians. Jing Ming begins to scold the guys and says that Xiao Long refined the divine soul killed the war king and many beasts, including the seventh level, killed almost a hundred people, and met Zhuo Jian. They really don't know what it's like to hold back. The main character admits that this is just the beginning. His main target is the mysterious sect and the emperor's son. He guesses that this is the blood sect. Jing Ming confirms that based on the latest information from the battlefield, this sect is the disciples of the blood sect. The master knew that Xiao Long would attack the Zi dynasty at any cost, so he came up with a strategy to prevent them from revealing their identity. This is a disguise pill and a cancellation pill after returning their appearance. They must use the teleportation of the hidden sect, and after that, go to Death Mountain and carry out a massacre there, and then return back. This way, everyone will think that Xiao Lang is on Death Mountain, and no one will doubt Yao Shi of northern Xinjiang. This is a great trick. After this, Jing Ming leaves and finally says that Northern Xinjiang and Death Mountain are separated by thousands of miles, but with the help of teleportation, it will not take much time, and he tells the guys to go with him. Xiao Long also leaves and tells Qian Shun to stay here and keep an eye on everything that is happening. Thus, while remaining in Alishan without suspicion, he would be able to stage a battle in Northern Xinjiang. Two hours later, the princess was informed that someone had seen Xiao Lang on Death Mountain. The man confirms that it was really him. According to him, he encountered a killer. The killer's body was corroded to the bones. It could only be him. The princess didn't think that he would end up on Death Mountain. Then who is Yao Shi? Zhang Ming says that now that the suspicion with Xiao Lang and Qian Shun has subsided, you don't have to worry too much. Now they don't have to worry recklessly. But the Z Dynasty can also hunt them. You need to be extremely careful. After this, Xiao Long reincarnated back into an image that was not his own and asks Zhang Ming to thank his uncle on his behalf and also tell everyone that he will definitely wash the Zi dynasty with blood and glorify the name of Yao Shi throughout northern Xinjiang. After Xiao Long returned, he saw that Qian Shun was sitting upset for some reason, but he immediately became happy when he saw that Xiao Long had returned. 
Long Ye came to him, she wants to know what connects them with Zhuo Jian. Qian Shun whispers in Xiao Long's ear that not long ago, Zhuo Jian sent someone to send an invitation, and the commander agreed. Xiao Long bowed to the lady and said that while returning, they met Zhuo's group in the psychological forest and returned together. Mrs. Longya did not believe Xiao Long's words and said that after the first meeting, he immediately invited them to a banquet. Xiao Lang says that Zhuo Jian met them when they were killing the bloody barbarians. He wanted to lure him to his side. After this, Lady Longya begins to attack the main character and says that he betrayed the Red Guard by taking refuge with Zhuo Jian. But Xiao Long stops her and says that he swears that Yao Shi's only commander is her. Mrs. Lanya asks if he is telling the truth. The main character confirms that this is why he refused Zhuo Jian, but he did not think that he would try to resolve this issue through her. She says that Zhuo Jian is very cunning. Now she wants to see how he will steal people from her. But Xiao Lang says that Zhuo Jian became famous in the war. He has great influence. If she tries to quarrel with him, then most likely it will backfire on her. After this, Xiao Lang says that he has a proposal for how to take revenge. The next day, Xiao Lang and Qian Shun came to Commander Zhuo Jian. He was expecting them and allowed them to pass. Today's banquet was prepared especially for them. Xiao Lang thanks him and asks him to wait a second. Today they came to a meeting to respond to his proposal. Zhuo Jian was glad that the guys decided to accept his offer. But the main character says that everything is just the opposite. They are loyal to the Lanya family and will never betray the Red Guard. After this, Commander Zhuo Jian was too angry. But Xiao Long says that he has already thought about everything and leaves. But a bunch of guards got in the way of the guys and stopped them. Zhuo Jian gets up and says that as long as he is in Zhuo's camp, they may not even think about leaving here. He persistently invites the guys to join the Zhuo family and go with him, otherwise he will use force. Xiao Long says that Zhuo Jian was unsuccessful and immediately resorted to brute force. He wants to see if he can hold it. And after that, the commander gives the order to his soldiers to grab the guys. And then Zhuo Jian himself begins to attack and attacks the guys. He punched Xiao Lang so hard that he flew out of the tent. But then Mrs. Longya suddenly appears. She wants Zhuo Jian to stay away from her people. Zhuo Jian says Longya Fair has gone crazy. She not only infiltrated Zhuo's camp, but also caused harm to the guards. He also reminds her that according to military laws, the commander can kill them all on the spot. After this, a battle broke out between them. She had long noticed that he was not a good person. After that, Zhuo Jian used some kind of force and threw Long Ya away fair from myself. The main character managed to react and caught his mistress. After this, Mrs. Lan Ya Fair begins to scream loudly and call for help, and suddenly her father appeared, and he was very unhappy that someone dared to touch his daughter. Because of this, Zhuo Jian was very scared. Zhuo Jian guessed that they had planned this from the very beginning. Zhuo Jian became like this in a second? Calling my father for help was the right decision. The father immediately approached his daughter and asked what happened here. She says that the general, Zhuo Jian, wanted to take away the deputy commanders from her by force, and when she tried to persuade him, he decided to kill her and the Red Guard. Along with her father was Jing Li. This is the second most powerful person in this kingdom. Zhuo Jian immediately starts apologizing and says it's a misunderstanding. He only invited them to his place, but Mrs. Lanya burst into his place. This is self-defense. Miss Lanya says that Zhuo Jian used force and cannot admit it. Her father was very angry because he wanted to steal two of her subordinates from her daughter. If the Longya family means nothing in his eyes, then he needs to be taught a lesson. Jing Li says that he thinks they should stop. He didn't want to harm the Longya family. They just misunderstood each other, and both are to blame. You just need to let him know that next time he will answer strictly according to military discipline. Zhuo Jian is still very afraid and says that he really didn't want to offend anyone. He hopes that General Lanya can forgive him. You shouldn't do something like this in a camp. After that, her father ordered his daughter to get out of here. Mrs. Lanya finally teases Zhuo Jian and says that not even half a day will pass before Zhuo Jian will become the laughing stock of the army. After they left, Zhuo Jian understands that simple barbarians were able to do such a thing. You need to be more careful with these two. Jing Li says that as soon as Zhuo Jian entered the battle, he created so many problems. He doesn't understand how he can be so arrogant. 
He asks you to think about your behavior, and then they will talk about rewards and promotion. After they returned home, the father began to scold his daughter and said that her action was reckless. But Lan Fair says that Zhuo Jian brazenly recruited her people. She couldn't stand it. Her father says that these two guys are not worth breaking into the barracks without hesitation and becoming Zhuo's enemy. But the girl defends the guys and says that Yao Shi and Yao Ji are the most capable people in her army. Soon the father will understand what they are worth. In this case, during this autumn hunt, the father expects results from them. The girl says that she really hastily accused Xiao Lang of betrayal. In the future, she will trust him, and he will prove his strength to her. After this, the girl happily says that tomorrow she will order her army to get ready to go. The next day, all the people were talking about how Commander Zhuo and Commander Longya fought over two soldiers yesterday. It is said that these two barbarians are capable of witchcraft, causing the wrath of the mountain god. They killed hundreds of bloody barbarians. Zhuo decided to forcefully recruit them to his side which angered Commander Longya. The promotion was lost, not the best outcome for Zhuo Jian. The people also told the princess about this that Longya had suddenly arrived, after which the general decided to greet and resolve the issue in Zhuo Jian's camp. The princess realizes that war is just around the corner and asks where those two guys went. They answer her that they went to the psychological forest along with the Red Guard. The princess orders that their location be closely monitored, especially these two, and report if anything happens. Xiao Lan turns to her commander and says that in fact her subordinates have prepared a little surprise for her. The subordinates buried the corpses of their enemies in one place, hundreds of soldiers, ten generals, and three commanders-in-chief, as well as one war king. When the girl and the army heard this, they were simply shocked. Xiao Lan reveals that in this place most of them were killed by traps and witchcraft. As for the king of war, he happened to lure him into a trap to a seventh-level beast and deal the final blow to him. Mrs. Lanya is impressed. They did a great job. And now she orders all this garbage to be removed. The girl says that when they return, she will definitely reward him. Now she wants to hear his next plan. Xiao Lang reports that now all the bloody barbarians are walking in groups. They can set traps and use bait to catch large fish. After this, the girl orders the army to enter the forest to hunt down the enemy. After some time, the Red Guard soldiers set all the traps. One of the soldiers came with a report. A group of bloody barbarians, about 300 people, was discovered ahead. Mrs. Lanya was happy about this because this is a golden catch for her army. This is the first battle they must win. Xiao Long says that this is a small unit, an ordinary research group, and a vanguard. So they must make decisions quickly and beware of their support. After this, the girl orders the army that the scout units are responsible for luring the enemy. Everyone else is in ambush. As the barbarians approached and fell into a trap, the Red Guards began to attack. Lady Lanya orders that every effort should be made to kill each of the bloody barbarians. Xiao Long and Qian Shun were sitting in the bushes, and Qian Shun invites them to join. But the main character asks him to wait. Their goal is high-level bloody barbarians who can bypass the traps. Meanwhile, several barbarians ran past their bushes. Xiao Lang immediately used his purple vine and grabbed those warriors. But one of the barbarians managed to get a horn and blew it. Xiao Lang understands that this will not lead to anything good. The main character understands that this is a signal for help. These bloody barbarians are the vanguard. The third prince of Xiao Hong Yu is coming here. At that moment, a man brought them a report that there was an army in the distance. Among them are several kings of war. The main character understands that the enemy has a very high speed. He and Qian Shun will delay them, and Mrs. Lanya must lead the Red Guard to escape from the forest. One of the Red Guard soldiers grabs Mrs. Lanya and says that it is time for them to leave, and if no one helps, the Red Guard will be overtaken. After that, the entire Red Guard left, and they wished the two deputy commanders to stay alive. Qian Shun invites Xiao Long to retreat, this time with a thousand strong army and many generals. The previous method didn't work. The main character says that this was not the last option. He wants to show off a new trick. And after that, the purple vine wrapped the guys tightly. And a moment later, she carried them underground. This way they can avoid the attention of the king of war. And when it's all over, they need to run away with all their might. Meanwhile, the barbarian army was getting closer and closer to them. 
After that, Xiao Long climbed out and used a breath-holding technique. When the barbarians arrived at the place where they heard the call of the horn, they did not see the enemy. One of the barbarians reports to the third prince that the enemy has evacuated towards the camp and they are clearing the place with the traps they left. The third prince understands that if these people left traps, then they are not Zhuo Jian's soldiers. He wants to find out who they are as soon as possible. And after these words, the purple vine immediately began to attack these barbarians. The purple vine grabbed the third prince and dragged him underground. The rest of the barbarian army began to chase their commander. They jumped into a pit that led to an unknown destination. Xiao Long came to Chan Yushun and brought their target with him. This is the third prince of the Zi dynasty, Xu Hong Yu. After that, they ran away, and Qian Shun realizes that these barbarians are very fast. Xiao Long tells Qian Shun to follow him. The main character will release the energy and blow up the tunnel. Will use a purple vine to guide his path. Meanwhile, the tunnel in front of the barbarians began to collapse. They were going to make their way in time to save their commander. Qian Shun notices that the speed of those barbarians has dropped noticeably, and they now have a chance to break away from them. And after some time, the guys got out, and they had the third prince of the Z dynasty hostage. After this, the main character knocked out the third prince, and they want to bring their people here as soon as possible. Qian Shun was very happy that they now had the third prince hostage. He is probably still quite green and has just joined the army. Otherwise, it would have been much more difficult to catch him. Now the autumn hunt will be in their favor. Meanwhile, the barbarians sound their horn as quickly as possible that their prince has been captured. With their rank, it is impossible to cope with the king of war, especially since there are only two of them. They cannot stop an army of a thousand people. They are martyrs. But Mrs. Longya says that she will go to save Yao Shi. She does not believe that he could die. The rest of the Red Guard army is crying that the deputy commanders sacrifice themselves and save them. But they didn't have to cry for long, and Xiao Lang and Qian Shun immediately returned to them. Lady Lanya and the entire Red Guard army were shocked that their second-in-commands were alive. Xiao Lang says that he used the pits to escape, but there is something else. Lanya immediately ran up to him fair and hugged him tightly. She says that she was very worried about him. This time the main character brought them one surprise. The third prince of the Zi dynasty is Xu Hong Yu, main hall. The princess was brought a report that a huge army of bloody barbarians was approaching their border. They are going aggressively. Many troops of their army were trapped. Report! Other troops are also facing a fierce attack from the bloody barbarians. They are asking for support. The troops led by Donfan encountered a large number of bloody barbarians and suffered heavy losses. Zhuo Jian's army be immediately sent to help. They need to repel the enemy's attack. We need to find out the purpose of their raid as soon as possible. They brought another report that the Red Guard has returned. They met Xu Hong Yu's army. The princess warily asks what losses the Red Guard had. The man says that thanks to Yao Shi and Yao Ji, they have no victims. The princess is happy that they were able to do without casualties. They were also able to capture the third prince of the Zi dynasty, Xu Hong Yu. Meanwhile, the man came to report that Xu Hong Yu's identity has been confirmed. He will be taken to Qing Yi City. The general has given the order to suspend the autumn hunt, and they need to meet with them. After that, they arrived at the main hall and greeted Uncle Dugu. Uncle Dugu says that he didn't think Xiao Long would achieve results so quickly. Killed the war king, captured the prince. Now the city is full of rumors about him. He wants to talk about how they managed to do this. After some time, Xiao Lang briefly told Uncle Dugu everything, and he says he thinks sending them to war was the right decision. Xiao Lang says that he will continue to play the fool with witchcraft. He doesn't want to expose everything yet. Dugu says that the main character made a lot of noise. He is afraid that he might make new friends. He must definitely avoid trouble. In a few days, he has prepared a big surprise for him. In addition, there is good news from the hidden sect. Xiao Dao has been promoted to the level of a combat commander, and he has also awakened a spirit, a defensive battle shield, at least the highest rank. This spirit is very rare and has a protective power that is superior to energy armor. Zhuo Ping and Dong Fang Bai are not his opponents, with the exception of his grandfather. Xiao Lang will have enough time to see his Brad. Uncle Du Gu says that Jing Ming can move him to Death Mountain if there is free time, he can return to the hidden sect to see for himself. They must be very careful when returning to the barracks. 
Xu Hong Yu is the strongest disciple of the Blood Sect. The Xi Dynasty will not just let him go. Xiao Long doesn't understand how a beginner can be the strongest. Zhong Ming says that all the royal family members of the Xi Dynasty are followers of the Blood Sect, and the Blood Sect does not recognize alchemy. Already at the age of seven, Xu Hong Yu was recognized as the pinnacle of modern talent in the Xi Dynasty. Also, most likely, it is he who will inherit the throne of the Xi Dynasty. And because of this, rewards will be placed on Xiao Lang's head one after another, so he needs to wait for trouble. After they return to the army barracks, they were met by some people. They congratulate him for achieving great success by capturing the prince. The entire army is in full swing. They say that Yao is very cool. He was able to steal the prince from under the nose of a thousand strong army and three kings of war, and also return unharmed. Ni Kong acknowledges him. The general personally summoned him to truly incredible. This clearly promises a bright future. The girl says that she is very shocked by his witchcraft. She wants him alone with her in the evening to show her his power. But Mrs. Lanya saw this and became jealous. She tells this girl to stay away from her deputy commander. But this girl never stops hitting on Xiao Lang. But then a man interrupts them and says that the princess threw a banquet in the backyard for the main character. Lady Longya thinks that Yao Shi is a great hero. He captured the prince alive. Of course, the princess must treat him with all honors. When Xiao Lang arrived at the place, the princess was waiting for him with all honors. The table was set with a variety of top-class dishes. The main character and the princess were sitting at this dining table, just the two of them. The princess congratulates him on his great achievement and capturing the prince. After that, she gets closer and closer to the main character and says that she is interested in what his witchcraft is. She had never heard of such skills. Xiao Long says that witchcraft is the power of summoning the mountain gods, which can shake the mountains in the world. But this technique is secret within the clan and cannot be spread. The princess's goal was still to find out if this was really Xiao Lang. Xiao Long also understands that this girl is very suspicious and he needs to be more careful with her. Zishan says that she did not question the existence of the mountain god. She's just wondering how such a powerful spell still remains unknown to the world. Xiao Long says that she has never heard of such power because his race stays away from this world, desiring fame and glory. He decided to train only because he was curious about this world. When the autumn hunt ended, he and his brother Yao Zi would return to the clan. Zishan admires him. It seems to her that the nobles really stand out from the crowd. Zishan was not polite just now. She is ready to ask for forgiveness. She thinks that his sorcery should be tested again. But in any case, his power suits her. Xiao Lang asks the girl how she plans to make amends. He thinks that this girl has a talent for winning over people in order to take possession of them. She begins to flirt and asks him how he wants her to make amends. He just asks him not to go too far. The maid came to them and informed them that Mr. Zhuo was coming here. Xiao Long thinks that the princess specifically called him here to force him to fight Zhuo Jian and see who is stronger. After this, the main character takes him by the waist and says that he cannot demand much from her. Well then, he will fulfill her wish, but Xiao Lang cannot be played with without consequences. He stepped on her dress and the princess began to fall, and the main character immediately began to catch her until she flew to the ground. When he caught her, their lips touched each other, which made the princess feel awkward. But at that moment, Zhuo Zhan comes into the room, and he was angry that the guy dares to treat the princess like that. Xiao Long says that he has a date with her highness. Why Zhuo Zhan came here is not entirely clear to him. Zhuo Zhan says that he will kill Xiao Lan, and if he is a man, he must fight him one on one. The girl understands that the duel could end badly for them. She will be ashamed to explain all this. Xiao Long agrees to the duel, but he has two conditions. Firstly, Zhuo Jian must sign a life and death certificate. Her Highness will be a witness. Secondly, the duel will be outside the city, so that there are no prying eyes. Zhuo Jian agrees to these conditions, but what scares him is that the guy agreed to fight him. Is he so confident in himself that he can really defeat him? The princess tries to cool things down and says that both guys belong to the Zhou dynasty, and they shouldn't behave like that. Xiao Long adds fuel to the fire and asks the princess not to worry. He will control his power and try not to kill him. Zhuo Jian also says that he will not kill him. At most, he will turn him into a eunuch. 
He asks for a pen to sign the life and death certificate. After that, they went outside and Zhuo Jun quickly decided to leave. He says that he will respectfully await the fight until his last breath. Meanwhile, the princess is very worried because something irreparable could happen. After this, Xiao Lang saddled his horse and went to his duel. When he arrived at the meeting place, Zhuo Jian immediately attacked him. Xiao Long sees this and thinks that he has animosity towards the Zhuo family. Plus, Zhuo Jian will become a threat to him sooner or later. He thinks it's better to get rid of it today. And a moment later, Xiao Long seemed to evaporate. Zhuo Jian does not understand what is happening. He stopped feeling his opponent. Meanwhile, Xiao Long sat under the thick earth and controlled his purple vine. Zhuo Jian was scared and said that Yao Shi is a coward and a scumbag. How dare he defame his woman? He admits to him that the princess has already secretly confessed to him and agreed to be his. A moment later, one sprout of this vine suddenly burst out from the ground and grabbed the guy. And after that, Xiao Long came out from underground and looked menacingly at Zhuo Jian and told him to sleep soundly underground. And after that, the purple vine begins to pull the guy straight underground. He shouts that he is the king of war and cannot die so easily. Xiao Long says that he will now be the third war king he killed. After this, Zhuo Jian was already completely buried underground. He takes out some piece of earth and asks his grandmother for help. Qing Yi City, Zhuo Family Estate. His grandmother felt that her grandson was in danger and immediately rushed to his aid. Zhuo Jian was buried at a depth of 100 meters. He was probably already dead. Xiao Long turned around because he felt that the owner of a strong aura was quickly approaching him. Granny immediately arrived at the scene and is looking for her grandson. Xiao Long realizes that this is Zhuo Ping Ping, one of the greatest military emperors of the Jiang dynasty. Xiao Lang introduces himself to her and says that he is the deputy. The commander of the Red Guard, Yao Shi, he had a duel with Zhuo Jian, he is buried underground. After that, the granny began to dig the ground and look for her grandson. She says that if her grandson is dead, she will kill Xiao Lang a thousand times. And after some time, she finally got to the bottom of her grandson. She finally completely dug up her grandson and pulled him to the surface. Zhuo Jian immediately begins to complain to his granny and says that Xiao Long deceived him. But Xiao Lang says that it was a fair duel with a certificate of life and death. Zhuo Ping Ping does not understand how Tong, with his low rank, was able to defeat the king of war. Afterwards, she summons her spirit and says that she wants to see what Xiao Long can do. Her eagle spirit immediately attacks the boy. And he understands that Zhuo Ping Ping will kill him. But if he uses the purple vine, it will immediately expose him. But fortunately for him, his saviors appear and say that it is impossible to interfere in a duel between the young men. The duel between them was witnessed by the princess. The authorities learned about it. And to ensure a fair fight, an order was given so that no one would interfere. They sensed that Zhuo Ping Ping had left Qing Yi City and came to see what was the matter. Zhuo Ping Ping can't believe that this guy was able to defeat her grandson. Xiao Lang thanks his saviors. He swears on his life that he relied solely on his abilities and won fair and square. Yao Shi is the young patriarch of the witch clan possessing powerful witchcraft. Previously, he had already killed one war king and captured the prince of the Zi dynasty. He really is very strong. Zuo family must accept their defeat. But if she still wants to fight, then the elders can accompany her. Zhuo Ping Ping admits that the Zhuo family has suffered a defeat today. Soon, rumors of the duel will spread throughout northern Xinjiang, and Xiao Long will become the pinnacle of this generation. The head of the Dong Fan family also says that this guy is very capable. He invites him to return to Dong Fan's house, and there is someone waiting for him. Xiao Long must come to the military palace to meet with the marshal as soon as possible after dealing with the Dong Fang family. Family. Nai also invites Yao Shi to meet at any time. The head of the family, Dong Fan, admitted that his precious granddaughter, the Red Bean, had revealed the identity of Xiao Long. But sir, neither asks him not to worry because they will hide his identity. But so that he doesn't even think about offending her, he wants them to have a future. Five years of fighting is the condition for becoming Donfin's son-in-law. After that, Lady Red Bean appeared and hugged Xiao Lan tightly. Her grandfather tells his granddaughter not to mention the name of her lover. And he asks her not to forget his current identity. Besides, he almost killed Zhuo Jian. He is now a man from northern Xinqian and asks not to detain him for long. After that, Xiao Lang and the Red Bean retired to the room. 
Xiaolan asks how things have been going for her lately. The girl starts crying and says that everything is bad, because Xiaolong went to northern Xinjiang and didn't tell her anything. She was worried about him. She didn't see him for a long time. He also got into a fight with Zhuo Jun. She didn't even imagine what danger he was in. Xiaolong says that he does not like the Zhuo family, especially since he no longer belongs to the Xiao family and does not want to drag the girl with him. The girl says that Xiaolang has no conscience. When he awakened her soul, she would rather run away with him and marry him. She doesn't care that the guy lives on the street. She likes him a lot and wants to be with him. She asks if he understands her intentions, or does he have a new lover? She understands that he is now with Commander Lanya Fair, composed a song for her and also refused Zhuo Jun, but Xiaolan tries to convince the girl that this is all in order to gain the trust of the Longya family. The girl asks what exactly is why he had a date with the princess and even dueled with Zhuo Jun. There are rumors that he arranged a duel because of Zishan. Xiaolong says that it was an accident. He couldn't refuse Zishan's invitation. Zhuo Jian simply provoked him. Isn't this a good opportunity to fight Zhuo Jian? The girl turns away from him and says that this is also a good opportunity to win the princess's heart. Afterwards, Xiaolong hugs her and says that he didn't think she was so cute when she was jealous. She says she's still mad at him and he should stay away from other girls. Xiao Lang hugged the girl tightly again and asked her not to be angry. He will listen to her. His personalities are two different people. Xiao Lang has only one love in his heart. The girl just asks not to leave him again. But the main character says that he cannot stay with her because he still cannot protect her, cannot give him a future. He needs to become stronger. He vows that one day, like Xiao Lang, he will honestly return to her and be with her forever. And after that, a sweet night awaited this couple. Meanwhile, the princess was informed that Xiao Long almost killed Zhuo Jian, and thanks to the head of Zhuo, Zhuo Jian was saved, and the order of the god of war saved Yao Shi from reprisals. The girl says that it doesn't matter whether he won or not. Xiao Long is very strong, and she needs his strength. People in the main palace are talking about the fight between Yao Shi and Zhuo Jian yesterday, and if not for the actions of Zhuo Ping, Zhuo Jian would have died at the hands of Yao Shi. It was the god of war who ordered Yao Shi to be stopped. Obviously, Zhuo Jian instigated the duel because Yao Shi was with the princess. Meanwhile, Yao Shi entered this main hall and people congratulate him and say that he is worthy of the title of king of war. Family. Ni wants to become Yao Shi's friend. This is an honor for him, and the guy thanks him for yesterday's help. Chamu also approaches the main character and says that the Cha family also wants to make friends with Yao Shi's brother. He didn't expect that it was Yao Shi's brother who killed the Z Dynasty warlord. The protagonist saved their army. This is something the Cha family will talk about every day. After that, the girl who wanted to seduce him last time comes up to him and says that since they didn't agree, she wants to talk to him alone this time but Mrs. Lanya says that this lustful vixen is looking down on him. This girl says that she is going to invite Yao Shi. He is now a light cavalry general and not under the command of the Red Guards. Lady Lanya says that he is still a subordinate of the Lanya family. But then the princess appears and she says that this is not so. The general fell in love with Yao Shi, but now he is free. His master is the marshal and her royal family. Lady Fair is worried that Xiao Long really should abandon the Longya family. Princess Zishan congratulates the young patriarch on his promotion. Yesterday, unfortunately, the banquet was interrupted by Commander Zhuo. She suggests spending time with Zishan tomorrow. But Xiao Lang refuses. Since he has to stay at the God of War's home to train, he will set a day to apologize to His Highness. The princess couldn't believe that the main character really rejected her. But she didn't show it and said that it's okay, they'll arrange a meeting later. Xiao Long realizes that if he stays with her alone, Hong Dao will skin him. But the princess won't just leave it like that, and Yao Shi will sooner or later be his servant. Zhuo family's house, they cannot believe that Xing Dugu really accepted Yao Shi as one of his own. Gu's actions are suspicious, and Yao Shi's appearance in northern Xinjiang is also suspicious. Could it be that Yao Shi is Xiao Long? Previously, there was news that Xiao Long had appeared in the Death Mountain Range and it was impossible for him to travel from northern Xinjiang and back in such a short time. Zhuo Jian says that the purple tentacles that attacked him yesterday were very similar to Xiao Lang's spirit. Granny calls her grandson an idiot and says that the tentacles that pulled him into the ground are an entity 
and a spirit cannot be an entity. It couldn't be Xiao Lang. If it were really Xiao Lang, then he would only be her grandson's bones. Zhuo Jian is just trash. When Zhuo Jian heard what his granny was saying about him, he felt ashamed. Zhuo Ming and Zhuo Xi offended Xiao Long, and Zhuo Jian offended Yao Xi. Sooner or later, the Zhuo family will be destroyed by their own hands. She orders him not to go hunting in autumn to return to Feng Hu City and think about it. Zhuo Ping Ping orders his servant to continue tracking down Xiao Long and also study Yao Xi. One day, Xin Du Gu will become a general. Then they will no longer be able to touch him. Xiao Long stayed at the War God Mansion to practice while Zhuo Jian withdrew, causing the Jiang Dynasty's autumn hunt to end early. The Zi Dynasty lost its troops and generals, so Emperor Xi became enraged and began preparing an army for war. Meanwhile, Xiao Long returned to his aunt and brother in the Hidden Sect. Auntie says that while they haven't seen each other, her family has become stronger. And Xiao Dao says that they all know about his achievements. Xing Du Gu says that Xiao Long no longer needs to return to northern Xinjiang, but they cannot stay here any longer. He asks for forgiveness in Qing Yi. He needs to end the war in northern Xinjiang, after which he will leave his post and stay with her. After this, Xiao Long says that Xiao Dao has become a mid-level commander. He wants to see what he has learned. Xiao Dao says that Xiao Long is not the only one who has become stronger. And after that, the two brothers began to fight each other. Xiao Lang wants his brother to show him his protective spirit. And after that, Xiao Dao summoned some incredible power and threw his brother away from him. Xiao Lang realizes that his brother is too strong and summons his spirit, the Purple Vine. But Xiao Dao uses his defensive technique and prevents these tentacles from touching him. Xiao Lang is surprised that he didn't have a scratch on his brother. Aunt Ching Yi says that even she can't break through his shield. It must either be thrown into the air or use martial spirit. This is a very strong protective spirit. Xiao Dao says that finally the purple vine of the protagonist will not be able to pierce someone. But Xiao Lang says that his brother rejoices early because his purple vine will not lose to anyone. And after that, the purple vine went around Xiao Dao's shield, and he was vulnerable. And after that, these tentacles grabbed the guy and tied him tightly. Xiao Long says that the Purple Vine is always looking for a new method of fighting. The main character helps his brother up and says that Xiao Dao's shield and his Purple Vine are invincible. In the future, they will become invincible partners. Auntie is surprised that Xiao Lang's spirit materializes. Thanks to this, Xiao Lang, in the guise of a sorcerer, created a stir in northern Xinjiang. It turns out that both of her children are very amazing. Xin Du Gu says that in the future, they will be able to break out of their own world. Dugu says that Xiao Lang has already shown up at Death Mountain, so he must be very careful. This time he must return in a month. And after that, Xiao Lang passed through the portal and fell into the ridge of Death Mountain. There are so many powerful beasts in the Death Mountain range. Perhaps this will cause the Purple Vine to continue to evolve. After this, Xing Dugu came to the princess, and she says that her father entrusted her with a war in northern Xingjun. She is here to discuss the battle against the Xi dynasty that he reported about not long ago. Xing Du Gu says that he wants to mobilize the strongest into the national army, set traps to destroy hundreds of thousands of Xi dynasty soldiers. Du Gu didn't think that Yunfei Yang sent this brat to make decisions. The princess says that a lot of troops, financial resources, and materials need to be mobilized in this battle. If he lost the battle or the Xi dynasty did not fall into the trap, the Jiang Dynasty's losses would be incalculable. She wants him to tell her how he plans to win. Xing Du Gu says that everything is simple. Xiu Hong Yu, Xiao Lan, Yao Xi, Xing Du Gu. When the girl heard these names, she was shocked. Xiao Lang has a soul higher than heavenly. Yao Xi captured Xiu Hong Yu. Plus the god of war of the Jiang Dynasty, this combination with bait will clearly be dangerous for the Xi Dynasty. When the time comes and his plan begins to take effect, all the strong troops stationed on the border need to appear in northern Xinjiang out of nowhere. Soldiers will appear from the sky. The Z dynasty will be taken by surprise. The girl thinks that this man really deserves to be the god of war of this generation. He is indecently cunning. He says that there is no need to reveal all the secrets. Soon the princess will find out everything herself. The princess agrees, but she has another problem. According to intelligence, there are spies in his northern army. 
How to do this so that the purpose of the battle is not revealed and the army is not ambushed by the Z dynasty? Dugu says that without this spy, it would be difficult to carry out this plan in one step. Although the identity of this person has not yet been clarified, this will also help him, for everyone there is their own authority. The girl says that Dugu deserves to be a marshal. Although there is still much to be discovered, the royal family will fully support him to bring down the Z dynasty. As for the spies, Zishan will definitely find him. Then the princess will return to discuss issues first, and then contact the marshal. Xing Du Gu is betting everything on this battle, which is the lifeblood of the Zi dynasty. He hopes Yun Zishan will not let him down. Meanwhile, on the ridge of Death Mountain, Xiao Lang was fighting against some insects. The protagonist didn't think that this nest of poisonous fire demon bees actually has dozens of level 4 beasts and three level 5 beasts, which are really good food. These wasps really want to kill him. He needs to get rid of them as soon as possible. But suddenly these wasps for some reason stopped and stopped attacking him. It was because some huge beast appeared behind him. Xiaolong realized that this was a seventh level beast, a large and fierce monkey. This monkey is attacking Xiaolang. Maybe it came because of the noise of the bees. After this, this monkey grabbed the purple vine with his hands and the purple vine stuck its thorns into the hands of this monkey. But this did not stop the monkey, and it continued to attack the main character. After this, Xiaolong calls Master Jing Ming for help. And after this call for help, some woman came and immediately destroyed this monkey. The girl says that Jing Ming is now in northern Xinjiang. He asked her to keep an eye on him. Xiaolong realizes that this girl is Master Lu Ming. She says that the main character is very smart. He knew that there were people appointed to protect him. Xiaolong says that this is because Jing Ming often helped him in northern Xinjiang, and somehow there was an urgent situation and he asked for help. But in fact, the purple vine had long ago sensed that he was being followed, otherwise he would have fled long ago. Suddenly, this monkey appeared again and attacked them. Xiaolong realizes that she also belongs to the fighting class. He should use her hands to defeat the wild monkey. But the girl says that it is just a seventh level beast and she can easily get rid of it. But Xiao Lang did not stand by and help the girl with the destruction of this monster. He tied up this monkey. But this beast does not give up and begins to attack again. Xiao Lang is scared. He says it's bad. This beast hits with all its might. But the girl asks him not to worry. These are just futile attempts before death. And after that, she pierced this monkey with some kind of green lightning. Xiao Lang was surprised at the strength of this girl. This is the emperor of war. Now he understands why her power is so pressing. After this, Xiao Long asks the girl not to finish off this monster, but to leave it to him. The girl almost forgot. Jing Ming told her that Xiao Long's soul can absorb creatures as food, taking away energy. Then she allows the boy to take this monster for himself, while she walks around the area to find out about the animals. After this, the main character began to absorb this monster, and he realizes that it looks like Jing Ming didn't say that the purple vine can develop. After being absorbed, Xiao Lan sees that the purple vine has no signs of evolution. Is this really her last form? Or perhaps she wants bigger prey? After the main character approaches this girl, she tells him that the younger and older brother are preparing for a big battle with the Z dynasty, so for now, only she can accompany him. Xiao Lang thanks the girl for her kindness, although he has not heard anything from his adoptive father about the Z dynasty. He only knows that this will be an unprecedented battle but he believes in his adoptive father's strength. The girl says that, of course, he is Shin Dugu, but regardless of whether the battle is won or not, he is a god of war with a rich history. However, unfortunately, he met his aunt. Shin Dugu really wants to start the battle to end the war as soon as possible. Together with Qing Yi, he is willing to risk the Zhang Dynasty. Xiao Long cannot believe that his adoptive father would sacrifice the Zhang Dynasty because of his aunt. Xing Dugu fell in love with Qing Yi. He missed the wind, took the blame, and just walked away. If Qing Yi dies, then Xing Dugu will die. His aunt may be the cause of Xing Dugu's death. But Xiao Long says that Uncle Xing Dugu and Aunt Qing Yi love each other. If life turns to death, it is their choice. But the girl says that Aunt Qing Yi will die soon, and Xing Dugu shouldn't give up everything for her. But Xiao Lang denies this and says that his aunt will not die, and neither will Uncle Dugu. He won't let them die. When the main character began to get angry, the girl felt a strong aura. 
Xiao Lang will definitely get the antidote and help his adoptive father win the battle. He asks to stop blaming everything on their love. This is not weakness. The girl says that the boy can't even cope with a level 7 beast. How is he going to help them? Failure to do this now does not mean that it will never be possible. He will protect his loved ones, no matter the cost. The girl turns around and leaves, hoping that everything will be exactly as the boy wishes. Xiaolong thinks that before despairing, she should retain a glimmer of hope. What Lu Ming said, he should become stronger as soon as possible. You cannot rely on your adoptive father. He must rely only on himself. Only absolute power can change fate and dominate everyone. Within half a month, the Zheng dynasty began to mobilize troops. While four troops were marching in northern Xinjiang, transporting supplies, rumors circulated among the people. Rumor number one, the Zi dynasty mobilized its army, entered into a conspiracy with the Yu dynasty. In winter, she will fight the Zhang dynasty. Rumor number two, young Xiao Lang has a heavenly level spirit and is hiding in the army of northern Xinjiang, ready to avenge Xiao Bushi and kill the Zi dynasty. Rumor number three, Sorcerer Yao Shi has a terrifying secret magic. He killed the war king Zi Shan, captured Prince Xu Hong Yu, and defeated Zhuo Jianya. Now the people of the borderlands are in panic. Many have fled with their families. The emperor sent troops to set up roadblocks to stop the refugees, which caused a real riot. Many people began to resist the suppression. Many clashed with the army, which made the situation even more tense. Red Bean says that she heard that information about Xiao Lan is being spread. It must be the Zuo family going to kill him, and they need to come up with some kind of solution. The father says that as soon as information about Xiao Lan appears, his daughter immediately panics. Xiao Lan will not die. He is afraid that these rumors were deliberately spread by Xing Du Gu, and he is most likely creating a huge combination. He is afraid that Xin Du Gu is planning to go alone, and they can only watch the changes. The situation in northern Xinjiang is now becoming more complicated. Xi, Auron, and the other three generations of disciples will immediately return to the imperial capital. But the girl is very worried about Xiao Lan. She says that Xiao Lan's spirit will make him a thorn in the other two dynasties' eyes, and the Zi dynasty will never let Yao Xi go. The Zuo family will kill him. These are the secrets of the dynasty. Exposure could cause serious consequences. Now that the situation in the dynasty is turbulent and there is even a civil war going on, does everyone really think that His Majesty the Emperor is really that stupid? In northern Xinjiang, Xing Dugu personally commands, in her opinion, he would not be able to suppress the rumors. The girl says that she has not yet said goodbye to Xiao Lan, and she asks her grandfather not to let anything happen to him. Grandpa will do his best. In this war, the entire dynasty is at risk. By then, only Xiao Long can turn the danger into a breeze. Meanwhile, Xiao Long continues to run away from the snow wolves, but there are more and more of them. His purple vine still destroys several wolves, but suddenly some huge level 5 snow wolf appears in front of him. Xiao Lang summons his spirit and grabs this level 5 snow wolf with his purple vine. But this wolf was too strong and simply tore one tentacle of the purple vine to shreds. But Xiao Lang does not give up trying to destroy this wolf. He attacks him in the back again. After this, Xiao Lang destroyed this wolf. He understands that this will not work. He needs more tricks. He cannot rely only on the spirit. His task is to become stronger. And when the purple vine began to devour this wolf, and inside it was the skeleton of a man, and some other thing that this man was carrying with him and the wolf had not yet had time to digest it. It was a fragment of Yao Wang Gu's secret map, but unfortunately there are at least two more fragments and the destination is not visible at all. Anyway, this map is for him. If he can collect it in the future, he will find more similar things. After that, Xiao Long was a little tired because he had been hunting all day on a hot day. He found a cave and went there. But when Xiao Lang entered this cave, he saw that the girl who saved him was already in it. This girl was bathing in a hot spring, and she was completely naked and was not shy about the main character. Xiao Long immediately became embarrassed and turned away. He says that this girl was gone for ten days. Why did she come so suddenly? The girl says that it is very hot here, so she went away for a few days, but she was worried that some animal might eat the boy, so she returned. Xiao Long says that Lu Ming is not a very reliable bodyguard. Xiao Lang says that he fought many high-level beasts this week. It's not that he runs fast. It's just that she would have to look for his body for a long time. 
The girl begins to flirt with the guy and invites him to diversify his survival. She can teach him something good. After this, the girl says that she will teach him fighting skills. Xiaolong thinks that what he lacks now is a base for cultivation and powerful fighting skills. The girl says that she has two combat skills here, one for attack and the other for strengthening, can teach you to use both skills. But before teaching him fighting skills, the boy must first promise her two things. Firstly, Xiao Long should never be an enemy of the hidden sect. Secondly, he must fulfill one of her wishes, not now, but in the future. When she makes a wish, the boy will fulfill it with all his might. Xiao Long agrees and says he promises. The first condition he would have understood if the hidden emperor had asked him, but is this what bothers Lu Mi so much? But now it is much more important for him to master new techniques. After this, the girl gives the boy two notes containing these two techniques. The first skill is ghost decapitation. The girl used it earlier on a monkey. It allows you to stun or confuse the enemy. It causes the enemy to hallucinate. Only an enemy with high resistance can avoid this. This skill is comparable to the heavenly level. The second skill is called Sky Demonic Enhancement and is the strongest martial enhancement technique for low-level warriors. But it's not that simple. The price is your life. This martial technique is a double-edged sword. It can stimulate human potential by using its source of life. The body becomes stronger in a short time. If you want to learn this skill, prepare for the consequences. Xiaolong thanks the Lu Ming girl he will practice a lot. What he needs most now is to strengthen his strength, as for the price in the future, measures will need to be taken regarding this. The girl regrets. Not everyone in the hidden sect has a soul. Perhaps his aunt and Xing Du Gu will have to rely on him soon. The girl believes that Xiao Lan should become stronger at any cost. Sky Demonic Enhancement allows a portion of deep energy to completely change its action, perceiving it as before. It destroys the body, causing the source of life to release energy to become stronger. At the cost of longevity in exchange for strength, every time you train you lose one ten-thousandth of your life. The boy needs to give it his all. The aunt is waiting for him to find an antidote, and Hong Dao is waiting for him to marry her. If this technique helps him achieve results, then some decades are just a trifle. Xiao Long's whole body is torn by pain. This skill is a double-edged sword. Today the only thing left to do is to practice here. After this, the main character took notes with the second technique and is going to try it out. Phantom Beheading. Using the frequency and afterimage of the weapon's swing, it affects the enemy's senses and causes them to hallucinate, making it impossible to avoid the attack. But Xiao Long didn't succeed the first time, and he starts trying again and again. But he never succeeded. He believes that this technique is very difficult for him. Night had already fallen, but the boy did not stop trying and continued to train. And finally, at one moment, he began to succeed, which made him very happy. He fell to the ground exhausted and was very glad that after a whole night of training, something finally began to work out. He must do everything he can to become stronger. The girl watched the guy's training all this time. She believes that her mentor came up with this technique. Among her sect brothers, the eldest brother of the sect mastered it the fastest in just three days and Xiao Lang only spent one night. His learning ability is truly amazing. She believes that maybe he really can reach a pinnacle that no one can match. A month had already passed since that moment, and Xiao Lang continued to train in this cave. And suddenly a giant bear of the fifth level came to his cave. The guy was happy about this, and he just wants to use this beast to check the results of his month-long practice. A level five giant bear begins to attack the guy. After this, the main character takes his training stick and beats the beast with it. But the bear's bones turned out to be too hard, and the boy's stick simply broke in half. After which Xiao Long uses a new technique, Heavenly Demonic Enhancement. He hits this bear with all his might, causing this animal to be completely driven into the ground. The guy realizes that his fist has become much heavier. Suddenly a girl comes to him. She didn't think that in a month the guy would become so strong. Xiao Long says that this is all thanks to the fighting skills that this girl Lu Ming gave him, but he has only mastered them superficially so far. He needs to practice more. The girl asks him not to be so impatient. There is chaos in northern Xinjiang and a war is about to start, so his adoptive father ordered him to stay here for a while. The main character understood what this girl wanted from him, but he needs a little more time to make a breakthrough. 
He hopes that everything will be fine in northern Xinjiang until he returns. A week later, the guy is still teaching the military divination technique. After Xiao Long learned all the techniques, he immediately ran out of the cave to find the target and try out the new technique. And suddenly, the main character feels that several people have invaded the territory. When he arrived at the scene, he saw a group of people surrounding the dead bear. It was Zhuo Xi and Zhuo Ming they came to Death Mountain to deal with Xiao Lang. They are looking for traces of the boy. Xiao Long thinks that since they came here themselves, he will take their lives. He released his purple vine to quickly destroy this entire group of people. But suddenly, Xiao Long felt that among this group of people, there were two people with the title of King of War. After this, the protagonist returned his purple vine. He wonders why the Zhuo family sent them to Death Mountain now that the border war is approaching. It turned out that they were looking for Xiao Lang, and Zhuo Ming and Zhuo Xi were just bait to bring him out. If he acts rashly, he will definitely be noticed by these two war kings, so he must find the right solution. Zhuo Ming says it's late today, and it's easy to get attacked if you stay in the wilderness. He suggests it is better to return to camp. Xiao Lang thinks this is a sneak attack. Since they want to find him, then he will play nicely with them. After that, when this group of people returned to their camp, Xiao Long followed them. Today he wants to show who the real hunter is. This camp was full of spies, just bait for the main character. At this moment, Xiao Long attacked several guards and began to deal with them one by one. After this, the main character approached one poor fellow and told him that they were looking for him, and he will give him the opportunity to tell the people of the Zhuo family that he, Xiao Lang, has come. And after this, the poor guy who was immediately captured by the main character ran to the Zuo family's camp to tell what happened here. After some time, this guy came to the elders and reported that Xiao Long had returned. He says that all his comrades in the south of the camp were killed by him and eaten to the bone. After that, they set out to look for the boy, and they left half of the troops to guard the camp. When they arrived at the place, the main one did not feel the boy there, so he orders to look for him further. But in fact, Xiao Lang was underground all this time. He lured a tiger from the mountains to enter his house. Meanwhile, at the Zuo family's camp, they discuss Xiao Lang's sudden appearance. And at this moment, the main character himself comes into their camp. Zuo family was scared when they saw Xiao Lang here. They called the guards to kill him. And after that, the guards that were in this hut began to attack the main character. Xiao Lang understands that there are two war kings here, and the rest are at the level of a battle commander. They must all be strong. The main character uses a shield that he recently learned in a cave. Zhuo Ming and Zhuo Xi were afraid that Xiao Lang was using Qi armor. They already doubt that he has the rank of warrior. Meanwhile, the guy is dealing with the guards. After this, one of the warriors orders Lady Zhuo Xi to be taken away. The group that went out in search of Xiao Lang will soon return, and they hope for help. But Xiao Lang does not allow them to escape and simply pierces this guard with his purple vine. And after that, he approaches Zhuo Ming and takes him by the neck and lifts him into the air. Zhuo Ming says that Xiao Lang will not be able to kill him because his uncle Zhuo Fan is nearby. But Xiao Lang is unshakable in his decision. He says that his uncle will not save him and will not kill the main character. And a moment later, the boy, with the help of his spirit, the purple vine immediately killed two members of the Zhuo family. Xiao Lang had already told them that anyone who wanted to deal with him would pay a heavy price. After that, Xiao Lang walked up to Zhuo Xi and began to get closer to her. Zhuo Xi says that if he touches her, the Jiang Dynasty will not let him go. Xiao Lang says that they are the ones who made this chase for the sake of murder, and she dares to say anything else? What will the Zhuo family do? What will the Zhang Dynasty do? They owe the main character so they are obliged to repay with blood. After this, the guy grabs the girl by the hand and drags her along with him. Now she will be his hostage. When Xiao Lang began to leave the camp, a chase began after him. Xiao Lang feels a very strong aura. He guesses that it could be Zhuo Fan. After that, Xiao Lang knocked out the girl with one light blow to her neck. And after that, he headed to the cave where he had trained before. He still cannot withstand the level of a war emperor. When Zhuo Fan arrived at the campsite, he saw that everyone had been killed. He says that he was hiding behind the mountains to catch Xiao Lang, but did not expect that he would have the chance. He staged this raid to kill Xiao Lang and make up for lost time, 
But now how can he explain this to the head? For him, the most important thing is Zhou Xi. She is the future princess. Live to see people, die to see corpses. After he checked the remaining bones, he realized that Zhuo Xi was not here. Immediately after Xiao Long's attack, Zhuo Xi must have been taken hostage. Zhuo Xi's body exudes the scent of Phalaenopsis. She must be found. As for Xiao Lang, he ordered his death. The girl Lu Mi watched everything that was happening and thinks that this guy has a rather devilish character he killed so many people. But first, she will visit his adoptive father and then help him. Xiao Lang, meanwhile, continued to run away. He thinks that the Zuo family will definitely hunt him. He needs to meet Lu Ming as soon as possible. And suddenly he sees a light at the end of this cave. When he arrived at the place, he saw that there was a mountain river here. This was a good place to relax. Meanwhile, the girl woke up and she did not understand where the main character had brought her. She asks to be released. After that, Xiao Long pushed her and she fell into the water. When the girl found herself in the water, she began to scream for help because she couldn't swim. After this, Xiao Lang had mercy on the girl and raised her to the surface with the help of a vine. Xiao Lang tells her that she is now his hostage and her life depends on him and now she will do whatever the main character says. The girl begins to cry and asks Xiao Lang if he will kill her. After that, Xiao Lang hit the girl on the back of the head again, causing her to pass out. He asks her not to worry. She is still useful to him. Otherwise, all that is left of her is bones, like Zhuo Ming. After this, the boy sat down to meditate and thinks that Death Mountain is no longer a place where he can stay for a long time. He needs to return to the hidden sect. Morning came and Xiao Lang and the girl went outside. He thinks that the teleportation array is nearby. He wonders if Lu Ming will be here. Just when he was thinking about this, Lu Ming shouted from behind him. She says that she expected the boy to come to the teleportation array, but did not expect him to bring some beauty with him. Xiao Long says that this girl is the lady of the Zuo family. The Zuo family decided to set a trap for him to kill him, and he decided to launch a surprise attack. The girl Lu Ming says that the guy is very brave if he decided to fight under the nose of the king and emperor of the Zuo family war. This obviously makes a big fuss. But she is interested in what the guy is going to do with this girl. The main character says that she can be temporarily locked in a hidden sect. She is a future princess, so she might come in handy. In addition, he repeatedly used his soul in front of her. He is afraid that she might guess about his second personality. After that, they began to move on, and Lu Ming says that it is up to Xiao Lang to decide whether to kill this girl or not. After they arrive at the portal, Lu Ming realizes that Xiao Lang already wants to return to northern Xinjiang. She offers to stay for a few days in a hidden sect. Xiao Long says that he is a little worried about the affairs in northern Xinjiang. He needs to help his adoptive father quickly. And suddenly the mystical beast of the boy Xiao Bai appeared in the form of a horse. Lu Ming says that this mystical beast has recently completed its transformation and has entered the mature stage. It can transform into more than ten forms. She asks to take it with you. Xiao Long agrees and asks Xiao Bai to change his form, the less the better. And after that, the beast turned from a huge horse into a small cat. Xiao Long finally turns to Lu Ming and asks her to tell his aunt and Xiao Dao that everything will be fine. Lu Ming tells the boy not to worry. Besides, he is now at the commander level, so he should no longer use the heavenly demonic enhancement. When he meets Jing Ming and Xing Du Gu, he will understand everything. This greatly harms the boy's body. In the future, if he is overcome by hatred, the girl asks him to hate her and not the hidden sect. Xiao Long entered the portal and did not have time to ask what this girl meant. After this, the main character moved to northern Xinjiang. But the thought of what Lu Ming meant does not leave his head. Does heavenly demonic enhancement still have any effect on a person? Master Jing Ming was waiting for him right there near the portal. He received a message from Lu Ming. At this moment, Jing Ming saw that the guy had reached the level of commander. Xiao Lang says that he used the heavenly demon enhancement technique that Lu Ming gave him, and he also hunted a huge number of beasts. When Jing Ming heard that Xiao Lang was using the heavenly demonic enhancement technique, he was shocked. He thinks Lu Ming has gone crazy. He doesn't understand how she dared give this to the boy behind their back. Isn't she afraid that Shin Du Gu will kill her for this? 
Xiao Long asks Master Jing Ming what exactly heavenly demonic enhancement is. Jing Ming says that this is a vicious and evil method that will kill the boy. He asks him to follow him to meet Xin Du Gu. After some time, they ran to Xing Du Gu. Jing Ming tells him that Lu Ming gave the boy a heavenly demonic enhancement technique. Xiao Long was already able to break through the warrior level. When Xin Du Gu heard this, he was simply shocked by it. He became very angry and said that if Lu Ming dared to do such and such, he would simply kill her. But Xiao Long says that he knows the consequences of this technique, and it was his decision. Xing Du Gu says that Lu Ming did not tell him the whole truth, otherwise the boy would not have practiced it. Jing Ming says that if Xiao Long uses this technique, at best, he can live for five years. After Xiao Long heard this, he was simply shocked. Sky Demonic Enhancement was a well-known martial skill many years ago. It not only allows people to quickly become stronger, but also accelerates their development. This technique has no limitations. Someone even at 25 years old already had the level of a war emperor. Now it's no wonder for Xiao Lang that he was able to break through from the warrior level so quickly. All this comes at a cost. Not only will it cost the boy his life, but it will also create a demon. The first demon will appear after three years of practice, the second after five years. The inner demon will begin to wither. At best, it will devour the boy's heart, after which death will occur. In all of history, no one has been able to survive two inner demons. Now Xiao Lang is wondering why Lu Ming kept this information from him. Maybe she wanted to harm him. Xing Du Gu orders Xiao Lang to stop using this technique. If something happens to the boy, he will not be able to explain it to Qing Yi. Jing Ming will definitely report to the master of the hidden sect. He will come up with something. Xiao Long asks to hide this information from his aunt and Xiao Dao. He is willing to take such risks in order to become stronger and will definitely be able to defeat his inner demons. Xin Du Gu agrees to keep it a secret, but this is easier said than done. He still needs the boy to participate in the war right now. When the war is over, he will do everything he can to help him find a solution. According to reports from the border, the Z Dynasty secretly sent Zhi Nu to lead the army at the border. He received intelligence from a spy. He is afraid that there is a civil war in the Zhang Dynasty. Even though the Zhi Dynasty had entered the game, both of the boys' identities were used as bait. Once he appeared, he would attract a huge number of enemies. Qing Yi troops will escort Xiao Lang to the front line. The boy will be the most important soldier in this battle. After this conversation, Xiao Long went to get ready. He also needs to marry a girl. He needs to overcome his inner demons and come back alive. Meanwhile, at Zhuo's house, Mrs. Zhuo yells at her subordinates that they are a bunch of trash. So many people were sent against Xiao Lang, and he was able to kill and kidnap Zhuo Shi quite a bit. The elder says that Xiao Long was very cunning. He was able to hide his location. Lady Zhuo says that Xiao Lang must be destroyed. Information about his soul is very suspicious. Most likely, he will appear in the war in northern Xinjiang. She says that he needs to be found, and as soon as information about his whereabouts appears, she will personally do it herself. Meanwhile, the princess was informed that Xiao Long's second personality, Yao Shi, was able to break through to the level of commander. He just left the outposts. The marshal handed over the Qing Yi troops to him. He was sent to the front line, guarded by the Dongfang family. The princess thinks that such a talent will not die in the war, since even Xin Du Gu entrusted his army. After the war, it is imperative to make him her man. Now that Xin Du Gu has begun to act, a plan needs to be prepared. Is everyone hiding in their places? The servant reports that all forces are hiding in the mountains thousands of miles south of the city of Qing Yi. The princess says that only the royal family of the dynasty and also Shi Yunzi Shan can win this battle. After this, Xiao Long and the Qing Yi army reach the border of northern Xinjiang, near the city of Xinye. And suddenly, behind the trees in the distance, he sees a cloud of smoke rising. He thinks that this is an enemy attack. He orders his army to move there as quickly as possible. Xiao Lang says that Zi's army must have gathered for a surprise attack. They came just in time. General Dongfang Yixing orders all commander-level warriors with released internal energy. The warriors must attack indiscriminately. And after that, the troops began to battle against the troops of the Zi family. But there are too many enemy troops, and the strength to hold back is already running out. But then, fortunately for them, 
Xiao Lang appeared with his army and began to attack the warriors of the Zi family. Xiao Lang orders his troops to take part in the battle against Zi's army. Kill everyone! Don't miss a single enemy! Meanwhile, reinforcements for the enemy troops arrived, but Xiao Lang was ready for this and was already waiting for them underground. He attacks one of the barbarians using the phantom decapitation technique. After a long time of battle, the barbarians suffered huge losses and began to retreat. Dongfang family and the Qing troops rejoiced at this victory. Captain Dongfang thanks Xiao Lang and the Qing Yi army for their help. Xiao Long says that he came to guard the border on the orders of his adoptive father. Although they temporarily drove out the bloody barbarians, the boy is afraid that they will soon return. Captain Dongfang will report the situation. He asks Xiao Lang to bring his troops into the city. After Xiao Lang entered the city, he tells himself that in this war, he will make the name of Xiao Lang and Yao Shi resound throughout northern Xinjiang. After some time, the entire Qing Yi army settled in barracks in the city of Xin Ye. Also sitting in one of the barracks were Xiao Lan and Qian Shun. But suddenly, a warrior comes to them and says that news has just arrived that hundreds of thousands of Zi dynasty soldiers have attacked in three places. In two of them, there are still fierce battles. The soldiers were divided into three groups. Do they have such big ambitions? Yes, in addition, two cities suffered heavy losses, Longya City, guarded by the Zuo family, and Qing Yi City, guarded by the family, Nora Marshall. This time, the action of the bloody barbarians was really crazy. They wanted to absorb three strongholds of the Zheng dynasty in one fell swoop. Apparently, they knew that the internal and external situation of the dynasty was unstable, so they wanted to strike a fatal blow, but Xiao Long seems that they are taking a lot of risks. After that, Another person came to the main character's barracks and reported that Dongfang Guoxi wanted to meet with him. After some time, Xiao Long came to Dongfang Guoxi. Dongfang Guoxi says that the boy has made a huge contribution to the defense and is worthy of a holy soul. The main character says that the Zi dynasty and his Xiao family, he will not live under the same sky with them and will definitely kill them all. This time he took the enemy by surprise, but next time they will be ready. Dong Fang says that he is destined to fight, but if the boy comes to war as Yao Shi, then the Zi dynasty will send huge forces after him to get rid of him. He asks the boy not to be left alone. In addition, the boy heard that the bloody barbarians have also launched an offensive in other places, and they are using such a large number of troops that he thinks they will launch another offensive soon. Donfin says that the bloody barbarians are ready for a protracted battle and are so desperate to lay siege to the city that he worries about a possible plot. But Shindugu hasn't done anything yet. Xiao Long says that his adoptive father is probably planning something. He needs to wait a little longer. Donfin hopes so. But Shindugu is not only the opponent of the Zi dynasty. This is the big game of the Jiang dynasty. It's good if these are just his experiences. In general, the boy should stay in the city of Xing Ye. He asks him to prepare for battle. For the next few hours, King Zi continued to attack the three cities. The battles were extremely difficult. The losses of both dynasties amounted to hundreds of thousands. Longya City and Qing City both suffered heavy losses and are struggling to resist. Only Xin Ye City has defeated the enemy many times, achieving huge victories. Thanks to the help of Yao Shi and the Qing Yi army, they finally repelled the enemy's attacks. The fences need to be put in order. He asks to beware of night attacks. According to the report, General Yao Shi took his subordinate to pursue the enemy, saying that he wanted to investigate the location of the enemy camp. Don Fan Goshi was very scared because it was very dangerous. A little later, in the barracks of the Zi dynasty, Xiao Lang was already in full swing, killing his enemies with a purple vine. He thinks that the Zi dynasty didn't have any strange things. Did it seem to him that his strength was less than before? The bloody barbarians have been fighting for the Zi dynasty for a long time, but they still haven't gathered their strength? They have other goals. We urgently need to get to Dongfan Goshi. After that, Yao Shi rushed to Dongfan Goshi, but he was not there. His son said that his father rushed back to the imperial capital. The Zi dynasty attacked the city to hold off their army. They took 100,000 people and had already crossed three cities, heading straight to the capital. The bloody barbarians received equipment during the battle, pretending to be their own soldiers, and the especially strong ones killed the scouts along the way and are now located near the inner regions of the dynasty. 
Xiao Long says it's careless. This is their real goal. There must be a traitor who is collaborating with them, otherwise such a huge army would not be able to get inside. The traitor must have said that the Empire had no army. The Empire's army in the forest was suppressing a rebellion in the east, while another army was fighting the enemy in northern Xinjiang, unable to return to the Imperial capital. We can't let them succeed! Xiao Long wants to report this to Xing Dugu. Qing Yi City is now temporarily commanded by General Jing Li. The marshal will secretly return to the imperial capital with the three national teachers. He also gave orders to three cities. Xiao Lang could not believe that his adoptive father and the army had not even returned to the imperial capital. Will the emperor be able to defend himself from the enemy? Of course, they must trust the marshal. For now, they will only be able to protect the northern border, to prevent the bloody barbarians from invading again. In addition, the marshal gave orders to Yao Shi to continue to stay in Xin Yiya. The adoptive father was definitely worried that the boy's identity would be revealed when he left. Hong Dao is in danger in the imperial capital, but the main character must stay here. Meanwhile, Xing Dugu was in the interior lands of the Zhang dynasty, Luo City Yuan. Jing Ming says that the young envoy, according to the spies, the bloody barbarians will arrive in an hour, and now all the people in the city have been evacuated. After that, Jing Ming created some kind of blue stream and began to create a portal. And from this portal, the warriors of the Donfang family came out to them and bowed their knee to Xing Du Gu. 300,000 soldiers have gathered, waiting for the marshal to give the order. Xing Du Gu says that this is the only place from which one can go to the imperial capital, and it will also be the burial place of a hundred thousand army of bloody barbarians. Meanwhile, the barbarians were already in front of Luo City Yuan. They were already ready to enter the city. But suddenly there was a loud explosion and a bright glow behind them. Suddenly two armies appeared on the battlefield for them, the Northern Army and the Imperial Forest Army. After the barbarians saw that suddenly these armies were here, he became very frightened. And after that, the barbarians began to retreat. Xing Du Gu says that thanks to cooperation with Yun Fei Yang, the traitor received incorrect information, which is why they decided to attack. The trap has already slammed shut. Jing Ming says this is a very wise move. Thanks to this, they can turn the tide of the war in their favor. But the war is not over yet. Xing Du Gu suggests returning to Qing Yi City. This hundred thousand army of Emperor Xi is just an appetizer, the real target in Longya City. The Xi Dynasty's plan failed. They bet everything on capturing northern Xinjiang, but at this moment, the goal of their main force should be to liberate Xu Hongyu, who is located in Longya City. But Longya City is guarded by the Zhuo family, and it is the most difficult city to capture among the three border cities. Does the young envoy really think that the Z dynasty will concentrate its forces on capturing Longya City? That's right. Xu and Yi Xunyu will personally lead the army to attack the city, because Xu Hongyu is not the blood of the Xi Emperor. It is the son of the blood sect master. The Z dynasty will save him at any cost. The Z Empire many years ago revealed their secrets. Information was received not only about Xu Hongyu, but also about the traitor and soon he was informed. Jing Ming asks how could he be so careless. Xing Du Gu is afraid that Yun Fei Yang is a very dark horse. But now they need to deal with the traitor. He has a suspect. Long Ye Ro Ye Fei Jing Li, one of them is the traitor. The news of the destruction of the Hundred Thousand Xi Dynasty Army soon spread throughout northern Xinjiang, and the military spirit of the Zhang Dynasty rose. The Xi Dynasty's plan was destroyed and the remaining forces were gathered and launched a fierce attack on the three cities. Xiao Long says that the capital is safe now, but after this the bloody barbarians have gone mad. The city of Xin Ye may disappear without Dongfang Guoxi. What should they do if Xiu Yi and Xiu Niu come? Captain Donfan asks the boy not to worry, and to believe in the marshal's plan, they will go to the city of Longya, and his father and the other two national units would join forces to kill them there. As long as they win this battle, it is their victory. He calls the entire army to attack. It turned out that everything was according to the adoptive father's plan, but it went too smoothly. But why does Xiao Lang still have a bad feeling? Afterwards, they met in the war hall, and Captain Dong Fang addresses Xing Du Gu and says that he heard that Xing Du Gu led all kinds of troops to stop the Xi Dynasty's sneak attack. 
But aren't these troops suppressing the uprising in the east? Xingdu Gu says that it was a game for the Z Dynasty. He had already set up the teleportation array and was waiting for the enemy to appear at the door. But suddenly the man brought a message from the princess which was intended for Xingdu Gu. When Xingdu Gu opened this letter, it was written in it that the traitor was General Ye Fei. It was bad, Ye Fei is now guarding Xinye City, Yao Shi is in danger. He orders Jing Ming to immediately arrest Ye Fei. After this, he orders Jing Li to follow him in order to repel the bloody barbarians as quickly as possible. They must concentrate their forces on supporting the city. Xu Yi and Xu Nyu will come here to save Xu Hong Yu, and he will send three national teachers to the capital. Along with the summoned army, they will be destroyed. Thanks to the false message from the traitor, the Z dynasty fell into a trap. It was doomed to defeat the moment it entered northern Xinjiang. And after that, Jing Li took and attacked Xing Du Gu. He says his real name is Xu Hong Li. He was undercover for about 15 years but still lost to Xin Du Gu. He is a real traitor. Did Yun Zishan lie to him? Xu Hong Li is afraid that Xing Du Gu let his guard down, and he took advantage of this to kill him, falling victim to his own plan. However, he fell into a conspiracy in which Xing Du Gu and Yun Zishan planned to destroy the Z dynasty. They would all end up in the hands of the Yun family. But if he kills Xing Du Gu, the Z dynasty will win. Gu's last thoughts were that he would no longer be able to return to his beloved Qing Yi. And after that he dies and instructs Xiao Long to look after Qing Yi. And Xiu Nu arrived at the city, they are now going to destroy this city. They didn't think that the Z dynasty would send three war emperors. They only talked about Xiu Yi and Xiu Nu. But who is the third? After this third person took off his hood, everyone realized that it was Emperor Z. Is Xu Hong Yu worthy of Emperor Xi himself coming for him? Apparently Xu Hong Yu is very important to them. The original plan was to fight three on two, but now everything has become more complicated. Xing Du Gu will come to support them soon, then they can win this battle. And after that, the war emperors began the battle. The princess says that, as expected, Emperor Z appeared in person, but the blood sect has not yet revealed itself. The blood sect has always been in the shadows. Emperor Z is quite content with everything ready. The Imperial Army has gone to Qing Yi City to restore order, and other troops are about to arrive. Meanwhile, Emperor Z was informed that everything was bad. A large army is coming here, and they will be surrounded. But suddenly, a holy soul appeared on the battlefield. And this holy soul in the form of a golden dragon simply destroyed Emperor Z. It was Yun Fei Yang who orders to listen to his order. Now the Emperor is dead. He orders to attack with all his might, destroy the enemy army, and win the Jiang Dynasty. The barbarians thought that Yun Fei Yang was mediocrity and did not understand how he could suddenly possess the highest point of the Holy Soul. Madame Zhuo also doesn't understand how Yun Fei Yang suddenly became so strong. Yun Fei Yang hidden for so long. Unexpectedly, he controlled everything behind his back. She is afraid that something big will happen soon. Meanwhile, Emperor Yun Fei Yang was informed that terrible news had come from the city of Qing Yi. Xing Du Gu had been killed by the traitor Jing Li. Yun Fei Yang wants to go to Qing Yi City to capture Jing Li and let the three national teachers continue to lead the army to hunt down the bloody barbarians. After Emperor Yun Fei Yang began to leave, for some reason he smiled heavily. At this moment, Xiao Long has finished the battle, and he thinks that his adoptive father's plan was a success. The battle for Longyao City was won by the Jiang Dynasty. But suddenly for the main character, Jing Ming arrived to him. Jing Ming is glad that the boy is okay. He asks where Ye Fei is now. Xiao Long had just heard from the soldiers who were defending the city that Ye Fei was attacked by bloody barbarians during the battle and died. So he's not a traitor. Then they miscalculated. They quickly leave and Jing Ming says that Zi Shan gave false information, in which case the traitor is another person. Xing Du Gu may be in danger, and it would be better for the boy to return to Qing Yi with him. Xiao Long orders Qian Shun to gather the Qing Yi army and move to Qing Yi city. Meanwhile, Emperor Yun Fei Yang asks the warrior if Jing Li has escaped. He says that he took advantage of the chaos to get out of the city and join the enemy army. They are pursuing him with all their might. The emperor orders him to tell the entire army that the traitor Jing Li killed Marshal Du Gu and disappeared. 
Then the emperor will personally command the entire army of northern Xinjiang, completely defeat the Xi dynasty, and avenge the marshal. The princess congratulates her father on his success. The father says that after so many years of being ruled by a weak emperor, it is finally time. He abused his daughter for so many years, but she did everything well. The princess says it's all for the royal family. For nearly a hundred years, four great feudal families and ten clans controlled the government. The Yun family became empty and became a puppet. After the appearance of Sindugu, all control over the army passed to him. Now that the Zi dynasty has been defeated, Xing Du Gu is dead, and the father has reached the pinnacle of power. The regime's power can be restored in one fell swoop, and the Jiang dynasty in the hands of the father will enter an era of prosperity. The emperor laughs and says that no one can threaten the Yun family now. It was a victory for him. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang heard that the emperor had arrived here and was personally commanding the troops. After that, they came to the guards to ask what happened, and they briefly told them everything, and that Xing Du Gu died at the hands of Jing Ling. After this, Xiao Long immediately ran to the place where the body of his adoptive father lay, but they were stopped at the entrance by a guard. Xiao Long says that he is the adopted son of Marshal Xing Du Gu and wants to see him. The guard says that the marshal is dead, and his majesty and the princess are mourning inside, and the boy can't go there. But then the emperor came out to them and ordered the guard to let them inside. After they went inside, Xiao Long saw the dead body of his adoptive father, Xing Du Gu. Xiao Long could not contain his emotions and began to mourn the death of his stepfather. The princess says that it is impossible to bring a person back after death. Her father sent people to pursue and kill Jing Li. He will definitely avenge the marshal. But Xiao Long says that he will kill Jing Li personally. But whether it was Princess Zi Shan who killed his father, was it really only Jing Li who did it? When the princess heard this, she was a little taken aback. She says that the marshal really died at the hands of Jing Li. The soldiers of the War God Mansion can testify. Xiao Long threateningly says that if his adoptive father had not let his guard down, how could he be deceived? Master Jing Ming said, before he separated from his father, the princess gave wrong information about the traitor. Master Jing Ming was sent to capture Ye Fei, and the adoptive father had no protection from Jing Li regarding this matter. Can she explain everything? And after that, the emperor simply attacked Xiao Lang and called him a daredevil. He says that Xiao Lang is slandering the princess for the marshal's death. This is just a criminal offense. Xiao Lang and Jing Ming realize that Emperor Yunfei Yang is at the peak level of a war emperor. They don't understand how this incompetent monarch fainting could actually be the emperor of war. But the princess suddenly stands up for the guys and tells her father that there really was an exchange of intelligence. This must be the enemy's deception. General Yao Shi has a sincere heart, and he is also a pillar of the dynasty. Zishan is ready to stand up for him. Jing Ming blocked the boy with himself and said that he is now in great sadness and depressed. And Xiao Long thinks that all this was calculated by him, and he and Jing Ming are not his opponents and there is no room for resistance here. The emperor says that for the sake of the princess, he will spare the guy. Since the princess values him very much, he will listen to the princess from now on. The princess says that it was Zishan's fault that it was misinformation. Zishan will definitely investigate this matter with all his might and asks General Yao Shi to believe in Zishan. Xiao Lang, gritting his teeth, agrees with this, but he understands that the secret report was known only to her and her father. How could it be verified? She played the victim and covered for him. Impressive show. The emperor tells Jing Ming and Yao Shi to take advantage of Jing Li's life to honor the spirit of the marshal in the sky. But they must also remember who the princess is. But the princess also understands that she has no benefit from their knowledge, and they can only submit. Xiao Long became very angry and punched the wall. Jing Ming says it is their carelessness. Unexpectedly, the main enemy is the royal family. This is because he failed to protect the young envoy. But the main character asks Jing Ming not to blame himself. He will take revenge for his great father. Jing Ming says that Yun Fei Yang hid his powers for many years, and only today, having defeated the Xi dynasty and got rid of the young envoy, he can restore both power and military might, and then, in one fell swoop, revive the royal family. 
It must be a long wait to eliminate all the threats. Perhaps when they colluded with the Black Dragon before, it was not the three great clans. Xiao Long didn't expect this. The adoptive father was persecuted for threatening Yong Fei Yang's rule, as was the grandfather, who was the strongest in the Jiang Dynasty. Jing Ming cries and says that now that no one from the Zhang Dynasty can shake Yong Fei Yang's position, there is nothing they can do. Xiao Long turns around and leaves, and tells Jing Ming to take his father to the hidden sect. He wants to take over the rest. But Jing Ming stops the protagonist and says that he cannot compete with the Yun family. He must return to the hidden sect with him to make a plan. But Xiao Lang is unshakable in his decision and his plan is revenge. He asks Jing Ming to tell Aunt Ching Yi and his brother Xiao Dao that the main character will return alive. Meanwhile, in Long Yao City, the young man who was previously captured by Xiao Lang was still in prison. Zhuo Zhan says that thanks to Grandma taking the initiative to care for Xu Hong Yu, the Zhuo family has made a big contribution this time. This Yao Shi was sent to Xinye City. How could he compare to him on the main battlefield? But his conversation was interrupted by an explosion that broke the wall in this prison. It was Xiao Lang, he says that Zhuo Zhan, unfortunately, he will never defeat him. After this, the main character destroyed all the guards who attacked him. And after that, he grabbed Xu Hong Yu and wants to take him with him. After some time, Xiao Long arrived to the barbarians and says that he is the son of Marshal Xing Du Gu, the youth of the Zhang Dynasty. Xiao Long officially declares himself a traitor and asks the Zi Dynasty to accept surrender. Meanwhile, Mrs. Zhuo was informed that Yao Shi had stolen Xu Hong Yu. She was shocked by the news. He also killed several of the Zhuos and injured the leader, Zhuo Zhan. Mrs. Zhuo asks where did Yao Shi run away? She will personally capture him and punish him for his crime. Report! General Yao Shi appeared in the Zi Dynasty army with Xu Hong Yu, calling himself Xiao Lan. He also announced his betrayal. Meanwhile, Xiao Long says that he saved the third prince on purpose to show his sincerity. The barbarians say that they accept the protagonist's surrender on behalf of Marshal Zi Dynasty. Zhuo quickly came to this place and said that treason is a national disgrace. It's too late to look back. She wants him to return with Xu Hong Yu immediately. Xiao Long gave the prisoner to the barbarians and says that he will never return. After that, he took the transformation pill and reincarnated into his real form. He says that today in the name of Xiao Lang, he will rebel against the dynasty and will never regret it. Lady Zhuo says that it is true that Xiao Lang was born a rebel. Not long ago he betrayed the Xiao family. Now it is treason to the motherland. Xiao Lang says he was betrayed. The Xiao family has nothing to do with him, and the Yun family killed his grandfather, father and mother, and adoptive father. With such deep hatred, he swore that the Yun family would pay for this. The warriors cannot believe that the royal family killed two powerful men and the leader of the Xiao family. The deaths of all three are indeed inextricably linked to the Yun family, and Xiao Lang is in despair. In the end, the Yun family is the ultimate winner. Xiao Long's remarks would definitely damage the royal family's reputation. This is bad for the Jiang dynasty. Lady Zhuo attacks Xiao Lang and wants to kill him. But Xiu Yu stands up for Xiao Lang and says that the boy is already a member of his Zi dynasty, and if she wants to kill him, then she needs to defeat him. Xiu Yi takes the boy whom the main character brought and calls him to come with him. Lady Zhuo Ping Ping says that the Jiang dynasty will haunt the boy for the rest of his life. But Xiao Lang doesn't mind. Even if the Yun family doesn't come to him, then he will be strong enough. He will also break the Zhang dynasty, destroy the Yun family. This is a blood sacrifice to his relatives. The elders think that this is too serious a matter, so they decide to report it to his majesty first. No matter what Xiao Long's goal is, he will never return to the Zhang dynasty as long as he lives. After all this, the emperor was informed what had happened. The emperor orders Xiao Lang to be persecuted for the rest of his life. A huge reward will be offered, and the killer will receive the title of duke and become a general. The princess says that the spread of this case will definitely affect the reputation of the royal family and the morale of the army. They must clarify these facts immediately. The father orders his daughter to do something. She must not ruin the main event. The princess wants Xiao Long to forever remain covered in the shame of betrayal and die in agony. The Yong family soon announced to the world that Yun Fei Yang led the army to victory with the power of the peak of the Martial Emperor, Marshal Dugu, the god of war. 
died at the hands of the traitor Jing Li, and Xiao Long deceived the royal family by stealing the third prince and betrayed the motherland. The entire country praised the wise Yunfei Yang and mourned the death of Xing Du Gu. Countless families condemned Xiao Long for betraying and collaborating with the enemy and issued a notice to completely isolate themselves from him. The Yang family became the hero of the Jiang dynasty, and Xiao Long became the first sinner of this dynasty. To the Red Bean Dongfang house, that Xiao Long was a traitor to the motherland. But the girl still loved this guy and waited for him to return to her because he promised her a wedding. It is necessary to send the third prince as quickly as possible, and it is also necessary to report the death of Emperor Zi. They must take control of the situation. The Jiang dynasty sent the Yeti army to their border and attacked their army. Xiao Long realizes that this is the last stage of being an adoptive father. It is rumored that the Yeti tribe is extremely cruel and has always been a hidden danger to the Zi dynasty. This war has caused a shortage of troops in the north, and now is a good time for the Yeti to seriously harm the Zi dynasty. The Yeti tribe went berserk and invaded several cities in the north, where there were heavy losses. Help is urgently needed at the border. Has the Jiang dynasty really calculated all this? However, the numerous armies suffered heavy losses. How can they still resist them? Now they are attacked by the enemy. The blood sect is still in no hurry to act. If they don't have countermeasures, the Z dynasty will truly be defeated. Xiao Long thinks that his adoptive father threw all his strength into the war and won. But unfortunately, he fell at the hands of those whom he trusted and gave all his strength. He will never allow the Zhang dynasty to be defeated. He asks for forgiveness from his adoptive father. He will ruin his plan. Xiao Long turns to the two marshals and says that he is ready to help. These marshals would like to know how General Xiao wants to help them. Xiao Long knows that the Zi dynasty does not trust him, so to prove his loyalty, he wants to head to the Yeti tribe to destroy them with the power of the Holy Soul, so that the Zi dynasty will not suffer any more troubles. Xiao Long only wants to find a place in the Zi dynasty so that he can one day destroy the Zhang dynasty. Yun Yi says that he will send a person to send the boy to the north. If he succeeds in completely destroying the Yeti tribe, the protagonist will become a great hero of the Zi dynasty, and there will be no problem in obtaining the title. The marshals wonder if the boy can really cope with the Yeti tribe, and what exactly does Xiao Lang want to do? Yun Yi says don't underestimate him. He has an extremely strong spirit. Maybe he really has a countermeasure. He seems determined to join them to take revenge on the dynasty. Although the royal family of the Jiang dynasty is related to the death of the three Xiaos, but after all, the Zi dynasty also had a hand in this. You need to be careful. If he tries sincerely, then they can also cooperate with them. But if he has other intentions, they will kill him on the spot. Xiao Lang, meanwhile, met with a girl. She says that she is here to help him on the orders of Marshal Xu. Her name is Xiu Mu, and the guy next to her is Xiu Kui. Xiao Lang thinks that they sent two war emperors to keep an eye on him. It seems that the Zi dynasty is very wary of him and is acting cautiously. After that, they sat on some animal and set off. When Xiao Long sets foot on the land of the Zhang dynasty again, the Yun family will definitely be destroyed. He also asks Red Bean Hong Dao for forgiveness. He will definitely come back and asks him to wait for him. Meanwhile, bad news arrived. The army of the Zhang dynasty is coming. Yun Fei Yang and the three national teachers personally lead the army. They realize that Yun Fei Yang intends to absorb the Zi dynasty in one fell swoop. But they try not to think that Yun Fei Yang is so ruthless. Now that the army has suffered such heavy losses, they will fight to the death to protect the blood sect. And then a terrifying battle begins between the two clans. But suddenly a woman appears for everyone. With one wave of her hand, she threw away the strongest warriors. Everyone was shocked that she repelled the attack of the six war emperors. In the entire Divine Soul continent, there is only one person capable of this. This is the legendary Mistress of the Soul. She asks the two dynasties to stop fighting. Soul Master, Cheng Cheng Ju. She asks the two dynasties to stop fighting, otherwise she will force them to do so. People from the Zi dynasty quickly agreed to stop everything. But Lady Zuo Ping Ping is angry and says that this is the perfect time to destroy the Zi dynasty. And after these words, the mistress of the soul attacks her. She approaches Emperor Yunfei Yang and asks him if he is ready to retreat. He clenches his teeth and says that he is retreating. 
but he thinks that the dominance he has been waiting for for so many years has been ruined by some girl. The Soul Master says that this was instigated by the Zi Dynasty, so if they cede 50 cities to the Zhang Dynasty, there will be no more war in the next 10 years. Emperor Yunfei Yang asks what will happen if the war starts in 10 years. Will she intervene again? The girl leaves and says that if war is inevitable, it will not be stopped for 10 years. By then, Chengju will no longer worry about it. Yunfei Yang says that let the Zi Dynasty last another 10 years, then they will finish what they started. The two marshals of the Zi Dynasty understand that what happened now saved the Zi Dynasty. Meanwhile, in the hidden sect, the elders are trying to do something with Xing Du Gu's body. But even if the sect master used the heaven-defying secret technique, what about losing his mastery and preserving his soul? Can he be resurrected? The master of the hidden sect says that Xing Du Gu is very important to the hidden sect. They must do everything possible to preserve the remnant of his soul. As for whether he can be resurrected, it depends on his luck. Jingming overheard this conversation and thinks that they saved his soul and there is still hope. Suddenly Xiao Dao and Qing Yi came up to him, and they heard that he had suddenly returned and asked if the war in northern Xinjiang had ended. Jingming says that they have temporarily gained an advantage, but the situation in northern Xinjiang is very difficult, so he returned alone to report. But Aunt Qing Yi senses something is wrong and says that she has been very worried lately and asks if Xiao Lang and Xing Du Gu are okay. Jing Ming felt uncomfortable but lied to his auntie and said that they were fine. He says they just can't go back yet. After that, Qing Yi and Xiao Dao said goodbye to Jing Ming and left. After they left, Jing Ming thinks about what he should have told them. Xing Du Gu left them, and Xiao Long became an enemy of the Zheng Dynasty and joined the Xi Dynasty. Meanwhile, Xiao Long arrived at the place where he was going. In this place, the Yeti tribe destroyed the army of the Z dynasty. The girl says that the Yeti's attack is too cruel. We need to rush to help their people. After saying these words, Xiao Lang jumped off the flying beast and thinks that although the Yeti tribe is extremely fierce, they can only attack physically. The purple vine with devouring power is their natural enemy. After Xiao Lang landed, he immediately began attacking those Yetis with his purple vine. The girl says that they are reinforcements sent by Marshal Xu. The entire army must immediately submit to them in order to destroy the Yeti. With such a small level, he was able to destroy a huge number of Yetis. Holy soul is terrifying. It's clear why they were ordered to keep an eye on this boy. After a short amount of time, Xiao Lang destroyed the last Yeti and won. The girl thanks Xiao Lang for helping them defeat the Yeti tribe. This is what the main character had to do. But there is something else. His soul is very toxic. He wants to get rid of these corpses to prevent the poison from spreading. He asks them to order the soldiers to retreat. After the purple vine has finished consuming the bodies of all these yetis, Xiao Long orders them to immediately burn all the bones. But after the boy has absorbed so much, there is still no reaction. He thinks that he needs bigger prey. A man came with a report that the seventh princess and the eldest prince were arriving at the border, and wanted to announce the arrival of three reinforcements. Afterwards, Xiao Lang arrived at the border city and met with the seventh princess and the eldest prince. They were the heirs of Emperor Xi. The seventh princess realizes that Xiao Lang is the same rebel general of the enemy Jiang dynasty. She heard that he killed many of the Yeti tribe, truly amazing. Xiao Lang says that he is not worthy of honor. The surrendered captain has a soul that resists the Yeti well, and the other soldiers also made a great contribution. The girl takes out her sword and says that the Holy Spirit is extremely powerful. The marshal can't do anything without it. She attacks the main character for capturing her second brother and forcing him to suffer torture. But it was not difficult for the main character to dodge such an attack. He thinks that she wants to avenge Xu Hong Yu. And at that moment, Xiao Lang trips her, causing this girl to fall. But after he was able to stay on his feet, she did not give up her attempts and again attack the boy. But someone repels her attack with his sword. It was the eldest prince who protected the main character and asks his sister not to engage in nonsense. He apologizes to Xiao Lan for his sister, and he hopes she didn't cause too much trouble. On behalf of Emperor Zi's family, he officially welcomes him into the Zi dynasty. Xiao Lang thanks the eldest prince named Hong Ru. The prince admires Xiao Lan's strength. He does not understand how he was able to achieve this at a young age. He asks what Xiao Lang's plans will be in the future. 
Xiao Lang only wanted to join the army of the Zi dynasty and one day go on a campaign against the Zhang dynasty. It's not surprising to him why just now his sister was pretending to be bad and he was pretending to be good. He immediately wanted to win the boy over. The prince says that since this is all, he has one proposal. But suddenly a man comes up to them and says that something bad has happened. The Yeti tribe is back, plus the Yeti king is with them. Although the Yeti king can only use physical attacks like other Yetis, his strength is comparable to the war king, and the defense is extremely high. He is not sure that the two of them will be able to defeat him. When Xiao Long heard that the Yeti king was so powerful, he immediately wanted to join forces with the two leaders to fight the Yeti king. They must do everything they can to destroy it. The prince agrees to this proposal. He then says that if Xiao Long and the two leaders can kill the Yeti king, they will receive a great reward. In addition, inform the entire army about preparations for battle. Meanwhile, outside the border city, the Yeti king attacked the Zi dynasty warriors. Xiao Lang and everyone else realize that this Yeti is very strong. Xiao Long asks the two to hold off the Yeti king and inflict as much damage on him as possible, while the main character himself will wait for the opportunity to deal a fatal blow to him. He only has physical defense, so the purple vine will definitely absorb him. After that, the girl and guy began to attack the Yeti king as hard as possible. And at this moment, the main character begins to attack this Yeti king with his purple vine. But he doesn't succeed because the Yeti's skin is too thick and he can't pierce to the heart. In this case, you need to attack another vulnerability besides the heart. The guy and girl say they can't stop the Yeti king, but Xiao Lang asks them to attack his head with all their might. The guy and girl understand that there is no way out and they can only believe and stop this Yeti from entering the city. And after that, Xiao Long attacks this Yeti king with his purple vine straight to the head. After such an attack, the Yeti king could not survive and died. All the soldiers rejoiced at the victory. Xiao Long thinks that the Yeti king with the level of the war king has been killed. He wonders if the purple vine can develop. The girl looks at the purple vine and says that this soul seems to violate the laws of nature. Two hours had already passed, and Xiao Long still had not finished absorbing the body of the Yeti king. The guy thinks that perhaps this was influenced by the protection of the Yeti king. No matter how successful he was this time, one must be wary. His power exceeds expectations. After a while, Xiao Long stood up and finished absorbing. He asks them to burn the corpses. He has absorbed too much and wants to return to the city. When the boy returned, he was glad that the purple vine had finally evolved. Not only has the appearance changed, but a second magical combat skill has also appeared. Red is the color of plant quintessence. This spirit also has a healing combat technique. Xiao Long thought that the purple vine was an attack spirit, but now it seems that the purple vine's abilities are more extensive than he thought. The boy wants to test her new ability, and after that he takes a knife in his hand and cuts his hand. And as soon as the vine touched the wound on the boy's hand, it immediately healed. This healing power is far superior to the healing spirits he saw in the Zhang dynasty. But this is still too simple compared to absorption, so he needs to find another opportunity to check if there are other unusual skills. Of the Z dynasty and get to the imperial capital as soon as possible. But where should he start? They had recaptured almost half of the city in the past two days, and General Xiao had made a great contribution. His Highness Hong Ru will definitely reward General Xiao again. Xiao Lang thanks His Highness for his appreciation. His Majesty, the wise martial artist, is also the sole commander who destroyed the Yeti tribe this time. He believes that when he inherits the throne, a dynasty will undoubtedly grow in his hands. Yes. His Majesty is indeed the right person to inherit the ruling line. Therefore, the likelihood that he will take the throne this time is very high. It would be good if His Highness inherited the throne. He did not object to its surrender and gave a place to hide. General Xiao can help His Highness drive away the Yeti tribe. Radiant help. Let's go to the next city. Xiao Lang threw his bait, and now he will wait for the fish to bite. After some time, night fell and Xiao Lang sat in his chambers and meditated. And suddenly, Xu Kui approaches him. The boy does not understand why he came here. Xiu Kui says that he is sending a message on behalf of His Highness, and the main character must answer carefully. Is the boy really ready to contribute to the enthronement of His Highness? Xiao Lung agrees, 
as long as His Highness allows him to remain in the Zi dynasty, join the army, and one day repay the Zhang dynasty, he, Xiaolong, will swear allegiance to His Highness. Xiaokui says that is good. In fact, to elevate His Highness to the presto requires the strength of General Xiao. They must fight back the Yeti as soon as possible and return to Emperor Zi's city. Seven days later, with the help of Xiao Long, the Zi dynasty defeated the Yeti tribe and restored peace to the northern border. This is the city of the Zi dynasty emperor. Now that the Seoul Festival is approaching, along with the retreat of the Zhang dynasty, the great victory in the north, Emperor Zi's city is celebrating. Emperor Zi Paul, and there are three forces that can lay claim to the throne. The first is Marshal Zi, Xu Nu, the second is the Blood Sect, and the third is the six major families. The Marshal supported His Highness. The Blood Sect supported the son of the Blood Sect master, Xu Hong Yu. According to rumors, the six great families decided to make Prince Xu Hong, that is, Jing Li, who had been hiding in the Zhang dynasty for several years, emperor. The boy realizes that Xu Hong Yu can become stronger due to experience, and Jing Li can become an emperor. They will discuss this issue in the future. His Highness has already arranged a banquet at the mansion. In this battle for the throne, Jing Li will definitely appear, and he must kill him personally, revenge for his adoptive father. City of Emperor Xi, home of Xu Hong Ra. Meanwhile, people saw Xiao Lang walking down the street, and they were talking about him being a traitor. They heard that this time he fought back against the Yeti tribe and made a great contribution. He has a holy spirit and has killed many of their soldiers in previous battles. Meanwhile, the prince approached Zhao Long. He heard that the boy had led the northern defenders to a great victory. Truly a wonderful job had been done for his Zi dynasty. He handed the boy a cup of drink and wants to drink it with him. But Xiao Long feels that other people seem hostile to him, and some are uncomfortable, but fortunately, his majesty is willing to accept him. The prince says that General Xiao has repeatedly achieved outstanding achievements, and everyone will gradually accept it in the future, and as long as he is here, he will definitely help the general. After that, the two of them drank. After these words, Xiao Long will faithfully serve his majesty, and if his highness has any orders, he will definitely carry out everything. The prince says that there are five days left until the Seoul Festival. He wants to take the boy to have fun, and when he has everything arranged, he will talk to General Xiao to discuss important issues. Xiao Lang understands that Xu Ru is recruiting him with such force that he is afraid that he has only one goal, to help him get rid of hostile forces. But the main character likes it. It allows him to turn the Z dynasty upside down. Xiu Kui says that the forces in the city are now divided and asks the main character not to act alone, otherwise it will easily cause trouble. Now that the boy has arrived in Emperor Zi's city, representatives of the other two forces will definitely show themselves. And at that moment, behind Xiao Lang, a sword flies straight at him. But Xiao Lang was very lucky that he noticed it in time and was able to dodge. It was some stranger he calls the main character a traitor to the Zhang dynasty. Xiu Kui says that this is Prince Xi Qi, the lord of Zhi Chu City, Hong Yu's man, and his brother Xi Shan was killed by the main character during the autumn hunt. Xiu Qi's family is one of the six major families, and they cannot make an enemy out of him. All he can do is intimidate him. Xiu Kui asks the boy not to worry. After this, Xiao Long asks this guy not to worry. He has joined the Zi dynasty. This matter has already been reviewed by Marshal Xiu Yi. But Xie Qi attacks the guy. He doesn't care even if the marshal punishes him. But Xiao Lang killed his brother. Today he wants to destroy the boy. Xiu Kui stands up for the main character and asks him if he should now turn to his majesty. And at this moment, Xie Qi begins to attack Xiu Kui and asks not to stand in his way. Xiao Long realizes that this meeting was deliberately arranged by Xiu Hong Ru so that he would understand whether he could count on him alone for his survival. Xiao Lang's only regret is that he cannot absorb it. And after that, the main character kicked this guy right in the face, knocking out several of his teeth. After this, his friends decided to stand up for him and began to attack Xiao Lang. Xiao Lang turns to Xiu Kui and tells him to order them to stop or Xi Qi will die right now. After that, Xiu Ku stops these guys. He didn't expect that the main character not only dared to resist, but also forced him to act. Xiu Kui tries to stop Xiao Lang 
and asks him to let Xie go before anything happens. But Xiao Lang doesn't think it's a misunderstanding. Xie Qi really wanted him dead. After this, the main character picks up a knife and says that if it has come to this, he will not just let him go. And after that, he cut Xiao Lang and cut the veins of strength in Xie Qi's arms and legs. Xiu Kui understands that this will have huge consequences. And Xiao Lang understands that Emperor Xi's city needs to be sullied. And suddenly a man appears in the sky and rushes to destroy Xiao Lang. This man is going to kill the main character and wants him to pay back with his life. Xiao Long feels that this person has the energy of a war emperor emanating from him. After this, Xiao Long took Xie Qi hostage. He thinks it is suspicious that after picking on his son, Dad came. This is a really great game. Xiao Long picks up this guy and begins to cover himself with him. He doesn't believe he can chop this guy down. Xiao Long continues to turn this guy around, preventing him from attacking himself. Xiu Kui cannot believe that Master Xiu Chu actually retreated. He feels that he really cannot kill Xiao Long. Xiao Long says that he is not a fool. If he lets him go, he will die immediately. The first one to hold out against the Emperor of War. And after that, Xiao Long was very lucky because the prince appeared here and asked him to stop. The sword stopped right at the main character's head. He was scared to death. The prince says that General Xiao has already defected to their dynasty. He is the dynasty's guest of honor. He asks why he wants to kill him. If the marshal and the sovereign know about this, can they afford the consequences? The general says that his son is in the hands of the protagonist, his life is fading, and the traitor is actually leading to the assassination of Emperor Z in the city. Doesn't he see it? Or does this mean that his highness is ready to sacrifice his people for the sake of an outsider? The prince says that even if blood is shed, when his royal highness is here, no one will dare to kill him. When the general passed by Xiao Lang, he stopped him and said that today he would spare his life here. But if the marshal explained this to him why he accepted him, then he would accept it, gritting his teeth. After that, Xiao Lang picked up his knife and says that he will take care of it himself. And after that, Xiao Lang opened his veins. He asks if this is enough. General Chu says that Xiao Lang is truly ruthless. Then this matter will end here. The prince orders General Xiao to be returned home immediately for treatment. But this was the original plan of the protagonist. He carefully prepared his way to retreat. General Chu thinks that this Xiao Long is too dangerous. If they don't hold him, there might be a big disaster. The doctor reported to the prince that General Xiao's injury was no longer serious. The veins were connected. He took a pill, but it would take half a month to recover. Xiao Lang thinks that half a month is enough. And now he can avoid the business that was scheduled for him at the Seoul Festival. The prince asks the main character why he is so reckless. I cut my wrists. He will miss an important event. Xiao Long says that he was reckless, but an injury cannot ruin an important event for his highness. He originally wanted General Xiao to help kill the man. Now General Xiao is seriously injured. He wants to discuss this matter. Xiao Long asks who he is going to kill. Xiao Lang is not strong enough now. Why not invite Mr. Xu Kui to do it? Of course, he wants the main character to kill, regardless of success or failure. He is destined to become a traitor, in which case he will definitely not be able to kill Jing Li. Because this man is not very strong, the main character himself could not cope, but he and the marshal decided to cover him. But if he went to Xu Kui, there would be problems. Xiao Lang asks who the target is. The prince says that this is Prince Li of the Zi dynasty, that is, the general of the northern army of the Jiang dynasty, Jing Li. When the main character heard this, he was very surprised. Prince Li used one sacred thing to escape, causing him to lose his strength, but the sect used magic to restore his strength. However, he only recovered to the commander level. Xiao Long thinks this is the best time to kill him. He is an enemy, and if he takes the throne, the main character will die. He asks to give it to him. Now that Xiao Lang's muscles and veins are completely damaged, it is extremely difficult to use deep energy and combat skills. He is still confident that he will kill him. Xiao Lang says that if he is close to Prince Li and he does not have strong defense, he will be able to kill him. He will take the last chance and do his best. He asks that this be given to him. The prince agrees to this. He will arrange it on the day of the soul festivals and then notify Xiao Lan. But then he thinks that this is only to kill Jing Li, and then he will be useless to him. Xiao Lang says that it just so happened that cutting the wrists became a great trap. And finally, the soul festival began. 
Zhao Long had been waiting for this day for a long time. Xu Kui says that now the protagonist's body can barely walk. He must be careful. If the plan fails, it will be difficult to find another opportunity. Xiao Long understands that he is ready to put his life on the line and will definitely kill him. Fortunately, there is some kind of miracle pill. Xiao Long looked around and saw that there were no guards here. It seemed to him that this was Xu Hong Ra's place. In general, he doesn't see any problems. Nothing can stop him. He went into a room and locked the doors behind him. It was a banquet hall where people sat and ate. Xiao Long began to walk around this hall and look for where Jing Li was. And when he finally saw him, he screamed loudly so that everyone could see him. Jing Ling asks Xiao Lang what he is doing here. The main character says that of course he came to avenge his adoptive father. Jing Li doesn't believe that Xiao Lang is so stupid that he came here after cutting his wrists. The prince and princess were also here. They did not reveal that they were at one with Xiao Lang. Afterwards, Xiao Lan uses the plant quintessence technique and regenerates his wounds. The prince does not understand that, how is this possible? You cannot use qi energy to transform armor if the veins are cut. Immediately afterwards, Xiao Lang grabbed Jing Li with his red vine. And the prince thinks that as soon as Jing Li dies and Xiao Lang loses face, he will immediately kill Xiao Lang, and there will remain the only winner. But at that moment, as soon as the prince thought about this, Xiao Lang pierced his heart with his red vine. The main character asks the prince not to think that he does not know that the prince wants to kill the main character. Letting his guard down was his biggest mistake. All the people in this hall called Xiao Lang a murderer. Xiao Lang says that he only came to the Z dynasty to kill him. Jing Li asks the main character not to kill him. He says that if the main character kills him, he himself will die. Jing Li understands that he himself is now at the level of a commander. He is not an opponent to the main character. All he can do is desperately defend himself. Xiao Lang says that his adoptive father is dead and cannot be brought back, but he wants Jing Li's dog's life to be a sacrifice to repose his adoptive father's soul in heaven. Jing Li then broke free from the purple vine's grip, and after that he begins to attack the main character. He says that the dynasty will not forgive him so easily. But Xiao Lang was able to dodge this attack and responded by successfully dealing fatal damage to Jing Li's head. When people saw this, they were very scared. The princess at this moment shouts at Xiao Lang and asks how he dared to kill her older brother and Jing Li. She wants to tear the main character to pieces. Wu suddenly Xiao Lang notices someone outside coming towards him to check what kind of noise is happening here. When the girl heard a voice outside the doors, she immediately ran to open them. But Xiao Lang released his purple vine to stop this girl and he ended up injuring her. And after that, the main character immediately plunged underground to hide because the guards had already arrived. But his enemy had already been killed and he needed to leave. Kui and that girl come into this banquet hall. They don't understand what happened here. The seventh princess says it was Xiao Lang and her shoulder was badly injured. Xu Kui orders the marshal to be notified as quickly as possible. When two marshals arrived here, they immediately told them everything, and they immediately rushed in pursuit of Xiao Lang. Meanwhile, I tried to get out of this place underground as quickly as possible. Thanks to the environment created by Hong Ru, all the guards were isolated, which gave him a chance. And suddenly Xiao Lang hears Xiao Nu's voice, but he was far from him. The boy needs to run away as soon as possible. And suddenly, someone attacked Xiao Lang on his shoulder. It was a ranged attack. But fortunately, it was not so strong, so he and the purple vine barely escaped. After this, Xiao Long realizes that getting out of the tunnel is death. His best option is to continue moving underground. But the boy continues to be attacked by a warrior with the title of Emperor of War. The boy does not understand what to do and how he can escape. And suddenly, the purple vine stopped and pointed to the side. She wants the main character to follow her. But Xiao Lan has no choice. Either he will fall into a trap and die, or he will trust the purple vine. The purple vine has never shown itself like this before. Maybe there is something there that interests it. And suddenly, Xiao Long notices the light at the end of the tunnel. When he crawled out of this hole, he noticed some strange place in front of him. But the purple vine still had the upper hand and led the boy forward. But at this moment, two marshals also arrived at this place. Xiao Long understands that this is the end of resisting futilely under a pile of such attacks. And suddenly, the purple vine began some kind of violent activity and turned green. This green vine immediately grabbed the two marshals. But these two marshals broke away from the embrace of this purple vine. But at this moment, Xiao Lang managed to hide, and they cannot detect him. 
But that purple vine still continued to attack the two marshals. Marshals understands that this plant can penetrate armor and is very toxic. Xiao Long looks at all this, and he doesn't understand how his purple vine can do this. These countless vines have responded to the purple vine's call and are actually withstanding the War Emperor level. After that, Xiao Long walked to a door and lightly pushed it. When he first stepped through the threshold of this door, a purple vine immediately pulled him forward. The boy can only imagine where this vine is dragging him. The atmosphere is different from the one outside, as if something terrible is waiting for him there. After Xiao Lang reached the end, he saw a coffin in front of him. The boy immediately reached out with his hand to open this coffin, and the purple vine showed with all its appearance that it was pleased with this action. But suddenly the main character removed his hand. He thinks that his instinct tells him that if he comes closer, he will die. Xiao Lang runs away from the place. The boy just wants to return from here alive. The secret hidden here can only be revealed in the future. Meanwhile, Xu Shi came to the master of the blood sect and reported to him that Xu Nyu and Xu Sai were pursuing Xiao Lang, and they also introduced martial law in the city. Blood sect master says this is a waste of time. It's been too long since there's been any news. They must have missed it by now. Today's incident with Xiao Lan is a disgrace to the Z dynasty. He orders them not to let him escape. All the blood sect disciples were sent with a search party. All the strong warriors were sent to seal off the city, live to see the living, die to see the corpses. But Xiao Lang was still sitting in this place and meditating. He used the sky demonic enhancement technique. He needs to become stronger. The sky demon enhancement is out of control. And after that, the boy felt severe pain. Xiao Long thinks that the demon has already started to consume him. After that, Xiao Long used plant quintessence and sat there for two days later. And suddenly Xiao Long woke up, and finally this frightening demon fell behind. The protagonist's consciousness was trapped. His heart ached as if he had been pierced by a thousand arrows, and his body was also injured. It turns out that it was the purple vine that saved him, if not for it. Then probably the demon would have taken over his body long ago. However, his physical strength was increased, and he also raised his level. Every cloud has a silver lining. The boy doesn't know how long he was held here, but it's time to leave. This is the border between the Z Dynasty and the Yu Dynasty. He needs to cross it quickly. And suddenly, the Z Dynasty warriors appeared behind him. They found the boy and immediately rushed to kill him. Xiao Long tries to stop his pursuers and binds them with his purple vine. But one of the guys was able to escape from the embrace of the purple vine and continued to pursue the boy. And after that, Xiao Lang jumped off the cliff to escape. This guy orders an immediate call for reinforcements using a rocket. The soul hunter has already caught him. He will not escape. After that, they saw those fireworks and realized that the bounty hunters had found Xiao Lang. And after that, the boy found himself surrounded, and now he will not be able to escape. They say that Xiao Lang was caught by soul hunters. He will not go to heaven or to earth. They tell him to accept his death. Xiao Lang understands that these are three famous warriors. A large army. The Z Dynasty appreciates him. They say that Xiao Lang is the only one who is worthy of the attention of the three war emperors. He must be killed without regret. After that, the main character stopped and began to attack them in response. He says that they should not even think about getting out safe and sound. Xiao Lang thinks that he should mix with the barbarians first so that the war emperors will not be able to use area attacks. They understand that his soul can damage the armor and they need to be careful. These plants are the same as in the tomb last time. They are definitely related to Xiao Lang. After that, Xiao Lang raised a smoke screen and they did not see him. And after that, the main character used a breathing control technique. They don't understand how he, with such a level, can escape from the hands of the Emperor of War. Xiao Lang's breathing became very quiet. He began to move faster. His target was them. And then suddenly, Xiao Lang attacked this guy from behind and threw his knife at him. But this guy noticed this and simply cut this sword with one movement of his hand. Even if Xiao Lang can hide his breath, it is impossible to completely hide from the Emperor of War. He is waiting for Xiao Lang to die. And after that, he realizes that all Xiao Lang did was provoke him to attack. The main character understands that these three were furious and hit him blindly, not paying attention to each other. All the attention was on him. The two war emperors have been temporarily eliminated, but the last one remains. When this war emperor attacks Xiao Lang, he also hits his own people with his attack. Before the war emperor attacked Xiao Lang, 
The boy protected himself with a purple vine, creating a shield around himself. But this did not help, and the boy's armor was broken. He was sitting under a tree and all his bones were broken. The main character understands that this could be his end and today he will die. This guy attacks Xiaolong. But for some reason someone stopped this attack. It was Xiao Futu, he was flying and there was a very strong aura emanating from him. She asks who dared to touch Xiao Futu's nephew. The rest of the warriors could not believe that Xiao Futu was alive. In the Battle of Su Xian Cheng, the entire Xiao family was destroyed, except for Xiao Qing Lan, and he gave off such an aura that he had actually broken through the War Emperor level. Now the main character is happy that he is saved. Now all attention is focused on Uncle Xiao Futu. He has a great chance to get out of here. After this, the boy began to use the plant quintessence technique and heal his wounds. But Uncle Xiao Futu calls on his spirit and begins to protect the boy. After this, Xiu Jia and Xiu Bing will hold back Xiao Futu, and the others will keep an eye on Xiao Lang. Many warriors were chasing the boy, and he realizes that he cannot dodge the attack. But the boy was very lucky and someone repelled this attack instead of him. These were the main character's friends. They came to his aid in time. Qian Shun immediately approached Xiao Long. He apologizes to him for being a little late. Meanwhile, Xiao Futu dealt with all the warriors of the Zi dynasty. He grabs one man and says that he will save his dog's life, and he wants this warrior to return to his master and convey that the blood debt of the Xiao family, Xiao Futu, will return a hundredfold within ten years. This warrior retreats and thinks that Xiao Futu has come at the worst possible time. The losses are heavy. But the army had to kill Xiao Lang. This can be used as an explanation. Reinforcement? Xiao Futu is just a bait to hold off the war emperors. The guy says that they won, but Xiao Long is seriously injured and needs to be treated urgently. Xiao Futu says that you can't stay here for a long time. If Xiu and Xiu Niu come after him, it will be very bad, he tells them to head to the City of Souls. Jiang Dynasty, Emperor's Cabinet. He was told that Xiao Lang killed Jing Li and a member of the royal family and then escaped. Yes. According to the spy's report, the Zi Dynasty sent a strong army to hunt down Xiao Lang. The Zi Dynasty strictly guards information. All that is known is that the three war emperors were on the interception. Then Soya Lan clearly died. This child is a great disaster, and now he has sacrificed his life in order to harm the royal family of the Zi Dynasty, which is a holiday for the Jiang Dynasty. The princess says that Xiao Long has hidden a lot. You need to be very careful about him. After this, the emperor orders the spy to establish the location of Xiao Lang and make sure he disappears. The princess thinks that Xiao Long's threat to the Yun family is great. It's a pity, but he must die. In the Dongfang house, on the contrary, they believe that Xiao Lang is the hero of the Zhang dynasty. But he was attacked by the three war emperors. He had no chance. This is a loss for the Zhang dynasty. Red Bean hears this conversation. She is crying because Xiao Long promised her to marry her. He would never break his promise. After that, the girl did not think for a long time and decided to go in search of Xiao Lang. She only asks to wait for her. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang was in Seoul City. He was badly injured and was just resting in bed. After some time, he woke up and was met by Qian Shun. It turns out that the boy had been passed out for several days. Qian Shun says that this is the eastern city of the Seoul City, a very safe place. She asks Xiao Lang if he had a nightmare. Xiao Long asks, what's wrong with Uncle Futu? In fact, Xiao Lan dreamed that Hong Du fell into a pool of blood, a terrible dream. At that moment, Xiao Futu came to his room. The boy thanks his uncle for saving him. Uncle Xiao Futu does not need thanks. He only blames himself for not having come earlier, and then the boy would not have been hurt. Qian Shun says with sadness in his words that this time the protagonist's injury is actually very serious. But Xiao Long says that it's okay. He has his own way to restore the bones. Xiao Futu's uncle speaks up and says that the boy's dantian has been destroyed. Dantian is the part of the body located three kun below the navel, the genital area, the place where vital forces are concentrated. When the boy looked at his stomach, he immediately realized that everything was very bad. Immediately, the protagonist summoned his spirit and began to heal himself with plant quintessence. Qian Shun was very surprised that his martial soul had the ability to heal. But the main character didn't succeed and he didn't understand why deep energy couldn't be used. Uncle Xiao Futu says that a damaged Dantian is a serious injury and cannot be cured so easily. Now the main character is just trash. 
Zhao Futu says the boy should stay strong. He's lucky to survive. He has already taken revenge, and he offers to leave the rest to him. Xiao Futu turns around and leaves. He says that tomorrow he will go to the Sea of Souls and find the person who is looking after the boy. Yes, there is another world. There is a person who is far beyond their imagination. To become strong enough to destroy the Z Dynasty, he must take a risk. Now that the main character is not a powerful person, he has no hope of getting to the Sea of Souls. Xiao Lang asks his uncle to look for a medicine that can cure his aunt. Uncle Futu asks the boy to leave this to him and to live peacefully in the City of Souls. When the boy was left alone, he was very angry with himself that his Dantian was destroyed and turned into garbage. But the boy will never accept it. He Xiao Long will be at the top of this continent. He will definitely find a solution and be able to restore his Dantian. Everything the main character said was overheard by some person and immediately ran away. This person who overheard this conversation came to report to the lady that Xiao Futu brought Xiao Lan to the City of Souls. The lady is surprised that this boy actually survived. She's thinking about inviting him. But when this man told the girl that Xiao Lang's Dantian had been destroyed, she was very surprised. She says that the Z Dynasty really had a dead man's hand. The cost of restoring the Dantian is very high, not worth a holy soul. It's unfortunate, but there's nothing that can be done about it. But suddenly a girl was brought to them. She was found on the border with the Z Dynasty, an interesting person. When she crossed the Zhang border, she was immediately discovered by the Z Dynasty. Her lover died in a war not long ago, so her heart led her to the Z Dynasty, where she was seriously wounded. What did the head of the Zhang Dynasty do? A holy soul was recently lost and then they almost lost it? This girl will die from pain in her heart. I feel sorry for her, so she sealed her memory. She orders her to be sent home to rest. The two girls on the ship say they just arrived here and the lady teleported away. What a coincidence. He came here specifically to find her brother. Here's what was said. According to the information previously ordered for the investigation, the person who found out about the guy's whereabouts is in the eastern city. Two days have already passed. Uncle Xiaofutu and the others are already getting ready to go. The boy wants to see them off. Qian Shun says that Xiao Long should not walk around so much, but should take Ying Rong Don. Ying Rong Don is a unique medicine of the hidden sect. It was given to Master Futu. One woman with the level of the Emperor of War. The name seems to be Lu Xing. Xiao Lan thinks that maybe it is Lu Ming. Jing Ming said that she disappeared. Maybe she went to Uncle Fuda to go with him to the Sea of Souls. Ying Rong Dan is very dear. The main character will take care of it. Meanwhile, Uncle Futu left the pier of the City of Souls. Uncle Futu left. Xiao Lan hopes they will return soon. Lu Xing's figure is very similar to Lu Ming. She is going to save her aunt. Xiao Long asks why so many people decided to see him off. There are not so few people in the City of Souls. This is not uncommon. There are a lot of people. But since ancient times, those who have gone to the Sea of Souls have never returned. Xiao Long doesn't believe that no one actually returned. Qian Shun says that if someone comes back, it will definitely cause a stir in the city. But then a girl suddenly approaches them and greets them. The girl says that she met Xiao Lan for the first time. She just arrived and became his neighbor. Her surname is Mu. Xiao Lan tells the girl that she shouldn't talk to strangers on the street. He feels that this girl has a very strange aura. He cannot determine its level. The girl says that Xiao Lan's level is not high enough to alert her. Xiao Lan says that means he is the one to be wary of. Girls are very scary now. At this moment, they hear people on the street saying that Hong Dao of the Zhang Dynasty has disappeared. Now the entire Zhang Dynasty and family are looking for her everywhere. He thinks that she could have died, which is sad. When Xiao Lang heard this, he was very scared. Afterwards, Xiao Lang ran up to these people and asked what was wrong with Hong Dao. The guy says that Hong Dao went to the Z Dynasty to avenge Xiao Lang. Some say that she jumped off a cliff but now nothing is clear. Xiao Lang is also a famous person. He killed most of the royal family of the Z dynasty and was killed by the three emperors of the war. It is not surprising that such a beauty could also be killed. After this, Xiao Lang got angry and started attacking these guys. But these guys managed to repel the attack of the main character. They mock him and say that this is just bragging and the boy can't even use the energy. After that, Xiao Lang used his spirit and tied these guys with a purple vine. The main character gets angry and says that Hongdu could not die and they are all lying. 
The guys say they don't cheat on anyone. It's just news that's going around town. If he doesn't believe it, he can ask the Dongfang family itself. Qianshun tries to stop the main character and says that he might be in trouble. After that, Xiaolong let these guys go, and they immediately ran away. He wants to return to the Zhang dynasty and find Hong Dao. But Qianshun stops him and says that this is dangerous, and the guy may not return. Qianshun asks the main character to calm down. Now he cannot return to the Dongfang family. After this, Xiao Lang fell to his knees and began to cry. He blames himself because Hong Du is in trouble and he can't do anything. After this, Qianshun encourages the main character and says that she will find out about everything, and Xiao Long should rest for now. The girl says that she didn't think that the boy was still in love. She suggests asking the gentleman directly. But another girl wants to help him. He is the closest person to her brother here. But now his Dantian has been destroyed, and he is still in despair. If her brother saw him like this, he would definitely be sad. He's kind to her brother, so she'll repay that. This evening, several assassins came for the main character. They found him based on the loss of his soul and internal energy. It can be concluded that it is definitely him. But then this girl suddenly appears and attracts the attention of the killers. She says that they shouldn't mind their own business and offers them the death penalty. Chan Xiong inside the house heard that there was noise outside, but everything froze in the blink of an eye. After that, Qian Shun went outside and looked around. He didn't notice anything and thought that he had imagined him. The girl arrived to another girl and tells her that information about Zhao Lang's soul has become known. Many killers are interested in this, but they are all weak. The girl says that the city must understand that they are protecting Xiao Lang in the city. Then there is only one thing left, spiritual chin, a precious, mysterious tool that can speed up and improve bodies. The girl can't believe that her friend really wants to use such a precious treasure for Xiao Lang. Here he will not be able to restore his Dantian so she can only give him another hope. She should have already sensed that he was using heavenly demonic enhancement. Another girl asks if her friend really wants to help the main character enter the demon's void. It would be very wasteful, not to mention how dangerous it would be. He might not wake up. To be a waste forever or to play a dangerous game with a good outcome, what would Xiao Lang choose? Meanwhile, Xiao Long is in his room thinking that he needs to regain his strength as quickly as possible and leave this place. But suddenly he hears some music outside. He had never heard such a healing rhythm that seemed to dispel all sadness. And suddenly the boy feels that the internal energy inside him began to grow, but now he can't use the energy. The energy in his body caused a heavenly demonic enhancement. He obviously can't use internal energy, but heavenly demonic enhancement can still work? Someone is doing this for him. But if he summoned the demon again, he would probably die. But the main character doesn't care. If there is a chance to do something to save Hong Du, he will put his life on the line. After this, the main character summons the purple vine and tries to regenerate himself with plant quintessence. It seems that this space is different from the first arrival of the demon. There is no frantic energy destroying the soul. What could be the matter? This is wonderful music again. Can she spread this emptiness? This helps him improve. Is there any secret here? Heavenly demonic enhancement is accompanied by demonic intelligence. Is it really like another world? This is a completely different space. I have never seen such a deep mind. Is this demon not so simple and so strong? It seems that the main character is starting to win. He must comprehend the mind and practice the skill. The girl thinks that the guy really dared to come in. It is a pity that he can only come out after enlightenment, but it will take him several months, however. If he cannot use his energy, the soul will not last long and will disappear as soon as the body reaches its limit. Meanwhile, in the Hall of Souls, a man was informed that those assassins who broke in were destroyed by a young girl. Several war kings were destroyed in the blink of an eye. They did not have time to do anything, not even engage in battle. Such a strange and powerful force, is it from the Sea of Souls? He just wanted to save the Holy Soul, but he didn't expect to meet a strong man. According to his order, the entire city is under martial law. The place where Xiao Lang is under special status. Those who create problems are killed. Regardless of her goal, this is a great opportunity to get closer to the Sea of Souls. Seven days later, Xiao Lang finished his meditation. He was pleased because his heavenly demon skills were level one. All 33 sentences of the mind have been comprehended. 
and the next step is to cooperate with the heavenly demonic enhancement to cultivate the heavenly demon's martial skills. The magic martial technique is to directly inject energy into the body to enhance without storing it or releasing it through Diantian. This is perfect for him now. He has been here for too long, after which he decides to go outside to see what is happening there. When the main character just came out, he was immediately met by Qian Shun. He says that seven days have already passed and he began to worry. Xiao Long apologizes and says he was just trying a new practice. Is there anything strange around? He previously used the soul and is afraid that his identity has been revealed. Qian Shun says that Xiao Long's identity was indeed revealed and the rumor spread throughout the city, but many assassins who came here were secretly killed and the Seoul city soon went under martial law, after which it became temporarily safe. Xiao Long was very surprised when he learned that there were people who were guarding him, but Qian Shun doesn't know who. Even the murderers don't dare to approach, let alone the residents. The main character says that he needs to quickly leave here. He asks Qian Shun to send a message to the hidden sect and convey messages to his aunt and Xiao Dao that he is okay. Xiao Long thinks that there must be a creator of that sound. He doesn't know who it was. The girl says she didn't expect to get information about the master so easily. They don't need to stay here. After this, the girls went down to the boy and said that they did not expect that he would really understand all the magic of the heavenly demon. Xiao Long adds up all the facts and understands that it was this woman who played the instrument. The girl says that her friend gave him such a precious opportunity for self-improvement. Why shouldn't he thank her? But the main character does not understand why he should thank them. They lived independently of each other, and they suddenly decided to help him. There must be a catch. After that, these girls brought the guy to his knees with their strength. He feels terrible pressure. She is stronger than the Emperor of War. They have such supernatural abilities at a young age. Can it be said that they came from the Sea of Souls? Xiao Long understands that they are not timid. It is better for him to sneak away first. But suddenly these girls notice this and stop the boy's attempt to escape. The girl says that now the main character will not be able to escape from her hands, and any movement of his could deprive him of everything. The girls ask Xiao Lang not to worry. They won't ask him for anything. Even if he mastered the skills of the heavenly demon, he would stand on the verge of death like garbage. He would not even be able to look him in the eye. But Xiao Long cannot accept the fact that he was humiliated by a woman. What the boy said is just his nonsense. As for the reason why she helped him, sooner or later he would understand it. But Xiao Long stood up and said that he will never be the trash that women look down on. Someday they will meet again, and they will regret what they said today. The girl says that if the main character can develop the skill of the heavenly demon to the seventh level and comes to her alive, she will give him a chance to get closer to her. Xiao Lang says that he is quite serious. Within three years he will visit her, but wants to know her name. The girl says that south of the Sea of Souls is Tian Zhou, the Shen Clan Kai, the Mu family. Her name is Mu Xiao Yao. Xiao Long then promises that they will meet one day. After they separated, the girl asks her friend why she is so interested in Xiao Lang. The girl says that it only took seven days to comprehend the magic of the heavenly demon. Even with the help of a tool, such a speed of mastery is extremely rare. Even in Tianzhou, she wants to find out what he is capable of. Even if he is talented, this insignificant mainland does not have talents that can compare with Qian Zhou Tsami, especially since he practices the heavenly demon, he will not live long. But the girl thinks that Xiao Lang can perform a miracle. In any case, they had already achieved their goal. And besides, he was motivated. Why not have some fun? Besides, a person with such sincere feelings, she cannot feel disgust towards him. Okay, he still can't do anything. Meanwhile, the teleportation is ready and they can move out. Xiao Long, meanwhile, sits and thinks about Tian Zhou, the Shen Clan Kai Mu family. Why did she contact him? This is all strange. Qian Shun came to him and said that the message was sent, and he also received various invitations from the Yu Dynasty. Yu Dynasty was amazed by poetry, and Xiao Long's poems attracted a lot of attention. Many people found out about him, so there were letters of invitation. But the main character refuses because there are more important things now. Qian Shun says that this message contains information that there will be a banquet in the City of Souls. Empress of the Yu Dynasty, Fairy Yu. 
It is said that this woman was born in a brothel. She reached the highest position within a year and helped the emperor in politics. It can be said that he is the unofficial emperor of the Yu dynasty. Xiao Long looks at it and says it looks like another troubled woman. Would a woman with such status go to the city of souls for poetry? He is afraid that she has another goal. Qian Shun was surprised that Xiao Long said one more. However, her trip was very long. She notified the Soul Palace, and soon everyone would know about it. Xiao Long says that now that they are under the guardianship of the Soul Palace, if they stay in the City of Souls, they will not be able to hide, but if they leave, everyone will persecute them. It seems to him that they are trapped. Since the reward has come right into their hands, they will have to welcome it with open arms. In any case, no matter how scary she is, she is not as scary as those two girls. Meanwhile, these girls moved to a hidden sect and killed all the guards there. Then at that moment, the emperor of the hidden sect and Xiao Dao came to them. These girls, with one wave of their hands, threw away everyone who stepped on them except Xiao Dao. One of the girls comes up to Xiao Dao and hugs him and calls him her brother and says that she will bring him home. These girls brought the emperor of the hidden sect to his knees. He was surprised that they called Xiao Dao their brother. No wonder they are so strong. Are they from the Sea of Souls? But Xiao Dao stepped back from this girl. He says that he doesn't know her. The girl says that his memory was sealed. She asks him to return home with her, and soon he will remember everything. The girls began to ring Xiao Dao and ask him not to resist. The girl touches his forehead and tells him to forget about them and become worthy of heirs. After this, Xiao Dao's mind began to become stupefied. Jing Ming wants to intervene in this situation, but the hidden sect emperor stops him and says that they can no longer interfere. The girl says that this is very reasonable. They help the master so they will be rewarded. But no one else should know about this, and Xiao Dao no longer exists on this continent. And after that, the girl gave the hidden emperor some kind of ring. But Jing Ming is worried that Xiao Dao was taken away just like that. But how will they explain this to Xiao Long now? The emperor says they are no match for them. This is the Shunkai clan. Absolute lords over the Sea of Souls. At will they have the power to destroy the entire continent. They were lucky with the reward. As for Xiao Lang and Qing Yi, their fate with Xiao Lang was cut short. He wants them to report this. Jing Ming understands that if he wants to tell Xiao Long about this, he will try to bring Xiao Dao back. Meanwhile, Xiao Long senses from a distance that he has lost something important. First, people from the Sea of Souls, now also Empress Fei Yu, Xiao Long has become a waste of energy. There are things that are much more important. The point is that the aura of these two mysterious women has already disappeared. Meanwhile, Xiao Lan and Qian Shun came to the best restaurant in the city, Hai Teng Gui. Xiao Lang has been training for seven whole days, and he is very hungry. He wants to eat from the heart. Qian Shun warns Xiao Lang that they came to an expensive place. They spent a lot of money, but Xiao Lang says that there are people who will pay. The vice emperor of Seoul City, Lord Jia, has come Shen. The emperor of Seoul City turns to Xiao Lang and says that he is glad to meet Xiao Lang. Anyway, did he know what he wanted to say, find out about those women? Meanwhile, the girls were floating on the Sea of Souls. And one of them says that they are finally sailing home. She does not want to return to such a small and weak continent. Never to return again. She doesn't know if they will be able to see anyone again. But the other girl says that Xiao Lang will never see Xiao Dao again. True. But he was also a worthy brother for Xiao Dao. The practice of the heavenly demon is very difficult. It is not certain that he can do it. And after that, their boat began to sink underground. Meanwhile, Xiao Lan was also at the High Ten GYU restaurant. He says that the Emperor of Seoul City can ask, but his information is not free. Can the deputy mayor prove his sincerity? The Emperor of the City of Souls understands that Xiao Long is negotiating terms with him. Now there is no Xiao Futu. The main character is not afraid that the Emperor will hand him over to the two great dynasties. But Xiao Long says that the Emperor will not dare because he is afraid of those two foreigners and will not be able to explain all this to Empress Fei Yu. Even so, it cannot be concluded that he, the person whose Dantian was destroyed, has the authority to negotiate with him unless he proves it by force. Those people who look down on Xiao Lang end up badly. Why not let his people check it out? The Emperor agrees. If Xiao Long wins, he will agree to his services. He asks Liu Hai to be more careful. He still needs to ask a few questions. 
Liu Hai says that trash that can't even use internal energy is not even worthy of his efforts. But Qian Shun decided to intercede for Xiao Lang and says that his subordinate is at the level of a war king. This is unfair. But the main character stops him and tells him to leave it to him. Qian Shun thinks that in the current situation of the protagonist, how can he be the opponent of the war king? But in reality, Xiao Long just wants to check the result of training the heavenly demon skill. The enemy did not wait long and immediately attacks the main character. Although this guy had the level of a king of war, Xiao Lang stopped his strike with only one hand. The Soul City Emperor was very surprised when he saw this. He thinks that even if he doesn't use his internal energy, the War King's power is enough to defeat him. He doesn't understand what's going on. Indeed, the Heavenly Demon's skills had greatly strengthened the protagonist's body. This guy simply tickled him. The enemy again gathers all his strength and decides to attack the boy again. He says that if his bones are broken, he will not be held responsible. Then Xiao Long will also not be held responsible if he gets hurt. And after that, the main character hit this guy with such force that blood came out of his mouth. This blow was so powerful that the enemy broke the wall with his body and flew out. Xiao Lung scoffs and says he's sorry he overdid it. And he offers to send someone to bring this guy back. The power gained from this skill is much greater than he thought. Qian Shun was surprised that the main character broke the armor with his bare hands and sent him flying. He already doubts that the enemy had the level of a king of war. The city emperor orders Liu Hai to be found and sent for treatment. Qian Shun approached Xiao Lang and asked him why he cannot use internal energy but has such strength. The city emperor says that Xiao Lang has very powerful physical strength, and this aura. He didn't think that the main character would cultivate heavenly demonic enhancement. Afterwards, Xiao Lang orders Qian Shun to wait for him outside. When they were left alone, the emperor of the city said that heavenly demonic enhancement is a special skill that does not require Dantian and can make the owner stronger in the shortest possible time. But this skill carries a huge threat. The main character can die. Xiao Long says that since he is training her, he doesn't need to say anything. His life is always in his hands. The emperor of the city admires the boy and says that he is extraordinary. He personally heard that there was a person who experienced the inner demon six times, but on the seventh he could not control it, otherwise the strength would be comparable to Tian Di. He wonders if the main character can create a miracle. When Xiao Lang heard that someone had defeated the demon six times, he realized that there was still hope. But he doesn't understand what kind of Tian Di level this is. This is a powerful force unavailable on the Divine Soul Continent. Only the people of Tian Zhou across the Sea of Souls can reach this level. The Divine Soul Continent is actually just an island in the waters of Tian Zhou. Tian Zhou is hundreds of times larger than their continent, and its average level surpasses them by several times. The levels in Tian Zhou are divided into many kingdoms, from Zhongsheng to Tian Di. The Divine Soul Continent owns levels similar to Zhongsheng. Martial artists need internal energy. It is drawn from natural energy. It is extremely difficult to absorb, but in Tianzhou there is an artifact called the Black Stone, which has enormous power. Therefore, their development speed is many times greater than their strength. Now Xiao Long understands why these two girls from Shenkai had such power. To put it bluntly, the Divine Soul Continent relies on soul, while Tianzhou relies on something completely different. The Emperor of the City of Souls understands that those two girls who secretly protected the boy from the Shen Kai clan, this is one of the most powerful families in Tianzhou. He doesn't understand how the main character took advantage of such a great opportunity. Xiao Long says he doesn't know. He has never heard of the Shen Kai clan in Tianzhou. In any case, Xiao Long is the one who is protected by the Shen Kai clan. Then the Soul City Emperor will do his best to help him. If he has any needs, the City Emperor will help the boy. Xiao Long shakes hands with the Deputy City Mayor. It's too late today, and he suggests we talk another day. His attitude instantly changed, and it turned out that the Mu family was truly significant. When the main character was already leaving, he stopped and asked the deputy head of the city to pay for his entire lunch since they had become such friends. After that, the man brought the bill for food and drinks, and also for the destroyed wall. Xiao Long received a lot of information from the heavenly demon skill, Tianzhou Continent, Black Stone. Meanwhile, the Empress travels to the City of Souls to meet Xiao Lang. Qian Shun says that it is not surprising that they have heard the wonderful music of the instrument recently. 
It turns out that such things happen behind my back. Xiao Long says that he does not know the purpose of these girls, but thanks to them, he has become much stronger and has increased the attitude and interest of the Palace of Souls. On Jia's face, Shen had a tiger smile. His goal must be to use him to communicate with the Shenkai clans. But as long as the main character is useful to him, he can use the Soul Palace for protection, unless he knows he has never heard of the Shenkai clan in Tianzhou. At this moment, a man approaches Xiao Lang and says that he is from the Empress of the Yu Dynasty. The Empress has arrived in the City of Souls and is now waiting in the Hai Tian Palace. He asks if Xiao Lang can come to the meeting. Since the Empress came here, Xiao Lang is very flattered, but he wants to change into nicer clothes. He heard that the Empress is an incomparable beauty. Wouldn't it be rude if he was dressed indecently? After that, Xiao Lang went to change clothes and came to the Hai Tian Palace, the best hotel in the City of Souls. But today, for some reason, it is empty. The Empress didn't want to be disturbed by others when meeting Mr. Xiaolong, so she specially booked the entire hotel. And suddenly the Empress herself approaches him. She says that she has long heard about Mr. Xiaolong's reputation. Today she is convinced of it. Xiaolong bowed to her and said that he was just a wandering person who left his hometown, and she could not afford such an honor as meeting the Empress. Mr. Xiao is an incomparable poet, so she needs to be so humble. Therefore, she asks the main character to sit down at the table. She orders the servants to leave. She wants to be alone with Mr. Xiao. No one can disturb them. Xiao Long is honored to talk about poetry with the Empress. But in fact, the boy understands that she deliberately kicked everyone out. It seems that she has some kind of business. The Empress says that today there is both fine wine and a beautiful girl. But why does he only think about poetry? But didn't the Empress come from afar to hear Xiao Long's poetry? Mr. Xiao is so smart she can't help it. The Empress also allows the main character to call her simply Yu. But Xiao Long became embarrassed and said that it was unacceptable to call the Empress that way. The girl continues to pester Xiao Long and tells the main character to keep it simple. Fei Yu came especially for him, only he can help her. If he can, he will become Fei Yu's great benefactor. Xiao Long understands that the Empress is asking him for help but he has no strength. They are trying to kill him. He cannot even defend himself. If the emperor cannot cope, what can he do to help the empress? The empress asks you to just listen to her. Emperor Yu simply took her by force to be his concubine. To survive, she had to use many people and gain the favor of all officials. But now his majesty fell in love with another. This woman has bewitched his majesty and wants to usurp the throne. Not long ago, she saw a secret report that His Majesty had secretly summoned four masters and combined their powers to get rid of her, which is why she met Lord Xiao and left the Yu Dynasty. But Xiao Lang does not understand what exactly the Empress is asking him to do. The Empress took all her determination into her fist and said that only Mr. Xiao can cope. She begs him to kill Emperor Yu. Xiao Lang could not believe that the Empress could ask him for such help. The princess says that this is not only for her, but for the entire dynasty. Emperor Yu is mediocre and Fei Yu struggles to restore the Yu dynasty. Even as a woman, she can hold power for the benefit of the people. Xiao Long understands, but what does this mean to him? Moreover, killing Emperor Yu is a serious crime. Xiao Long cannot afford it. The empress says that when the emperor dies, she can inherit the throne fairly. After becoming empress, she is ready to share the throne with Xiao Lang. Xiao Long has no interest in ruling the Yu dynasty, let alone taking great risks. Xiao Long will not be in such a situation. The main character understands that if he kills the emperor, she can make him a scapegoat. Is this woman really stupid? In this case, Fei Yu wants to offer this thing for the life of Emperor Yu. This gift is Tianzhou Stone. Indeed, the worthy Mr. Xiao recognized such a rare thing at a glance. This is the smallest among the three that the Yu Empire found in the Sea of Souls. Xiao Lang heard that this is a treasure only available in Tianzhou. How can he be sure that it is genuine? Mr. Xiao doesn't really trust Fei Yu. It's really sad. As for truth and lies, Mr. Xiao can verify this for himself. When Xiao Lang touched the stone, he felt that such a small piece could have such great power. The Empress now hopes that Xiao Lang believed her. To prove her sincerity, Fei Yu will give this stone to Mr. Xiao. If he helps fulfill Fei Yu's wish, 
The other two larger stones will be given to the Lord. Xiaolong realizes that such a small stone can already help him surpass his level. And if you get the other two, but Xiao Lang says he needs to think about it first. The Empress says that she will wait for the protagonist's answer for three days. Xiao Lang thinks that three days is enough to study this baby. After this, the Empress kisses Xiao Lang and says that her life is in his hands. In the end, don't fall into the trap. This woman is very problematic. After all this, Xiao Lang came to his home and was immediately met by Qian Shun. But Xiao Lang didn't talk to him and just went into his room. The main character says that he wants to be alone and asks Qian Shun not to distract him. The main character didn't think he could receive such a treasure from the Empress. We need to quickly check what this baby is capable of. But now he just has to figure out how to use it. Jia Shen didn't seem to speak. In addition, his Dantian is damaged. He can accumulate internal energy but cannot use it. But Xiao Lang had completely forgotten about the Heavenly Demon's fighting skill. This skill does not use internal energy. Dantian is not needed. Perhaps using the stone will help him. The energy of this stone is very enormous. It can match the power of the Heavenly Demon enhancement. For him, it is a luxurious treasure. He's looking forward to it, doesn't know how much stronger his skills will become, how much he can level up. Two days have passed and Xiao Lang still hasn't left his room. Qian Shun is still waiting for him. But suddenly in the room where Xiao Lang was, there was an explosion that destroyed this room. Xiao Lang came out from under the rubble and smoke unharmed. He says that everything is fine. Xiao Lang says that he was just a little excited after training, so he accidentally hit the wall. In fact, he did not think that he would become so strong. The entire house collapsed from a slight blow. Qian Shun was surprised that even at his level, Mr. Xiao already has such strength. He is truly a monster. This stone is magnificent. He thinks he needs to meet with Empress Fei Yu. When Xiao Long came to the Empress, she was already waiting for him. Xiao Long says that he is sorry, but he had to think very carefully about the Empress's offer. The Empress is eagerly awaiting a response from the protagonist. Xiao Long says that he agrees to her proposal. He will save Fei Yu's life. He needs to become much stronger so he cannot do without stones. The Empress ran to Xiao Lan and said that she greatly thanks the protagonist. She hugs the main character and says that now she can escape from the sea of suffering. Mr. Xiao is the man Fei Yu has been waiting for for so long. Empress Fei Yu tries to kiss Xiao Lang on the lips, but he dodges her. He remembers how he promised the red bean that he would definitely marry her when he returned. He breaks away from her embrace and asks the Empress to respect herself. It's just a deal so she shouldn't do that. Moreover, Xiao Long's heart already belongs to another person. If Mr. Xiao said so, then Fei Yu understands his feelings. But in her heart, she couldn't believe that she had really been rejected. Xiao Long asks the Empress if she has a detailed plan to kill Emperor Yu. The Empress says that now the Emperor is protected by four masters. The assassins will not even be able to approach. But Mr. Xiao can simply break through this line of defense. Mr. Xiao is really smart. He is a famous literary master in the Yu dynasty, and Emperor Yu also appreciates his talent. He will definitely meet him. As long as they cooperate secretly, they will have the opportunity to kill Emperor Yu. In the Z dynasty, it took luck for him to escape, but this time he doesn't know if he will succeed. Mr. Xiao has nothing to worry about. When Emperor Yu dies, Fei Yu will have power. Besides, as long as Mr. Xiao is under the protection of the Soul Palace, the Four Masters will not attack him. If Mr. Xiao has no objection, then tomorrow, Fei Yu will invite him to Tian City Yu, after which they will take action. Xiao Long agrees to this and will wait for notification from the Empress. After Xiao Long left, the Empress called a person to her. She tells him to prepare for plan number one. No failure, only success. Xiao Long is the first man to refuse her and the last. When the main character went out into the street, a man stopped him and asked him to stop. This man says that Xiao Lang is expected at the Palace of Souls. He calls the main character to come with him. When Xiao Lang came to the deputy head of the city to call him for dinner again, the deputy city leader says that Xiao Lang met with Empress Yu twice in the last three days. He is afraid that it was not because of some poetry, right? Does it seem to the main character that the deputy head of the city has some guesses about the Empress's plans? The deputy head of the city advises him, out of good intentions, to beware of Empress Yu. She is known for her viciousness, and the number of people in her hands is uncountable. And he also received a secret report a month ago 
Yun Zishan secretly came to meet her. This woman, Yun Zishan, is also dangerous. For the past five years, she has replaced Yun Fei Yang, who has been secretly engaged in politics to destroy the dynasty. The Xiao family is one of the victims. They are from the Black Dragon Society. The Black Dragon, Su Xiang Chun, conspired with the Zi dynasty to kill Xiao Bu Shi, and the northern border conspired with Jing Li to kill Xing Du Gu, all of them controlled by Yun Zishan. Xiao Long was very angry when he found out that it was still her. Not only her adoptive father, even her grandfather was her victim. They have teamed up again this time, the next victim could be Xiao Lang. Xiao Lang will definitely not lose to these scum. Since Empress Yu has already invited him to her city, he wants to see what kind of holiday there will be. The city's deputy emperor says that if Xiao Long goes there, he will die. But the main character says that if you don't climb into the tiger's den, you won't catch the tiger cub. If they were truly working together, then she must have Yun Zi Shan's information. He would never miss this opportunity. First rebelling against the Jiang dynasty, then against the Zi dynasty, and now getting involved with the Yu dynasty, is Xiao Lang really going to offend all three dynasties? Xiao Lang will definitely take revenge. If they want to offend him, he will force them to repay with blood. After this conversation, Xiao Long came home and met Qian Shun. He says they have something to do. Yu Dynasty poet, who had sent the invitation earlier. I would like to invite him to Qian City Yu to write poetry together. Xiao Long agrees and says that it just so happens that he is very interested in the Yu Dynasty. He was also specially invited by another person to remove suspicions. It seems that Fei Yu really planned everything well. This man asks Xiao Lang to get into the carriage. Qian Shun watched this from around the corner and swears that he will definitely fulfill the request of the main character. Xiao Long remembers the conversation with the deputy of the City of Souls. He says that now that Xiao Long has decided on the journey, he will not say anything. But it's not just the Yu Dynasty that the boy has to be careful of. Previously, they did not dare to send assassins to the City of Souls. But when he leaves it, they will not stop, and whether the boy will be able to reach the Yu Dynasty is no longer known. But Empress Yu probably doesn't want Xiao Lang to die, so she sent three people to accompany him. But suddenly some strange people pass by their carriage, and one of these travelers began to attack the carriage in which Xiao Lang was riding. And suddenly another killer with the level of a king of war appeared. He immediately begins to attack the main character. After this, an assassin with the title of King of War destroyed the carriage that Xiao Lang was in. This killer was surprised that the main character was able to dodge. The killer still doesn't understand how Xiao Lang can dodge the War King's attack. The main character says that the level of the King of War is not enough. The Emperor of War is needed to kill him. No matter what means Xiao Lang uses, he will not be able to resist the level of a War King. Xiao Lang may not be able to kill this king of war. He is just stalling for time. His help is at hand. And finally, Xiao Lang waited for his help. Three guys came and began to attack this king of war. They all killed this killer who attacked Xiao Lang together. These guys apologized for letting their guard down. They didn't think he could resist the war king's attack. But Xiao Lang felt very bad because his arm was badly injured. After some time, the empress was informed that Xiao Lang was seriously injured. The imperial physician said that all the bones in Xiao Lang's arm were broken, his body was severely injured, and he could not move for some time. The empress scolds her subordinates and calls them a bunch of trash. She clearly told them to be careful. Now that Xiao Long is in this state, how can the plan be carried out? The man says that the imperial doctor was unable to heal Xiao Long, but Xiao Long said that he has a technique that will help him recover. The empress had no other options left. This time Xiao Lang must make a move. All she has to do is trust her. Xiao Lang lay wounded in his room. The man brought him medicine, which the empress gave him. When this man left the room, Xiao Lang stood up and smiled because his trick was a success. He used the plant quintessence technique and all his wounds healed. After this, the guy took the stone that the empress gave him and now his task is to get another stone as quickly as possible. The next day, Xiao Lang came out of his room and was met by a man. He said that a serious injury was healed in such a short time. Mr. Xiao Lang is truly an unusual person. Xiao Long says that he himself is in shock, but thanks to the Empress's medicine, the wounds healed so quickly. Although I have not fully recovered, the plan must be completed as soon as possible. 
As soon as Fei Yu found out that he could move, she immediately wanted to implement the plan. He needed to get the stone as soon as possible. The Empress said that the overall plan has been completed. Mr. Xiao Lang can go to the palace for further instructions. Xiao Lang thinks that this army is really strange. There were more than ten war kings inside and outside. Afterwards, Xiao Lang went inside and greeted the emperor. He sees that there are also three war kings in this room. After this, the empress begins to laugh and says that the emperor does not hear him, and after which she simply pushes the emperor. When the emperor fell to the floor, Xiao Lang saw that he was already dead. The empress now tells Xiao Lang to release his soul and kill the emperor, and remember to leave his head. Xiao Lang now realized that the empress's plan to blame him had made him wary from the very beginning. He says that she has fulfilled part of her promise. The stones are already ready. Doesn't Mr. Xiao want to receive the reward? Xiao Long says that the emperor is already dead, already dead. Removing the corpse is an additional task. After this, the empress takes out another box with a stone and gives it to Xiao Lang. After Xiao Lang obtained the stone, he immediately went to work and began to consume the emperor's corpse. The empress looks at this and thinks that in the end all she will have to do is blame Xiao Lang for everything. But Xiao Long did not listen to the girl and began to eat away the emperor's head. The empress and the others did not expect the boy to do this. Xiao Lang scoffs and says that he accidentally dissolved the head. Why not leave it instead? After this, the empress ordered the guards to destroy Xiao Lang. Without a corpse, it is impossible to prove that Emperor Yu's death was due to Xiao Lang. Her plan was completely failed. And after that, the guards with the title of King of War begin to attack Xiao Lang. But he miraculously manages to dodge. But these guys start attacking the main character with fireballs, and they manage to injure him. After this, the boy was severely wounded and completely bloodied. But Xiao Long had an ace up his sleeve, and he captured the empress and held her hostage, tying her up with his purple vine. Xiao Long reminds these guys how his soul eats away his flesh. Before they kill him, he can ensure that the empress becomes just like the emperor. These guys are still trying to persuade Xiao Lang to let the empress go. The Yu Dynasty needs an empress who controls the whole situation. She must not die. They ask what Xiao Lang wants. Xiao Lang dragged the empress to him, and he has only one request. These guys must escort him back to the City of Souls. Afterwards, Xiao Lang used plant quintessence and restored his wounds. He takes the empress by the face and says that if they even think of anything, this woman will die immediately. These guys were shocked when they saw that the boy's wounds had healed, and after that they agreed to the demands of the protagonist. After that they left the borders of the city of Tianyu. Xiao Long sits in the carriage with the empress. Xiao Long tells her that her figure is really seductive. The girl was completely tied up by a purple vine. She gets angry and calls the main character a bastard and a monster. Xiao Lang mocks the girl and says that the vicious woman decided to scold him. Only recently I begged him for help and then decided to set him up. The main character thinks how he can punish her? And after that, Xiao Long began to undress this girl with the tentacles of the purple vine. If she doesn't want Xiao Long to continue, then she should say what kind of deal he has with Yun Zishan. The main character understands that the girl did not want to kill him but wanted to give Yun Zishan. Xiao Lang grabbed her by the neck, and the girl began to say that she only promised her that after the boy dealt with the body, she should send him out of Tian City Yu. He realizes that Yun Zishan wanted to use Fei Yu to get him out of the City of Souls. Send out assassins and kill him on the way back? But suddenly, behind the carriage in which the main character and the Empress were riding, a large explosion was heard. From this explosion, the princess fell straight onto the main character. It was a panda assassin from the Jiang Dynasty whose goal was to destroy Xiao Lang. The Empress was happy about this and says that Xiao Lang will not run away anywhere now. And after that, the main character touches the girl and smiles. He wants to use her as bait. After this, Xiao Lang hid the Empress in a cocoon of purple vine and threw her out. The assassin saw this and immediately headed over to take a look. They felt that the aura inside this cocoon was too weak. But since they knew that the boy had recently been injured in battle, that was why it was possible that the aura was so weak. But when they came closer, they saw that it was not the main character at all, but a half-naked girl. But Xiao Long had already fled underground at this time. Meanwhile, an inspector from the Heilin clan, Ching Yu, had already arrived in the City of Souls. The deputy city leader welcomes Ching Yu to the City of Souls. Ching Yu says that this time he is here to raise the matter of the Shenkai clan. 
When they heard this, they were shocked by such words from the inspector of the Heilin clan. The girl says that the Shenkai clan really came to their domain. The inspector says that the Shenkai clan has a rule that his children must go to this continent to hone their skills. He is afraid that it is Xiao Lang. The deputy city leader says that he was invited by the empress of the Yu dynasty to Tian City Yu, and as far as he knows Emperor Yu was recently killed, the killers from the Jiang dynasty were also sent towards Tian Yu. The inspector says that this is very interesting, but since his Dantian was destroyed, he should already be dead. The deputy city leader says that it is for the Shen Kai clan. Can't they help? The inspector says there is no need. He just came specially when he heard that someone from Tianzhou came here. He didn't think it was the Shen Kai clan. The Shen Kai clan is a famous cold-blooded clan. Plus, afraid of a catastrophe in the near future, they will definitely not pay attention to the Soul Continent. They must not waste time. Difficulties for the Shen Kai clan. How is this possible? They are among the top ten overlords of Tianzhou. The inspector says that this is a secret and asks not to ask unnecessary questions. Suddenly a subordinate came to them and brought a report with him. An envoy from the Z dynasty came. He says he wants to trade Xiao Lang for treasure. The inspector orders this Z dynasty envoy to be let in. The envoy of the Z dynasty, Xu Sai, pays tribute to the masters of the Soul Pavilion. The inspector asks the envoy to show what kind of treasure he brought. Meanwhile, the Empress scolds her subordinates for being a bunch of trash. The three kings of war were together and allowed Xiao Lang to capture him and escape. He also showed it to everyone in this form. The Empress gives the order that from now on Xiao Lang is the enemy of the Yu dynasty. If they meet him, they must kill him. The Zhang dynasty sent three war kings and ten war kings to persecute him. He thinks that Yun Zishan is determined to kill him. Now the main character only has to run in the direction of the City of Souls before he is caught. But at this moment someone attacks the main character right underground. When Xiao Long climbed to the surface, he saw that he was completely surrounded and had no place to retreat. But Xiao Lang was not afraid and says that he did not intend to run away but was only going to gather them all together. These enemies say that the boy cannot use energy. It seems that the Z Dynasty destroyed his Dantian. And after that, Xiao Lang grabbed those killers with his purple vine tentacles. Due to his damaged Dantian, he could only rely on strength, but with one blow he broke the War King's armor. Xiao Lang regenerates himself and says that it is very strange that the King of War cannot defeat someone who does not even have a Dantian. This guy got very angry. He couldn't lose to some boy, and after that he summoned his spirit, a huge snake. This guy's comrades ask him to stop because Xiao Lang's soul can devour other souls. This was the main character's plan. He says that he did not expect this guy to be so stupid. And after that, Xiao Lang's spirit immediately grabbed that guy's spirit and immediately began to devour him. This guy was so angry that he forgot about it. And after the main character absorbed the spirit of this guy, he immediately killed him, and he fell to the ground next to him. The rest of the warriors were shocked that Xiao Long killed the king of war, and they call him a monster. And after that, the remaining war kings begin to attack Xiao Lang, and he begins to run away. But he doesn't succeed, and these kings of war injure the boy, causing him to fall to the ground. Xiao Lang was severely injured. His ribs were almost completely broken. His internal organs were damaged. This is his limit. He can handle one, but not two. These guys decide to put an end to the main character forever and attack him to finish him off. Xiao Lang thought that this was the end of him and said goodbye to Hongdu in absentia and thinks that he will never see her again. But the boy was very lucky. People from the Hai Lin clan came here in time and saved him. Two hours ago, the man says that Xiao Lang ran away from them into an underground mausoleum and they were attacked by a green vine. The emperor personally went to investigate but was unable to get inside the premises. So the tomb definitely does not belong to the inhabitants of the Soul Continent. The inspector says he will give him an answer after consideration. He orders the girls to return with him to the Z Dynasty and await further instructions. The girl says that the Blood Sect Master is a War Emperor level, close to the Eighth Realm of Living Beings. Even if he couldn't enter, then this tomb must be nothing less than something extraordinary. The inspector says it's interesting. He wants to see what secrets are hidden in this tomb. He suggests going and bringing Xiao Lang back. They ask Xiao Lang if he really alone killed so many and also the King of War. The main character says that this is so, but he does not know who these people are. The killers learned that this was the Lord of the City of Souls. 
They say that this is not the territory of the City of Souls. They ask him not to interfere in the personal affairs of the Jiang Dynasty. And if his rescue of Xiao Lang becomes a problem, the Jiang Dynasty and Xi Dynasty will never give up easily. When Xiao Long heard that this was the Lord of the City of Souls, he was very surprised. The Lord of the City of Souls asks them not to worry and says that no one will know about this. And after that, with one wave of his hand, he destroyed these guys. Xiao Long was greatly surprised when he saw that the two kings of war were killed with one movement of his hand. After this, the girl takes the main character in her arms, and the Lord of the City of Souls tells this girl to give medicine to the boy, and he asks him, most importantly, not to die on the road. After the main character drank the pill, he became dizzy and immediately passed out. After this, Xiao Lang was brought into the Z Dynasty, and they want to exchange the boy for treasure. When Xiao Lang woke up, he looked around and didn't understand what was happening here. But after the boy saw the blood sect master, he understood everything. They came to the tomb where Xiao Lang once hid. The blood sect master says that on that day they allowed the main character to escape. Today the sovereign took everything into his own hands. Several craftsmen explored this place and discovered a rare treasure. And at the request of the sovereign, he immediately returned to the Z dynasty. And at that moment, Xiao Lang realized that the Z dynasty wanted to use his life. City of Souls sold it. As they approached closer to this tomb, green grass began to attack them. The Lord of Soul City says that it is actually a charm, a tomb guarded by such plants. Apparently, the owner is not an ordinary person. And after that, the Lord of the City of Souls destroys this green plant with one stroke. The blood sect master says that this is the entrance to the tomb, but even he cannot open it. The Lord of the City of Souls says that these gates are locked by ancient people. The people of the Soul Continent can reveal them, but he wants to try. After this, the Lord of the City of Souls gathered all his strength and struck at the doors of this tomb. But the tomb door remained intact and unharmed. His strength could not break down these doors. The Lord of the City of Souls cannot believe that these doors will remain locked. The bloody sect master says that Xiao Lang has entered the tomb before, and you can find out from him how he did it. After this, the Lord of the City of Souls took the main character by the neck and tells him to open the door now or he will kill him. But Xiao Long says that he has already fallen into the hands of the Xi dynasty and will still be killed. He tells him it's better to kill him now. He is not an idiot who will help those who sold him make money. The Lord of Soul City says that Xiao Lang has a strong character. He thinks Xiao Lang can bypass this restriction. As long as he can open the door, he will protect it. And immediately after that, he killed the bloody sect master. The girl says that the blood sect master is the person in charge of the Z dynasty. They shouldn't do this, but the Lord of the City of Souls says that it's no big deal. They'll just say that the guy stole and killed. After this, he looks at the main character and says that if he does not open the door, then the same fate will befall him. Xiao Lang now has no choice and agrees to open the doors. He thinks this guy is obsessed with treasure. He must find a way to get out as soon as possible. After that, Xiao Lang walked to that door and summoned his soul. When his soul saw this green grass, it was very happy and began to play with it. The girl and the Lord of the City of Souls were surprised that the soul of the protagonist could resonate with charm. And at that moment, Xiao Lang managed to open the tomb door. The girl was surprised that the soul was able to remove the restriction so easily. Even if it is a heavenly soul, it has never heard of such a strange ability. When they went inside, they immediately saw a coffin that was emitting a strong aura. A corpse cannot exude such a terrible aura. Of course, this is not an ordinary person. This is the pinnacle of the human kingdom. Xiao Lang thinks this is the pinnacle of the human realm. This aura is so scary that he'd better stay away. The girl says that it is dangerous to touch the coffin of such a strong person. It's too dangerous, she suggests returning. But the guy refuses. He thinks that there must be treasures in this coffin. Once he has them, he will be able to dominate all the families. In general, he first uses his senses to investigate the situation in the temple. But the Lord of the City of Souls has not yet noticed anything unusual. But just in case, he calls Xiao Lang to come over and find out if there is a restriction on the coffin. Xiao Lang was afraid that they wanted to use him again. When the main character touched this coffin, it seemed to him that there was some kind of connection between the purple vine and this coffin. He just wants to try. 
Such power emanated from this coffin that everyone got scared and started running away, but Xiao Long remained there. At that moment, the main character passed out and his body was lifted above the ground by a purple vine. After that, some girl crawled out of the coffin and she seemed to know Xiao Long's spirit. This girl endowed the spirit Xiao Lang with enormous power. After this, the girl turns to the boy's spirit and says that he does not belong here and asks him to return to Tianzhou. But the purple vine waves its head to the sides and refuses. The girl was surprised at this answer from the purple vine. She said that they were destined to be separated. After that, the girl disappeared, and at that moment the main character opened his eyes and woke up. When he looked at his soul, he saw that it had mutated, but he does not understand how this is possible. And at that moment, the mausoleum began to collapse, and the coffin disappeared. The boy immediately began to run away. But suddenly he tripped over something. These were the bodies of the Lord of the City of Souls, and that girl, and the deputy of the City of Souls. The main character was very surprised when he saw this. When the boy looked closer, he saw that they were all dead. He does not understand what happened here while he was passed out. He only remembers that he was pushed and some other figure. But this was not important at the moment, and the main thing was for him to leave now, since the tomb was beginning to collapse. But Xiao Lang remembers something. After all, these people died, they must have something useful. The boy thinks they used him to get treasure, but ended up in trouble. In this case, he will take their treasures. This time the boy really got out of a hopeless situation. Gorgeous. In the meantime, all his wounds had healed. It was time for him to finally leave the territory of the Z dynasty. He looks at the treasures obtained from the bodies of those people and thinks that it is not safe outside. He needs to hide for a while. And then he will meet with Qian Shun. He took out all the valuable items from Jia's ring. Shen thinks why he needs so many stones, although they contain energy. It is extremely small. From another ring, he took out other things. But among all these things, there were also these stones. He doesn't understand why the rulers of the City of Souls have these stones, and not a single black stone. But their skills seem pretty good. And suddenly he discovers among all these things a map of the Sea of Souls and a scroll. The map is very good. As for the scroll, if it was kept by the rulers of the City of Souls, this is a very valuable item. After all, Master Ching clearly must have black stones. The boy thinks that this Master Ching is the poorest, and none of them had black stones. It seems that black stones are not the most common resource. That's all. All he has to do is absorb the stone that he hid. The guy sat down on the ground and uses the Sky Demonic Enhancement technique. In any case, the death of the Blood Sect Master and the head of the City of Souls will soon be known. Will he be able to escape from this cauldron? Three hours later... Envoys from the City of Souls arrived at this tomb. They do not understand what happened here. People from the Z Dynasty say that they don't know what happened here. They were ordered to stay outside. When they sensed something was wrong, they returned to check everything. But everything was already destroyed. Their sect master is very strong. The three masters of the City of Souls are much stronger than the sect master. They cannot imagine how they died in the first place. There are no wounds on the body. They are afraid that the soul has been pulled out. No one from the Divine Soul Continent is capable of this. This is the end. Both the envoy and the heads of the City of Souls died. As soon as Tian Zhou finds out about this, the He Ling clan will be furious. The Soul Continent is one of He Lin's domains. The truth must be found out as soon as possible. Otherwise, they will all die. But they still haven't found Xiao Leng's body. Maybe he's still alive and took the vaults. Four masters died here. How the hell did he survive? The person asks them to listen carefully. If Xiao Long survived, he is the only one who knows what happened here. He must be connected with their death. He orders to find him immediately. In this room in the corner, they found a tunnel. They thought it looked a lot like Xiao Long. He really is alive. The people from Seoul City order to immediately inform the other two dynasties, so that they can all hunt down Xiao Lang. The City of Souls is offering a million gold reward. If he is not caught, then the entire continent is in danger of destruction. Meanwhile, Xiao Lang was still sitting and absorbing the energy of those two stones. Processing two larger stones is really difficult. It will take at least half a month. He still needs a little time, and he will immediately set out on the road. 
and suddenly the boy notices that the purple vine has come out on its own. But suddenly a huge mouth appears in front of the main character, and this mouth immediately devours the main character, and he falls straight into this beast. Xiao Long picked up the glowing stone and looked around, but he still didn't understand where he was. But some voice tells him that this is the belly of a sea beast. It was the voice of the purple vine. She tells him that the main character was eaten. The boy couldn't believe his purple vine was talking. The soul says that only its owner can understand it. And she can understand other animals. This sea monster is heading towards the sea of souls. The boy realizes that in fact this underground river actually leads to the sea of souls. This means that he was swallowed by a sea beast. However, this is a great place to gobble up some rocks. Apparently, after evolving, the purple vine can talk to him. He has a lot of questions. Xiao Lang asks the purple vine where it is from, but the purple vine replies that it does not know. Xiao Lan continues to ask questions. Does she have parents, a family? Is she really a soul that has an origin? Does he have a connection with the green vine in the mausoleum? The soul replies that it does not know. The boy asks why she wanted to get closer to that coffin so badly. What was in that coffin? And where did the coffin go? But the vine says that she is tired and does not want to talk. Since his soul does not want to speak, it means the boy now wants to deal with these stones. But the soul actually cannot yet tell everything to the main character. Meanwhile, the emperor of the hidden sect is walking in circles and thinking that Xiao Lang has now become the enemy of the entire continent. This bastard is causing more and more trouble every time. This time, the hidden sect may be in trouble. The man came with a report that the Yu dynasty and the Zi dynasty still could not find Xiao Lang. His majesty also sent people to search. After searching for a long time, they all failed to find Xiao Lang. The highest combat power of the three dynasties could not be found by joint forces. He can't be that fast. Has he really evaporated? Or where did he die? Besides, Master Jing Ming and Xiao Qing Yi are also gone. Master Jing Ming left a letter. He told Xiao Qing about both Xiao Lan and the young master. In the end, he decided to go to Tianzhou to find a way to resurrect the young master. The emperor thinks this is bad. First Lu Ming, now Jing Ming is suffering from nonsense. He must have seen the strength of the Shen Kai family. As for Xiao Qing and using the magic medicine left by the Shen Kai family to heal her legs not long ago, she was able to escape? Don't worry. Actually, she was caught by the Jiang Dynasty troops near the border of the City of Souls. Meanwhile, Emperor Zhang Dynasty learned that Xiao Long not only survived, but also caused such a disaster. If they don't find him again, Tian Zhou won't forgive him. They can't afford this. The princess turns to her father and says that three great dynasties are looking for him, but there are no results yet. Perhaps there is another way to make it appear. The princess has established good relations with the City of Souls. They will help them capture everyone who is friendly with Xiao Lang, and as soon as their lives are threatened, Xiao Lang will come to their aid. Not far from the City of Souls, Qian Shun was still waiting for the protagonist, and suddenly he notices that several people are approaching him. These people immediately approached him, and they realize that this is Xiao Lang's close person. But Wu Qian Shun failed to escape and was shot in the back. And after that, they brought him to the Zhang Dynasty prison. Xiao Long's aunt was already in this prison. And the very first girl of the main character was also imprisoned in this prison. She says that she has nothing to do with him. Yunfei Yang issued a decree. Xiao Qingyi, Liu Ya, and Qian Shun committed a criminal conspiracy and will be beheaded in the imperial capital in a month. Three weeks later, the main character was still inside the monster that ate him. He continued to absorb the power of these two stones. And it's finally over. He wonders how strong he is now. This beast must be quite strong. What if you land a weak blow? But suddenly, a purple vine appeared and asked the main character to spare the sea beast. Xiao Long apologizes to the purple vine and asks her to tell this sea monster to return him to the soul continent. The purple soul asked the monster about it, and he agreed. Half an hour later, the monster sailed to the shore of the soul continent. But the boy still doesn't know how much stronger he has become. He needs to check again. After that, the boy pushed off the ground with all his might and accelerated to such a speed that he could not stop. Xiao Lang begins to approach the cliff at great speed. He is afraid that he might crash. But the purple vine asks him not to be afraid and to smash this boulder. When the boy hit this boulder with his hand, it shattered into smithereens. 
The boy is happy that he is strong and has stepped to the next level. He is already strong as the king of war. No matter how strong he is, the need for food has not gone away. First, you need to find a place where you can fill your stomach and then someone you can fight with. He asks the vine to find the nearest town. After some time, Xiao Lang arrived in the city and found a place where he could refresh himself. At the next table, people were sitting and talking about how Xiao Lang, who had recently committed a terrible crime in their city of Xi, had actually killed Emperor Yu. He also kidnapped the Empress of the Yu Dynasty. Fortunately, the Empress returned safely, and the Yu Dynasty now relies on her to lead the entire situation. This Xiao Lang is really crazy. Now all three dynasties and the City of Souls have united against him. So much effort has been spent searching for him. They wonder where he is hiding. Xiao Lang overheard this conversation and understands that everything that happened in the dungeon was blamed on him, and now all four parties are busy searching. He thinks he needs to find a place where he can sit out. He also hears people saying that this Xiao Lang really has no conscience. His own aunt and partner suffered because of his own crimes. It seems to him that there is still some woman there, and in a few days they will be beheaded, and he has not appeared yet. After that, the main character stood up from his desk and grabbed the man who was saying all this. He wants to know who captured their relatives and where they are all being kept. The guy says that it was announced by the Zhang Dynasty three weeks ago that in a month, Xiao Qing Yi, Qian Shun, and Liu Ya will be beheaded in the imperial capital. After this, the main character threw this guy out and goes to take revenge. The boy understands that Liu Ya and Qian Shun can be captured, but his aunt cannot. Is this false information to provoke him? He thinks that perhaps Yun Zishan and Yun Fei Yang set a trap. But Xiao Long is surrounded by guards. They tell him to surrender. But the boy has no choice. He urgently needs to find out whether they were really captured or not. If this is true, he must save them. But suddenly a group of people appeared in front of him, and among them were three people with the title of King of War. But this did not frighten the main character at all. This was just a great excuse to practice. He used his soul and grabbed these warriors with the tentacles of the purple vine. They say that only kings of war will fight Xiao Lang, and the rest must retreat. Meanwhile, the main character dealt with the first king of the war. The rest of the warriors were very surprised that Xiao Lang had such terrifying power. This is impossible, they thought he was at a low level. Xiao Lang says that the blood debt that the bloody sect owes to his Xiao family, perhaps he will start collecting it from them. Immediately after this, Xiao Long hit another war king with all his might. He could not withstand such a blow and died flying into the wall. The rest of the people did not dare to attack and decided to retreat and notify the marshal about this. But the main character cannot leave it and begins to catch up with him. He hits this man with such force that he simply buries himself underground. After this, the main character grabbed the remaining opponents with his purple vine and began to devour them. He asks them to remember that the next time Xiao Long sets foot on the soil of the Zhang Dynasty, it will mean destruction. After this, the capital of the Zhang Dynasty was notified that Xiao Lang was hiding in the territory of the Zi Dynasty. He also killed their students. The princess asks them to calm down and says that Xiao Long must know that they came here to ambush and deliberately wants to lure them. That's right, since they know he's still alive, they should just wait here for him to trap him. They have several emperors of war and one god of war here. When the main character comes to them, they will definitely finish him off. After this, Xiao Long came to the Zheng Empire and was greeted by many warriors at the entrance. Xiao Long sees that there are eight war emperors and one war god. The game is truly over. They also brought out the hostages, and the main character saw that his friends and relatives were being held hostage. The emperor of the Zhang dynasty attacks the main character and thereby injures him. He came closer to the boy and tried to finish him off as he lay straight in the back. Meanwhile, the Hay family arrived in the City of Souls. They say that the aura in these places is extremely weak. It is clear why clans do not hang out here. The old man says that their level cannot be compared to Tian Zhou, let alone soul manifestation, and the energy is weak in their nature. The girl says that these people are really a bunch of trash and asks where the bodies of Jia Ling and Qing Yu are. After this girl's request, they brought her two bodies. The old man examined the bodies and said that both of them had their souls destroyed. Is there really such a force here? The girl says that no matter how strong a cultivator he is, 
Anyone who dares to touch the Heiling family must die. The old man asks where the man calling himself Xiao Lang is now. They answer him that he appeared in the capital of the Zhang Empire not long ago. And after that, the girl calls them useless trash because they still haven't caught him. She's going to do everything herself. The emperor turns to Xiao Lan and says that if he does not want to feel the wrath of the Hei Ling family, he can kill him here and now. The elder says that Yun Fei Yang beat Xiao Lang to a pulp. How can he tell what happened in the tomb? They won't be able to explain this to the Hei Ling family. The emperor heard that Xiao Lang had defeated the first of the war kings. He wanted to make sure he couldn't resist. He has already reduced his strength. I didn't expect him to be so weak. After this, the emperor lifted the boy into the air. Xiao Lang asks him to let his aunt go. The elder says that first Xiao Lang needs to be properly cured, and then they want to take him to the City of Souls. And after that, one of the guards hit Qian Shun in the face. Xiao Lang saw this and became very angry. He broke free of the emperor's grip and struck him. And then everyone realized that everything was bad and the boy was just pretending. He deliberately lowered their guard. His goal is hostages. At this moment, Xiao Lang came to his family and released them. He tells them to leave first. If they can leave safely, then Xiao Lang has already won. Now Xiao Lang attacked Elder Zhuo Fan because he dared to harm his aunt and Zhuo Shun. He wants to destroy the old man. After this, the boy is attacked by Zhuo Ping. Xiao Lang says that he cannot withstand the blow from the Emperor of War and asks him to better call his nephew here. And after that, Zhuo Ping attacks Xiao Lang and hits him on the back. But the main character would still be on his feet. Zhuo Ping couldn't believe it because she hit with all her might. It was the heavenly skill of the Emperor of War. Xiao Lang says that he will never fall until he makes sure that his aunt escaped safely. And after that, Xiao Lang grabbed her leg with his purple vine and began to devour her. But Zhuo Ping escaped the grip, but her leg was still eaten. Everyone who saw this was shocked because Xiao Lang was able to defeat the War Emperor. Xiao Lang uses plant quintessence and heals herself. He says that if there weren't so many of them, he would have killed this old witch today. He also thinks that his aunt and the others should be far away. He has nothing more to do here. And after that, the main character dug a hole and began to go underground. But everyone else did not just leave him and chased him into this pit. The emperor does not understand where Xiao Long got such strength. The speed of progress is terrifying. He will never stop. But suddenly the main character found himself behind the emperor's back. He managed to deceive everyone, and this time he must kill him to avenge his grandfather and adoptive father. The boy attacks the emperor, but then managed to react in time and repulsed the attack of the main character. After this, the emperor summons his golden dragon soul. He is going to show what his strongest soul is capable of. But this was only to the boy's advantage, and he waited for him to show his soul so that his purple vine would swallow him. The purple vine attacks the emperor's soul, thereby wounding him. Xiao Lang says that the emperor's soul is not the strongest at all. Compared to his purple vine, everything is trash. Xiao Lang was about to finish off the already badly wounded emperor, but he was attacked by another person. He did not allow the main character to finish off the emperor of the Jiang dynasty. This man hit Xiao Lang with such force that his mouth began to bleed. The boy did not understand how he could have missed this attack so easily. From such a strong blow, Xiao Lang fell to the ground and immediately tries to heal his wounds with the help of plant quintessence. This man says that if a guy wants to get medical treatment, then first you need to ask permission from his fist. The boy realizes that it is too late to use the regeneration skill. After such a blow, the boy lay on the ground and showed no signs of life. This man comes closer to the main character and says that he wants to break his legs. But this turned out to be Xiao Lang's cunning plan. He deliberately pretended to be wounded in order to weaken the vigilance of this guy and attacked him. And at that moment, the main character launched his tentacles to absorb this man. But he failed, and the tentacles were cut. Xiao Lang couldn't believe how this was possible. Even the Emperor of War couldn't resist absorbing the purple vine. This man again begins to attack the boy and says that these are his last seconds of life. At this moment, the Feather Sect Master arrived here, and he doesn't understand what happened here while they were gone. He is told that the soul of the Emperor of the Zhang Dynasty has suffered. Yun Fei Yang underestimated the enemy. Xiao Lang or Xiu Nu, he is still an emperor with a strong soul. The elder thinks that Xiu Nu was able to resist being absorbed by the boy's soul. 
but can he overcome it? At this moment, Xiao Lang was injured. He realizes that the purple vine could not absorb his scales. If this continues, he will be the first to fall. But then his soul approached the boy and asked him not to worry, and soon everything would be over. And at this moment, Xiu Nu attacks the main character, but nothing works out for him. The purple vine intercepted his blow and grabbed his hand. Xiu Nu is trapped, and he calls for help before the purple vine swallows him completely. The rest of his allies rush to his aid to save their man. But they don't have time, and only a skeleton remains of Xiu Nu. Everyone else was shocked that Xiao Long was able to defeat the War Emperor. He had just fought Zhuo Ping without any problems. Now he killed Xiu Nu, who was at the middle level of the War Emperor. His soul is terrifying! At this moment, the boy sat badly wounded and healed himself with the help of plant quintessence. The main character thanks the Purple Vine for its good work. Purple Vine boasts and says that the boy himself said that all other souls are trash compared to her. But suddenly some force pressed the main character to the ground and did not let go. It was a girl from another continent. Her aura was very strong. Xiao Lang thinks that this force of attraction is very similar to that of that woman from Shun Kai. The man who was with them orders everyone to quickly kneel before the Hei Lin representatives. And all the elders immediately knelt before this woman. This old man turns to the girl and says that this Xiao Lang is not such trash. He resists the skill, and it turns out he was able to not only defend himself but also kill. They don't understand how a boy who was less than 20 years old could achieve this, and without trial, they want to take him with them and study this phenomenon. The old man says that this guy is really a genius. He has cultivated the skills of a heavenly demon and has even reached the stage. No wonder I was able to do this. The girl says that if the boy has the skill of the heavenly demon, then he will die soon. No matter how much of a genius he is, it is useless. The old man says it's a shame and the boy could have been taken away for some training. He orders that he be treated for his injuries so that he has the strength to respond. And at that moment, Xiao Lang was instantly healed. Purple Vine tells him that these people are too dangerous and invites him to escape. But the boy also thought about it. But they definitely won't let him go. The old man noticed that the soul of this child was very strange. He had never seen such a soul. One person reported that Xiao Lang's holy soul can eat flesh. This is strange. If not for this, they would have defeated him long ago. The old man says that this person's soul is actually a special type of soul, at least beyond the saint rank. The girl says that this time the soul continent is not useless. She turns to her animal Xiao Rong Rong and says that they will play soon. The old man lifts the main character off the ground and wants him to first answer his question about how Jia Ling and Qing Yu died. But Xiao Lang says he doesn't know and asks to let him go. After this, the old man grabbed the boy by the neck and said that he had no choice. And if they want, then this entire continent can be destroyed. And doesn't he have friends, family on this continent? The boy says that he really doesn't know. He passed out at that moment. Master Qi touched the purple jade coffin and the coffin slowly released a terrifying aura, and he simply passed out. When I woke up, the tomb began to collapse. The coffin disappeared, and all three were already dead. The old man says that the coffin must have been sealed, and after opening, it tore the space. His master must be a very powerful man. The girl turns to a guy named Hei Fei, and orders him to immediately inform the patriarch and ask him to send a strong man who knows space magic to find this coffin. Xiao Lang told them everything he knew. These people died not through his fault. He asks permission to leave. But the girl is not going to let the guy go so easily. Now that everything has become clear, it's time to pull the soul out of him and give it to Xiao Rong Rong. And after that, the old man pressed the boy to the ground with his strength and tells Xiao Lang to release his soul. Otherwise, everyone he knows will be buried with him. After this, the boy's soul showed itself and the girl released her animal named Xiao Rong Rong and says that this is his food. But when this animal just approached the boy, his purple vine immediately grabbed this animal. The purple vine swallowed the poor animal, thereby injuring this girl. And after that, the silhouette of the girl that the boy had previously seen in the tomb appeared in the sky above them. The old man was very scared because this girl was at the level of Tian Di. At that moment, the purple vine returned to the boy and it became much stronger. The main character thinks that this phantom is the owner of the coffin. But what is the connection between her and the purple vine? The soul of this girl was so strong that it pinned everyone to the ground. 
The old man doesn't understand why the remnant of Tiundi's soul was on this continent? Only one boy was not affected by her power. He thinks it was because of the purple vine. And the color of the purple vine changed again. He doesn't understand what's going on here. Note. The purple vine absorbed Hei Chi's soul and received an enhancement and changed its color from orange to yellow. Everyone around does not understand why this remnant of the soul is guarding Xiaolang's soul. What kind of soul is this? The main character understands that the protection will soon subside. He must leave immediately. But before that, Xiaolang began to approach the girl and the old man. They ask what he plans to do with them. Xiaolang says that of course he wants to kill them. They dared to harm his purple vine. If this remnant of the soul disappeared, would they let the boy go? But the old man didn't like the way the main character talked to them. They are from the Hai Lin clan. Submission has deprived him of the ability to move. He cannot even use the energy. But the boy says they never stopped touching his loved ones. And they never stopped when they tried to kill him. Did you stop when you wanted to destroy his soul? Xiao Long grabbed the old man and said that he only wants to live with people close to him. Therefore, if he wants to achieve his goal, he is ready to walk over their corpses. And after these words, the boy attacks the old man and damages him. After that, he grabbed the old man's hands with his purple vine and held him. The old man says that the Hei Ling family will definitely catch him and destroy his soul and body. The old man can't understand how the Sky Demon's skill is so devastating, he easily broke through the defense. But this did not frighten the main character. He says that let them come and the same end will await them as this old man. And after that, Xiao Long destroyed this old man from the Hei clan with one strong blow to his chest. The girl is crying. She doesn't understand how this is possible. How could a person of that level kill him? After this, the main character approached this woman and is going to end her life. But then suddenly, a purple vine came to the boy. She tells the main character that the spirit of that girl is leaving and they need to run away. The spirit of that girl from the tomb really began to disappear and nothing was holding the enemies back. At this moment, Xiao Long took this girl hostage and says that if anyone takes even one step, they will only return with the bones of this woman. The girl thinks that Xiao Rongrong's murder hit him hard, plus this skill that drained all her strength. She can't resist. These guys who came with this girl say that if the main character touches her, he will be a corpse. If Xiao Long lets her go, she will definitely not survive. He asks them not to talk nonsense. He orders them to immediately bring the flying beast to him. Ten minutes later, they brought a flying beast to the main character, and he immediately climbed onto it. He asks you to remember his words. When he returned to the Divine Soul Continent again, they would all feel his revenge. After today's battle, Xiao Long will become an unrivaled legend in the Soul Continent. But now, the powerful family from Tianzhou will persecute him. Will he be able to perform a miracle again? Meanwhile, Xiao Long was flying through the air on a beast and looking for his friends. And finally he found them. They were still running through the forest. Xiao Lang landed and called for them all to climb onto this flying beast. After everyone climbed onto this beast, they all hugged tightly together, and they were shocked that the boy was alive. After they arrived in a safe place, they dismounted from the flying beast, and Lei Yu hugged the boy. She did not think that she would be able to see him again. But in any case, the boy is glad that they are all reunited. He suggests that they talk about this later, but now they should immediately run away and save their lives. Auntie asks where should they run now, and who is this girl that the main character brought her with him? Qian Shun meanwhile noticed that behind them were two soldiers who were chasing them. He had never seen such power before. Xiao Lang says that they are from Tian Zhou, Hei Ling's family, and this woman is a hostage who will guarantee their rescue. They need to leave quickly and get to the sea. After that, they reach the shore of the Sea of Souls. Xiao Lang asks Qian Shun if he did what he asked him to do earlier. Qian Shun says that he did everything and then jumped off the cliff. He dug a tunnel and brought the ship according to the master's instructions, but unfortunately he did not wait for the master as the soldiers came. The aunt asks the main character how long has he been preparing to escape. Xiao Long says that he originally just wanted to hide by the Sea of Souls for a while, but now it seems that this is not enough. He apologizes for getting everyone involved in this. Lei Yu says that she will always follow the boy wherever he goes, even to the end of the world. And everyone also agreed to follow the main character. 
But then those two guys caught up with them. They said that they had fulfilled Xiao Long's conditions and asked to let their mistress go. But the main character asks them to wait here for three hours, and after that they will be able to pick up their mistress. They have no choice. If they take even one step, the boy will definitely kill her. After that, they all jump onto the boat that Qian Shun had prepared for them earlier. They had been sailing for an hour and were already far out to sea. Auntie says that the enemy will not be able to fly that far. But still, the sea is also dangerous. Do they have a chance? Xiao Long tells Auntie not to worry. If he didn't have a plan, he wouldn't come here so they could escape. Xiao Lang has a boat that can move along the seabed. And after that, a water monster emerged from the water column, and Xiao Long captured it with the tentacles of a purple vine. Xiao Lang tells his friends not to worry. This big guy is good, and this woman will stay here, but they need to leave. And after these words, he took his friends and jumped straight into the mouth of this monster. Four hours later, these two guys arrived on the boat to take this woman with them. But besides this girl, there was no one else on the boat. Everyone fled and even the aura cannot be detected. Afterwards, these people arrived in Seoul City and noticed that their family had already sent someone here. Hei He, the elder of the Hei Ling family, arrived in the city of Souls. He took this girl in his arms and realized that her soul was destroyed. He asks who did this and where is old man Hei Ya. These two guys say that Mr. Hei Ya, he was a kill warrior from this area. Lady Chi's soul was also destroyed by this man's spirit. He, he doesn't understand how a person from this mainland can be so strong. And who is he? These two guys reported to the elder of the Hei Ling family that this guy's name is Xiao Lang. And when they arrived, they had already fled. They could only take Lady Chi away. The elder of the Hei Ling family cannot believe that this Xiao Lan, originally from here, was able to harm Hei Chi and escape. And after that, the elder of the Hei Lin family destroyed his people because they could not save Hei Chi. He gives the order to summon the eight best of this continent. Let them search the entire Sea of Souls. They must find him. Otherwise, the entire Kingdom of Souls will be destroyed. Meanwhile, Xiao Long was still floating on the sea inside the sea monster. The purple vine says that the beast is moving along a given route. Xiao Long turns to his friends and says, Isn't this boat nice? Purple Vine can communicate with monsters. If she does not cooperate with them, she will first be corroded from within. Auntie says that thanks to this beast, they will be able to hide. But what should they do next? And after some time, they arrived at their destination and went ashore from the mouth of this beast. They arrived on the island according to the description of the Sea Beast. The island is located in the east of the Seoul continent, thousands of miles from land. The boy didn't even think about returning, so they moved to the other side of the continent along the coast. Meanwhile, people from the Hei Lin clan searched everything hundreds of miles above the Sea of Souls, but never found the main character. They searched all the surrounding areas, but found nothing. In the depths of the sea, there are sea beasts that are more than 500,000 years old and older. With Xiao Lang's strength, it is impossible to bypass them. They're going to expand their search immediately. Not a single corner of the seabed should be missed. When they combed this island, they noticed one settlement here. Qian Shun looked around the village and said that it is a small independent country. This city is the largest residence on the island. The overall strength of the island's warriors is very weak, and the ruler is nothing more than a king of war. Xiao Long handed the stealth pills to his friends. They must be very careful not to reveal their personalities and culture. But it's not so simple. The main character says that the three of them should stay here, and he will go to Tianzhou. Everyone who heard this was very surprised that the boy wanted to go to Tianzhou. Auntie says that the Sea of Souls is extremely dangerous, especially in Tianzhou. This is a journey in which the stake is their life. Xiao Long doesn't want them to take any more risks. Auntie turns to Xiao Lan and says that she understands everything. He shouldn't be hiding here. He doesn't belong here. He must become much stronger. After these words, Xiao Lan hugs his auntie and says that he will definitely shake Tian Zhou up and he will return to them. The aunt hugs the boy and says that she will wait for him. Tian Shun asks the main character to take him with him. But the main character refuses and says that Tian Shun is too weak, so he must stay here to protect the others. After that... The main character led them to a hotel that was on this island. They will live here for now, 
until they study the situation and accept a new image. The ant asks the boy how he was able to negotiate with the owner if their currency does not suit him. Xiaolang used the same stone that he used to illuminate the inside of the beast. The boy says that this is not an ordinary stone, it contains powerful energy that helps in training. Auntie thinks it's really amazing. This stone contains more energy than she could accumulate in a month. Qian Shun thinks that if he trains with the stone, he will level up very quickly. After that, Xiao Long took out his vault ring and took out a lot of jewelry from there. This is all the boy has. Now it all belongs to them. There are weapons and fighting skills. Qian Shun was delighted with such amazing things. They can help in training. With their help, he can easily reach the level of a war king. Auntie noticed that all these scrolls are with divine level skills. She asks the boy how he managed to get such valuable things. The main character says that he found all this in the tomb, but for him they are useless. However, they can help them. Xiao Lang just now noticed that Auntie can walk. He asks her who healed her legs. Auntie with a guilty face says that she has something that it is time to tell him. Auntie said that Xiao Dao was stolen by two girls, and the emperor of the hidden sect healed her legs with the medicine they left for them. Also, Xiao Dao only came here to practice. Now his family has taken him away. He will not return to them. But the main character does not agree with this because Xiao Dao is his brother. No matter what, his feelings for him will not change. He will definitely find it and take it home. It turned out that they only helped him because of Xiao Dao, and he would definitely not stop at the Shunkai family. The girl asks the boy not to rush to leave and asks him to stay at least for the night she wants to be with him. Auntie also asks the boy to stay here. A lot has happened today. She asks him to rest, and she and Qian Shun will go and get ready. After the aunt and Qian Shun left the room, the girl immediately pounced on the main character and began to hug him. The girl says that she will not go anywhere today and she wants to get a child from Xiao Lang today. She says that she needs him, and when he leaves her again, she wants him to at least leave her the child. And after that, she passionately kisses the main character right on the lips. Xiao Lang says that if she wants it that way. Is her face so red because she's so embarrassed? After that, the main character took the girl in his arms and carried her to the bed. He begins to undress her and says that if she wants a child so much, then they should prepare as best as possible. Today the whole night is ahead, and no one will help her. Meanwhile, in the Palace of Souls, the head of the Hao dynasty was informed that Xiao Long had still not been found. People say that the Sea of Souls is very large. They ask to be given more time. The head says that he also searched the entire tomb, but found nothing. Apparently the Jade Coffin flew into the space of chaos. The Chaos Space is a forbidden place that even the Emperor of Heaven does not dare to enter at will. Is the owner of the coffin really that powerful? That's right, so before you climb, it's worth finding out about the owner of the coffin. Besides, they were ordered to return home, so there was no time left. Under no circumstances, don't miss it. Hei Tu Hei Long must stay here to find him. They must turn over the entire sea. The guys swear that they will definitely catch Xiao Lang and bring him to Tian Zhou. The next morning, the main character woke up early, said goodbye to the girl, and hit the road. The girl woke up and saw that there was no one in bed next to her. She promises herself that she will definitely wait for him. After that, the guy went outside, where his aunt and Qian Shun were already waiting for him. The main character says that he will definitely become stronger and return to them, and they will definitely see each other again. And after that, the main character flew into the ocean. He is afraid that the soldiers pursuing him will soon find this place and he needs to leave as soon as possible. Xiao Long immediately caught the sea beast again and wants to use it as transport. Meanwhile, those people are still looking for the main character. They decide to split up. They think that the boy could already return to the continent. One of them will search across the continent, and the second will search the entire sea. At this time, Xiao Long was still floating on the sea inside the sea beast, and the purple vine informed him that there was a search party nearby. Xiao Long was surprised that they had already increased the search radius. He wants the sea beast to leave this place quickly, and suddenly one of the boy's pursuers notices a sea animal on the seabed. This man thought it was very strange that this sea beast immediately ran away as soon as it noticed him. The aura inside this beast is also very strange. He's going to catch him. And after that, the man attacks the sea beast, 
and Xiao Lang, who was inside the sea beast, felt that he was being attacked. The main character realized that he was suspected, but running away will only increase the risk. There are no options here. The boy is going to eliminate this man. And suddenly to this man, the sea beast turned around and began to swim towards him as he moved closer to this man and opened his mouth, from which a bunch of purple tentacles came out. And after this sea beast swallowed this pursuer, the main character immediately attacked him. The boy attacked the man and killed him with a strong blow to the chest. But this man managed to take a rocket launcher out of his pocket. When this rocket launcher flew to the surface from the water column, it immediately exploded, attracting the attention of the remaining pursuers of the protagonist. They realized that it was a signal and someone found Xiao Lang. Meanwhile, inside the sea beast, Xiao Long realizes that this man broke the jade talisman before he died, and now he is in big trouble. He asks the purple vine to force the beast to the bottom. But the sea monster says that if you dive lower, you will simply become prey for stronger monsters. But the boy thinks that on the contrary, the monsters will attack their pursuers. He wants to see who will be eaten faster. After some time, the sea beast descended to the bottom of the deep sea, and so far everything is safe. Now all they have to do is break through the monsters and break away from their pursuers. And suddenly the main character feels a huge power approaching him. And at that moment the sea beast was attacked with such force that he was dead. This man who attacked the sea beast understands that the main character hid in the stomach of the sea beast to avoid persecution. Very cunning. And immediately after that the pursuer attacked the boy. After such a powerful attack the boy's body will no longer withstand a single blow. The injury is very serious and he needs treatment. And when the pursuer had already caught up with the boy, he was suddenly grabbed by a huge tentacle. It was a huge sea monster, an octopus, its aura much stronger than that of that person. This person understands that this is a 300,000-year-old monster. His strength is five times higher than Renhua's level. Most likely, he arrived at the smell of blood. This man is trying to snatch the boy from the clutches of this monster. He can't let him escape. But this monster was so strong that with one blow he threw this man away from him. The main character sees that this monster treats them like toys and it was a great time for treatment. But this man did not give up so easily. He gathered all his strength to strike this monster. When this monster was wounded by that man, he dropped the main character from his tentacles and he was free. And suddenly the main character and his pursuer suddenly began to have a headache from pain. This sea beast can affect the soul. They understand that they need to escape. And after that, the monster immediately grabbed his pursuer and ate him without hesitation. Xiao Lung was very surprised that this monster killed a person at Ren Hua's level so easily. But the boy was unable to escape. The monster immediately grabbed him with its huge tentacle. The main character understands that this is his end, and now this monster will simply kill him like that guy. But the octopus did not eat the boy. Instead, he asked the person if he knows how to heal injuries. And instead of killing the boy, the octopus hands him a wounded tentacle and asks him to heal the wound. The boy hopes that after he helps him, the monster will let him go. After Xiao Lang healed the octopus's wound, he was very happy because his wound was good. And immediately after that, the octopus dragged him somewhere. After some time, the octopus dragged the boy to some strange but powerful place. Xiao Lang thinks this is amazing, but he cannot even imagine the power of the person who owns this place. He thinks it might even be God. This place is separated by a simply unimaginable force in the form of a sphere to prevent water from leaking in. It's amazing! The octopus turns to the boy and says that when the man helps him get the treasures of this place, he will let him go. Xiao Lang turns to the octopus and says that how can a weak person like him help such a powerful and terrifying octopus? The boy wants him to just let him go. The octopus says that he only needs to heal his wounds, and he asks him to remember if the deity dies, he will die too. And the boy agrees with this. The boy understands that this octopus is very scared, but what is he so afraid of? When the octopus began to approach closer to this temple, its tentacle immediately struck with lightning. He immediately asks for a quick cure. This lightning strike is quite strange, apparently some kind of spell. Xiao Long immediately treats the octopus's new wound and thinks that this attack is much stronger than anything he has ever seen. 
The octopus says that this man can heal wounds from lightning strikes. With such a person, he will definitely be able to get inside. This magic is damn strong. Even if they get inside, will the boy be able to survive leaving this place? Sometime later, they finally made their way inside behind this protective barrier. And immediately after this, the octopus stretches its tentacle to open the doors to this building. But the door was closed. The octopus is very angry because too much effort has been spent, and he really wants to see what is inside. Xiao Long thinks that there might be some kind of terrifying mechanism or something. It's better not to open the door. The boy thinks that he needs to leave. But after another strong blow from the octopus on the door, it immediately opened. And this sea monster immediately entered this open door. He wants to find the treasure. In the center of the room, where this huge octopus was, there was some strange cart. When the octopus picked up this cart, it immediately began to be attacked with strong lightning strikes. The boy realizes that it was a trap. It's good that nothing happened to him. He's not going to die here. This octopus screams in pain and asks the man to heal his wounds as soon as possible. The main character was wondering whether he should cure the monster or not. If this lightning kills him, he can leave. Xiao Long realizes that this lightning has weakened this octopus too much. And at that moment, the main character decided to kill this garbage octopus right now. He attacked him with his purple vine. And at that moment, the octopus stepped on one of the slabs on the floor, which activated another trap. Immediately when the octopus stepped on this slab, it was attacked by a powerful bolt of lightning, causing the monster to fall to the ground and die. The boy turned out to be alive, and he thinks that now is the time for him to run away. But suddenly his gaze falls on the cart that the octopus was just holding. When the guy examined this cart, he noticed that there were no traps on it. Doesn't it need an external force to make it move? When the main character used his power, the cart began to move, which undoubtedly made the guy happy. When the guy climbed inside this cart, he can only transform the energy of the earth and sky into internal energy, but his Dantian cannot absorb the internal energy to develop the level. Fortunately, this energy is directly used to enhance his physical strength through sky demonic enhancement, and he can accumulate energy indefinitely. The internal energy that he collected from multicolored stones simply accumulated in him. When the boy touched the lock inside this cart, it opened. The boy realized that this was a heavenly ship, powered by internal energy controlled by thoughts, walking on land and water. The boy immediately got behind the wheel of this cart, which is controlled by internal energy and thoughts. When the boy just got behind the wheel, this cart rushed forward with great speed. And when she stopped, the main character thought that this cart was really a treasure. The defense of this thing is so surprising that no animal is afraid of it. And now Xiao Long wants this heavenly ship to take him out of here, across the Sea of Souls. When the main character arrived at the coast, he didn't even think that this thing would be done so quickly. It really is amazing! With this cart, the main character will definitely get to Tianzhou. Judging by the number of ships at the port, this is apparently a shipping hub in the Sea of Souls. He doesn't sense a strong aura and decides to look around. When Xiao Lang approached the entrance to the city, he was immediately stopped by a guard. In order to get to Longqi Island, you need to pay ten magic stones. The boy looked around and saw that the magic stone was a simple gem. Xiao Lang gives the guard these gems. The guard says that he can enter and he must remember that any fighting is prohibited on the island, and after dark, the city has a curfew. The boy understands that gems have another purpose. He needs more information. Xiao Lang walked through the city and sees that there are a lot of familiar races here, and a lot of high-level ones. And then some girl met the main character and said that he was a very nice guest. She invites him to come and look around her store. She has everything. But the boy is more interested in whether it is possible to sell things in this shop. The girl says that of course you can and asks him to follow her. When they came to the store, the girl introduced him to their appraiser. The boy could show him things and he would evaluate them and give a decent price. Xiao Long gives the appraiser a scroll and he wants to know how much it can be sold for. The appraiser says that these two scrolls are yellow rank skills. One is worth about 10 magic stones, the other is about 500. The main character asks him what the yellow rank is. The evaluator says that these are skill and item levels. They are divided into four levels, sky, earth, mysterious, and yellow. Celestial is the best rank, yellow is the worst. This measure is used in most places. 
After this, the main character gave the appraiser the sickle. He says it's mysterious, or better yet, the cost is 100,000 magic stones. But the boy says that he will not sell weapons yet. And he asks if they sell black stones here. And how much will they cost? The rank of this weapon is high. Perhaps it will be useful to him in the future. The appraiser says that both magic stones and black stones are the currency of this place. A black stone, yellow level, is worth one million magic stones. Xiao Long thinks that if a yellow level black stone is worth a million, then what size is it? The boy thinks that in the past, when he encountered an artifact of the same size, it was worth 10 million. Very expensive. He doesn't have that many magic stones, and the things he can sell aren't too expensive. Is there a way to quickly earn magic stones? The main character also has a spatial ring, but this ring has someone else's mark on it, and he cannot open it. The buyer says that he is a professional in this matter, and he will open this ring. The buyer removes the mark and gives it to the guy to check. If everything is fine, then the cost is only a thousand magic stones. Although there is no dark stone, there are about ten million magic stones inside that belong to the lady of the Hei Ling family anyway. This brought him a lot of money. Xiao Long thanks the buyer and asks if he has a map of the area and how much it will cost. The buyer says that he has a map of the entire Sea of Souls, worth one million magic stones. The map is projected directly into your head. Xiao Long took this card in his hands, but he thinks that it is very expensive. The Sea of Souls is so huge. To get to Tianzhou, he still needs to travel a huge distance. Xiao Long takes the map and also has a question. Is there a way to quickly get from here to Tianzhou? The buyer says that the main character can use teleportation. If he wants to get to Tianzhou, he needs ten black stones of yellow rank. Xiao Lang wonders if there is a cheaper way. He just realized that the card is very cheap. The buyer says that the boy can sail with the merchant fleet. His store is engaged in mediation. For only 500,000 magic stones, he will help him contact. The boy was glad that he could get there this way. The faster the better. A week later, the boy was sailing on a merchant ship at sea. A man approached him and said that they were now halfway through the journey and would soon arrive at the island of the Black Hawk and asked him to prepare to land. He also says that they still have time and Black Hawk Island is under the jurisdiction of an influential family in Tianzhou. They will need a little time to cross. There are many slave traders here who specialize in capturing people from small islands. He tells the boy to be careful so he doesn't get caught. And suddenly Xiao Long notices that one of the people who were transported on this ship looked like Jing Ming. When Xiao Long descended from the ship to help Xing Ming, three slave traders stood in his way. The boy realizes that these slave traders are Zhu Wang's level. The boy is not sure if he can defeat these guys, but he cannot leave Qing Ming here, and then he tells these guys that he wants to buy this person from them. But the slave traders think that the boy will not be able to afford it. They call it 10,000. After this, the main character takes out his ring to pay the slave traders. But the slave traders don't want to get this money from the guy at all. They want to rob him and take everything he has. And after that, they attack the main character to take all his money. Xiao Lang looks at a guy named Shuang Zhao, with whom he sailed on the ship and asks him for help. They did not stand aside and immediately decided to help the main character. The slave traders immediately began to run away because they knew that they could not cope with those guys. When the slave traders fled, they wanted to take Qing Ming with them. But the boy did not let them do this and tied them with his purple vine, and he dragged Qing Ming to him. And a fight broke out between the ship's crew and the slave traders. The guards who were standing nearby see this battle, and they also notice a purple vine here. It belongs to a wanted criminal, Zhao Lan. After this, the boy summons a heavenly chariot from his ring and hurries to sit there with Qing Ming. The pursuers realize that this is a sky ship, but he is from the continent of souls. Where did he get this treasure? But it doesn't matter. They want to summon the entire army to kill Xiao Lang. Xiao Long in this chariot decides to heal Qing Ming. Qing Ming told the boy that he went to the Sea of Souls to find an opportunity to resurrect Xing Du Gu, but was attacked by a sea monster. And when he almost died, he crashed into a boat with slave traders. He couldn't even imagine that so much had happened since he came here. Moreover, he did not expect to meet him here. Xiao Long says that he wants to go to Shun Kai's family and is looking for a way to destroy the demon in the heart. Jing Ming says that he heard something from those slave traders. 
Tianzhou has a list of the most beautiful girls. This year there is one person on the list from the He Ling family. In a very short period she went through all the levels of Zhou Sheng, and now she is in the middle of Zhu Wang, and her name is Dong Fang Hong Du. They say that He Ling only recently appeared in the family. If it is really her, then he thinks that she was kidnapped in Tianzhou. Xiao Lang must see for himself. If it is really her, then he will definitely return her. Qing Ming says that the He Ling family is very powerful. In addition to the Zhu Wang level, they also have the Tian Di level. They can't do anything. They need time. The main character realizes that Master Jing Ming said that he must become stronger as soon as possible. The most important thing now is to get to Tianzhou. Although this ship's speed is low, it consumes too much energy and is afraid that they will not last long. Xiao Long says that it's okay, there are plenty of spare vehicles on the seabed, and the soldiers will definitely not follow them. Xiao Lang summons sea monsters using his purple vine. Xiao Long tells Qing Ming that his purple vine can control sea animals. They will hide in one of them's stomach. But the monsters did not seem to notice their cart and simply began to swim past it. They seemed to be afraid of something. Xiao Long says that they will go with them and see what attracted their attention, and at the same time, they will go for a ride. The main character caught one monster with a purple vine and they began to go deep to the very bottom. The boy asks the purple vine what's going on here. Purple vine asked the animals. They said that the spiritual cluster here was about to burst. The guys understand that spiritual energy is stored here. And after this explosion, magic stones began to rise from the bottom. There were a lot of them. The boy realizes that he cannot miss this opportunity. He asks Jing Ming to take control of the skyship, and he will collect a fortune. After that, the boy got out of the chariot to collect as many of these stones as possible. The main character understands that these sea animals are truly creepy. They want to collect stones at any cost. The boy will make a fortune, but a magical fortune. But magic stones do not store much energy, which is why they attracted such a huge number of sea creatures. And then suddenly Xiao Long notices a stone that radiates enormous energy. It was a black stone. But the main character did not have time to take this stone for himself, and some sea monster was ahead of him. But he notices a lot more black stones. Now he must take these stones only for himself. But when the main character turned around, he saw that he was not the only one who wanted to get these stones. Xiao Lang catches these sea monsters with a purple vine. He is not going to give them the black stones. The boy understands that there are a lot of sea creatures. It seems to him that he needs to leave. This time, the aura is much stronger than before. He is afraid that even more sea monsters will come. He needs to quickly collect everything and leave. And after that, the boy manages to get a huge stone. It exudes enormous energy. Apparently, it is a heaven-level stone. And so that the stone would not be taken from him again, he immediately decided to hide it in a vault in his ring. And after this, the main character realizes that he needs to escape from here as soon as possible. He climbed into the cart and said that it was good to have this treasure. He doesn't want to see any more of these monsters today. Jing Ming doesn't understand what Xiao Lang did that led to so many monsters chasing him. Xiao Lang shows him that he managed to collect a lot of jewelry. Jing Ming was very surprised when he saw so many magic stones and also a black stone. He heard from the slave trader that black stones contain a huge amount of energy. This is very important for development. Xiao Long says that he will give two stones to Jing Ming. This should be enough to raise the level. Jing Ming thanks the main character and says that these two stones are very expensive. Now there is another way to get to Tianzhou. You need to use these stones faster. After that, the guys sat down and began to absorb these black stones. The energy of these stones was so powerful that the boy could no longer tolerate it. He asks the purple vine to also absorb the energy of the black stone. The main character does not know how powerful this stone is. Perhaps a sky demonic enhancement will help him deal with it. Two days passed, and Jing Ming was happy that he was finally able to raise his level. With all the energy that his Dantian could absorb, he did not even absorb half of the stone. He feels that the heavenly demon enhancement is bottomless, and it can continuously absorb energy. Jing Ming cannot even imagine how much stronger Xiao Long will become. At that moment, they were found by the He Ling army who were hunting Xiao Lang. Jing Ming tries to awaken the boy as soon as possible. He tries to explain to him that the He Ling army found them. But the main character had more important things to do. He was currently fighting with his inner demon. And at that moment, their heavenly chariot very quickly jumped out of the water. 
The people from the Heilin army were still chasing their chariot. Jingming realizes that they are being chased by four people of Zhu Wang's level. The pursuers do not understand where this skyship has such a powerful aura. They think that it most likely comes from the soul. Perhaps it is Xiao Lang. Jingming realizes that the boy is not done with his improvement yet. He has no other options but to detain these guys. He asks Xiao Bai to quickly take Xiao Lang away from here. Meanwhile, the boy's head inside this cocoon was simply splitting open. He didn't think that this stone could summon the demon in his heart a second time. This time, the demon is much fiercer than before. And after that, the demon began to consume the boy and he was in great pain. But Xiao Lang understands that he cannot die so easily. His thoughts were only about Hong Dao and Aunt Ching Yi. He can't give up so easily. There are still people waiting for him. And suddenly the boy feels a strong aura of black stone around him. It was incredible. The black stone was actually able to destroy the demon. And suddenly a skill appeared in front of the main character, which is called the heavenly gift of the cutting hand of God. The boy does not yet understand whether this is a gift from a heavenly demonic enhancement or from a stone. When the boy first touched this combat skill, he felt enormous power, which he immediately began to absorb into himself. The main character was very glad that he was able to survive the second coming of the demon. The level of this stone is truly amazing, and this power is of unknown origin. When the boy came out of his cocoon, he noticed a man from the Hei Lin army entering his carriage. The boy was very surprised by this. He thinks what happened to Jing Ming and Xiao Bai. When Xiao Long looked out the window of the heavenly carriage, he saw that his mythical beast and Jing Ming were being held hostage by these people. One of their people says that this trash died protecting the main character, which is really funny. The boy did not tolerate this and immediately attacked this guy with a strong blow to the chest. The rest of the pursuers could not believe that this boy was able to destroy a person from the Hei Lin clan. And after that, the main character begins to attack them and tells them to let Jing Ming and Xiao Bai go. These guys understand that the main character has the level of Zhang Sheng, and because of this, he was able to hit the soul. After this, the main character wants to use his main skill against them. And immediately after that, the boy's hand began to turn into some kind of huge paw. The Heilin warriors do not understand how it is possible that this boy fights them on equal terms. They understand that this is a heavenly demonic enhancement. This kid has inner strength, with which he artificially raised the level to Zhu Wang. He uses the power of the soul. But the main character has not only physical strength, and while these two guys lost their vigilance, he tied them with his purple vine. When the boy killed those two warriors, the last one remained. The boy tells him that his comrades are dead. Will he want to go down? But this guy is not going to give up. He asks the boy not to delude himself and let him, level 6 Zhu Wang, fight him. I didn't think that he could defeat fighters of Zhu Wang's level, but no matter what he used, this warrior would not be able to defeat the protagonist. Xiao Lang asks him to stop talking nonsense and quickly come to him and finally die. Xiao Lang says that he's just the same trash as the others. This Hei Lin army warrior realizes that the boy's soul was simply distracting him. What a cunning boy. The main character attacks this man in the back, but he fails to pierce this man. He doesn't care. This man says that physical strength of this level cannot penetrate his defenses. Army soldier Hei Lin lifted the boy into the air. The main character understands that this person specifically revealed his shortcomings. The guy says he can use dirty tricks too, but if the victim doesn't resist, it's boring. Xiao Long understands that if he doesn't do this, then he won't have a chance anymore. And after that, he uses the dividing hand of God skill. The main character attacks this guy, and the guy feels that this hand has a very scary aura. Looks extremely powerful. When the boy attacked this man with his newly acquired skill, it simply pierced right through his soul. This guy didn't understand how this was even possible. Xiao Lang finally said goodbye to level 6 Zhu Wang. The boy thinks that this god's cutting hand is so powerful that it ignores high-level defense. The main character understands that he needs to leave his thoughts for later, but now he needs to leave. But finally, he collects the rings from those guys that he just killed them. When the boy returned to his cart, he immediately decided to inspect Jing Ming and was very lucky that he was still alive. The main character must help him as soon as possible. He heals Jing Ming with plant quintessence. Tian Zhou as soon as possible. 
He uses his energy to make the chariot move, and at that moment he notices that the energy emitted by his body has become different. The speed of the skyship increased greatly, which knocked the boy and his mythical animal off balance. Three hours later, they were still sailing across the sea towards Tianzhou. Jing Ming told the boy that this was his dark energy. All beings use internal energy. The energy in the body will change depending on the level. Ren Hua has soul power. Yan Di has heavenly power. It seems to the main character that the speed of the ship depends on the energy invested. But he is only developing the skills of a heavenly demon, not a Dantian. He does not understand why such changes have occurred. Jing Ming says that it is really strange that the Dantian is damaged, and the internal energy you use cannot raise the level. Perhaps this is due to the heavenly demonic enhancement. But this doesn't matter to the boy. The main thing is that he has become stronger. Jing Ming says that the main character is just a monster. Increasing his strength is like a game for him. And after some time, they finally arrived at the coast of Tianzhou. When the guys first stepped ashore, they immediately headed to the nearest town. As they approached the Po family city, they saw that there was a huge crowd at the entrance to this city. There are also a large number of soldiers at the gate and good security. The weakest soldier is level 6 Zhu Wang. If someone wants to break in, they will be caught immediately. They may be charged an entrance fee that they cannot afford. The guard says that if anyone wants to go to Tianzhou, they must have Tianzhou's soul seal. There are two ways to get it. First, we'll receive a pass from the respected families of Tianzhou. Second, work without bending over. This is an ore mining place. Here they must mine magic stones. After collecting 300,000 units of ore, they will receive Tianzhou's soul seal. Everyone is prohibited from stealing and trying to escape. Death awaits the guilty. Xiao Long realizes that it turns out to be a vein of a magic stone. Po family? Seems to be a very rich family. Jing Ming says that he has no desire to mine ore. They are still wanted by the Hei Ling family and they need to act more carefully. The main character asks him not to worry because he has always been neat. Jing Ming says that it seems to him that the main character does not fully understand what neatness is. This stone wall is not only solid but also suppresses internal energy so it takes a lot of effort to mine ore. How long does it take to mine all these stones? The main character can use his skill, the Sky Demonic Enhancement. To break these walls, you need to collect stones as quickly as possible. Jing Ming tells Xiao Long that they cannot collect all these magic stones, so they must mine all this ore as quickly as possible in order to get to Tianzhou. But Xiao Long says that he will truly never give up, and uses his new skill, the Cutting Hand of God, and breaks the stones. Jing Ming says that the main character's skill is very strong. With its help, they can quickly mine ore. When Xiao Long saw these stones, he says that now they can quietly get rich. But Jing Ming says that it is better not to abuse this. It can end badly. Then Xiao Long is about to speed up and ask Jing Ming to collect all the ore behind him. There is a very strong aura of magic stones here. Jing Ming asks the main character to slow down. He does not have time to collect all the ore because there is a lot of it. But suddenly a purple vine appears and says that there is a place nearby with a special aura. Apparently there is a black stone mine there. And after some time, the main character found a black stone. It was quite large. When the boy used the dividing hand of God technique, he broke the shell of this stone. When the main character picked up this stone, he says that this stone seemed to be created for him. This aura is quite strong. If the guards conduct a search, they will definitely notice it. The boy sat down on the ground and wants to absorb the energy of this stone here. He thinks that no one will notice the empty stone. But the guards at the entrance to this cave feel that there is a very strong aura inside. They understand that the aura is so strong that it is as if someone was able to find the black stone. But to break through the purple stone, you need strength above the level of Ren, Hui. But the workers here are not above the level of Zhu Wang. They do not understand how this is possible. The old man says that perhaps a thief has gotten there, and he wants to report this to Master Po. He orders the soldiers to immediately search the entire mine and find the one who absorbs the stone and kill him on the spot. When Jing Ming came out of this cave, he saw the guards running inside this very cave and he understands that they definitely followed Xiao Long. The soldiers are much faster than Jing Ming. He simply won't make it in time. 
We urgently need to find a way to contact him. The guard saw Jing Ming and they understand that upon hearing the order, he immediately ran into the mine. He wanted to tell his comrade to run away. But Jing Ming stopped and he pretends that he is just mining ore here. And suddenly the purple vine rushed somewhere. She says that many soldiers are running in this direction. The main character realizes that he needs to escape immediately. Meanwhile, the guards have captured Jing Ming and want him to tell them everything in detail about his friend. Can he just leave him and run away? But the main character has already arrived to help and attacks these guards from above while they do not see him. Xiao Long defeated these guards and immediately grabbed Jing Ming and hurried away from the place. But one more guard survived and is trying to catch up with the guys. The boy feels that this guy's aura is much stronger than those he has already seen. This is the peak of Zhu Wang. The main character uses the heavenly demon fighting skill and the cutting hand of God. And after that, they clashed in battle. The guard says that a worm like him, of Zhongsheng's level, will never be able to defeat him. He will take the boy's life with one blow. But the main character turned out to be much stronger than this guard, and he simply pierced his soul. Now the boy tells him that such a worm of Zhu Wang's level will never be able to defeat him. He will take his life with one blow. The other guards also saw this, and they can't believe that this guy didn't just kill their captain, but tore him apart. The rest of the guards did not wait for their fate and simply ran away. They want to call for reinforcements. Xiao Lang thinks that fortunately those soldiers were stupid to not defend themselves in close combat. Otherwise, he would not have been able to kill him. He tells Master Jing Ming to leave here, and the main thing is that they are not chased by high-level soldiers. But suddenly the cave above their heads collapsed and a flying pegasus with a cart arrived at this place. The old man walked up to the chariot and bent his knee. He told the lord who was sitting inside that they had found the man who used the stone. He was able to kill a person with the level of Zhu Wang, although he himself is at the level of Zhong Sheng. The threat is very high. They must destroy him. Xiao Long tries to protect Jing Ming and says that he did everything himself and has no accomplices. He doesn't know if he can use the cutting hand of God again. The gentleman came out with his chariot, and he said that he was surprised that the boy was still ready to help others. He asks how the boy was able to break the stone and kill Zhu Wang's level peak. Xiao Lung says that he used the heavenly demon skill and combined it with the martial skill. Mister, I wonder if this guy can kill the guard so that he thinks about what to do next. The guys were very surprised when they heard this. Jing Ming thinks that if he just lets them go, they can't miss this opportunity. But the old man says that this guy is a sinner who broke a taboo. But Mr. Po asks the old man to shut up and invites the main character to win, and he will let them go. Xiao Long says he won't be anyone's dog. To survive, there is just something he can do. The boy realizes that this guy is willing to let him go because he can be useful. So he just wants Mr. Po to tell him what he needs from the main character. Oh, under threat of death, he still has the nerve to negotiate terms. Xiao Long says that if he wants to kill him, then it's better to kill him right away. Will he still bargain? After this, Mr. Po invited the main character to his home. He says that he is interesting. It is not surprising that Hei he put an astronomical price on his head. Xiao Lang was surprised that the Hei Ling family talked about him so much. Next time, he needs to be more careful. Mr. Po says that he saw how depressed that bitch Hei Chi is. The boy destroyed her soul. Great job. Xiao Lang asks what the master wants from him. He wants Xiao Lang to dig up the tomb of the Supreme Emperor, one of the most powerful people of antiquity, the Dragon Emperor. When the main character finished talking to Mr. Po, went outside and met Jing Ming. He says they are leaving in two days. After completing the work, Mr. Po will give them the seal of Tianzhou and let them go. Xiao Long asks Master Jing Ming not to bother himself, but invites him to just dig for these two days. Mr. Po said that he can keep everything he finds for himself. Digging a Tian Di level tomb is a desperate job. Fortunately, he is only responsible for clearing the way inside. Okay, why is this gentleman so generous? You will need to find a couple more stones to increase your strength. Two days later, Xiao Lang and Jing Ming dug up a bunch of magic and black stones in a cave. The old man says that in two days, millions of magic stones, a few black stones and four yellow level black stones. This is the production norm for two months. He doesn't understand how they were able to pull this off. Xiao Lang only thinks that he is sorry that the cutting hand of God can only be used for half an hour a day, 
and there are not enough stones here, so he would not stop. At that moment, Mr. Poe arrived to them. He says that after he has collected all the things, everything should go fine, and asks if they are ready. After this, Xiao Lang and Jing Ming saddled the huge wolves, and they are ready to set out. Mr. Po says that Ren Hua is going with him and the rest will be here. He asks Xiao Lang to remember that once he reaches the bottom of the lake, he must not emit energy, otherwise, death. After they began to descend to the bottom of the lake, everyone began to feel that there was a very strong aura at the bottom of the lake. When they swam into an underwater cave, they saw a sleeping heavenly serpent there. A fierce beast that has existed for almost millions of years. It is almost invincible. You must avoid it. There are no spells on the gate, but it is difficult to break through. And as they use a large amount of energy to break the gate, the snake will wake up. Then nothing will help them. The god and heavenly demon's cutting hand skills do not use energy, and it will not disturb the serpent's sleep. So Po Jong asked him to open the way. But the main character understands that he knows too much. They won't just let him go. And after that, the main one uses the skill cutting the hand of God. The snake is still sleeping. Even the noise couldn't wake it up. He needs to finish everything as quickly as possible. A moment later, Xiao Lang managed to open the emperor's tomb without disturbing the snake. And immediately at this moment, the guards approach the boy and tell him that his work is over and he can go. Mr. Po thanks the boy for the work he has done and says that upon his return, he will prepare a reward. But suddenly for everyone, the snake woke up. Perhaps it's because they disturbed the tomb. Now that the heavenly serpent has awakened, we need to retreat. A moment later, Xiao Long boarded his sky ship and immediately tried to escape as quickly as possible. Mr. Po runs after Xiao Lang and asks him to save him. The main character, meanwhile, hesitates whether to save Mr. Po or not. After this, the boy remembers his conversation with Mr. Po. He says that he liked the boy, and he can mine stones at will. From that day on, they are friends. And if the boy is bothered by the Hei Ling family, the boy can turn to him. After thinking a little, the main character still decides to save Mr. Po. He stopped and pulled him towards him with a purple vine. Xiao Long says that since Mr. Po is from a rich family, they became friends. It will cost 20 black stones to save him. Mr. Po says that Xiao Lang is an asshole and is now thinking about profiting from his life. He asks him to leave quickly. The remaining guards and Jing Ming who remained on the shore feel the aura of the snake. They do not understand what happened there in the water column. Lan and Mr. Po bursts out of the water. The main character throws Mr. Po onto land. Jing Ming asks Xiao Long what is going on here, but Xiao Long replies that there is no time to explain. He asks Jing Ming to quickly get into the chariot, otherwise he will catch up with them. And at that moment a snake bursts out of the water. The guards who were on land were very afraid of this monster. Jing Ming also saw this monster and was surprised that this snake had a very powerful aura. Mr. Po finally looked at the flying chariot and with a smile on his face said that he would remember the boy. One of the guards says that there is bad news. The aura of the tomb is opened, and a huge number of troops have come. There are many high-level fighters there. When the guys arrived in the vicinity of the city of Potien, they say that a large army has gathered there and there may be incredible treasures there. Zhuo Ming asks the protagonist not to think too much about the tomb. Only the Heavenly Emperor can enter the tomb of the Heavenly Emperor. The TND level were heading towards the tomb. It seems to them that the tomb will now fall into other hands, and all the family's efforts will be in vain. They want to hurry to the city. Fortunately, the main character received the seal from Mr. Po in advance. And at that moment, Yi appeared on the walls of the city Xuan, one of the ten masters, along with Su Yan, one of the ten most beautiful girls. The guys realize that the tomb of the dragon emperor has attracted too much attention. And Mu Xiao Yao, the second most beautiful girl on the list, also appeared here, and Xiao Lang's brother Xiao Dao. When the boy saw his brother, he became very angry and was about to go to him. But Jing Ming stopped him and asked him not to do anything stupid. He also says that Shen Kai's family does not recognize his existence and now is not the best time for this. Xiao Lang also notices his girlfriend Hong Dong Fang in the crowd. Jing Ming says that they need to be careful, but when he looked back, Xiao Lang was no longer with him. After that, the main character ran to the girl, but he was stopped by security. He shouted something towards the girl so that she would recognize him. But the girl simply turned away as if she didn't recognize the guy. The person who stopped Xiao Lan thinks that he is just an ordinary fan of Hong Dao's beauty. If he sees her beauty, 
he deserves forgiveness and orders him to get out of here. After that, Jing Ming came to Xiao Long and hurried to take him away from here. Xiao Lang begins to cry because Hong Du didn't even pay attention to him and he doesn't exist for her. The girl that the main character met earlier understands that this girl is Hong Dao Dong Fang, about whom Xiao Lan was so worried. Jing Ming says that perhaps Hong Dao has forgotten what happened before. The situation is getting worse and we can no longer remain inactive. The main character says that he will definitely make Hong Du think about him. Jing Ming says that with their situation, it is difficult to stay in Tianzhou. He asks Xiao Lang what their next plan will be. Xiao Lang says that there's a lot to do, so they need to do some shopping first. The merchant says that the map of Tianzhou, the guide to Tianzhou, as well as all possible medicines and food equipment, the boy will make four million stones. Jing Ming thinks it is very expensive. This is a ripoff. Xiao Lang asks the merchant if he knows where he can earn stones. The merchant says that there are ten major chambers of commerce in Tianzhou. The fastest way to earn money is to go to the first chamber of commerce, the Asura Hall. The Asura Hall is the first underground force in Tianzhou which will issue various rewards. But the merchant wants to warn that although this is quick money, it is also quick death. Heilin City is far away as far as Shenkai Mansion is concerned. This is in the southernmost part of Tianzhou. The city of Po Tian is in the far east of Tianzhou, which is very far away. If they want to see Xiao Dao again, they need to cross half of Tianzhou. It is deservedly called the first trade tent. It is huge. When the guys entered the mansion, they were met by an old man who asked them what they wanted. The guys ask where they can get assignments here. The old man answers that he has. The old man sees that the boy is a heavenly demon skill cultivator. At level 3, they can take below level 3, which is a list of different tasks. Xiao Lang doesn't understand why these jobs are paid so low. And are there any tasks where the reward is a black stone? Such missions and rewards are only available to senior hunters. To become one, you must complete at least 5 level 3 missions, or 1 level 4. The old man understands that the guys urgently need a black stone. It so happened that the lord of the city gave a task of five levels of difficulty. It can be completed by warriors who are not afraid of corpse poison. There are no level restrictions. At the same time, you can get a black stone. The main character was happy that this was a great opportunity to earn more stones. Although the boy doesn't know what kind of corpse poison it is, treating the purple vine will help him. The old man advises them to think twice. Level 5 missions are dangerous, especially for them. The task is to collect the corpses of beasts in the tomb of the Dragon Emperor. After some time, the guys were sitting in the establishment and Jing Ming says that according to the assignment, there are a large number of animal corpses in that place. Their bones are excellent material. One bone can be exchanged for a yellow level stone. Now that the existence of the tomb is known to everyone, everything will be divided among the large families, although the Poe family suffered the greatest losses. It also states that the danger has not been completely eliminated, but is the main character ready to risk it? But the boy has no other choice. He needs more stones. Xiao Long says that if Jing Ming wants to become stronger, he must take risks. The boy wants him to leave this task to him. Jing Ming thinks that he needs to become much stronger. He cannot afford to always rely on Xiao Long. Not far from the tomb, Xiao Long rides a chariot towards it. He wonders how safe it is there now. It says here that these animals are difficult to deal with, even at Renhua's level. The man who rode with them in the cart says that all the animals were destroyed yesterday, but one man took most of the treasures. Xiao Long says that yesterday he saw many high-level warriors, many large families, but it was all taken by one person. Was it really the Supreme Emperor? Right. He is the overlord of Eastern Tianzhou, the Supreme Emperor of the Leng family, Leng Di. After some time, the guys finally arrived at the place. One blow is comparable to the entire lake. Even all the water has evaporated. He truly deserves to be called the strongest in Tianzhou. The boy wonders if he will meet this person someday in the future. When the guys descended into this crevice, they immediately saw many animal corpses. The guard says they can go down and collect all these bones. One bone, one stone. The main character thinks that even Zhu Wang's level is difficult to cope with this rotten flesh. The hardness is comparable to that stone in the mine. 
the guard also asks them to beware of the green poisonous mist. If he is poisoned by a corpse, you will cease to be human. To prevent great damage, the guards will kill him. Xiaolong thinks what kind of creepy person of Tiandi's level refined this poison. This must be a completely sick person. No wonder this corpse poison is so dangerous, a truly terrifying thing. When the main character descended to the bottom of this crevice, he thinks that no one should notice him here anymore. A monster lay next to him. The boy used his new skill, God's slashing hand, to obtain the bones of this monster. But when he cut the skin of this monster, corpse poison began to ooze from it. The boy got scared and stepped back. He uses the purple vine and hopes that it can overcome this poison. When the purple vine approached this monster, it immediately absorbed all this poison. She's really not picky about food. But this is what he needs. He orders the purple vine to absorb this monster's corpse completely. After the purple vine consumed all of this monster's flesh, all that was left was its bones. The more often he uses the purple vine, the more likely he is to expose himself. You don't need to get carried away. Just become a high-level hunter, and that's it. But several guys were watching his actions. They saw a purple vine and also a skill of the heavenly demon. The guys realized that this is clearly Xiao Lang. The Heiling family assigned 200,000 black stones for him. They want to kill him and get a reward. When the main character got to the surface, he was given a token that indicates the completion of the mission. It can be transferred to the Asura Hall when everything is over. But immediately after this, the main character immediately descended to the bottom of this crevice again. He thinks that earning black stones is very simple. The opportunity is very rare. You need to collect as much as possible. When he went down to the bottom of this crevice, he was immediately met by guys who wanted to kill him. These guys openly began to attack the main character. Xiao Lang realizes that his identity was revealed and he needed to be more careful. But Xiao Lang says that some pathetic people at Zhu Wang's level will not be able to defeat him. Xiao Lang says that if the skill of the heavenly demon does not help him, this is a problem. But unfortunately, this is not the only one. When these guys started losing, they started running away and calling for help, telling everyone that Xiao Lan was here. But the boy cannot allow them to escape and call people. He summons his purple vine and tries to grab it from these people. It so happened that these guys were standing next to a dead monster. Xiao Lang attacked this monster by releasing corpse poison from its body. And then immediately this poison began to poison these people. When people came running here in response to cries for help, they noticed that these two guys had inhaled poison, and now they needed to kill them. Xiao Lang immediately came to the surface. He hands one guard everything that he managed to get in that crevice and wants to exchange it for stones. The guard says that there are 15 bones in this ring, which can be exchanged for a black stone and a token. The main character managed to escape, and he was chased by many people who wanted to get a reward on his head. Xiao Lang escaped on his skyship. He has been discovered and can no longer stay in the city for long. But then suddenly a purple vine turns to him and says that danger is approaching. And suddenly a huge tail appears in front of the chariot. This tail has a very strong aura. It is clearly something that he cannot control. And suddenly the main character sees a chariot in front of him, which is driving straight towards him. The boy was unable to avoid a collision with another chariot, but only managed to get out of the chariot at the last moment. There was a girl driving that chariot. She says that she was careless and did not look at the road, so she crashed into the protagonist's skyship. Xiao Long pats this girl on the head and says that he is not very angry, and he asks her if she hurt herself. But this girl turned out to be not at all cute and hit the main character in the groin, and after that she got back into her chariot and flew away. But suddenly this girl's chariot was grabbed by that animal with a tail. Ren Hua level beast, while he's distracted by this girl, he can run away. But Xiao Lung couldn't stand by and watch this huge tiger kill the little girl. He flew up to her in his chariot and saved her. Xiao Lang asks the girl if she wants to apologize to him. But the girl makes a fool of herself and asks what she should apologize for. Who asked him to save anyone? The main character says that he will now throw him back to be devoured by this tiger. But this huge tiger caught up with the protagonist's chariot and kicked it with his paw so that it fell to the ground. Xiao Lang falls off this thing for the second time that day. He asks the girl if she's okay. The girl says that the main character, being so weak, is trying to protect her from getting hurt. It's all because she thinks that maybe it's because she's cute.
The boy says no, it's because she's rude, and he personally must teach her a lesson. And he is not weak, but he is definitely stronger than this girl. The girl smiles and says that she is a thousand times stronger than the main character. Xiao Lang says that she only knows how to brag and create problems. No one will believe her. The girl decided to show him what her strength was capable of, and after that she collected a charge of lightning from the sky and hit this tiger with it. Xiao Lang became nervous. He doesn't understand what kind of scepter this girl has. He can easily kill a beast of Ren, Hua's level. After that, Xiao Lang began to make excuses that he didn't say anything, and she heard it. He doesn't understand how such a child can possess such a thing. Who is she? Meanwhile, in Poe's estate, people feel the aura of the god's scepter. They think that the god's scepter was taken by Emperor Leng. They immediately go to check what is happening there. After this, the main character saw that the girl was filling the sky ship with stones. The girl says that otherwise it is not so convenient to drive this ship, and the speed is low. She asks the main character what his name is. The boy told the girl his name. He was also shocked that she would throw stones so easily. He thinks she's a major. A girl named Yu Ji says that Xiao Long is the first interesting person she met after running away from home. Now she wants to be friends with the main character. Xiao Long understands that if this girl ran away from home with so many treasures, she is clearly not from a simple family. And shouldn't her family be worried about her, especially when she is alone? He asks the girl who she really is. The girl just wanted to tell the boy who she was when suddenly those three people from the city of Po appeared. One of these people asked why such a little girl has the scepter of God. Also, these people were hostile to the boy and girl. They say that they are just two pathetic ants and this is real profit for them. They are going to quickly kill them and take this thing. No one will know that it was them anyway. The main character realizes that these three people with Ren Hua levels... Xiao Long sees the clothes the three men from the Po family are wearing. He says they will feel bad for robbing a child. But these people from the Po family say that the boy simply does not understand what kind of weapon this is. This is the weapon left behind by the Supreme Emperor. The girl says that they are very brave if they want to take her things from her. Then death awaits them. She uses her scepter and points it towards the sky. But these people had nothing to do with the lightning bolt. They say that the girl's strength is very small to unleash the potential of this weapon. After that, the main character took this girl in his arms and runs with her towards her heavenly ship. The girl asks the boy to step back. This attack will not harm her. This group of people are so brazen that they will definitely die today. Xiao Lang says that it was a powerful attack of Ren Hua level. Next time, she will be much stronger. The boy wants to go out and distract them, and he asks the girl to get out of here as quickly as possible. The girl is worried that the main character will be killed in one second. Xiao Long says that one second is enough for her to run as far as possible. After this, the main character left the skyship and shouted to the girl to run away, and he himself would take the blow. The boy cannot use the cutting hand of God. He does not know how to hold them. He thinks he should just hide underground and force them to awaken his soul. But the girl did not run away and got into a fight with these three men. She says that she will not allow Xiao Lang to be hurt. Xiao Lang closed his eyes at the last moment and thought that he was already dead, but when he opened his eyes, he saw that he was still alive. The girl says that Xiao Lang is an idiot, and of course he is alive, and we have Yao Ji to thank for that. The main character realized that this girl's clothes were also a treasure. When the attackers also found out that this girl was wearing one of the eight treasures of the world, the robe of an immortal... They are in a big disaster and are going to flee. The girl says that after using the immortal's robe, it is easy to detect. And suddenly, in the sky, it was as if someone tore open the space and said, who dared to mock a child from his family? This person had the level of a heavenly emperor. It can distort space. The men who attacked the main character and the girl saw this guy who tore apart the space and began to run away. They realized that this is a person from the Yang family. This man stopped the fleeing men who attacked the girl and immediately killed them with one wave of his hand. He approached the girl and said that it was time for her to go home. She rode on the skyship for a very long time. If she doesn't return home soon, her father will be very angry. Xiao Long thinks that the Ouyang family seems very scary. It's good that he didn't do anything to her. He takes this girl and takes her with him. 
The girl finally shouts to the main character to remember that her name is Oo Young Yo Ji. They will definitely meet again. After that guy took the girl with him, the main character sat down on the ground and exhaled. He had never seen something so frightening before. It's no surprise that her family allowed her to be all alone. She has very strong insurance. This Wu Yang family is probably more fearsome than the Shen Kai clan. Okay, he needs to get back to the city. But before leaving, he searched the corpses of those men who attacked him. He wonders if they are as rich as Mr. Po. When he returned to Qing Ming, he told him that he had obtained 2,000 black stones. And in addition to the three corpses of the elders of the Po family, there was also the corpse of a huge tiger. Also in the Asura Hall, he passed the task and received some black and magic stones. Jing Ming says that Xiaolong is truly blessed by someone for being able to survive and profit from the disaster. As for the Ouyang family, he asked at the inn, it's really amazing. In Tianzhou, and each family has unique skills known to the whole world. For example, the Shen Kai family owns divine armor. Now the boy understood why their family was called Shen Kai. This means that the Wu Yang family has the ability to break space. This is an amazing protagonist, and didn't think that this little girl's family would be at the same level as Shen Kai's family. Jing Ming says that the Wu Yang family is the first among the ten families, first overlord of Tian Zhou. Xiaolong thinks that he really has met an amazing child. Many people in the city felt the aura of the god Scepter and flying through the void. Now this matter will cause a lot of trouble. Xiao Lang suggests that his presence will soon be revealed, a good opportunity to take advantage of the situation. Jing Ming hopes there won't be many problems this time. In the city of the Po family, Mr. Po was told what three members of his family had done. This will provoke the Wu Yang family. Wu Yang immediately left after killing them. One can only wonder if they will be brought to justice. If the Wu Yang family is unhappy, they will have to retaliate with the entire city. Mr. Po asks if anyone has seen Xiao Long's skyship. He may also be related to this case. It would be nice if his whereabouts were revealed. He orders to find him immediately. Meanwhile, Xiao Long says that these fighting skills are useless to him, and he asks Jing Ming to learn them. This is a skill for the soul. The boy doesn't know if he can somehow help him with the demon in his heart. After this, the main character took out a jade box and wondered what treasures lay there. When he opened this jade box, it contained some kind of fruit with a very strong aura. But then a purple vine appeared, and she says that her memories from the past tell her that it is a poisonous fruit, the spiritual fruit of heaven and earth. The human species will immediately die if it is consumed, but it is a beautiful thing for its race. The purple vine ate this fruit and left only a seed, in which only the pure energy of the soul remained. After the boy heard this, he immediately sat down to absorb the energy of this bone. After that, the purple vine changed its color to green and reached the fourth level and awakened its talent and supernatural power, an immortal clone. It can now be divided into several clones with the ability to absorb, and the real body can be in any of the clones. As long as the clones exist, the body will not die. The boy is surprised that his purple vine is blooming more and more. Jing Ming encourages the main character and says that he has become much stronger. Xiao Long says that the two of them need to become much stronger. He asks Master Jing Ming to quickly join him in absorbing the stones. They need to break through Zhong Sheng as soon as possible. And after that, the guys sat down on the ground and began to absorb the power of the stones. His purple vine is now level four, but how many levels does it have in total? And what exactly is the purple vine? Meanwhile, Lady Hei Chi, based on the information and description given by the headhunters, this person looks like Xiao Lang. But they don't understand where he got his skyship from. Hei Chi says this bastard has many secrets. He needs to be found as soon as possible. After two days, Xiao Lang absorbed 2,000 stones. He did not feel any change. This heavenly demon skill turned into a bottomless abyss. In order to break through Zhongsheng, you do not need many stones, but you need much more time, so it will not be possible to reach the level of Zhu Wang in a short time. After this, Xiao Long remembers the scroll that he left for himself. He is going to study it now. In this scroll, it was written about a wandering skill of the Tian Di level, 
Ju Shu, art created by Hong Yuki. This skill is connected to the soul. Learn to control space with your imagination. With the help of the soul, the firmament will be created. It will become an extension of the body, and then you will be invincible. This technique does not require a high level. It so happened that he absorbed the energy of the fruit and strengthened his soul. Now he can definitely learn this lost skill. It is very similar to a skill he has already learned, but its study is much more complicated than it seemed at first glance. Although the skill looks very useful, it will take a long time to fully master. And at that moment, Hei Ching and other warriors approach him. Xiao Long warns Master Jing Ming and tells him to stop training. The main character found out that this girl is Lady Qi from the Hei Lin family. He thanks her for helping him as a hostage. He was able to escape safely. And he also thanks her for feeding the purple vine with her soul. The girl orders her people to attack the main character. But this doesn't scare the boy. He just laughs at the fact that he is being attacked by two people of Ren, Hua's level, and several people of Zhu Wang's level. These warriors turned out to be no problem for the boy. He grabbed them with his purple vine, which now turned green. The main character quickly dealt with one of the warriors. Others don't understand how this is possible. How could a person with the third level of the heavenly demon break through Ren Hua's defense? Now the boy will definitely not let them go. His god-cleaving hand skill and heavenly demon skill have increased. Still, these 2,000 stones were not wasted. The Hei Chi girl was very scared when she saw how Xiao Lang quickly dealt with her people. She asks him how he became so strong during this time. At this moment, Mr. Po flies to help Xiao Lan. He saw that the army of the Hei Ling family was flying after the boy. But when he arrived at the place, he saw the boy's sky boat chasing people from the Hei Ling family. Mr. Po thinks that idiots underestimated Xiao Lang's strength. Instead of being hunters, they became prey. The girl, when she approached Mr. Po, asked him for help. She tells him that she is from the Hei Ling family. Her name is Hei Yo Chi. She asks him to help kill this psychopath. But sir, Po is in no hurry to help this girl. He asks her if she recognizes him. He says that the Hei Lin family killed many of his soldiers. He is from the Po family. He didn't think that luck would smile on him so much, but did she forget how she threatened to destroy Mr. Po's soul? Meanwhile, Xiao Long dismounts from his airship and asks the master, What is he doing here? Mr. Po says that he went to help the boy and did not expect to see such a picture. Xiao Long says, sir, Po is very kind, and meanwhile ties up the girl, and she asks not to touch her and threatens them with her father. Mr. Po asks what the boy is going to do with this girl. Xiao Long says that she is from a big family. She will have to be left alive, not to mention that he is going to visit their family in the future. After some time, they brought this girl to the city of Po and imprisoned her. Mr. Po asks the boy to go with him to the city of Hongdi, but the boy does not know what kind of place this is. Mr. Po tells the boy that this is the territory of the Wu Yang family, a large city in Tianzhou. His men cause trouble for a girl from the Wu Yang family. He thinks the boy knows this more than him. To prevent Wu Yang's family from holding a grudge against them, he wants to apologize and wants the boy to help him. Isn't the main character familiar with Miss Wu Yang? Miss Wu Yang can meet Mr. Po because of the main character since he stood up for her. Xiao Long says that he is not sure that this little girl wants to see him. But it wouldn't be bad to look at the big city. The boy also wants Mr. Po to serve him. Mr. Po thinks that the boy wants to encroach on his mind again. Xiao Long says that black stones are certainly not bad, but this time he needs him to take him to Shen Kai's mansion. First Hei Ling, then Wu Yang. Now he wants to contact Shen Kai. Xiao Long says that Hei Ling and Wu Yang are an accident, but he needs to get to Shen Kai's family. Mr. Po knows the boy's ability to find problems, but Shen Kai's mansion is far away. He suggests going to Hongdi City first. After some time, the guys came to the teleport in the city of Po Tien. There was a guard at the entrance to this teleport, and Mr. Po showed him some kind of token, and the guard let them through. Immediately after they entered this teleport, they were transported to the center of Gao Tian City. Mr. Po says that his teleportation token can only be used ten times a day to get to Hongdi City. They need to cover most of the east, and they will make several stops in cities. Xiao Lang says that in any case, all expenses will be paid by Mr. Po. Afterwards, they came to the city center of Mai Feng. Mr. Po says the boy is a thief. Such absorption will result in the loss of at least one-third of the energy. 
If no one taught the boy to absorb stones, then Mr. Poe will teach him. The heavenly demon's skill is actually bottomless. It's a waste of stones. But Xiao Lang absorbs these stones one by one and asks to give him 200 more of these stones. Immediately after this, they went to the center of the city of Rai Yang and began to devour food there. After that, they arrived at Hongdi City, the big city of Tianzhou, the land of the Wu Yang family. Mr. Po says that now the main character's eyes will fall out. He asks him to quickly follow him. They must first send a note. Only then they can meet after verification. It will take about a family or eight days. This is the best hotel in the city. Here you can find everything from drinks to games. Xiao Lang can say whatever he wants, and Mr. Po will pay for it all. Immediately after this, they came to the arena where people were fighting each other. Mr. Po says that you can even place bets here, and in the Luo Yang Pavilion, the currency is black stones. When the boy found out that he could pick up some black stones here, he was very happy. A successful bet doubles the winnings, and the winner also takes the prize. The count starts with 2,000 black stones. The more victories in a row, the greater the jackpot. Mr. Poe thought that the boy wanted to make a bet and offered to give him stones for this. But this is not what the boy wanted at all. He wanted to take part himself, and Mr. Poe would bet on him. After this, the boy immediately went to the registration desk to sign up to participate. The old man at the front desk says that the guest has a third-level heavenly demon skill, Juwan level. He can participate. The girl calls him to come with her and sign some documents. Xiao Lang thinks that naturally, with the power of Ren, Hua, he would not have been allowed anywhere. He had to lie a little. His strength is much greater than it is in terms of level. Mr. Poe says that this kid relies only on his skills. This is recklessness. If he dies in the ring, then he definitely won't be able to help him. Of course, he doesn't have to worry about Hei Lin here, but so reckless. Meanwhile, the girl invites all spectators to place a bet. The bet may be up to 10,000 black stones. Mr. Poe wants to supply 10,000 black stones, that the black side will win. Meanwhile, the main character is thinking about how many black stones he will earn today. Immediately when the battle began, the boy's opponent called upon his soul, a huge bear. When this guy tried to attack the main character, Xiao Lang repelled his attack. This guy doesn't understand where this kid gets so much strength. The boy doubts that his soul can harm him in any way, but the defense is almost as good as him. After this, the boy attacks his opponent and kicks him in the stomach, causing blood to flow from his mouth. This blow was so strong that the guy flew out of the arena. After this, the leader of these battles entered the arena and announced that the black side had won. He asks the boy whether he will continue or whether he wants to stop. Xiao Long replies that they are continuing. After this, the presenter announces the next opponent. He will be a person who recently raised the seventh level of Zhu Wang. The girl again invites the audience to place bets on this fight. Mr. Po wants to place 10,000 stones on the black side once again. Also, many people approach this girl to place their bets. At this point, the fight has already begun, and the boy begins to attack first, but his opponent dodges his attack. But the main character did not expect this, and missed one strong blow straight to the stomach. It is not surprising that the enemy was able to deceive the boy. He saw the previous fight, and he is not stupid enough to fight him hand to hand. The enemy attacks the boy again, and says that what he won last time was just luck. But suddenly this guy stopped and his fist was a couple of inches from the main character's face. Xiao Lung is really not stupid enough to reveal all the secrets at once. But in reality, this guy stopped because a purple vine pierced him from behind in the back. This guy was surprised that the boy had more than just the sky demon skill. The audience that watched the fight rejoiced. For the first time, they see such a soul as the main character. She easily broke through his defense. Now it's not surprising to them that this guy decided to speak out. Mr. Poe thinks this guy really knows how to surprise. He won twice, which is already good. He thinks that the main character is not stupid enough to continue. But Xiao Long is not going to stop. He wants to continue fighting. After this, the next opponent enters the arena. His name is Lei Ting. People think that the main character was very unlucky. They're betting on Lei Ting's life. Mr. Poe thinks Lei Ting should be at the top of Zhu Wang. Although Xiao Long was wounded, he still had some trump cards up his sleeve, the cutting hand of God. As long as his opponent is not Tian Di, he will not lose. The girl asks Mr. Poe if he will continue to bet. Mr. Poe is also not going to stop and bets 10,000 on the black side. This guy is not afraid of the sky demon skill. 
Anyway, the boy will not live long. He wants to send him on his last journey. This guy attacks the main character, but he manages to dodge the first attack. The boy was surprised by the strength of the enemy, and he can only guess how many stones this guy absorbed. Mr. Poe is worried about the main character because his opponent has a heavenly level skill. His strength is comparable to Tian Di. Xiao Long decided to attack this guy with his purple vine, but it didn't work. This guy grabbed the purple vine and fired a lightning bolt at it. This bolt of lightning passed through the purple vine and shocked the boy. The main character's body does not move. He cannot move. This guy attacks Xiao Long, but he manages to regain control of his body and successfully dodges the attack. This guy was surprised that Xiao Long's soul was still alive. He thought that he had destroyed the boy's soul. Besides, she wasn't even hurt. He doesn't understand what kind of soul the main character has. But suddenly, Xiao Lang was behind this guy. He was shocked that he had fully recovered. Even all the negative effects disappeared. Xiao Long says that this guy can't dodge from such a close distance. This guy asks the main character to shut up. He says that relying on his level as a sky demon is not worth it and his lightning skill will be enough. But it so happened that the boy has not only this skill, he uses his new skill God Slashing Hand. And he easily destroys this guy by making a hole in his soul. Xiao Long says that he is quite strong, but unfortunately for him, the main character will be stronger. The presenter named the winner, and it turned out to be Xiao Lang. This time, the main character decided that he would end the fight here. He still has work to do today. The boy thinks that he is not yet strong enough. He needs to do more. When the boy was coming down from the arena, a girl met him and asked him to go with her to pick up his prize. After he received the reward, Mr. Poe approached him and asked the boy how many stones he received for his victory. The main character says that for three victories he received more than 10,000 stones. And Mr. Poe raised 30,000 stones in bets, and he invites the boy to divide them equally. Immediately after this, the guys went to a restaurant to celebrate the victory. The boy doesn't even know about the power of the heavenly path. This means that he was at the level of Ren Hua, but due to the developed heavenly path, he was comparable to the highest level of Ju Wang. Certainly, in addition to people improving their level, they must improve the way of heaven. Each person has his own type. The main character's opponent had lightning. The path of heaven determines the strength of a warrior. If his path of heaven is high enough, like the warrior himself, then only then can he be nicknamed Tian Di. Xiao Long asks if he can develop his path of heaven with the help of heavenly demonic enhancement. Mr. Po says that he does not know many people with Ren Hua's level who were able to achieve this. Mr. Po asks Xiao Lang not to worry. He believes that the boy can reach the seventh level of the heavenly demon and shake the entire Tian Zhou. A couple of hours later, they returned to their rooms to get some sleep. They were very drunk. But then suddenly a maid comes up to the main character and says that Mrs. Yang is waiting for him. After some time, the maid brought the main character to some girl. This woman's aura is very strange. He cannot understand what level she is, but she is very dangerous. This girl wants the boy to fight to the death tomorrow and lose. Xiao Lang understands that this girl wants to stage a fake fight. Can she really do such things? She says that this is a good opportunity to earn black stones, and if he is obedient, the mistress will stay with him all night. But Xiao Long is afraid that if he loses, his life will end there. But the girl says that of course the death will be fake. She offers the protagonist a reward of 100,000 black stones upon completion. But does Xiao Lang agree to such a deal? The boy covers the girl's mouth and tells her that he is not interested in such deals. After that, the girl got angry and grabbed the main character by the neck and lifted him into the air. She says that he is a daredevil that dared to challenge the lady. She asks the guy for the last time whether he agrees or not. If not, then she will kill him. But the boy turned out to be unshakable in his decision. He refused. He became interested in how this girl would kill him. This woman barely hit the guy, but it was enough to knock him down and immobilize him. He can't even imagine how strong this girl is. Is this girl at Tian Di's level? She steps on the guy and says that he is nothing more than trash. If he wants to live a good life, he just has to do what his mistress tells him. But the boy shouts at this girl and asks her to just wait a little. He promises that he will show her more. The girl says that it sounded tempting. If he can reach the seventh level of the heavenly demon, then she will do whatever he wants. 
The guy can't believe that this girl will really let him go so quickly. But only, of course, if he lives to see that time. And now she orders him to get out. After Xiao Lang left, this girl met with some guy and tells him that she saw the guy he told her about. This was the guy who took the girl with him. The girl says that he is really not bad. No wonder Yo Ji talked about him nonstop. Cute face, excellent manners, but rebellious character. And the most disgusting thing, the study of heavenly demonic enhancement. That's why the guy didn't take the main character with him. Even if he absorbed an incredible amount of black stones, he would never break through the seventh level. No one has even been able to get to the seventh level, let alone more, a waste of time. The girl tells this guy not to let the main character see Yuji. It will save them from problems. The guy asks the girl what this could mean. The girl says that she wanted to get rid of the boy in Mortal Kombat, but he was lucky enough to refuse. This means that she wants to get rid of him in another way. The next day, Xiao Long met with Mr. Po and briefly told him what happened to him yesterday. Mr. Po thinks that it is most likely the owner of the Luoyang Hotel, Liu Ru Yan. She has always been very mysterious. Why would she make such a deal with a boy? The main character thinks that this girl is just testing him. A woman with such power and influence has no reason to deal with him. She also offered very tempting conditions, but he does not know her goals. Mr. Poe thinks it smells bad anyway. He suggests it's better to get out of here quickly since they've already been given the answer. Wu Young's family said that they closed their eyes as if nothing had happened, but they would not be able to see Yu Ji. The main character thinks that this girl didn't even remember him. He thinks that this is not surprising after all she is Princess Tian Zhou and he is just a low-grade hillbilly. Mr. Po encourages the boy and asks him to forget about it. After that, he invites him to go and go home. When the guys approach the teleport, they realize that they needed to be careful. They earned a bunch of black stones, and now the boy may be able to raise the fourth level. But suddenly the main character felt an aura of death behind him. When he turned around, he saw that some unkind people had been pursuing him all this time. The guys turned around to ask these people what they needed from them. One person from this crowd was extremely angry. His eyes were red with anger. He points his finger at either the main character or Mr. Poe and says that one of them slept with his woman and wants to just run away. Xiao Lang and Mr. Poe looked at each other and simultaneously asked each other who he slept with. And they also simultaneously answered that they didn't sleep with anyone. They don't understand what this guy is talking about, and they think that maybe he misspoke. This man was still very angry. He orders his men to bring the head of the main character and Mr. Po. Xiao Lang was scared because these people had the level of Ren Hua. The main character and Mr. Po did not wait until they were finished off and immediately ran to the teleport. While the guys were running away, Xiao Lang asks Mr. Po if he really didn't sleep with that man's wife. Mr. Poe says that yesterday he was so drunk, so the only thing he remembers is how he opened his eyes and saw a boy healing his wounds. He doesn't understand what kind of woman we are talking about. This guy is crying because he just recently married the second woman from the Ouyang family, and his wife has already cheated on him. She told him everything about how she got drunk yesterday at the Luoyang Hotel, and the two of them came to her. That's why they will die today. Mr. Poe thinks this story is so stupid that only a complete idiot would believe it. They understand that they were simply set up. And suddenly the guys found themselves surrounded by people who were chasing them. The guys are squeezed into a corner and have nothing left to do. It's time to show their strength. Mr. Poe attacks these people and defeats several of them. Xiao Long sees this and believes that he is really not weak. Even he has the power of the path of heaven.